Hi guys, if you value my work and want to help me keep going, consider making a donation. Every donation small or large is important. Links in description. Chapter 201 Felix's Lava Cape Legend Durability 500500 Auto Repair Defense 2000 Equipment Requirement Kong Shin Option Dexterity 40, Magic 40, Charm 40 Immune to Sneak Attacks Flame Sucker is always active. Flame Sucker absorbs all flames up to SS rank and converts them to magic and health. Flames above SS rank can be nullified, but EX rank flames cannot. Although I had many questions, I asked the most important one first. What's an EX rank flame, Lin? Imagine the flame breath of a 10,000 year old high dragon that's prepared to burn its throat, that's EX rank. Or, imagine the demon lord from the Luka continent sacrificing his arm to make a flame. That would be EX rank. It's hard for the dungeon to estimate anything above that. Just think of them all as EX rank. So it's an ultimate flame that can even injure the user. I wouldn't be surprised if the demon lord will bear the risk to use something like that, so I guess he'll be in trouble if I think I can block all flames. Good, now you're thinking. Lin nodded with satisfaction. Then, he shoved his face toward me and continued. Kong Shin, be careful with that armor. I'm the one who made it, but it's too overbearing. I managed to make use of its aggressive nature to greatly increase the chance of landing critical hits, but its aggressive nature also increases the wearer's chance of receiving critical hits by a whole 50%. It's going to be quite troublesome. You have to be especially wary of Devourer's side effect. The mutation, you mean? Yeah, that. I've seen many people who have made fun of it, but only ended up being done in by it. What I'm trying to say is, don't use Devourer so freely. Got it? If you mutate due to the Demon Lord factor damn, Nunim's going to end me. Lin glared at the black bracelet on my wrist with a look that seemed to say, should I take it back? I nodded seriously and retorted. I'm immune to mutations so it's okay. Right, since you're immune to mutations, you should try not to use immune to mutations. Right. Isn't being immune to mutations the basic requirement of all explorers? Are there explorers not immune to mutations? That can't be, right? Koo, koo I want to hit you. I thanked Lin again and left Fairy Garden. For some reason, Lin's expression wasn't so happy when I thanked him. Mm, being able to tease Lin was very satisfying. Today was turning out to be great. Name, Kong Shin Race, Human Sex, Male. Class, Elementalist Sub-Skill Mixer, Tamer Title, Savior Hero Rank, Gold 7. Level, 60. HP 55 MP 60 960 Strength 275124 Dexterity 250127 Constitution 25079 Intelligence 4082 Magic 320157 Charm 87147 Luck 3972 Normal Skills High Rank Martial Arts LV7, Pryuta Mad Typhoon LV2, High Rank Crossbow Marksmanship LV1, Sky Gods Rage LV3, High Rank Heroic Strike LV3 High Rank Provoke LV7, Divine Speed Master, Return Master, Pryuta Circuit LV9, Dimensional Travel LV5, Overwhelm LV3, Absolute Soul LV3, Deific Manifestation, Riding. Class Skills High Rank Spirit Mastery LV4, High Rank Spirit Aura LV3, High Rank Elemental Control LV3, High Rank Elemental Contract LV3, Lightning Spear Storm LV2, Mid Rank Elemental Blade LV9. Mid rank elemental tempest LV9. Subclass skill in Dao skill, taming LV4, spirit of the collector, spirit of the mixer, spirit of the tamer LV4. Before I challenge the dungeon 60th floor, I check my status to celebrate getting new equipment. At the same time, I used up all the bonus stats I hadn't had the time to use. I had become gold rank 7 before I noticed, and a few stats had grown unbelievably high. Strength, Dexterity, and Constitution stats didn't need much explaining. As for Intelligence, while the base stat was only 40, I was getting 82, almost double the base amount, as bonus. 
even my luck stat had reached an absurd 111 points. As for magic, which was my highest stat, I didn't even know what to say. Unlike the other stats that were extremely difficult, if not impossible, to grow naturally, it was constantly improving along with Peruta Circuit's usage. In terms of stats, I was most likely one of the highest in the dungeon. Though the two additional legend grade equipment heavily increased my bonus stats, I've gotten rather aloof about stat increases. Of course, I could still feel myself getting stronger every time my stats increased, but with so many explosive increases in a short period of time, my body hadn't adapted to the change and was pretty much always in the process of updating. With all the stats I've gained from event dungeons, event raids, beyond, and other sources, it was if ID broken through the dungeon's 100th floor. That was even including all the stats one could gain by grinding floor masters. However, to be so overconfident in my stats, there were too many things I learned from the Pan and Continent. Traps, special attack methods, power of one's levels, and even the level ignoring difference in one's league of existence knowing all these, it was impossible to be happy with an increase of 10 or 20 stat points. Rather, I realized that I needed to focus on honing my skills, which were in a unique and independent position. In that sense, having all skills increase by a level for defeating a world's enemy was an outstanding benefit. Though, there were skills that had to be updated, like stats. That means beyond is just that important. Not only did clearing a beyond's floor raise my HP and MP, but it also added experience to the skills I used to clear that floor. Beyond would undoubtedly help me hone my abilities. To defeat the demon lord I met in the Luka continent, the current me was still lacking. Plus, I had to think about the other world's enemy that had yet to make its appearance. I couldn't be content with just this. I had to get much stronger. Though not even a month had passed since Loretta's announcement of a two-year time limit, I felt anxious. Perhaps it was because so many things had happened in the past month. Regardless, I couldn't do much about this feeling of anxiety. Knowing you might die in two years and cause the entire world to fall to ruin, it was impossible to be completely unaffected. The important thing was knowing what to do about it. To deal with this anxiousness, I decided to tackle the 60th floor. After all, when things seemed complicated or when I just wanted to sweat off the stress of everyday life, climbing the dungeon was the best thing to do. Though something felt off, I decided not to pay any attention to it. Just like before, I equipped the armor by imbuing mana into the bracelet. Unlike the crimson scale armor, which had hints of black on a red base, the pure black desire was a pure black full plate armor just like its name suggested. That said, across the black armor were strange engravings, which looked sophisticated and seemed to give off magic power. These engravings maintained a black glow and grabbed my attention. It was a rather ominous glow that seemed to suck me into a trance when I looked at it. Overall, it was a cool armor that provoked the desires of puberty hidden within me. With the help of the new armor, I broke through the 60th floor in just three hours and found myself in front of the floor master room. Next to me was Latte in her human form. In the past, she couldn't fully spread her wings out in the dungeon's narrow passageways. Now that she could take the human form, she was an excellent damage dealer with both speed and power. As she was treated as my tamed beast, it still counted as a solo clear when I brought her along. Phew. Considering how the number of golems increased as I climbed last few floors, the floor master is probably a golem too. Golems are annoying because my claws don't penetrate them well. Regardless, let's finish this quickly in go rest, hero. Latte, you easily break them with or imbued attacks or flame breath. Don't lie. However, since the dungeon liked to play tricks on explorers, it was entirely possible for the floor master to be a mimic. I tightened my grip on chaotic spear and kicked the door open. Fight me. Goo. A loud, strange roar greeted us. The ceiling was unusually high, and an enormous steel giant was looking down at us. It had the exact appearance of a 12-meter-tall human covered in steel. I trembled excitedly at the overwhelming sense of existence I hadn't met in a long time. Latte, you can fly here. I've been waiting for those words, hero. Latte immediately transformed to her wyvern form. I jumped onto her back and raised my spear. 
It was the perfect chance to test one of my new armor's abilities. Desire Thorn and Devourer were both straightforward. However, Sacrifice seemed to have a somewhat ambiguous clause. Sacrifice usable with any attack skill. Receive half the damage of the skill, but doubles the skill's effect. The damage received by Sacrifice cannot reduce your HP to under 10%. Just like its name suggested, Sacrifice traded one's flesh for the enemy's bones. Although the skill wouldn't kill me, it could potentially put me on the verge of death. I had to be careful before I used it. The ambiguous part was receiving half of the skill's damage. Did it double the skill's effect after I received half the damage? Or did I receive half the damage from the doubled skill effect? In other words, given that the skill's damage was 100 and the amplified damage was 200, I didn't know whether I took 50 or 100 damage. That was what this fight was for. Once I tried it, I would get a feeling for it. I immediately readied sacrifice and aimed my spear toward the enemy. Kwang. The giant golem raised its fists and sent a jab toward me. This guy, he knew boxing. Though Latte seemed surprised by its quick jab, she flew backwards swiftly and dodged it. Meanwhile, I slowly gathered energy in my spear. Sacrifice wasn't a skill that could be used only once per day. As such, there was no need to save the skill for anything. There was nothing wrong with being a bit bold and using it now. Elemental Blade In an instant, the spear blade elongated by over 10 meters. Immediately after using Sacrifice, I made Latte accelerate and thrust my spear toward the giant golem's left shoulder joint. Critical hit. Kwang. Kuhuk, that hurts. That hurt enough to make me scream. Immediately after cutting off the golem's arm, I checked my HP after feeling the electrifying pain. Shockingly, my HP had decreased by 35%. I really couldn't use this skill freely. I grit my teeth and gulped down a potion. At that moment, Latte called me. Hero. Yeah. What's wrong? That guy seems to be a weakling. What? I confusedly turned around. The golem that had lost its arm was roaring and charging toward me. Indeed, it did look quite pitiful. Wait, Elemental Blade was powerful, but still, it instantly cut off its arm. The 50% damage I took. Did it hurt so much because I got a critical hit? But even critical hits only doubled the damage. That meant that the elemental blade with sacrifice had dealt four times the normal damage. Hmm, I couldn't quite understand how it worked. Maybe if it had bones and was affected by the skull breaker effect ah. Uh, it'll kill you, human. So that guy has bones. Chapter, 202. What kind of a golem had bones? If it's a bone golem, it should only be made of bones. Alternatively, if it's a flesh golem made of a mixture of bones and flesh, it should be covered with disgusting rotten flesh. But this guy was neither. I scrutinized it closely and realized something. It wasn't a golem. Are you? Koha. Its steel arm extended like a certain pirate king candidates and shot toward me. As I thought, this wasn't a golem, but a living being. Golems couldn't freely transform their bodies like that. However, it could maintain its steel body and stretch its arm. What was its identity? Did it really have bones underneath all that steel? No, now wasn't the time to leisurely think about it. Latte, dodge. Leave it to me. Latte dodged the steel arm in an instant. At the same time, her wings produced a raging whirlpool of black flames. It seemed she had gotten stronger from the trip to the Pan Incontinent. Was it because she spent more time with me? Or was it because she participated in battles? Regardless, I may need to reconsider how I let Pleen grow. Hero, it's trying to do something. It's fine. I know what it is, so let's finish it now. The 60th floor master wasn't worthy of blocking my way for over 9 seconds. It seemed its ability was freely manipulating its large steel-like body. Though it probably had one or two hidden skills, I didn't care. Rather than waiting for it to use them, I decided to just kill it. However, just when I thought that, its steel body began to boil. As Latte said, it seemed to be preparing for something. 
What is that? An opening, hero. Right. Latte flew forward at an incredible speed. Meanwhile, I compressed the elongated spear blade and enveloped it with my white aura and chaos flames. My skill of choice was heroic strike. It seemed to be trying to transform its body to something. However, before its boiling body could complete the transformation, I reached it. Cutting off a transformation was one of the best feelings. Sacrifice. A black aura seemed to wrap itself over the spear blade. Realizing that the spear blade now contained an immense amount of power, I slightly hesitated to thrust forward. However, thinking that it was probably better to hurt myself than letting it do something suspicious, I thrust my spear forward. Critical hit. My spear penetrated its body before the transformation completed. At the same time, I felt a heart-rupturing amount of pain. It was as if someone squeezed my heart and set it aflame. The pain then spread through my body. Perhaps this was what being in lava felt like. Alternatively, it could be like being pierced with a thousand needles. In an instant, everything within my sight turned white. This skill I couldn't take it lightly. The damage I took was one thing, but more importantly, it even stopped me from moving for a moment. If it didn't finish the enemy, I would be vulnerable to the enemy's attack. That said, I was only taking 50% of the damage, while the enemy received 200% of the damage. Currently, with the enemy having bones and receiving a critical hit, the damage it took totaled to 600%. Whatever this golem-like thing was, it instantly exploded in the middle of its transformation. Blowing up a floor master sacrifice, I like you. A grand achievement. You defeated the floor master, superior doppelganger, alone. Amazing. You became level 61. You obtained the qualification to challenge Beyond's 10th floor. You obtained 5 bonus stats. You obtained the title, superior doppelganger slayer. All stats permanently increase by one. This effect will apply even if the title is not equipped. You became gold rank 6. Congratulations. You defeated the superior doppelganger alone. You obtained the special reward, superior doppelganger's hat. You obtained 400,000 gold. Choose your reward. 1. Weapon Swap Magic Book. After confirming its death, I fell on Lottie's back. Right, if it didn't die with how much damage I dealt to myself, I would be troubled. But doppelganger? I was right. After all, doppelgangers were closer to mimics than golems. Are you okay, hero? It looked like you received a huge blow just now. Yeah, I'm fine. In fact, this much pain makes me happy slightly. It snaps me awake, you know. It's not like I like pain or anything but it helps me not overestimate myself. Wise words as expected of a warrior. I smiled at Lottie's words while circulating per Yuta circuit and recovering. It seemed my HP never fell under 10%. After battling this floor master, I became certain about one thing. Sacrifice had a clear flaw, but if used correctly, it would be of great help to me. It was probably best to use it with weaker skills to minimize the damage I took, or conversely with extremely powerful skills when I knew it would surely kill the enemy. Or perhaps, using this skill with Devourer could mitigate Sacrifice's flaw. Anyways, it looks like I'm not the first one to clear this floor solo on my first try well, I guess it isn't that surprising. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same for the future floors. The world was infinite and full of outstanding explorers. There were undoubtedly other talented explorers who could defeat floor masters alone on their first try. In fact, Daisy probably could do it without much difficulty. For now, I decided to look at the reward. Though I wasn't expecting much, I quelled the thought and chose the reward. Immediately, a message rang out. You learned weapon swap. By using 1000 MP, you can instantly store the weapon in your hand into your inventory and replace it with another weapon. When empty-handed, you can instantly equip your weapon. Conversely, you can instantly unequip your weapon, becoming empty-handed. For 15 seconds after using weapon swap, your weapon's performance increases by 10%. The buff duration and performance increase are enhanced with skill levels. Huh. That wasn't so bad. 
I was curious why something that sounded like a physical technique came in a magic book, but with an effect like this, it really was more like magic. For example, if an enemy ambushed me while I was empty-handed, I could use weapon swap and instantly equip my spear. Although my spear would take the form of a choker, it was still easier to directly summon it in my hands than having to reach for it. Plus, this skill would let me change between different battle methods. Weapon swap strong point was being able to use it without any delay. Although I had to use 1000 MP, that much was an expenditure I could easily handle. Plus, with this skill, I would be able to use different weapons depending on the situation, which I had found difficult to do in the heat of battle. My crossbow marksmanship was high ranked. Attacking enemies far away was significantly easier with a crossbow than a spear. If I felt like an enemy was nearing me, I would be able to swap to my spear instantly. I quite liked it. Not to mention, I could now do something entirely new hoo. Alright, let's start the grinding. Encouraged by the new skill that was better than my expectations, I jumped down from Lottie's back so she could transform back to her human form. After all, she wouldn't be able to leave through the door otherwise. Hero, Hero's body is shaking. I might be a bit anemic let's rest for a bit. I almost forgot about the HP I lost from sacrifice. Once I left the floor master room, I bought a fatigue recovery juice and special HP recovery meat skewer from Loretta. It was only then that I continued with the superior doppelganger grinding. Qua. Human, I will. Die. Right when the superior doppelganger was about to transform with a villain-like line, I killed it with my spear. As this was today's tenth fight or the last, I happily ended it with sacrifice heroic strike. Now that I had felt the pain from sacrifice a few times, I felt like I had gotten somewhat used to it. I trembled at my potential. Or maybe, I'm just becoming a pervert. Damn, I'd rather not have said it. I resented my instincts and chose the item I desired from the reward list. The 60th floor also had strengthening elixir. It was none other than the mana circulation elixir. Somewhat like the other elixirs, the mana circulation elixir raised my magic and charm by one. Supposedly, it cleaned the internal pathway used for mana circulation and increased the quality of mana. Because of it, I felt like I was getting cleaner every time I ate one. It was undoubtedly a placebo effect. It took exactly one hour to defeat the superior doppelganger ten times. I'd kill one every five minutes and rested for a minute, so it was about right. These superior doppelgangers were rather easy to hunt. I just had to kill them before they transformed. Although they appeared as a giant golem, the moment they received damage, they started transforming. As I'd never seen them complete their transformation, I still didn't know what they were transforming into. My guess was that they took the form of the explorer that damaged it. Since they started transforming after receiving damage, I easily killed them by taking their head with the first attack or by using two attacks before they finished their transformation. It was too obvious that their real attacks began after their transformation. Although killing them with first blow was ideal, for explorers that weren't confident in their attack power, it was probably better to kill them with their second attacks. After all, while they transformed, they were noticeably slower. Of course, if they couldn't kill them by the second blow, it was better to just give up. Why was I talking about this? When I left the floor master room with a tired expression, Loretta, who was waiting at the floor shop, smiled brightly and jumped on me. Shin Nim, that was the tenth, right? Then play with me. You can buy some items while you're at it. I think the while I'm at it part is what you really want. How rude. It's half-half. I ignored Loretta's pleading eyes and bought more of the relatively low-priced fatigue recovery juice and HP recovery meat skewers. Even as she sold them, Loretta tilted her head. Shin Nim, why do you need them? Didn't you finish grinding for the day? Ah, you see, Loretta that's because the second season of Thrashing Phase is beginning now. Thrashing Phase? Loretta looked like she had heard the phrase before. Meanwhile, I snickered with an evil grin. That was what a Thrashing Phase was. Ever since I went through the Thrashing Phase with Father, I always thought that it was more to alleviate the teacher's stress than to help the student fix a habit. Now, I knew the answer. 
fixing a student's habit and alleviating a teacher's stress. It was half-half. Crown Prince, I'm at the training room is it really happening? It'll be there in a moment, Ren. Take your time, please. The thrashing phase full of Ren's pain and my happiness was waiting. Chapter, 203 With Loretta reluctant to let go of me, I had to buy highest-grade health potions, mana potions, and some bolts with high-grade magic imbued in them. After that, I headed to the guild house. Of course, getting Loretta off was quite a work. It'll be the lady of the house eventually anyway. Don't you get tired? Even if you come, you'll only see two sweaty men fighting each other. I want to go even more now. Ike, go away. When I finally arrived at Marianas Garden, the garden, which had now become spacious with the old residence flame Drake aka Pookie and giant iron boar aka Iana moving out, had Waya sitting under a parasol and reading. It was a rather strange scene. Oh, Shin. Welcome back. Waya. Why are you out in the garden? You're not doing anything either. Ina's going to come soon. She's hunting the 45th floor master right now. Ah. I'm sorry. I have to train with Ren for a while, so I'll have to shamelessly leave you to take care of Ina. At my apology, Wyatt smiled lightly and answered. It's fine. I'm calculating each and everything anyways. I'm thinking about the reward I'll get out of you with all the points I accumulated. A hug, kiss, dinner, date, and hoo hoo. Hoo hoo. What is that supposed to mean? Ahaha, ah, I'm kidding. Well, half kidding. For the record, I have two. Seven hoo hoo's saved up. You have no plans to hide your indecent desires, do you? At my question, Waya narrowed her eyes and smiled. Then, she tapped the seat next to her and gestured me to come over. Stay for a while. Leave that lion head alone. We can spend some quality family time with Ina. How about it, Ina's daddy? Really that's an enticing offer, but it'll have to pass for today. It's an important time for Ren I have to teach him how to wield the world's power too. Hmm, you're feeling responsible for making him a hero. Ah, I want to take your place as Earth's hero. That way, I might get stronger than you and you'll try your best to protect me too. Humph, this power is mine. I won't give it to anyone. When I retorted curtly, Waya's smile got bigger. I was kidding, Guildmaster. It'll be the one to protect you. Although it would be nice to be in the hero's position, I don't really want to be a princess to be protected. I don't like just being protected either. Oh, that reminds me. When the guild advanced to rank B, there was a function it gained. It was being able to appoint a vice guild master given that the guild had more than 10 members. A vice guild master could officially complete guild related business like accepting new guild members or kicking out existing guild members. Vice guild masters of the first dungeon's powerful guilds all held great authorities. Though, I couldn't say whether revival would also be like that. Why, uh, if it's okay with you can you be our guild's vice guild master? You've done a lot until now, and you're really the only one I can think of who can fill that position. You have the ability and sense of responsibility, and you're even close with everyone in the guild. How about it? Is that a proposal? Of course not. Good try though. TSK. Why a pouted? Though she was older than me, she was really quite cute. When I patted her head, she spoke with a softened expression. Okay. To be honest, I also think I'm the only one who can be a vice guild master. Great. Although something like this should be done through votes, I'm going to ignore all that and use my authority as the guild master to appoint you the vice guild master. Mmm, -hmm, charming. Why Eleni Mastaford became Guild Revival's vice master. After confirming that Waya became the vice guild master through the message, I took my hand off her head and extended it toward her. Continue with your excellent work, vice guild master. At your service, guild master. Just like that, Revival's vice guild master was chosen. Guild Revival, Guild Rank B. Guild Member, Kong Shin Guild Master, First Gold, Waya Eleni Mastaford Vice Guild Master, Second Gold, Daisy Ektradian First Platinum. Labique Van Dion Gran Eris, Kong Young Gong, 
Su Yiun, Ren Vero to Gold Lion. Poludia Gren Awer, Shuna Aran Lahita first gold, Ilina Alexandrovna Mikolova, Kong Yua first silver, Minami Violet Sumire second gold, Edward Walker second silver, Sophie Brightman third gold. Total, 14. Ichem. After saying goodbye around the time Ina arrived, I went into the mansion and opened the guild status window. In truth, I was rather surprised. Lydia and Shuna had become gold rank explorers before I noticed, and with Daisy breaking through Beyond's 13th floor and entering the first dungeon's 81st floor, I naturally learned when Daisy first entered Beyond. Waya would reach platinum rank soon to advance to the first dungeon, and considering the talent Sumayar showed in our spars, she would probably follow suit. As for Walker, had advanced to the second dungeon without telling me anything about it. It seemed Xi and Shayamai's ability was helping him greatly. That said, after he reached the platinum rank in the third dungeon, he went down to the second dungeon silver rank instead of gold rank. I pitied him slightly. It seemed he was either lacking in achievements or some other conditions. As for Ina, there wasn't much to say about her. Even before she became an explorer, she was almost as strong as Waya and me. The dungeon was merely a playground for her, as she could use her magic power as much as she wanted. She cleared the 45th floor today and would soon become gold rank. Only then would her speed slow down slightly. Perhaps, she might even enter beyond. The one I was really worried about was my sister, Yua, and the young lady of nobility in charge of a conglomerate, Sophie. Although they were both elites who weren't lacking in qualities deemed desirable in society, their constitutions were both far from physical activities. However, it seemed my worrying was for naught. The two SS rank abilities I took from Luca Bruno and Joshua Brightman found their respective owners, and they were shining more and more as the girls climbed the dungeon. Yua had tamed all 278 mantis larvae, and she was now learning the dungeon system step by step as she learned and raised new skills. She probably wouldn't need more tamed beasts. After all, fully grown mantises could even fly. Although ordinary mantises couldn't fly for long, the ones she tamed came from the evil mantis queen. Their genes were undoubtedly superior to the ordinary mantises. With Yua's ability supporting them I stopped thinking about it as I started getting goosebumps on my arms. As for Sophie, who was the second most passionate woman after Waya, she was surprisingly in the guild house at the moment. With her brilliant blonde hair tied up in a ponytail and wearing a tank top and hot pants, she was sparring with Yi Yun in the underground training room. As Yi Yun was also wearing casual clothes, they looked quite nice together. Ha! Kook, coming from the back again. No, both sides. Although Yi Yun was right in front of Sophie's eyes, Yi Yun's dagger flew toward Sophie from behind her. Sophie quickly spun around and blocked it with just two fingers, but surprisingly, it was a clone. Yi Yun was still in front of Sophie, and in an instant, Yi Yun's elbow struck Sophie down. A clone. I just added mana into my shadow and gave it mass. Master said it was one of the most simple techniques. No, your master is strange. Realize it already. While I pointed out Yi Yun's faulty statement, Sophie got up as she groaned. The spar must have been quite intense as a gold rank explorer such as herself was dripping with sweat. Hugh, Hugh so strong. Huhu, of course. He'll become a beyond explorer after all. Humph, when I become platinum ranked, he'll advance to the second dungeon's gold rank, and when I become platinum there, I can become the first dungeon's gold rank explorer. Now that she mentioned it, it was rather scary how fast she advanced. Since she was on the third dungeon's 75th floor while ravaging through all floor masters alone, she would undoubtedly advance to the second dungeon within the next month. You might even catch up to Walker at this rate. No, I'm only trying so hard so I can be with Edward. I, I see. Well, good luck, Miss Sophie. Edward is advancing quickly too. By the time I advance to the second dungeon, he'll be gold ranked. Don't underestimate his desire to improve. Maybe he's just working hard so he doesn't have to be with air, nothing, never mind. Mm, her spirit was already stronger than Joshua Brightman's. Sophie getting his ability was definitely good for Earth. So why are you with Yiyun? 
Her fighting style is the most similar to Walker's out of everyone in the guild. In trying to learn how to work with Walker by sparring her. I have a lot to learn from her, really. Ehe. Right, as Yiyun specialized in sure-kill attacks, Sophie probably had a lot to learn by sparring with her. For example, protecting vital areas, feeling killing intent in dodging and the like. Though, I couldn't really say out loud with Yiyun making such a happy-go-lucky face. Why is Shin here? To spar with Ren SSI. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to ask when I first saw him. His ears are they real? Yeah. He's a beast man. Other continents have all sorts of different races. Ren, say hell Hugh. Sophie's words reminded me to properly introduce them to each other. When I looked back, however, I saw Ren who was fidgeting in front of two girls had never talked to before. He really was completely stiff. I slapped his back to bring his consciousness back. Ren, snap out of it. I can't, crown prince. They're both too beautiful, I can't look at them. Plus, t their clothes are too revealing. It's okay, Ren. Unlike you, they don't really mind it that much. Try to man up. That's a bit hurtful, but regardless, it's too much for me. Really, not even teenagers would be like him. I sighed. Then, a question suddenly popped into my head. Isn't Labique just as beautiful as the two of them? Isn't Ren really casual around Labique? Why is that? T that's because I've known Labique ever since I was little she's not someone I can see as a woman. Did he just drop the bomb? Of course, Labique is also very beautiful. Her popularity among the knights was through the roof, and there were endless streams of proposals flowing in from every country in Panon. She had elegance and beauty, and she even had a kind personality. When I was young, I looked up to her too. However, that's it. Labik is my master and someone akin to my mother. I don't see her as a woman. Ah. If Labik heard about this, it wasn't going to end pretty. Though I found it quite funny, when I imagined how dejected Labik would be when she found out, a sigh naturally came out. Sophie's and Yiyun's expressions also became rigid as they instantly realized the circumstance. Elabik is the cat Yerduni, right? Can't see her as a woman. Then he has to be. Whoa, hold it there. You can't impose your beliefs on others. Let me deal with this. When I cut them off, they widened their eyes and looked at me. Can't impose our beliefs. What are you trying to do, friend? Mm, I can't impose anything on him, but I can help him change his mind. Usually, by beating him up. Isn't that the same thing? I just had to make him miss Labique. I just had to beat him up until he wanted to cry in Lebwick's embrace. I looked back at Ren and smiled. Alright, we're done with the introductions. Let's start, Ren. See Crown Prince, aren't you more spirited than before? Did I do something wrong? No, nothing at all. Ren isn't wrong. Once the thrashing phase is over, everyone will be happier. Something did go wrong. Yiyun and Sophie, who were done with their sparring for the day, sat down nearby. It seemed the phrase, thrashing phase, had interested them. Realizing this, Ren's ears perked up and sweat began to appear on his face. Ha, ha ha ha. Really, Crown Prince. Are you trying to beat me like a dog in front of these beautiful ladies? Ren, how can you say that? I'm not beating you like a dog. I'm just thrashing you for your own sake. That's the same thing. Now now, let's begin. You walk. For the next thirty minutes, Ren and I both squeezed out our power as heroes and clashed. While Ren wore a full set of armor and equipped himself with a wooden sword, I only had a wooden spear without any armor. Though it looked like I was lacking in terms of defense, as my armor was in its bracelet form and my spear in its choker form, although I wasn't affected by their attack and defense, I was still affected by their additional effects. My stats were already miles ahead of Ren. With the additional effects from my items added on top of my superior martial arts, there was no way for Ren to defeat me. Not even if he was hero. Crown Prince is too strong. Too strong I tell you. You only just found out. 
don't think about running away, come at me. Come on, hurry. Kuk Kwan. Having a wild nature isn't bad, but we're doing this because you can't control yourself. Quack. I mercilessly smacked Ren's back with the wooden spear. Immediately afterward, I smacked him three more times. Ku. Are you going to sleep? Counterattack. Even without Crown Prince saying that I was about to do it. Quack. Hearing Ren's pitiful cries, Sophie and Yi Yun, who were still watching from the side, added. Wow, he really just beat him up for thirty minutes straight. Shin is so cool. Crown Prince. You have more strength in your sword, but you're still wide open. Didn't you learn anything from Labik? Kohuk. Thirty minutes wasn't enough to expend Ren's stamina. We were both vastly different than when we met on the twentieth floor. As such, I beat him up for two hours more. My goal was to help Ren hone his bestial instincts while maintaining his sanity. If he could respond rationally even while in his wild mode, Ren could be a powerful warrior. Kwang, Kak. Just because you open your mouth while you run, the enemy won't let you bite him. Of course, he was still far from that point. Chapter, 204 For days after the thrashing phase began, with Ren finally reaching the 60th floor, I decided to fight the 60th floor master with him. Since I had to grind the floor master anyway, if I brought Ren in, I could save party member scarecrows and train Ren at the same time. It was killing two birds with one stone. Of course, I didn't forget to tell Ren about ten times a day, you monster, and help him by them. Though Ren was a bit lacking in qualifications, it seemed that staying as the last explorer in his world while protecting children earned him some favors. More importantly, as he had become a hero, he could buy ten times a day, you monster more easily. Why didn't you change this thing's name yet? You'll get bad luck if you change the name of a finalized product. Don't lie. It's true. Though the product is still relatively new, so it might be okay but Elian said I can't change its name even if I died. She said something about it being a revolutionary name that was hard to come by I wonder, is there a special language spirit in it? But it's rare for there to be a language spirit I don't know of. Wait, did Loretta not realize the euphemism behind this name? This small yet not so small difference between Elian and Loretta it almost made me cry. Seeing Loretta tilting her head, I lightly patted her head. Loretta, I'm happy that Loretta is Loretta. Don't change at least, don't change when I'm not watching. W. Watt. Even if you say something so sweet, I won't give you anything. Ee hee here, here. Though that was what she said, she flapped her ears as if to fly away and picked up items like potions, entrance tickets, and party member scarecrows and put them in my hands. I was worried she might be fired from her administrative guild master position at this rate. Or maybe, Loretta wanted that to happen. Then, when I was organizing the handful of items I got from Loretta with mixed feelings, Ren asked me. Crown Prince, there's something I want to ask. What is it, Ren? Can you help me understand what's so strange about this ten times a day, you monster? I paused with my hand still in my inventory and fell silent. Ren's ears perked up, seeming to say, I'm listening, teacher. Looking at his innocent face, I spoke seriously. That's not something to brag about, Ren. It's really not. I mean, it's not something people who understand can brag about either, but damn it. See calm down, crown prince. Yuwak. With Ren with me, the already quick floor master battles ended even quicker. We each just had to hit it once or twice and it was over. After using Frozen Roar to increase our abilities for five minutes, we defeated the Floor Master twice. Although it would have been nice if we could use Ren's Golden Lion's Roar, he said it was only usable when he was using Deific Manifestation. Considering how powerful the skill was, it was understandable. He is my ancestor, the Golden Lion. It really is an honor. Though, I never understood why he came to me instead of my father who was the hero. Wait, ancestor. According to the legend, he was blessed by the gods and had the ability to transform into a golden lion in battle. With the body of a beast and rationality of a human, he ruled over the continent as the strongest warrior. 
My unsightly display was because I couldn't accept his power completely. It's really quite embarrassing. As I didn't know how to respond, I simply nodded and urged him. Then let's continue with our fun thrashing time so Ren can wield his power better. Crown Prince is evil. But sorry, I have to go make food for the kids. Eh. Right. Ren wasn't alone. Along with Labik, he had to take care of the livelihoods of seven children. I nodded feeling awkward. Gee go ahead. I'll see you later then, Ren. Do you want to come also? I'm going crazy because Elfa keeps crying, saying that she wants to see Crown Prince. She won't stop talking about Crown Prince. I'm um, later. I'll bring presents. It's um, okay. I'll tell Elfa that Crown Prince will come by within four days. Eh. Wait, Ren. Ren left the dungeon before I could stop him. Damn, he got me. Now that things turned out like this, Elfa would hate me if I didn't come visit within four days. After telling myself that I'd reward Ren with thrashing full of love, I headed back to the guild house. Daddy. Ina. The moment I entered the guild house, Ina ran into my embrace. Although she could fly if she wanted, she still liked to run as it was a habit from before she got her ability. Since she likely ran into her parents' arms when they were alive, it made sense. I heard you were working hard. Un. I worked hard and became gold rank. In other words, she had broken through the 50th floor. I knew she was climbing fast, but I didn't think she'd be this fast. I also realized that the freezing energy she was giving off had gotten stronger. I softly stroked Ines' white hair and spoke. Looks like Ines going to catch up to daddy soon. Good job, it must have been hard. Not at all. It was fun. I can handle ice better now. Right. All of Ines' abilities received support from the dungeon system. It wouldn't be wrong to say that Ina received the most benefits from the dungeon skill system. If she continued to work hard, she would be able to come in contact with ordinary people without fear of hurting them. Right, she just had to put in a bit more effort. Thinking about the day she would become independent, I hugged Ina tightly and rubbed my cheek against hers. Thank you for working hard, Ina. Un. Thank you too, Daddy. With us treating each other like real father and daughter, I felt like she had really become my daughter. Even though that wasn't possible, it was as if I was putting myself under a hypnosis. In truth, I was a bit surprised at first when Ina called me daddy, but now, I didn't think it was so bad. Ina had gone through many hardships and had lost many things dear to her. If I had something she wanted, I was more than happy to give it to her. I'll try harder. I'll get stronger and protect daddy. Is that what mommy said? Un. Ina and mommy will protect daddy. Why a, this girl, is she planning on making me a princess? I swore revenge and told Ina. Don't push yourself. Daddy will be sad if Ina gets hurt. Got it? Un. Mommy, Ina, and Daddy can then be happy together. Though her words made me happy, Waya and I weren't real husband and wife, and I had to make Ina realize it one day. Thinking about how she'd react, a sigh naturally came out. Of course, this was a matter for the far future. Since it was unclear whether our future was secure, it would be too overzealous on my part to be worrying about this at the moment. As such, I simply held Ina tighter without any words. Then, I handed Ina off to Waya and went back into the guild house with a final look. Ren would arrive soon. I had to prepare myself to beat to train him. Just like that, a week had passed since the start of the thrashing phase. You're wide open. Kook, I knew you'd attack there. Purposefully showing an opening and drawing in your opponent is an excellent tactic, but don't forget, there are people who can easily see through something so basic. I won't lose. Kwong. An important element in a fight between two people was seeing a few moves ahead of the opponent. If one could predict how the other person would move, it became much easier to achieve victory. Of course, even if one could read the other person, if he was lacking in speed and power to deal a fatal blow, it was useless. Kohak. My wooden spear hit Ren's vital point, causing him to fall. 
as he had gone through a thrashing phase before, he could control himself to a certain extent. However, once his beast-like instinct showed signs of appearing, it was easy to provoke him and cause it to explode. I sighed. Then, just as I reached my hand out to help run up, I realized that there were people watching us. What's everyone doing? Isn't it obvious? We're watching you fight. Beating him to death. If he dies, tell me. Golden Lion, good undead material. I won't die. No matter how much Ren respected Daisy, it seemed he didn't want to work under her as a undead. Ren gritted his teeth and took up his stance again. Come, Crown Prince. If you're so worked up, it's going to end quicker than the last round. It'll show you that's false. Of course, after that, Ren ended up being knocked down in just 35 seconds. Other than little problems like this, the thrashing phase was progressing smoothly. However, not everything could work out so well and there were things that had to be taken care of no matter how painful it was. Around the time the 60th floor master grinding was ending, Wyatt gave the suggestion. It's about time to let everyone know. About the dungeon. And about us and the danger, Earth is facing. It's time. Our guild is in the right position. At her words, I remembered something from what felt like a long time ago. When we first spoke, she said she wanted to create an organization of dungeon explorers to solve the danger Earth was facing. The organization she talked about then wasn't too different from Revival. If there was, it was who the guild master was. Interestingly enough, I did say that I'd accept her offer if I became the organization's leader. Revival's members are all strong. As we are now, we won't lose to any external influence, be it Freedom Wing, Guardian, or countries. More importantly, we can't let people continue to do stupid things. The world could potentially end, and there are way too many people wasting military strength and fattening up monsters' bellies for short-term profits. You're right. We only have 23 months left too. This wasn't new. I had considered the matter long before why I mentioned it. However, there were too many obstacles to do so at the moment. Will they believe us? It seems a bit absurd. What the world is going through is already absurd. What we're about to add isn't going to make it any more absurd. You have a good point. There's power behind the words of the strong. Of course, there's responsibility behind it as well. And you, you are the world's strongest. The untouchable. Stop, that makes me cringe. This wasn't something only Waya and I could talk about. We immediately gathered everyone at the guild house and carefully discussed the details. Once we revealed the existence of the dungeon, the biggest problem would be appointing the explorer. There would undoubtedly be millions of people wanting to become explorers. Among them would undoubtedly be powerful influential people. We have to set a requirement. ITLL be near impossible to control every single explorer. What we need is a large number of powerful explorers. Right, let's not make all new explorers join Revival. Revival is a select group of the most powerful elites. The requirement to be an explorer will first be one's brains, then one's strength and potential for growth. Un. Our goal has to be increasing the number of explorers. At least for this part, we have to make sure to use soul contracts to control them. We can't let them waste explorer appointments on people that don't meet the requirements. For now, we decided to ban non-ability users from becoming explorers. Of course, it was still entirely possible that there might be ordinary people with extraordinary talent. I was like that initially. However, the chance of too small. It was overwhelmingly better to appoint someone with an ability. That way, they would surely become stronger and increase the number of explorers. The contract we're going to make people sign is also important. We have to give up what we need to give up. We can't force them to throw away their lives when the world's enemy comes, and we can't force them to climb the dungeon 12 hours a day. We can just choose ability users that are already actively fighting monsters. People's personalities don't change that easily. Someone like Francis Las Michel, huh? Well only require two things. First, purposefully not climbing the dungeon will be prohibited. Second, the explorers they appoint will have to be approved by us. 
Just this will increase the number of explorers on Earth and help us reach our goals. Edward, if that's the case, ITLL be better to put it details numbers for the first clause. We need to make sure that people don't feel like we're controlling them while making sure that they don't neglect their duties as dungeon explorers. While everyone was busy climbing the dungeon and training, they still made time to help with the contract and discuss how to tell the world about it. Yua was extremely happy that she was included in this talk. If I didn't become an explorer, I would have never known about such an important talk. Ehe, I'm happy I can be of help, Appa. You're always helpful, Yua. Appa. Hold it. Lydia quickly put her hands between Yua and me. How dare she misunderstand the love between an Appa and his younger sister. Anyhow, the contract went through several revisions and discussions before it was finalized. Meanwhile, I finished grinding the 60th floor master with 15 point increase to both magic and charm killed the thunder power knight. Beyond's floor master that was the combination of the dark rat man and lizard knight as if that wasn't enough, I broke through the first dungeon 61st floor, Beyond's 11th floor, 62nd, 12th, 63rd, and 13th. This all happened in just two weeks. By the time I began climbing the first dungeon 64th floor, the contract was finished. As Revival's master and explorer of the first dungeon and beyond, I stood in front of the whole world. We only have two years left. We have to protect Earth. We can't waste our time on useless things. The days when people scrambled to stop the onslaught of sudden monsters was long over. It was now time for us to make our appearance. If you're confident in your strength as an ability user, knock on Revival's doors at any time. The dungeon will help you become an excellent warrior that can sweep through the monsters and dungeons invading our world. Starting from now, humanity will strike back. All ability users will sweep away monsters invading Earth from a different perspective. The war between humanity and monsters, the second season had only just begun. Chapter, 205 Though I had somewhat expected it, with Revival's accomplishments in the previous incident, my influence had reached an unimaginable realm. Just by saying that there was an important announcement, everything fell into place without having to borrow Waya's power. Leon, it's me. Friend. What's up? Did a new event dungeon appear? As we couldn't leave Leon out of such an important announcement, we called him as well. We then explained what our plan was and what we wanted him to do after the announcement. In other words, he didn't have to hide that he was an explorer anymore and he could make other people into explorers as long as they met our two conditions and signed the contract. Unexpected, after thinking about it for a bit, Leon flew to Korea. The reason he gave was rather interesting. If I can make American ability users into explorers, that means they'll become part of America's strength. Since the government already knows I'm in contact with you, it's only obvious that I join you in cutting the start line. I'm already a dungeon explorer, it wouldn't be right to hide in the shadows. Ha, huh, you really are passionate, Leon. Thanks. You know me well, dude. The dungeon was a huge secret. Since we were hiding it all this time, people would undoubtedly criticize us for it. I, of course, had the confidence not to be bothered by it, but Leon seemed to think that it would have been cowardly to not include himself. Of course, we welcomed him with open arms. With Leon also being there, even more, people began to focus on this announcement. Ren and Labique were enough to provide proof that other worlds existed, but to better explain the danger facing Earth, we decided to include one of the Beastman children we saved. After a small deathmatch among the children, Alpha was chosen. Wait, there's something wrong with the way the Alpha was chosen. They didn't need to be so passionate about this. Also, Alpha, I didn't know you were so strong. You might be able to start climbing the dungeon now. I only said one of them had to come with me, and Alpha folded her rabbit ears and quickly knocked everyone else down in just two seconds. Then, as she wiped the blood off of her legs, she asked with a cheerful smile. Do I go and sit on Appa's lap? No. Ina, who was already in my arms, shouted. That's my place. Eek, I hate you. I hate you too. Ina and Alpha growled at each other with their heads almost touching. Alpha would undoubtedly freeze if Ina made a mistake, so I was rather surprised at Ina's consideration. 
Mm, I was sure they would become great friends in the future. Yep. I just hoped Ina wouldn't freeze Alpha in an argument. The day after, everyone stood in front of the whole world together. Hundreds of reporters gathered at the large press conference I held, and the flurry of flashes was even starting to annoy me. Although I was in the spotlight, as I wanted to divert the atten or rather, as I wanted to emphasize the entire revival and not just me, I had everyone present. Leon was also in one of the seats. As for Ina, Waya was holding on to her on her lap. Alpha, on the other hand, was being held by Labique under the reasoning that the guild master would lose his dignity with little girls by his side. After seeing that everyone was present, I held the mic up to my mouth. Dozens of years before Two Moon, the dungeon was already there. No one knows who made the dungeon or how it is being maintained. One thing we know for sure is that it exists. My father and a few others worked as explorers. Though, we only started progressing after obtaining our abilities after Two Moon. So you're trying to say that you can enter this dungeon that's connected to other worlds? And that you can grow your abilities there? We, of course, have ways to prove our claims. Three of the members here, Ren, Labik, and Alpha are residents of another world. Currently, their world has been taken over by a race called El Padis, which are similar to the monsters that are invading Earth. I obtained the ability to travel to other worlds through the dungeon and saved Ren, Alpha, and other children who aren't currently here. What do you mean by taken over? As expected, they were interested in the Panin continent. When I was about to speak, Alpha shouted. They eat brains. Then they pretend to be that person. They ate Yuruto too, and even the hero. The same thing happened across their entire continent. Ordinary people were either killed or eaten by the El Padis, and it was the same for monsters and animals that made up the ecosystem. Although dungeon explorers tried to stop them, it was too late. In the end, Ren and Labik here had to flee to our world. The press conference hall became silent. It was probably hard to imagine monsters that ate people's brains. However, there was someone who broke the silence and asked a question. But where's the proof? No, there's another problem before that. These people with animals' ears, aren't they monsters? They're residents of another world who just look different than us. They had intelligence equaling humans, and more importantly, they fight against monsters just like us. Do you plan to treat everyone who looks different as enemies? Shuna and I are also residents of another world. Shin save us from this world's enemy, the demon lord. Lydia spoke out. Although she wasn't from Earth, because she looked like a Caucasian, there wasn't a way to prove that she was from another world. That was why we had brought Ren, Labik, and Alpha, who clearly had non-human features. The people from my world fought against the demon lord and his demon army for a long time. We were defeated only recently. Shin obtained a skill called dimensional travel and came to save me. I regret that you can't see the state of my world. If you could, I wonder if you'll be able to see mana stones as a mere source of energy. Demon Lord? Demons? There isn't just one world's enemy. Both the Demon Lord and the El Patis are among them. In other words, several worlds are being invaded at the same time by different or possibly the same forces. As for Earth, it hasn't been that long since the invasion began. But we can't relax because of that. After the Demon Lord conquered the Luka continent, he immediately began to invade another world, and our world was unlucky enough to be chosen. Our world is currently being attacked by two forces. Their joint invasion loosens and widens the path leading to our world, accelerating the invasion process. That's why we have only two years left. What you just talked about, is that related to you? Could you have caused this disastrous result of being invaded by two forces by going to help that girl? As I had wondered about this too, I couldn't blame the reporter for asking. Even after I got an answer from Loretta, I still had doubts. However, if my doubts were true, that would mean one of two things. I had either made a fatal mistake by becoming a dimensional mercenary as a hero or the dungeon, which had helped me grow stronger all this time, was actually the mastermind behind everything. As either were absurd and annoying to think about, I could only believe that it was a mere coincidence that the demon lord's next target was us. 
If that is the question, you have to first question whether the dungeon is our ally or foe. Though even I cannot be sure, if that were true, then there really wouldn't be anything trustworthy. Of course, it's your choice whether to believe this or not. Regardless, there is bound to be someone who is in need of the dungeon's help. If you can believe us, hear us out. I then told them the conditions of becoming a dungeon explorer. If you can fulfill the three conditions I just mentioned, the rest of Revival and I are more than ready to accept you as a new explorer. I will make this clear. We have no intention of controlling you. You only have to fight against monsters where you are comfortable. As for the world's enemies, I will defeat them. Why haven't you told anyone about such an important matter until now? If you told us about explorers earlier, it would have easier to develop them. Was it so that you could monopolize power? If it's as you say, being a dungeon explorer is a privilege. Isn't obeying you the only way to become one? This is an absolute supremacy in modern society. I wasn't phased by such strikes. When the hall began to get noisy, Ina became annoyed and attempted to emit freezing energy. Of course, Waya immediately stopped and dissuaded her. Right, we couldn't resort to violence. However, if their voices got louder, and they started talking about taking the right to appoint dungeon explorers, things would become extremely annoying. There wouldn't have been a meaning to releasing this information. I breathed in lightly. I closed my eyes, then opened them back up. Immediately, the atmosphere slightly changed. Soon, it changed a lot. What I did was simple. I released succubus pupils, spirit of the tamer, and other skills that increased charm, which I had been suppressing until now. At the same time, I increased overwhelm's power to its peak. Finally, I put just enough strength in my evil eyes so that they wouldn't petrify ordinary people. Charm was related to how one's appearance influenced others. When I released my charm and used overwhelm together, the result was even better. While emanating both charm and fear, I slowly looked around. UK. My God. Is that a human being? His eyes are glowing gold. I slowly spoke. Developing dungeon explorers. Sure, that sounds good. Increasing the number of explorers and the power of humanity. That's excellent, it's exactly what I want. Unfortunately, such a thing wasn't so easy to accomplish. If everyone knew right from wrong, would there be wars? Murders? Crimes? Historically, humans had always rushed to their demise. That would have been true if governments, groups, and individuals' greed wasn't involved. If revival wasn't so strong, would you have listened to us so calmly? No, you would have tried to control us to your bidding. The world's crisis. I doubt you would have even listened. Monster remains, gates, mana stones. The benefits wouldn't have been limited to just these. The hall became completely silent. That's why we needed power. To make everyone listen to us, we had to grow our strengths. Now, we're ready to talk and you're ready to listen. Can you ignore what we're saying now? If we didn't have the strength to back up our claims, would you have paid attention to us? How can you prove that you aren't like that? The man sitting in the front asked with clear articulation. It was Francis S.S. Ranker, Laz Michel. Though it was rather unexpected, it was understandable at the same time. He had certainly said so. That had wait for the day I tell him everything. Now that the time had come, he had flown to Korea to personally find out. Everything you said is right. There's no need to even speak of all the wrongs committed by humans. However, what you're saying only holds weight if your group is different than the other powerful groups. I want to ask. Are you confident in not placing your personal benefits over others' benefits? Will you be able to grant the qualification to become a dungeon explorer fairly? Will you not control them for your goals? They were all good questions. But if there was anyone that could answer his questions honorably, it would be me. I already have everything I want. Political authority. I'm not interested. Plus, if I really wanted political authority, I could easily achieve it without having to deal with this dungeon explorer qualification. After all, I'm already the strongest in the world, and I even have enough money to fill the entire ocean with gold. 
I have many great friends and loving parents, and the world's most beautiful sister and daughter. D. Daughter. While the audience stirred, Ina puffed out her chest proudly, while Yua hid her face slightly embarrassed. Hmm, they really were cute. Michelle, there's no one on earth that can provide me with something I can't achieve myself. So why would I prioritize someone over another? People who idolize me? I don't need them. I hate people like that the most. This is something you should all remember. If you want to become a dungeon explorer, show your real self. If you think we don't have methods of telling, I can only call you foolish. My evil eyes shined with greater brilliance and dyed the entire hall in light. Seeing as how Daisy's eyes were sparkling, she seemed to have understood that I was talking about her. Or perhaps, she was just thinking about what we were going to eat for dinner. As I said, we only have three conditions. Having the ability to climb the dungeon steadily, not using the authority to appoint other dungeon explorers without approval, and not harming others by using your power recklessly. Although we have ways of ensuring that these conditions are met, it is strictly a precautionary method. We do not mean to control you in any way. We will, of course, tell you about these technical details before you can become a dungeon explorer. Simply put, you will be under a special contract. So anyone can become a dungeon explorer. Anyone who doesn't violate our conditions has the qualification to become a dungeon explorer. We are only trying to limit the appointment of new explorers because we cannot allow unvetted, weak, or evil-minded people. As I said before, we do not mean to control or manage you in any way. You can fight for your country, your family, or yourself in your own place, in your own method. Amem. This contract will bind both of our souls. If you still have doubts, I can even add a clause preventing me from interfering in cases where the three conditions are still met. Anyone who violates this contract will have their soul taken. Michel stared at me fixedly on his seat. It seemed he had said what he wanted to say and planned to watch me for now. Of course, other than Michel, no one could challenge the effect of my overwhelm. He'll say it again. We only have two years left. We must put aside humanity's advancement for now and raise our spears and swords against the monsters. Otherwise, rather than advancing, humanity will end up deteriorating, even becoming extinct. Extinct, you say. Revival and all ability users exist precisely to prevent such a thing from happening. If you want to fight against the monsters on the front lines, contact us. We will help you. The press conference ended. The entire world saw and heard me. The truth behind monsters and the existence of the dungeon were revealed to the world. We were now ready to sprint forward without hesitation. Chapter 206 The day we made our announcement, we received endless crude attacks from the press. Some denounced us, saying that what we said about other worlds, explorers, and world's enemies was all made up, while some criticized us for monopolizing what should have been shared among all of humanity. Some also claimed that the dungeon was an enemy no different than the monsters, and that revival was their vanguard. The sheer stupidity in that claim made us speechless. When exposed to something they couldn't understand, people easily denied or dismissed it as false. They wouldn't be convinced unless the world's enemy showed themselves in front of them. Although we showed them how the inventory worked and even showed ourselves going in and out of the dungeon, in the end, it wasn't easy to accept the existence of the dungeon unless they personally saw it. However, there still were people ready to adapt and progress. These were the people who applied to become explorers. Not to mention, there were more than just a small number. Waya glanced over the computer screen and spoke with a smile. Shin, we're being flooded with applications. I wouldn't be surprised if there are over a million. On TV, there were reports denouncing our claims as make-believe and untrustworthy. It was truly laughable. I retorted with a chuckle. We already decided anyways. The applicants we accept have to be at least S rank. That's the best way for the explorer count will gain momentum. I know. Out of all the applicants, only five people meet that requirement. Still, so many people applied. With that, Waya pressed a button and wiped the list clean. Immediately afterwards, the printer started spewing out five applications. She came over to hand them to me, 
but realizing that my hands were full, she made a wry smile and spread her arms out. Ina, come to mommy. Un. Ina, who was in my embrace, made a small nod and went over to Waya. Although I couldn't compare her to my nine-year-old self who was busy brandishing a wooden spear in the Amazon jungle, Ina liked to act spoiled too much. It was most likely because she lost her parents at a young age. Though I was happy to spoil her, as I couldn't let her become a spoiled teenager, I'd have to fix her man. Manners. No, but it's cute, so it's fine. Ina's smart, so I'm sure she'll fix it on her own when she grows up. Once she gets a boyfriend, it'll kill. I mean, she'll distance herself from mommy and daddy. Hmm. There are two SS rankers. I recognize Laz Michelle, but. Who's this woman? She's a Turkish ability user that recently became a SS ranker. I think she had a healing ability. Healing ability? Became a SS ranker. Doesn't that mean her ability evolved? Feeling a bit surprised, I looked at her profile page. She was rather young and quite beautiful. Although I expected her to be brown, she looked Caucasian. Apparently, most Turkish people were like that. Mm, -hmm, Turkish, how pretty. Sheen. And nothing. I was just wondering why all high-ranking ability users were so beautiful, like you and Ina. And this woman? Why you're more beautiful of course. I'll take it for now, but I'm confiscating this. Ina. Un. At Waya's command, Ina reached out and took the application from my hand. The two of them then began to give their impression of the healing ability user. What, she's not even that pretty. Her skin isn't that white, her eyes aren't that big, her nose isn't that high, and her breasts aren't that big. Her clothes are worn. I don't like her earrings. Her hair is old-fashioned. I don't like how she looks so naive. She's short, too. Ina, who's prettier? This woman or mommy? Mommy is a lot prettier. Ina is beautiful too. Like I said, you're both beautiful. I took my eyes off the two who were rubbing their cheeks against each other and examined the other four profiles. I first looked at Laz Michaels. His ability being re-evaluated to SS rank was especially eye-catching. He wants to join Revival. Why uh, I'm okay with it. That oldie has manners and is sensible. Who knows, maybe he can give us advice when things aren't going well. I'm okay with it too, but we should talk to everyone about it first. Let's make him our first contractor. He's an SS ranker, and if he joins Revival, well gain credibility. Her too. Who? Waya lightly eyed Ina, and she handed me the paper she had crumpled up. It was the Turkish healer's application. She wants to join Revival. Eh. Turkey will let her go. It's not like you have to abandon your country to join Revival. She can just join us for event dungeons or event raids as part of Revival without being tied to her country. It's the same thing if she can't prioritize her country. Of course, he'll prioritize helping the countries of Revival's members, but... Ah, uh, I see. She had a healing ability. In other words, even if she was an SS ranker, she had no ways to attack. Not everyone could be like Ludia who could both attack, buff, and heal by coming to Earth and receiving the power of Earth. Interesting. I murmured and curled the corner of my mouth up. With her joining Revival, Turkey can borrow our strength for event dungeons or event raids they can't handle. That's quite smart. Her name was Aleda Van. She was 26 this year, a university graduate, and an active ability user. Apparently, her ability was still growing. She was quite outstanding. Of course, Revival already had an excellent healer, Ludia. However, it didn't hurt to have another healer, especially a high-ranking one. Who knew? Maybe there were some things only she could do. If she's joining us for her country, she might not feel as committed. But I'm sure she'll do her share of work. All right, let's accept her. HM, daddy's being smart for once. Right, Ina? Daddy's always smart. Ina's the only one that knows me. Come here. I decided to look at the remaining applications later, and received Ina from Waya's arms. 
Ina laughed innocently as she played with my cheeks. She really was cute. I became more certain that I didn't need to fix her manners. Ina was important, of course, but I didn't delay the explorers because of her. If we were going to accept the two SS rankers today, we wouldn't have time for others. As we decided to accept Laz Michel and Aleda Van as Revival's members, we had to see them in person. Without me having to do anything, Waya was already calling them. She truly was a reliable vice guild master. At that moment, a woman's voice rang out from behind. Oh, this is the perfect family. I'm surprised you haven't had your wedding yet. Mom. Don't come out of nowhere. Waya, who was in the middle of calling someone, dropped her phone and screamed. The woman that appeared in the living room ignored Waya and put the plate of fruits she was holding onto the table with a bright smile. She looked like how Waya would look in ten years. Although her beauty and youth made it seem as if she was only in her early thirties, she was undoubtedly Waya's mother. So, son, when's the wedding? Um. Mother, you see. Didn't I explain when I first met her? The questions from Waya's mother, Lana, made me sweat. When Waya suggested that it was rude not saying hello when I left Ina with her all the time, I agreed and came to visit Waya's home. However, I didn't think Waya's mother would like asking so many tough questions. My, with how you appeared on TV, I thought you were full of experience, but you're quite innocent. I didn't know this was your type, Waya. Didn't you like guys that played around when you went to school? Mom. My, look at you getting all mad. Ina's going to learn bad things, right, Ina? Mommy is nice. She's just being shy. Ah, uh, siding with mommy? I smiled and patted Ina. Waya seemed to have given up on calling, as she sent text messages somewhere, then sat down next to me. You said you'd make lunch for us, right? Hurry up. We have to go soon. Tell me, what do you like about son-in-law? Between Alan and him, who would you choose? Mom, stop. But my daughter is dating the world's most famous man, I'm jealous. How can I not? Devil, there's a devil here. I hugged Ina and shuddered. Unlike her gentle appearance, Waya's mother loved joking. I told myself to remember it at all costs. After eating the excellent Korean food she cooked for us, I circulated per Yuta circuit and warmed up my body. When I got up, Waya who was playing with Ina tilted her head and asked. Where are you going, Shin? We have to meet them in two hours. Two hours is enough to climb the 64th floor. It'll be right back. You only need two hours to climb a floor. Are you really human? I've been wondering about that recently, but it looks like I'm human. There are still people stronger than me in the dungeon. Well, you're only level 64. Hugh, never mind. Also, I should be able to enter the first dungeon in a few days too. I'm at the end of the 79th floor now. Although Waya spoke like it was nothing, it was a truly outstanding achievement. When she became a first dungeon explorer. Though she would become weaker for now, she would be able to become much stronger in the long run. She would also get the opportunity to become a beyond explorer. Congrats, Waya. Good job. Once I defeat the first dungeon's 50th floor master and obtain dimensional travel, I won't need to send you off to other worlds alone anymore. Right. Were you thinking about that the whole time? Humph, I have to watch out for Daisy too. Right now, she's the only one that can follow you to dimensional mercenary missions. It makes me jealous. If Daisy's interested in me, it's probably just my corpse, so don't worry. That makes it sound like I'm worried that someone will steal you from me. I might be jealous, but I never even considered you being stolen by someone. Got it? I nodded with a wry smile at Waya's temperamental shout. Really, I had to at least praise her heaven-piercing confidence. Suddenly, Waya lowered her voice and spoke quietly. They also. What mom said before. Alan is just a friend I used to know when I was a kid, so don't worry. T there's really nothing more. Yeah, I know she was just joking. I don't mind. I thought I gave a 10 out of 10 reply, but Waya frowned and shouted as if I said something unpleasant. You should mind it at least a little. 
how can you not care at all when another guy's name came up? Do you want me to mind it or not? Really, women were as annoying as they were lovable. Chapter, 207 From the 61st floor, bat-type monsters started to appear. Although the dungeon never made sense in terms of what monsters showed up, bats were still completely outside of my expectation. I certainly couldn't be blamed for thinking that they'd just be too weak. Of course, they weren't the small bats found on Earth. They were giant bats with blade-like claws and razor-sharp wings that shot out auras. Their high agility and attack power made them more difficult than I imagined. From the 63rd floor, blood-sucking bats appeared. As they constantly tried to stab their fangs between my armor gaps, I grew more and more irritated. If I could meet their eyes, I was confident I could petrify them. Unfortunately, unless I used divine speed, they could move faster than I could turn my head. In most situations, I just used Sharana's power and cut the ones blocking my path as I rushed forward. That said, when they shot blade-like auras or tried to bite my neck, I couldn't help but flinch slightly. Though I looked down on them, thinking that the dungeon had run out of its repertoire, that wasn't it at all. In fact, it was much harder than the 59th floor, which had both golems and mimics. Regardless, the first dungeon was no longer a place that could make me invest more than a few hours. By now, I realized that I had long surpassed the standard of the first dungeon. Although it wasn't a walk in the park, it was still smooth sailing. If I were troubled by this much, I would be too embarrassed to raise my head in front of my guild members. Unlike the bats, giant ghouls, which started appearing from beyond's eleventh floor, were powerful and tough, albeit extremely slow. As a result, I ended up fighting agile enemies in the first dungeon, and slow and tough enemies in beyond. With giant ghouls using diehard when their HP got low, I learned to estimate my opponent's remaining HP and to deal an instant kill final blow. However, when I reached Beyond's 13th floor after sailing through the first dungeon and Beyond's previous floors, I finally ran into a troublesome situation. A countless number of skeleton knights had appeared on top of their skeleton mounts. On the 30th floor, they had commanded their skeleton armies rather than showing off their own strength. In Beyond, however, they were obviously different. When there was only one knight, he would lead the army as its commander, but when there was a swarm of knights, their destructive power would become their main force. Kill the living human. Destroy his brain and burst his heart. Cool. Charge. Charge. Lead him to death. The army of skeleton knights wiped all traces of smiles off my face. When they used Undead Roar, which decreased all living beings' speed to 5%, I was helpless. I could only be thankful that Undead Roar didn't stack like Orc Lord's Warcry. I didn't even want to imagine what my speed is like decreased further. Human, give me your head. Like I will. Divine speed. When Undead Roar hit me, there were only three things I could do. First, I could use divine speed to recover my speed to half, then dodge their charges. Second, I could use dragon skin and endure their attacks for the duration. Third, I could use frozen roar to nullify undead roar. Once I got used to them, I learned to shoot bolts imbued with explosive magic to prevent them from screaming. Sharana, Ruyue, and Pika also helped to shut them up. Without undead roar, the skeleton knights weren't so terrible. What was more dreadful was the special field property of Beyond's 13th floor. When I dodged the skeleton knight's charge, they continued all the way until they hit the wall. The moment they collided, however, they split into two. In other words, when they charged toward me, I had to face them directly. Otherwise, they only grew in numbers. Just out of curiosity, I tried colliding into the wall too. As expected, I didn't split, and only my nose hurt. As I said before, I was able to break through Beyond's thirteenth floor within four days. Although I almost died a few times, as I had already gotten used to such situations, I didn't flinch at all. But when I thought about it more seriously, dying even once and beyond meant that I would be throwing away a month's worth of time. With how close Earth was to ruin, I couldn't help but shudder at the thought. With the thirteenth floor being how it was, I was worried what combination of giant ghouls and skeleton knights would greet me on the fourteenth floor. Of course, before that, 
breaking through the first dungeon 64th floor was first. Loretta repeatedly told me to be extra careful on the 64th floor, but I knew she was worrying about me too much recently. It seemed she hasn't fully understood my capabilities yet. As I had the confidence to instantly cut down bats that were twice as strong as the ones on the 63rd floor, I brushed aside her worries and climbed up to the 64th floor. That happened last night. Today, I planned on fully breaking through the 64th floor along with Latte. Phew, let's get these bat level over with and go greet the new members eh? The 64th floor had a completely different atmosphere than the 63rd floor. More specifically, the pathway was narrower and even the color seemed different. It was the type of grim atmosphere that made one's heart thump. I can't calm down. Latte, who was in her human form, expressed her displeasure. With a bitter smile, I replied. It looks like this place is causing some mental status effect. I guess it isn't too strange. It's the first dungeon after all. Hero, I can't stay here any longer. Although I thought Latte could easily endure feeling slightly uncomfortable, Latte reacted strongly. Her cheeks were flushed. What's wrong, Latte? Are you okay? Hero, don't come close. Rather, take me to the residential area, no, the resort area now. Why yeah, got it. Hurry. If I stay here any longer, you'll end up pouncing on Hero. What? Is it a magic that causes hostility between allies? Damn, it's a trap for parties. Let's hurry back. I grabbed Lottie's arm to take her to the residential area. However, in the next moment, she took hold of my other arm. With a feeling of uneasiness sweeping over me, I looked up. Lottie's pupils were slightly loose. I can't hold on any longer, hero. Forgive me. Forgive you. For what? Female wyverns become three times stronger when they're mating be careful so that your bones don't break. Mating. The moment I heard that word, I acted extremely swiftly. I immediately used divine speed, grabbed Latte, and rushed to the resort area. Afterwards, in case the effect still lingered, I put her down and distanced myself. All these had only taken three seconds. Ha! Huh. H hero. Latte, are you okay? Latte looked around with a blank expression as if she had just woken up from sleep. As she looked okay, I started walking up to her. Once Latte saw me, she nodded in relief and spoke. I'm fine, so let's hurry back to the dungeon, hero. You're not fine at all. I immediately halted and went back about a hundred steps. Latte smacked her lips as if it was a shame. If I wasn't afraid of monsters that would attack us when we let our guard down, I would have done it there. I'm a human, and you're a wyvern. What are you talking about, hero? No matter what seed I accept, I can give birth to a wyvern, so don't worry. That makes me worry even more. But I chose hero and abandoned all wyverns. So hero has to take responsibility and guarantee that I leave behind my offspring. Let's talk about this later, okay? It seemed I needed to find a strong and cool male wyvern. I threw Latte in the resort area and quickly returned to the dungeon. Of course, I didn't forget to run back to the 63rd floor shop and flick Loretta's forehead. You should have told me there was a trap like this. Loretta rubbed her forehead and retorted as if she had been wronged. But it's normally forbidden for us to say anything about the next floor. It's the customer's responsibility to check if there are new items in the floor shop and to prepare for the next floor. Because I've been favoring Shin Nim recently, other administrative guild masters are watching with their eyes open it's not like I wanted to put Shin Nim's chastity at risk. Loretta was tearing up. Now that she mentioned it, she was right. It was just that I had gotten too used to Loretta taking care of me on her own. I'd forgotten to do what explorers were supposed to do. It was my fault. I lowered my head. Sorry, it's all my fault. I've just been too used to Loretta taking care of me. He'll be sure to check things over at the floor shops from now. And if Loretta wants a reward for all the trouble I caused. Loretta immediately rejoiced, as she silently shifted her hair and pushed her cheeks toward me. Her long ears were happily flapping as if they were doing jumping ropes. Loretta sure was cute. After giving her a reward, 
I climbed back up to the 64th floor after obtaining all necessary information. It turned out that the 64th floor had succubi. I immediately remembered the blood succubus that had almost killed me. The moment I stepped into the 64th floor, there was an attempt at charm magic. Immediately afterward, more succubi arrived, using charm magic while displaying their alluring bodies. It seemed Latte and I escaped last time before they managed to come. Handsome human. Come to me. Such brilliant man alight. What a lovable human. Of course, with absolute soul, neither the floor's charming property nor the succubi's magic could affect me. If they did work, the extent would only be making them look slightly more attractive. In other words, I didn't need charm resistance items at all. I didn't need to bring Latte here in the first place. That said, the succubi on the 64th floor weren't as weak as blood succubus. When they realized their charm had no effect, they attacked me in various ways. They could use strong status effect magic and had a passive magic that absorbed their enemy's mana and health. They were skilled in elemental magic, and could even attack physically with their nails that elongated. Charm doesn't work. Let's take him by force. As if he'll let you. In the past, I would have had trouble with a group of highly intelligent enemies attacking me. No matter how good my armor was or how strong my attacks were, I couldn't beat dozens or hundreds of enemies without being hurt. However, that was in the past. Look at my eyes. Kayak, his eyes. The evil eyes. The succubi all turned to stone. The evil eyes of petrification were finally showing their strength. The 56th through 60th floor had monsters that didn't have eyes, so I couldn't use them well. In beyond, they could only slow down the giant ghouls or skeleton knights. I was happy to finally see evil eyes doing so well. Though I had to pour mana into the evil eyes to break through the succubi's high mana resistance, that wasn't a problem at all. Once the succubi turned into stone, they easily crumbled with a single crossbow bolt. As I charged through the 64th floor like a tank, I petrified all succubi and shattered them. Regardless of what they tried, they were all useless. Come here, girls. Kayak. Everyone run. That man is a rose bearing poison. Come. You use provoke. All enemies attack you reluctantly. And my body is acting on its own. No. As more and more succubi screamed unable to resist me, I began to feel weird. It was almost as if I was the bad guy. Well, I'm sure I'm just imagining it. Just like that, I broke through the 64th floor in 40 minutes. When I asked father later, he said he continuously recited the army's Buddhist Heart Sutra and broke through in four days. As I hadn't gone to the army to learn the Buddhist Heart Sutra, I was glad that I had the evil eyes. Chapter, 208 With Beyond's 14th floor in front of me, I left the dungeon and joined Wyatt to greet Aleda Van and Laz Michel. Though we gained much attention, neither Wyatt nor me cared much for it. I bought a building in Seoul to use as our guild house. That's a good idea. We can't only meet at the residential area after all. By the way, where's Ina? In the dungeon. Kids have to go out and play after eating. Makes sense. 51st floor was where giant monsters appeared, and they were nowhere close enough to threatening Ina. I became a bit sad, thinking my daughter might surpass me, but that was my fate as a Beyond Explorer. No, perhaps, Ina might enter Beyond too. With her skills, she could certainly get a god's true name and meet the requirements. We're here. Here. We're overflowing with money anyways. Unlike the houses we saw on our way here, in front of us was a huge and modern mansion. It was as if someone had bought the nearby land, tore down the old buildings, and built a new one. Although we were in a quiet residential area, the center of traffic was only ten minutes away. A land like this must have cost an astronomical no, let's stop there. The building seemed to be made from poison wax bee saliva and blue stone golems mana rich body parts. With these materials, ordinary explosions and monster attacks wasn't able to shake the building in the slightest. It also had a garden. While it wasn't big compared to the size of the building, it was still big enough for Ina to run around and play. 
when I was looking at the entrance to the mansion with a stupefied expression, why I muttered with a hint of playfulness. It's part of my dowry. Pfft. In kidding, geez. I can't laugh at your jokes lately. Let's go in. There were already guests in the mansion. Leon, Samire, Sophie, Ren, Labique, and other members of Revival were all present. It wasn't that strange since we had our press conference only yesterday and no one had a reason to leave Korea. After greeting them, I finally realized. Oh, I see. Are we having a welcoming party for the new members? That's why everyone's here, right? Yep. I was about to tell you about it, but you just rushed into the dungeon. We could have done it at our guild house in the dungeon, so why on earth? Seeing my curious gaze, why I responded with a grin. It's to show off a bit. We're currently in the world's center of attention, so we should emphasize us all being together in one place. Marianas Garden is nice, but people won't know what we're doing or where we are. You're right. Today is a day to celebrate the guild's expansion, but showing off our appearance might be just as important. It seemed they weren't the only ones here. As proof, Alpha flew into my embrace. Yua then popped out from behind her and quickly dragged her back. From how swiftly she moved, I could tell how much Yua grew. My sister was growing unbeknownst to me. Laz Michelle and Elada Van are going to arrive soon. Stop making that stupid face and get ready to greet out guests. Right. While other members were busy preparing for the welcoming party, Father and Walker were drinking without helping out. I could see Yua chastising him even from where I was standing. Oh, it seemed Leon had joined them too. Right, Leon liked drinking too really, Ren was the only proper man here. I know you want to join them, but stop fidgeting so much. Sorry. I wasn't a proper man either. When we finished setting everything up including the two soul contracts and finished checking over everything, we heard knocks on the door. Shin Nim, Uni, they're here. Let them in. Although we would order outsiders around for external affairs, we decided not to let outsiders handle any internal affairs. As such, Samire was working as Waya's secretary. Although it was fine for now, as the number of explorers grew, we would have to deal with outside organizations. We needed to find a solution. In any case, Samayer opened the door, and two people came inside the reception room. The first one to enter was Turkey's healing ability user, Elada Van. She looked like she was the same age as Waya. At the same time, she was shorter than Waya, had smaller breasts, and had smaller eyes. Regardless, she had good style and looked like an innocent beauty. The second to enter was Laz Michel, who I had gotten somewhat used to seeing by now. When he saw me, he raised his hand and greeted me. Nice to see you again. It's only been a day. Did you stay in Seoul? Yep. The hotels here are quite nice. Samire then led them to their seats. This was our first time meeting Elada Van. Although I thought about greeting her to create a more relaxing atmosphere, I decided to leave that to Waya, who was sitting next to me with her eyes on fire. After greeting the two important guests, I handed them the contracts. I assume you already know about Revival's purpose. Joining Revival means that you will join us in our fight against the world's enemies. Is that fine with the both of you? In truth, when I first created Revival, I only thought about fighting them on my own. The only reason Revival was created was to give Lydia and Shuna a place to stay. But after the event dungeons we cleared together, I thought that it would be best for Earth's explorers to come together. That was when Revival was truly created. Now that we were together, we had but one goal. It was to fight the world's enemies. We knew the reason for the dungeon's existence and the reason for monsters appearing on Earth. We had to fight, not for anyone else, but for ourselves, our families, and our friends. As for Daisy, Ren, and Labique, they were cooperating with us to save their own worlds. It went without saying that they were just as desperate as the rest of Revival's members. Laz Michel nodded resolutely. I wouldn't have come otherwise. I decided to put my trust in you, so it's only obvious that I lend you my strength. The world's enemy, two of them, you said. If we have to fight such terrifying foes soon, we'll have to hurry. 
It's the same for me. The Turkish government also agrees with me. If my ability can help protect our world, I would be happy to contribute. Elada Van spoke with a clear voice as she stared straight into my eyes. Waya pushed her face next to mine and made a threatening hiss, but I pushed her face away slightly. Are you a snake? Great. Read over the contract and sign it. Once that's done, you'll be a member of Revival. As Ina had become a gold rank explorer recently, Elada Van and Laz Michel became first dungeon explorers using her appointments. For the record, I had used my appointments for Yiyun and Aina, so I didn't have any left. As for Waya, she was still in the second dungeon. It would be a waste to make SS rankers into second dungeon explorers only. Leon. Leon would surely climb the second dungeon as if his life was on the line. Once the contract was signed and Aina appointed them as explorers, I reached my hand out to Laz Michel. I'm looking forward to working with you, Michel. With this, you won't be able to run away. I'm looking forward to working with you too, Shin. You won't regret taking me in. Of course, Waya was in charge of Elada Van. As they say, a monarch only walks on royal road. There was no need to take a single step in a place that was clearly filled with mines. It doesn't really feel real yet. I'll have to see this dungeon for myself. I feel the same way. You said we should climb together right? It was impossible to climb the dungeon with just a healing ability. As such, we told her to climb the dungeon with Michel. Of course, we didn't forget to tell Michel to fight floor masters on his own first before challenging them together. That way, he'll be able to get the solo kill titles. More importantly. Ah, uh, wait. You guys must be dying to go, but wait a bit longer. We have a welcoming party planned for our new members, you see. It was understandable that they'd want to jump right into the dungeon, but the party we planned painstakingly would then be ruined. Though, this party would most likely end up devolving to a drinking party. I love parties. Ichim, you're right. I see some faces I haven't seen before, so I guess I should take some time to get to know them. They seemed interested as well. I smiled and got up from my seat. Just when I was trying to act cool, Ina jumped on my back and ruined everything. Elada Van asked with widened eyes. Did you two know each other from before? She's my daughter. Daughter. Seeing me answer without any hesitation, Wyatt gave me a thumbs up. I understood from her reaction. Once I said I had a daughter, I could stop other women from making advances on me. Boo, melting tuna. Right. Today's main dish was the melting tuna. Yua had already taken everything I had left of the giant melting tuna this morning. Tuna sashimi, tuna steak, tuna salad father, walker, and Leon were already digging in impatiently, but there was nothing to worry about as we had enough to fill the bellies of thirty more people. Great, I love sashimi. Oh, you know what you're talking about. How old are you by the way? Father, who quickly grew close with whoever shared his love for food and alcohol, approached Laz Michel with a smile. A jushi. Waya suddenly shouted and snatched the soju bottle away from father's hand. How can you start drinking when everyone isn't here yet? Your son is the main host too. Why you almost ruptured my eardrums, daughter. Didn't I tell you to act with poise in official settings? You can't make the guild master look bad. I know, but this could hardly be called an official. Then were you planning on undermining Shin's authority in front of the new members? If you go too far, it'll tell Mrs. Kong. Hook. Father instantly flinched back. After subjugating father, Wyatt gave Walker and Leon a terrifying glare. Like a slug that had been peppered with salt, the two of them shrunk back. After that, Waya slammed the soju bottle down on the table and spoke. The party starts now. Everyone, give the new members a round of applause. Uni is really energetic. W. Watt a cool woman. Waya instantly gained control over the somewhat disordered atmosphere and whipped it to shape. Everyone began clapping as to not provoke Waya's wrath. The claps then became more natural and everyone greeted Michelle and Van. The two of them also greeted each of Revival's members. I don't know much about the dungeon. Please take good care of me. 
I'll try my best to be of help to everyone. It's a pleasure to work with you. All right, Shin, it's time for your opening address. It seemed Waya was a bit worked up. I put down Ina who was hanging by my neck, took up the soju bottle like a mic and spoke. As I said before, today we received two new members Laz Michelle, a body reinforcement ability user, and the healer Elada Van, who will protect everyone along with Lydia. Healer. Lydia looked at Van with a slightly surprised expression. I'm sure we have our own reasons for joining Revival. However, we have the same purpose. That is to protect the place we belong. I put the soju bottle down on the table lightly. It's only the beginning. With what happened yesterday, more changes will come and we will be in the center of it all. I'm sure we'll get busy almost to the point of death, but we'll surely gain something from it. That's enough, Crown Prince. I like your honesty, son. I'm happy with being able to help Appa. Trustworthy. Guild Master, pass. That was enough of seriousness. I grinned and took up the soju bottle again. Everyone's gazes fell on the bottle. Then for today, let's drink. Forget welcoming party, let's drink when we can. Cheers. Who? Cheers. Shin. My preparations. Mommy, can I drink too? No, Ina. That day, no one could enter the dungeon sober. Chapter, 209. The next day, Revival's members returned to where they belonged. Leon returned to America, Sophie returned to Britain, and Michelle returned to France. However, Samire and Van said they would remain in Korea. I want to stay and help Uni more. Also, I want to more seriously learn martial arts from Shin Nim. But Samire. Take good care of me. Apparently, Samire was living by herself as both her parents passed away. As such, there was no problem deciding where she would stay. As people from her country practically worshipped her, it seemed she was somewhat reluctant to go back. As for Elada Van, I was genuinely surprised that she wanted to remain in Korea. After all, Turkey was certain to have problems where her power could be of help. At our reaction, she spoke as she nodded her head. When I left Turkey, I already told them that I would not be coming back. Since I'll have to focus on climbing the dungeon, I won't have time to deal with other affairs. Mm -hmm. Please accept me. I'll serve you faithfully. No, you don't need to serve me at all. It was then decided that she would be living in our guild house mansion. We would need someone to stay here after all. After we saw Elada Van enter the dungeon after contacting Laz Michel, we each went back to our work. I, of course, had to continue what I left off yesterday choosing new explorers. Then, when I was looking at the documents Wyatt printed that included new applications since yesterday, someone sat down next to me. Thinking it was Alpha, I turned my head to the side. There, I saw Lydia. Lydia? You know how you picked a new healing ability user? Yeah, didn't I tell you about it? I was in the dungeon, so I didn't hear you well. Um, you know Shin. A hint of uneasiness lingered on Lydia's eyes. I looked at Waya. She shrugged, gesturing that she didn't know what was going on. What's up? I'm doing my best. It'll be gold rank soon too. Be because you said not to stick to you so much, I'm stopping myself from going in your room. Because you said not to fight, I'm not doing anything even with more girls joining in. So don't throw me away, Ak. After flicking her forehead once, I did it three more times. Lydia looked at me with teary eyes. You hit me. It'll hit you more if you keep saying stupid things. Throw you away. Do you think you're trash? It's better to have two healers than one. You at least know what one one is right. Then you want throw me awa ow. What am I going to do with this girl? I thought she had gotten better since she had stopped being reliant on me physically, but it seemed that wasn't the case. As I sighed, Waya spoke instead of Lydia. Lydia's just worried that she's not being of help to you. At Waya words, Lydia glared at her with malice. What do you know? We like the same guy. Isn't that enough to know each other? I I don't like him. I just can't live without Shin. Yeah, yeah. 
If you want to say something, you can say it over a drink later. If you stay here, it's going to hinder our work, so leave. Eek, why a Mastiford? Why is telekinetic magic slowly pushed Lydia out of the room? Lydia tried to use her power, but she soon suppressed it, seemingly afraid that she'd destroy the mansion. In the end, she was chased out as she screamed. Yeun, Walker, Yua, Father, and others who were peeking in were also pushed out like bowling pins by Waya's magic power. I didn't know why they were watching us so curiously. To lighten up the awkward atmosphere, I purposely laughed aloud. Ha ha ha, it's great that everyone's so merry. Go back to work, Guildmaster. Yes, ma'am. That day, we chose four new explorers. They were all S ranks, and as we thought that they had potential, we made them all first dungeon explorers. Although we were slowly using up our appointments, with the four new explorers working hard, we would be able to recover them soon. It was also why we prioritized picking high ranked explorers. Once we met them and had them sign the contracts, I finally found the time to enter the dungeon again. Beyond's 14th floor. It was hell where giant ghouls and skeleton knights appeared together. Human your delicious smell is tickling my nose. Cut him to shreds. Kill all living be kohuk. The moment I ran into them, I crazily shot my crossbow bolts. Pika and Ryue were floating around me. Sharana was currently infused into my body. Stop the skeleton knight. Prevent them from opening their mouths. That's easy. Leave it to me, Shin. Ryu's freezing energy filled the area while Pika's lightning quickly ravaged our enemies. At the same time, I charged through all the enemies and shot my bolts crazily. The target was the skeleton knight's skulls and the skeleton mount's legs. It would be my victory as long as I could stop their screams and charge. Human. Elemental blade. And no. I got on Aga Uuk. We. Countless number of elementals flooded toward me, and I swung the spear blade that had extended beyond 10 meters, instantly severing the legs of the skeleton mounts running toward me. Critical hits broke out, and with Skull Breaker's effect, the damage extended to their entire bodies. I didn't even need to describe what happened to the skeleton knights riding on them. Goo. At that moment, a giant ghoul roared and swung its claws, as if to protect the skeleton knight squadron that had lost its formation. I boldly jumped into the fray and shouted. Ruyue. Winter Curtain. The giant ghoul's claws were slowed by the numerous ice crystals fluttering in the air. I smirked and jumped on top of its arm. I compressed the elemental blade and instantly re-expended it to penetrate the giant ghoul's head. However, an undead monster wouldn't die from just having its head pierced. If you want to win against me, you'll need to come by the hundreds. In the next moment, I jumped off the arm and slashed down with my spear. After splitting its head into two, the elemental blade continued down to its body, causing an explosion. Before Die Hard could even activate, I had crushed it. The giant ghoul's corpse disappeared, and I could once again see the skeleton knights that had readied themselves to charge forward once again. Giant ghouls as defense, skeleton knights as offense. It made sense. Unfortunately, that's not enough. Wind King's Rage before they could charge toward me, I charged toward them first. Though they raised their heads to use undead roar, Pika and Ryue didn't let that happen. Both ice and lightning were specialized in stopping the enemy's movements. With the two of them working together, not even skeleton knights could anything about it. Hap. The first skeleton knight I ran into made a silent scream as it was sent flying. This was only the beginning. As they had been preparing to charge together, they were all grouped. Since I couldn't use Wind King's Rage for three hours once it was fully charged, I had to kill as many of them as I could. Come. It'll crush you all. You use Provoke. All enemies attack you uncontrollably. Qua. Kill him. Kill him. Divine Speed. When they raised their weapons, I used Divine Speed. It went without saying that the faster I was, the more damage I dealt. One, two, three each time a skeleton knight was sent flying, the speed they flew and the distance they covered increased. All the skeleton mounts had already became dust. 
This continued until not a single one of them remained with their feet on the ground. As I had been pushing them to a single spot, they were all piled on top of each other. Powerful human. How? It's only a single human. If I wasn't strong, would I be here? There were over forty skeleton knights clumped together. I could tell how many skeleton knights were filling up a single passageway. The power of wind and lightning gathered by Wind King's rage was ready to go berserk. I charged into the mountain of bones made of skeleton knights and let it explode. Hasta la vista. Critical hit. They were thoroughly annihilated. Hugh, Hugh. They turned to particles of light and scattered into the air, brightening up the slightly dark passageway. I stabbed my spear into the ground to catch my breath. I had managed to finish them without being hit a single time. Hugh that was easier than I thought. I did well, right? Hoo hoo, how was it, master? You guys are the best. I smiled and complimented the two elementals that flew next to me. Without their help in stopping the skeleton knights from using undead roar, it would have been difficult for me to defeat them. However, I had an effective way of stopping them from using undead roar. With that, I had no problem getting through this area. The key was preventing them from using undead roar and crushing the skeleton mount's legs. Just with these, their strength would practically be halved. Although the giant ghouls acting as their shields were annoying, Beyond's 14th floor was more or less a breeze. I was looking forward to who was waiting for me on the 15th floor. Ghoul plus skeleton. Isn't that just a ghoul with bones? I laughed, imagining a monster that easily tripped on its own bones. Of course, when I thought about the thunder power knight that appeared on the 10th floor, I knew that probably wouldn't be the case. Hopefully, another skill of that type drops. It feels a bit lacking to use skill synthesis with just two skills. I thought about the skills I received from Beyond's 10th floor boss and the first dungeon's 60th floor master and smirked. I was a bit worried that I had gotten too addicted to skill synthesis, but I couldn't help looking forward to the outcome. I raised the spear back up as I felt full of strength once more. Let's go, guys. We're going to breeze through it. I successfully broke through Beyond 14th floor in just two days. Just by being full of fighting spirit, a person could do so much. When I left Beyond and returned to Earth, marveling at the infinite potential of humans, Waya gave me a report. Two explorers died. Humans really did have infinite potential. Chapter, 210 As I had just taken off my shirt to go take a shower, I looked back at Waya in an awkward state. What? Why did they suddenly die? They were contracted to me. Contract? You mean? I asked her, dumbfounded. You mean they died because they went against the contract? Yeah. I put my familiars on the rankers we took in. As you see. You can put familiars on them without being discovered. I got some help from dungeon items. It's not like the dungeon only has battle-related items. Sorry, I only got battle-related items. While I murmured inwardly, Waya's finger danced in the air, and took out a small ball from her inventory. It was then that I suddenly remembered something. Why are you in my room? Your mom let me in. By the way, you're not really engaged to Lydia, right? She was cooking in the kitchen. Don't ask that while you're making fireballs. The answer is no. Also, stop staring at me like it's normal. What? Didn't you build your body to show off to girls? It's not like you're losing anything by showing me some muscles. I naturally became like this while training. I hurriedly summoned Ryue and cleaned myself of sweat and dust. While I was at it, I put on fresh clothes as well. Although I didn't like cleaning myself like this, as taking a shower was more refreshing, I couldn't stay topless with Waya staring at me. Waya smacked her lips seeing me put on my clothes. She then fiddled with the ball she took out, making it enlarged to the size of a soccer ball. In it, we could see a video. It was like a magical crystal ball. It's just a device that links to familiar's eyes. I can just link my eyes to theirs, but I don't like it because it makes me dizzy. And I won't be able to see it either. In the crystal ball, one of the new explorers we chose appeared. He was talking with another person. 
that's another ranker from his country. So the part of the contract he violated is. Everything happened incredibly fast. When the explorer reached out to put his hand on the ranker, strength left his body and he collapsed. The frightened ranker screamed. The view then changed to the other explorer. It was the same with him. They had both met the same death in the same way. Because of them, all I got were two items called soul crystals. It's gross, really. I feel you. I was dumbfounded. They didn't believe us even after all that. Did they think the contract was just a piece of paper? I thought we took the necessary care to prevent such a thing from happening so that we could steadily increase the number of explorers. It seemed I didn't put enough faith in people's ability to be stupid. Hugh. If this happens a few more times, Earth's forces will. Maybe, we should just give up on the soul contract. No, Shin. Waya shook her head. We only asked one thing from them. To not make explorers without permission. What do you think they were trying to do by going against us? It's simple. They were trying to create their own group of dungeon explorers to decrease our power. If we give up on soul contracts now, it's going to become a total mess. Think of how troublesome it's going to be when hundreds or even thousands of dungeon explorers are going against us. Then, the problem won't just be saving Earth. Be firm. They simply paid the price. Waya was right. If they couldn't keep such a simple condition, it meant they didn't care about dungeon explorers' duty in the first place. Even though we explained to them so thoroughly, they were still more concerned with playing Monopoly. To be frank, I was disgusted. I gritted my teeth and closed my eyes for a moment before opening them back up. Then, I asked Waya who was staring at me fixedly. Where were they from? Germany and Britain. From now on, we won't. Britain. I paused for a moment and fell into silence. Waya then continued where I left off. We won't choose explorers from Germany or Britain from now on. Wait, Waya. I decided within my authority as the vice guild master. Hey. When I burst out, Waya pushed her face into mine and said threateningly. It's fine. As long as we take care of the world's enemies, there won't be any problem. Or what, are you not satisfied with just this? Are you going to attack Britain? No, that's not it, but Britain is still the country you were born in. I know you want to protect. I already fulfilled my duty by including them in the first wave of appointments. It's them who betrayed me. Just do as I say. She took the crystal ball again and stuffed it in her inventory. Then, she snorted. Let's go eat now. When you're angry, you have to fill your belly. Yeah, sure. That day, we revealed the video to the world and announced that we wouldn't take explorers from Germany and Britain. That also meant that explorers we appointed couldn't appoint new explorers from those countries. With this, people of Germany and Britain couldn't become dungeon explorers unless they were chosen by the dungeon itself. Of course, we faced massive protest, as the mass media criticized revival for killing people. Although there were those that supported us, the amount of criticism we received from most countries was almost as if they had already prepared to do so. I was even beginning to suspect that they sacrificed the two explorers to push the narrative that we were criminals. Regardless, we knew we were in the right. I made an announcement. As it was annoying to hold a press conference every time, I just sent a recording to a broadcast agency. We emphasized twice or even thrice that those who violate the contract will die. Now that you see that they actually died, you think we killed them. So you're saying you planned on violating the contract from the beginning? right? From this point on, whoever talks bullshit and blames us will receive the same treatment as Germany and Britain. If you're okay with that, keep talking. You won't even see an explorer in your country. Also, event dungeons and event raids that you won't be able to handle, what do you think well do when the so-called giant monsters and gates appear in your countries? We don't have any intention of helping countries that treat us like murderers. Once the announcement made its round, all talks to criticism thoroughly disappeared from the mass media. It was a refreshing feeling. Really, we should have threatened them from the beginning. That said, I couldn't feel good about how things went. 
threatening them with event dungeons and event raids was the worst. I murmured with frustration. I don't like it. But they weren't listening to us when we were being nice. Don't worry, I'm sure there are people who think like us. Right now, the people that support us and the people that doesn't like us should be fighting each other. When the demon lord is in front of us, do you think they'll realize that what they're doing is useless? The other two S rank explorers are doing well, so don't be too sad. It's not like we didn't expect this to happen. Cheer up daddy. Ina jumped into my embrace and buried her head in my chest. Was she trying to comfort me? It's super effective. I hugged Ina back. Thanks, Ina. I'm fine, I was just feeling a bit annoyed. Are you feeling better now? Yeah, thanks to Ina. You might be feeling better, but I'm feeling a bit strange. Waya was looking at Ina and me doubtfully. I looked at Ina and tilted my head. No, never mind. I can't be jealous. She's a kid. I'm an easygoing woman. Mommy is weird. Yeah, mommy is weird. Seeing Waya murmuring to herself, Ina and I laughed. Thanks to Ina, I was able to cheer up. With this incident, I realized how foolish people could be. If I couldn't resolve things peacefully, I just had to use my strength. After all, I wouldn't have revealed my identity if I didn't have the power to suppress anyone who opposed me. In the end, we were the ones holding the right to appoint explorers, and it was other countries that needed it. At the same time, Revival had Earth's most powerful people in it. As long as this remained true, others couldn't meddle with our will. We would continually increase the number of explorers for the benefit of our world. Germany and Britain had also turned their tails, and other countries used this opportunity to push their own ability users to become dungeon explorers. Though I found it disgusting, if they would defeat monsters, we had no choice but to use them. We then appointed five more explorers. There was no real reason other than that they needed to grow and acquire dungeon explorer appointment rights as soon as possible. I emphasized the danger our world was facing and made sure they saw how the two explorers that went against the contract died. I hope that you won't do something so foolish and that you'll do your best for our future. Yes, sir. I won't forget it. For Earth. I'll only believe in you, Revival's Master. After that, I returned to the dungeon. Although the 65th floor's succubi attempted to seduce me, I easily turned them to stone and shattered them. There were no succubi that could escape my gaze and with elemental blades reach, my spear plowed through everything in my path. Master. Master's going too fast. Shin is angry. You guys are noisy. You just have to follow master. I tore apart the succubi without a shred of hesitation. In just thirty minutes, I began to see the door to the floor master room. At that moment, the door undulated as if it was an illusion, and a strange fanfare rang out in my ear. Amazing! You met the condition for opening the floor master event dungeon that no one has done since the creation of the dungeon. Floor master battle room transforms into an event dungeon. SS rank 1 man event dungeon, Succubus Castle, opened. You cannot refuse to enter, so please be careful. This event dungeon is in a dimension partly outside of the dungeon system's jurisdiction. Death in this dimension means real death. If you feel lacking in strength, it is recommended that you immediately use return to escape. Message Nuna, you're too kind. Wait, before that, what did you say? Even the floor master room had a next level. I only realized that on the 65th floor. What a waste. Chapter, 211 the surrounding scenery began to melt like when entering gates. Before I noticed, I found myself on a sunset hill. In front of me was a gothic-style castle that seemed to pierce the heavens. The castle's gate then creaked open even though no outside force had touched it. In an instant, the atmosphere changed as the castle seemed to have gotten closer to me. A sweet scent emanated from inside, which seemed capable of enchanting all men. I found that Absolute Soul was already fully activated. My mind seems fine. Pryuta Circuit was also circulating at its maximum speed. As I was closing in on mastering it, as long as I willed it, Pryuta Circuit would activate. 
mana raged through my body and solidified my mental defense. At the same time, it covered my body thoroughly, protecting me like a shell. Now, I could imitate Pryuta to a certain extent. Succubus Castle it looks like I need to go in with a firm resolve. I prepared myself to use the power of God's true name. With Zeus' power, I could break through most obstacles. Unfortunately, I couldn't use Caduceus yet. Sharana, come inside my crossbow. Pika, you come inside me. Ruyue, come into my armor. Got it. Hu, hu hu hu. An. Even though I was sucking in the surrounding mana with Pryuta circuit, having all three elementals active still slowly used my mana. However, there was no problem. I could just steal some from the enemies waiting for me inside the castle. Let's go. After murmuring to myself, I lightly kicked off the ground and jumped into the castle. A large, luxurious hall entered my sight. There were succubi informations everywhere I looked. They all had unique appearances, but were still absolute beauties that could topple kingdoms. Just by glancing at them once, most men would undoubtedly have been enchanted. They were completely different than the succubi ID seen in the dungeon. However, I couldn't quite tell what the exact difference was. The succubi in front of me seemed to have been waiting for me. Their eyes were looking at me like women in love, and their hands were cusped on top of each other politely. Most importantly, they all seemed to be bowing. Strange. They weren't in a battle stance. We were waiting. The doubt in my heart was crushed in an instant. Waiting? For who? Me? I asked the girl the succubus. Unlike the other succubi here that were dressed in rather revealing clothing, the one greeted me just now showed little skin. She was wearing a luxurious leather jacket and leather pants. Her bat wings also looked slightly different than the others. I instinctively knew that she at least had the strength to make me draw my weapon. When I raised my crossbow and asked, she realized the battle spirit I was emitting and once again lowered her head. Please retrieve your hostility. We have no intention or ability to fight you. Yeah, that's what I thought. This place should be an SS rank dungeon, but you guys are too weak. Hoo, so you really were the one she was waiting for. Please follow me. You will be able to enjoy a battle befitting your dignity. She's the boss of this place. This way. I followed the succubus and left the hall. The other succubi lined up against in parallel and right, they were bowing to me. But why? What was up with these succubi's ingrained politeness? Everything I knew about succubi seemed to escape my head. Did I already fall for their trap? Or was this entire castle an illusion? No, that didn't make sense. Come inside. The queen is waiting. When I snapped out of my thoughts, I was in front of a large door that resembled the floor master door. I couldn't help but ask the succubus that led me here. You want me to start with the boss? Do I fight the rest of you after I take care of her? Whatever you wish. I couldn't understand what she was planning. With a hint of doubt, I kicked open the door. Boom! With an explosive sound, the door crumbled down and the scene beyond the door was revealed. As the castle and door were something out of a movie, I expected to see a red carpet that led to a throne, but that wasn't it. Inside was another large hall and a young girl that was standing with her eyes closed. Though she had the frail appearance of a young girl, her flowing pink hair glowed, seemingly revealing that she wasn't human. She also had two horns that protruded out to the side and curved like lamb horns. Furthermore, she was wearing a thin see-through dress. Thankfully, I didn't need to look away as she was also wearing silver armor that covered her like a swimsuit. In terms of appearance, she looked like she was Yua's age. However, as expected of the Queen of Succubi, she had a pair of voluptuous breasts. It's okay. I believe Yua will grow one day. One day. She opened her eyes. Starlight gathered in her pink pupils. Seeing her eyes flashing wildly, my mouth twisted into a smile and I resisted her gaze with my own eyes. This girl had evil eyes. Truly a perfect warrior. Is the only thing you want from me a battle? As expected, her voice was also young. However, her voice contained a firm authority and strength. 
As a show of respect for her strength, I answered honestly. No, my goal is the reward I'll get after I defeat you. Then raise your weapon. We can talk afterwards. The succubus queen spread out her arms. Her silver fingernails elongated and glistened. The moment I saw her provocative smile, I shot dozens of bolts and charged at her with divine speed. Through weapon swap, the weapon in my hand had already become the chaotic spear. Sharana also switched to the spear and strengthened its power. Oot. Let's see if you can continue to act cool. While the succubus queen created a magical shield to protect herself from the bolts, I ducked under and dug into her defense. I then shot my spear upwards, aiming for her chest area. She seemed to be specialized in magical abilities, as even while blocked the bolts, she summoned dozens of bats to block my path. As I had expected some form of resistance, I wasn't caught off guard. My armor shone brilliantly and all the bats dropped down, frozen to chunks of ice. My spear then clashed with the succubus queen's nails, which she hurriedly moved in front of her chest. Although my goal was to pierce through her body, I was surprisingly blocked by her physical resistance. This was the level of a floor master. She was much stronger than even the monsters in beyond. Even while I couldn't hide my surprise, I reacted quickly. I instantly took back my spear and thrust forward. Heroic strike. Kook. You barbaric man. What shocked me even more was that the succubus queen could follow my movements to a certain extent. This was when I was under the effect of divine speed. She created another magical barrier. When it was pierced through by my heroic strike, she spread out her wings and blocked the attack with a wave of silver aura. However, heroic strike could not be stopped with just that. My spear perfectly hit her stomach, and the force she couldn't completely block sent her flying back. You're strong, but you have no manners you must not be popular with women. Sorry, but I am. I grinned as I retorted. Then, I shot a whirlpool of chaos flames toward her. Frightened, the succubus queen flew up. I used Talaria and followed after her. You're a hero. Yep, I am. The blessing on your body. And that recklessness. Truly the role model of heroes. With that, the succubus queen drew a magic circle in the air. No, it was not a physical magic circle. It was a magic circle that maximized the power of her evil eyes of charming. I also drew my evil eyes power to the peak and pulled up the power of absolute soul and overwhelm. PZZT. The magic circle crackled with sparks, but soon disappeared. For the first time, the succubus queen made a shocked expression. You resisted my charm. You didn't fall for my petrification, so we're even. I used divine speed once again. As I could steal mana when I hit her, I didn't need to conserve mana. I arrived in front of her in zero. Two seconds, shook off her broken magic circle's attempt to restrain me in zero. Three seconds, and deal another blow to her leg. By the one second mark, I was thrusting my spear consecutively with lightning spear storm. Die. You're an impatient one, aren't you? The succubus queen's body shone in multiple areas. Magic circles appeared in every spot my spear targeted and made great efforts to block the spear attacks. Even so, my mana was filling up slowly. It meant she was properly taking damage. I was waiting for a warrior of this caliber, but I cannot dishonor the name of Succubus Queen. In the next moment, she reached out and grabbed my spear. While the aura emanating from her fingernails and the lightning aura enveloping my spear clashed and dyed the room in a brilliant light, her face pushed up against mine. When we were close enough that I could count the number of her eyelash strands, she pushed her full lips against mine. Realizing what she was about to do, I used divine speed for the third time and headbutt her. I then raised my foot and quickly kicked her away. Kayak. The succubus queen teared up. Rather than physical pain, she seemed to have received great psychological shock. She shouted at me. You refused my kiss. Are you really a man? How can you kick a girl like that? Fight with your strength. This is a succubus strength. Charms don't work on me. I shouted back annoyed as I crashed down on the ground. I had activated Gaia Buster. 
I had even used sacrifice as well. The hall crumbled, and the countless number of rock shards that shot up was enveloped with a black aura. With an expression of utter shock, the succubus queen created several barriers. You. Since you invited me, defeat me with your strength. Instead of the crumbled ground, I kicked off the air with Talaria's power and charged toward her. The brilliant power of Hero filled my spear and mixed with chaos flames, forming a whirlpool that was hard to describe. Facing me, the succubus queen spread out her wings. Pink aura enveloped her hands. You're truly manly. But if you don't differentiate between your targets, you'll be hated. I prefer being cursed by targets that'll soon die. I won't die. My spear clashed with the succubus queen's aura, and an explosion broke out. Though we both received damage, I attacked her once again. Her raw strength was similar to mine. However, in terms of technique and skill, Pryuta circuit vibrated fiercely, speeding up the rate the whirlpool of aura rotated. As I poured more mana into my attacks, the succubus queen received more injuries and more mana flowed back into me. The succubus queen widened her eyes in surprise. My mana? We were the same kin. Sorry, but do I look like someone that can seduce women wherever I go? I simply obtained the mana eater's power. I shouted and poured more strength into my spear. I used heroic strike once more and activated sacrifice at the same time. If she didn't die with this, I would be in trouble. However, her intelligence was high and her magical barriers were extremely annoying. The solution was to push through when I saw an opening. Although this wasn't the strongest attack I could muster, I put enough strength to destroy Soul in a single blow. Just when I was about to thrust forward, she smiled and spoke. You pass, dear husband. In every regard. Two words I'd never heard in my lifetime made me lose strength. I couldn't believe my mentality was so weak that I'd be shaken by words. Thinking that I needed to train myself when I got back, I tried to thrust forward once again. This time, she spoke more clearly. Since we worked off good sweat, why don't we take some rest and talk, dear husband? Don't say something that would make other people misunderstand. I couldn't help but interrupt her. Chapter, 212 Although I was still positioned to stab my spear into her, the succubus queen let her defense down. Then, she grabbed my spear and pushed it away. Can you take this crude thing away? I only want to be stabbed by dear husband's spear in bed kayak. I smacked her head. It should have hurt. Don't make coarse jokes. If you want to talk, let's talk. Ill listen. Hugh, you'd be perfect if you weren't so violent. Really, human's fine. Let's go have a nice talk. She rubbed the place I hit then snapped her fingers. The succubus that led me here entered through the door with the other succubi and began to tidy up the place quickly. Soon, a table and two chairs had been set up with wine and two glasses. I couldn't understand what they wanted from me. Regardless, it was clear that they didn't want to fight me. Other than Ryue, I sent the elementals back. With Ryu's power, I cleaned myself up and put her on standby in case anything happened. Seeing me clean myself in an instant, the succubus queen looked at me with interest. Oh. Surprisingly, you're a man of culture. That magic, no elemental. Yeah. I sat down across from her. She pushed a glass of wine toward me, but I wasn't stupid enough to drink alcohol in the middle of an enemy's territory. When I snorted, she spoke a bit depressed. At least say a toast. Sure, sure. Um, good. So, what were we talking about? Our wedding date. Want to die? It's a part of it fine, they'll start from the beginning. From the moment I lost against them. My ears perked up. I didn't expect to hear anything important, but who lost to who? Have you heard of Elysia? Is that someone's name? It's the name of a world. The world we were trying to invade and the world we lost against. Can you be more detailed? Who's we? I pulled the chair I was sitting on closer into the table. Her evil eyes flashed with joy. Obviously, I'm talking about the Mare Alliance. The demon continent Enesis rulers, the Mares. And what's Enesis? 
a continent where the world's power disappeared. To be precise, it was stolen by Elysia. What? Stolen by Elysia? Didn't you say you were trying to steal it from Elysia? Eh? You didn't know about this. Do you not know why your world is being invaded? I froze. In my head, I struggled to make sense of what she said. First, I organized what I knew about the enemies invading my world. There was one that became greedy for more world's powers even after obtaining one, but I set that one aside for now. Normally, worlds that lost their world's power, which allowed them to continue to exist, invaded other worlds to steal their world's powers. Worlds that were being invaded usually had races similar to humans, while the invading side were always demons or monsters. Until now, I hadn't really thought about how the invading forces had lost their world's powers. Perhaps, I was avoiding thinking about it as I had never even asked Loretta. However, what the succubus queen just said threw a rock in a still pond. Why Earth was being invaded? The forces of Enesis should have tried to steal Elysia's power, but Elysia stole Enesis' power first. Your troubled face is so cute. I was wrong. You must be popular with women. Please, explain. Of course, they'll tell you everything. With that, she emptied her glass. I poured more wine in her glass, then picked up my own and gulped it down. No matter what poison was inside it, I felt like I needed to drink it. Of course, the wine had a heavenly taste. Do you know how a world is born? No. Hoo hoo, I don't either. But I know this. There is a definite limit to the number of worlds that can exist. At a certain point in the past, the infinitely growing number of worlds reached that limit. The number of worlds reached a limit. It'll give you an example. Let's say you have a bookshelf that can hold up to 300 books. At first, you bought all the books you could because you wanted to fill up the bookshelf, and before you noticed, it did. But, without realizing that was the case, you bought even more books. What would you do? Buy a new bookshelf? Only one bookshelf can fit in your room. Then ID sell or throw away the books I don't read. Exactly. That's what's happening to us. She clapped as if ID answered a difficult question. The number of worlds became too high, so it needed be lowered. There wasn't enough world's powers for all worlds to have one. I don't know who, but the lofty one came up with a solution. To pair up all worlds. With that, she filled up my glass. I immediately grabbed it, and as she wanted, I clinked glasses with the succubus queen. Go pew. Pair up worlds. Yep. It was an excellent way to have the number of worlds. Just like that, countless number of worlds became paired. Enesis and Elysia was one of them. Between these two worlds, the one with less mana, or in other worlds, the weaker world became the focus of the world's power. In a way, it was a way of balancing them out. Everyone knows that defense is easier than offense. You mean the current system of invaders and defenders was created by someone? Right. Without the world's power, no world can continue to exist. As a result, one world was left with no choice but to invade and steal the other world's power. Regardless of whether the defender succeeds or fails, two worlds would decrease to one. With this, the number of worlds would successfully be halved. The hell. Didn't that mean neither side was at fault? After all, the invaders were forced into their positions. I was dumbfounded. What we were doing until now wasn't a heroic tale of defeating evil monsters nor an adventurous tale of exploring mysterious dungeons. Rather, it was a simple competition for survival. Don't be too shaken. It's not like what you have to do changed. You just have to protect what you need to protect. A thief may have needed to steal to survive, but that doesn't change the fact that a thief is a thief. T thanks. Why was she comforting me? Though I was thankful, I was also a bit confused. Now that I thought about it, wasn't she the one in the invader's position? Why was she telling me all this? She seemed to have realized what I was thinking, as she continued her explanation. Right, so Enesis invaded Elysia. But, we lost. It lasted hundreds of years. Lord led everyone and all Mares participated. 
but I fought half-heartedly so that I could protect my clan members. That's why many of us are still alive. If you lost, how are you still alive? Oh. You don't know this either. Isn't it obvious? Look where we are, and you'll know your answer. The dungeon. Right, the dungeon. A full smile bloomed on her face. In wars, it's rare that victors completely wipe out the losing side. Of course, Lord and other powerful members had to die, but my clan wasn't strong enough to catch their attention that's when the dungeon stepped in. To give us life. Life? Where do you think all the monsters in the dungeon came from? Ah. I remembered the Lizard Knight and Dullahan I first met. I remembered their voices of despair that I did my best to ignore. The succubus queen grinned as she looked at me. They were feeling stifled and crying in despair. Yep. It's like what those losers said. Monsters, Mares, demons, and other invaders that didn't have the courage to die with their worlds joined hands with the dungeon. Eternally dying, yet being unable to die. The cursed immortality. I couldn't say anything, especially because I had somewhat expected it. The dungeon helped us, the defenders. In that case, it was clear how the invaders viewed the dungeon. They undoubtedly hated it to their bones, so much so that they'd give their lives to get back at it. Even so, they joined the dungeon for a chance at life. When you succeed in defending your world, the ones that failed will probably join the dungeon. Of course, with their leaders killed. They will then help grow other world's defenders. Easy, right? What about you? Obviously, I'm different. Do I look like the Maras that attacked you in the dungeon? Those succubi that fell to being mere floor masters? No. I haven't seen the floor master yet anyways. I refused. To be more precise, I set a condition. I didn't want to live a cruel life where my clan members and I died repeatedly. She spread out her arms. The entire castle seemed to be breathing like a living creature. I will cooperate. I will help the defenders grow. But, I will only give myself to the one who has the qualification. Of course, I set a very strict condition. This person had to be a man who was extremely strong, extremely fast, extremely charming, and extremely elegant. Oh, and he had to have extreme resistance against charming. Simply put, it's you. I'm speechless. Dumbfounded, I gulped down the glass for the third time. The succubus queen pouted. What do you mean speechless? It makes sense. I was born as a succubus queen, but I had to devote my life to battle without ever knowing men. Do you know how depressing that is? I didn't want to die without finding a husband, but I didn't want to become a battle machine for the dungeon. Since I was planning on accepting a husband, isn't it better if he's fabulous? Most of all, I wanted someone who would love me as I was without falling for my charm. Of course, didn't really believe a man could resist my charm, but hoo hoo, I was so surprised when my charm didn't work even after I amplified it with magic. That's when I felt fate. You call that fate? It's the reward I got for waiting for countless years. One time, I got frightened, thinking I'd die of age in this boring castle. But look, I met you. Who said I'd accept you? Then are you going to kill me? A pitiful beautiful girl like me? You're going to kill someone connected to you by fate? Un. Are you going to massacre me and my clan members who faced extinction just by being born in Enesis? Eek. This girl, she revealed everything on purpose. Just in case I killed everyone. She cusped her hands on her chest, and with tear eyes, she pushed her face up against mine. Her charming face was youthful like a teen's, yet somewhat erotic first, I flicked her forehead. Ow. You hit me again. It'll take you in. I said shortly. Her expression brightened. Really? I love you. The first thing we did was fight, love my ass. I just didn't want to kill someone who has no hostility against me, especially when I have a way for her survival. Oh, looks like dear husband is rather inexperienced with love. Love isn't something anyone can explain and comprehend. The moment someone tries to explain love, its value drops. Then what, you know love. 
I wanted to throw the question back to her, but upon thinking about it, she was the succubus queen. As she had at least no love more than me, I stayed silent. She got up from her seat, pushed the table aside, then approached me and grabbed my hand. As it was unlikely that she'd try to do something now, I let her be. She happily kissed the back of my hand and looked up to me. Her eyes shone with sparkling pink. Dear husband, best me a name that connects us together. Licorice. At that moment. You made an achievement of taming the SS rank boss monster, Succubus Queen. You obtained three skill point. Current skill points, five. Taming became level five. Even without taming, all neutral targets will see you favorably and easily listen to your commands. Spirit of the Tamer became level 5. Your charm stat's degree of amplification increases, while your tamed monster's loyalty and affection increases greatly. Current tameable targets, 33. Event Dungeon Cleared. You were acknowledged by the Succubus Queen and made an achievement of successfully clearing an event dungeon without killing. You obtained 10 bonus stats. You became level 66. You obtained the qualification to challenge Beyond's 15th floor. Wait, what? Did I hear wrong? Then, dear husband, please take good care of us. My clan of 214 succubi will forever serve you as our husband. What? I had instantly gotten 214 more mouths to feed. Chapter, 213 What the succubus queen, Licorice, did next was truly shocking. When she slightly lifted up her dress, the 213 succubi in the castle all transformed into bats and flew into her dress. Although the dress was see-through, I couldn't see the bats once they went in. In utter shock, I stared at her dress fixedly and asked. What happened? Hoo-hoo, you won't see them even if you stare so intently. Do you want to try lifting my dress up? No thanks. Licorice fiddled with the hem of her dress seductively, but I answered with a forehead flick. While she muttered in pain, the castle she and the other succubi were living in began to crumble. Once the pain seemingly subsided, Licorice raised her head and looked at the crumbling castle with a touched expression. She then turned around to face me and spoke. Dear husband, I have lost my home now, so you have to take responsibility. Food, clothing, shelter, and everything else. Succubi eat food? Yeah, but we do have a preference, hoo-hoo. Licorice stared intently at a certain part of my body as she licked her lips. I was already worrying how the guild members would react once they saw her. Wait, no, after the floor master battle, the first one I saw was always. Shinnim. What hap kayak? As I expected, we were sent to the front of the floor shop. I didn't know what happened to the dungeon when I entered the event dungeon, but Loretta, who was approaching me with a worried expression, screamed in shock when she saw Licorice. What's that monster? Shin Nim, N next to you. Oh, Loretta. This is Licorice. Hi. Im Licorice, dear husband named me. Who are you? Dear husband's concubine. Dear husband. Oh look. Loretta's double-edged battle axe wait, no, stop with that. For the next five minutes, I explained what had happened. Of course, I introduced Loretta to Licorice as well. Loretta clenched her fists, seemingly thinking about something extremely violent, as she flapped her ears. I see hmm, 213 succubi and a succubus queen not to mention, they're a clan highly apt in battle Yu Yu, they'll be of great help to Shin Nim. Yu Yu will have to accept. Hmm. It's not like you're his concubine, so what relation do you have with dear husband that gives you the right to accept me or not? Licorice, shut up. Dear husband, this elf is glaring at me. Scary. Even Licorice seemed unable to withstand Loretta's killing intent as she hid behind my back and trembled. That seemed to make Loretta even more furious. Shin Nim, that's enough. What? But this isn't my fault. You could have killed them all with an iron will and stone heart. You want me to kill them when they never had any hostility against me. Kook. Hard pressed for a correct response, Loretta drooped her ears and grumbled. At that moment, Licorice tapped on my arm and spoke. Dear husband, I want to go to your home now. 
home. You mean the one in the residential area? Or the one on earth? Thinking about licorice and the 213 succubi that should be hiding in her dress, I felt like I was going nuts. As licorice's master, I could command her servants perfectly. While each of them had a strength greater than a typical SS rank monster. Licorice, we're going to earth, now. Loretta, it'll be back in a bit. Yes, Shin Nim. I'm trusting you, okay? You have to come back. Don't be seduced by a mere succubus. Mere succubus. A succubus is a lot better than a mere elf. Quiet both of you. After giving Loretta and Licorice appropriate punishments, I returned to Earth with the fretting Licorice. As no one was home, I messaged Waya and headed to our guild house on Earth. Although I was sure I only contacted Waya, when I arrived at the guild house, Samire, Yua, Ludia, and Yiyun were all there. Why are you all here? Waya's answer was particularly noteworthy. Well, you said, I got a force we could completely trust. So that obviously made me think, what woman is it this time? So I gathered people I thought would be my allies. Hey. But it really was a woman Waya Uni's intuition is scary. So who is she? She doesn't look human. While Yiyun's respect for Waya seemed to have rose, Ludia who specialized in holy magic seemed to have felt Licorice's aura as she put up her guard. Just like I did for Loretta, I explained what happened with Licorice to them. 2.14. And they're all succubi. Wow, she looks much stronger than the succubus queen I met before. Is she really a succubus queen? Humph, isn't it obvious that I.D. be stronger than the ones who entrusted their existences to the dungeon? They're tied to the dungeon, but I'm not. Succubus Hugh. I didn't know why, but Lydia put her staff down seemingly relieved. At that moment, Licorice tilted her head and asked. I understand that they're all dear husband's women, but who's the legal wife? You see, Mares have a strict hierarchy. If you tell me, they'll behave accordingly. Silence descended. When I was about to say something with a sigh, the atmosphere changed. Lydia put up her staff again, while the air heated up from Waya's fireballs. What are you doing? I thought about making it clear. Legal wife for now, he'll accept that position. That position belongs to me. I'm confident in fighting too. I use divine speed and calm them down by flicking their foreheads. Then, I continued. In any case, with Licorice's servants, things will get a lot easier. They all have human intelligence and there's no need to worry about them betraying us. Em, mm, we do have a lot of work to do and it's not like we can keep seeking outside help and I feel sorry making some ire work all the time. Right, if we think of them as 213 SS rankers, that's indeed frightening. They can probably conquer the world with just their strength. My servants are competent. If it's dear husband's command, they'll do anything. Licorice raised her hand and spoke with a bright voice. After contemplating for a brief moment, Waya nodded her head. All right. I'm looking forward to working together. With your sincerity and ability, let's maintain a healthy competitive relationship. That said, I can't accept all 213 others as competitors. Let them find other men. Ah, my clan normally chooses one man to serve. You see, we share a strong link. With it, we can share experiences and grow stronger quicker. But there's also a clear disadvantage. We feel excruciating pain when we do it with other men. So it's always been that the queen chooses a man, while the others follow. Don't worry. Our dear husband can easily handle 200 or 300 of us and not even feel tired. That's not the problem. So that's why they were all together in that event dungeon just when I thought a good relationship would be established between Waya and Licorice, it was shattered. That said, everyone accepted the succubus clan's usefulness. First, the succubus queen's direct subordinate, the elder succubus Mireille, became Waya's secretary. Though Samire planned to stay in Korea, she had become free from all the work we've been putting on her. I like her. She's even dressed modestly. Please take good care of me, Wyanim. Leather jacket, leather pants, and gray hair that flowed down to one side of her shoulder. With serene gray eyes, she was the picture-perfect secretary. 
Not to mention, as Mireille had strength that was only second to licorice, she could fight with Waya if something happened. Additionally, dozens of other succubi were placed under Mireille to monitor and collect data on monsters, event dungeons, and event raids that appeared on Earth. Until now, Revival didn't have a proper information sector. As a result, information had to flow from an outside source to Waya then to me. With this new addition, everything would change. As all of them had the power of an SS ranker, the proactiveness and information collecting prowess were far greater than before. As Mireille could create mental links between herself and Licorice at any time, Waya and I received information practically as they came. The succubi's ability couldn't be described as just great. How did you guys lose? Maybe fate got in our way so I could meet dear husband. Right. It was more difficult to deal with stealthy approaches like Waya's, but I liked that Licorice was so brazen. That way, I could strike her down without hesitation. Eh. Why did I sound like a horrible guy just now? However, other than Licorice, Mireille, and the 30 succubi under her command, there were still 182 succubi. What were they supposed to do? They couldn't all climb the dungeon. Should we send them to other countries? While I was racking my stupid brain, Licorice asked. Dear husband, why are there so many neglected monsters in this world? Oh, that's because people can't easily enter territories that monsters claimed. It's dangerous and we don't even know what monsters are there. Since everyone's busy dealing with the monsters appearing near human territories, they can't gather the numbers to tackle such large areas. Then, Licorice pointed at the 182 bats filling the mansion. Aren't they there? You're right. The real territorial war between humans and monsters began with a trivial thought. Just like everything in the world usually was. Chapter, 214. On Earth, some countries were ruined by monsters, and many uninhabited islands were crawling with monsters. I remembered seeing a news report saying that 30% of small islands had been taken over by monsters. The reason humans could continue to live normally was all thanks to Guardian and Freedom Wing, who always had at least 50% of their forces devoted to stopping the monsters' further encroachment into human territory. This was the reason Guardian and Freedom Wing could continue to exist even while they were being used by people of authority, being doubted of their capabilities, and receiving bad press. As agencies that protected humanity, this was the Guardian and Freedom Wing's founding goal. However, even they could not deploy troops to reclaim lands taken over by monsters. As I said before, they just didn't have enough manpower. Every day, monsters of unpredictable strength appeared in completely unexpected places. From what I knew, only Sierra could predict their appearance. However, even Sierra could only cover an area about the size of an average city. In the end, it was Guardian and Freedom Wing that protected humanity from unforeseen deaths. As this task took most of their forces, they had no choice but to leave monsters' territories alone no matter how dangerous they were. In territories controlled by monsters, their rate of appearance sharply rose. It was the same as how monsters continually spawned in field dungeons. At first, I thought the monsters were reproducing, but this wasn't the case. Reproduction meant the birth of new lives. For the invading monsters who didn't have a world's power, this was impossible. Plus, not even monsters could give birth to already grown monsters. The fact that no baby monsters had been found strongly rejected the possibility that they were reproducing. In that case, there was only one possibility left the pathway. I conjectured that when the number of certain monsters in a set area increased, the pathway would widen and allow more of their kind to pass through. This made sense especially since I knew that being invaded by two worlds accelerated the speed of invasion. In any case, it was true that territories seized by monsters spawned more monsters. Currently, the number of monsters in these territories was shocking. Philippines, Madagascar, Republic of South Africa, and Dominican Republic were already ruined. Germany, Britain, America, Korea, and other countries had also lost much of their land to monsters. Although everyone wanted to reclaim their land, no one could put it into action. Now that I thought about it, Joshua Brightman who tried to create a separate independent organization just to go against revival was really shameless. He should have just kept doing his job properly. 
Of course, since he now had to live the rest of his life eating porridge and medicine, I couldn't say much more. In any case, this was where the succubi army stepped in. As they weren't restrained to the dungeon, though they almost died of old age as virgins. They were able to keep their original strengths and even shared battle experience and skill proficiency with each other. 212 succubi had magic power on par with SS rankers, while Mireille's strength was somewhere between SS rank and SS rank, and Licorice's strength was SS rank. It wouldn't be an overstatement to say that they could easily stomp any force on earth. To be frank, if the members of Revival fought against them without me, the result was clear. Unless about five other members received God's true names, they would undoubtedly lose. Though the succubi couldn't climb the dungeon, there was no need to let them sit around and do nothing. Plus, Licorice said that the mana and vitality succubi needed to live could be stolen from monsters. Thus, this subjugation would be vital for their survival. Oh, you don't need to worry, we won't do it with anyone other than dear husband Kayak. I smacked Licorice's head and shut her up. I know, you already said you had a special magic for it. Dear husband, your method of showing affection is too violent Sob. I looked around at the succubi in the mansion and spoke. We prepared robes for all of you. Honestly, the way you're currently dressed is too lewd. Dear husband prepared clothes for us. Woo! All 182 succubi cheered. As they were incredibly loud, I considered using frozen roar, but since they had already become my allies, I knew I couldn't freeze them. On the other hand, Licorice and other succubi that weren't chosen to be part of the battle squad became depressed. You were lying when you said you shared emotions, weren't you? Licorice, don't look so sad. There's one for you too. It's our guild robe. Guild robe? Right, the clothes I had prepared for them were Revival's guild robes. Revival's guild emblem, suggested by Vice Guild Master Waya and agreed upon by majority of others, was embroidered on them. By giving almost all the monster materials I had to the best blacksmith I knew, about 300 of them had been made. To be honest, when I first commissioned for them to be made, I was worried whether they would all find owners. Thanks, Lin. I'll remember to buy you a drink later. I gave everyone their robes as I lightly pushed aside Lin cursing under his breath in my head. The succubi examined the robes and cheered. They all have magic imbued in them. Wow, they're skin tight. Just the way we like it. Golden embroidery on black, they're gorgeous. But what's this on the back? There's a streak of lightning enveloping a spear. That's the guild emblem. As I felt that the guild emblem only represented me, I voted against it, but why I pushed for it seriously. According to her, I was the one currently representing Revival. After getting a confirmation that the guild emblem would change later, I agreed to it. Truthfully, even if I didn't agree, as a majority of guild members agreed, it would have been pushed through. Mm, -hmm, I don't like that it's not very revealing. What age are you from? In this day and age, rather than showing skin, clothes that accentuate bodily curves are the best. The succubi merrily chatted and put on their robes immediately. As they could just wear it on top of their leather clothes which could barely be considered clothes, it was quite simple. The result was 182 women wearing elegant black robes. When they were wearing the leather clothes unique to succubi, I didn't know where to place my eyes. Now that they were all wearing the same robe, they looked like an elite force. Although the robes openly showed their bodily curves, as expected of clothes Lin made, they exuded the aura of nobility and elegance rather than vulgarity. Moreover, the somewhat embarrassing lightning spear emblem on their back was conspicuous. It would be impossible for anyone to not think of me when they saw it. Let's split you guys up. Each unit will have 30 succubi, and with one more in Unit 1 and Unit 2, there will be 6 units. Unit 1 and Unit 2 had 31 succubi, while Unit 3 through Unit 6 had 30. Once the units were formed, the next part was simple. It was choosing where to deploy them. Of the places seized by monsters, there were some where not even 30 SS rankers could guarantee their safety. As such, I limited their first mission to territories that weren't in any countries. Well be striking islands, coastal areas, and uninhabited islands. 
Of these, uninhabited islands are practically monster haven, so remember that. After that, well move deeper into land. Yes, dear husband. With two hundred succubi yelling out dear husband, even I couldn't help but shudder. However, as it was decided that I would give the command for their first mission, I held in my desire to run away and assigned the six units to different areas. There were hundreds of thousands of uninhabited islands on earth. Although the number would have when the isolated ones were taken out, there were still a considerable amount of them. Don't rush it. Safety comes first. Got it? Please, stop that. The succubi could all use magic. Of course, they were most proficient in charm magic and transformation magic. When used together, no matter how advanced modern technology became, it became nearly impossible to track them. In other words, they didn't need to hold back. They immediately set off to chase away the monsters claiming Earth's territories and to obtain mana and vitality to eat. Once they left, the mansion became quiet, and the guild members all went back to their usual work. With over thirty succubi residing in the mansion, Eleda and Sumire also no longer needed to stay in the mansion. When I first arrived with the succubi, Eleda silently watched on with a surprised expression. It was only after they left that she finally spoke up. Guildmaster is really amazing. So many of them, you. It seemed she was misunderstood something. As she got more confused. No matter how much I explained the circumstance, I gave up halfway through. With all the succubi assigned to their duties, there was nothing more I needed to do other than wait for their periodic report. With revival taking in the succubus clan, humans obtained the chance to chase away the monsters. Although I had done it without much thinking, I still considered the possibility that this resulted in something much greater. Of course, I would only find out later. As I had done what I could, I returned to the dungeon without regrets. Mm, I feel a bit uncomfortable hunting succubi. Do you mind if I stay out, dear husband? Sure, that's probably for the best. As long as she isn't stronger than you, I won't have any problem defeating her anyways. When Licorice found out I was going to hunt the succubus queen, she backed off with an awkward smile. I led her to the guild house in the residential area and challenged the succubus queen alone. What a charming human. It's been a while since I got to enjoy myself. Although she was undoubtedly a floor master, the succubus queen that appeared alone in front of me was noticeably weaker than Licorice. Though it was something I realized only after meeting Licorice and her clan members, the dungeon succubi were lacking in charm, strength, and vitality compared to Licorice's clan. The succubus queen was no different. Come closer, play with me. Yeah, let's play. I pretended to fall for the succubus queen's charm as I ran toward her. The moment she spread out her arms and seemed to use some skill, I struck her with heroic strike. As the atmosphere and strength she was giving off were completely different from licorice, I had no hesitation in doing so. Kook, Kohuk. Lightning Spear Storm. Kayak. Hey race and extra. Wind King's Rage. Why you're not a man. Kayak. When I struck the succubus queen with Wind King's Rage about four times, she helplessly scattered into particles of light. In just two minutes, the floor master battle had ended. Who, good fight. I wiped away the non-existing sweat and murmured, as I thought why succubus queens purposely revealed openings trying to use charms that didn't work. At that moment, messages rang out in my ear. It was truly a pleasant sound. Amazing. You are the first in the first dungeon's history to succeed in soloing the succubus queen on the first try. The dungeon will remember you as a great explorer. You obtained two skill points as reward. Current skill points, 14. You obtained the title, Succubus Queen Master. All stats increase by 2. This effect will apply even if the title is not equipped. You defeated the Succubus Queen alone. You obtained the special reward, Succubus Queen's Leather Jacket. You obtained 450,000 gold. You received the only reward left hidden for the first explorer. Congratulations. Your luck stat increases by 1. So I was the first for the 65th floor. After happily reading the messages again on the message log, I froze when I saw the reward. Giant Wolf, Golden Scarab, 
twin-headed ogre, and now, it was the fourth tattoo. But but this. Secret. Succubus Queen's Tattoo. Succubus Queen's Tattoo. That just screams trouble. Chapter, 215. Even as I shivered with uneasiness, I reached out to pick the reward which was just too good to pass up. Immediately, the back of my right hand heated up. I had somewhat expected it. After my legs, arms, and the back of my left hand, it was only proper that the next tattoo took the back of the right hand. It couldn't have been my eyes or lips. I wasn't worried at all. Feeling relieved that it wasn't a place that was hard to cover, I took off my gauntlet and checked my right hand. There, I saw a pair of spread bat wings entangled by two chains. While it was giving off a pink glow and a feeling of elegance, I was relieved that it was a much more wholesome symbol than I thought. However, I soon came to regret feeling so quickly relieved. You obtained the succubus queen's tattoo. Your charm and magic increases by fifty. Against members of the opposite sex, the effect doubles. Once per day, you can double your mana. Mm, mm, excellent. As someone who was experiencing the effect of the charm stat every day, the succubus queen's tattoo was a great boon. Increasing both magic and charm by fifty. Not to mention, the effect of charm doubled against members of the opposite sex. It was truly a monstrous effect. However, doubling my mana once per day it was an amazing effect, but it was almost as if no, it must be my imagination. 1. Let's head out then. After putting my gauntlet back up, I left the floor master room. Loretta, who was sitting by the floor shop with her chin on her hand, expression changed when she saw me leaving the room. Sure, Shin Nim. What? Is something wrong? Was there a tattoo on my body that I didn't notice? When I became flustered and asked, Loretta took out her double-edged axe and spoke with a flushed face. How did you suddenly become so much more charming? What happened to you, Shin Nim? If you tell me honestly, nothing bad will happen. I I it can't be b w it that damn succubus, you. The axe in her hand was bending with a creaking noise. T that thing, I held it once and it was really heavy Loretta could bend it with just her hands. As I was scared for my life, I decided to explain everything thoroughly. Oh, I see. It was the tattoo's power. Looking relieved, Loretta chucked the axe behind her. The dungeon floor caved in. Scary. I thought Shin Nim again Hugh, never mind. That's good. It looks like I'm still lacking in practice. I thought I was controlling the charming aura I was emitting pretty well. Hugh, it's going to take ages again. Shin Nim's current charm stat entered a dangerous level. It should be fine for members of the same sex, but for the opposite sex, it will be a disaster. Just imagine every woman that meets Shin Nim's eyes falling in love with Shin Nim. Once it happens, that's it. There's no way to escape it. It's not a status effect, just that Shin Nim's charm had conquered their heart. That's cruel. What I had to deal with now was tiring enough. Shin Nim's charm can even shake my heart now. You have to control it carefully. Yes. Damn, so having higher stats wasn't always good. Of course, as magic had increased by 50 points in addition to charm, I needed time to train and digest the increase. I sighed. I then plopped down on the ground and began to circulate per Yuta circuit. Loretta placed her elbow back on the floor shop counter and watched me with a warm smile. At least for this time, I get to have Shin Nim for myself, hu hu hu. Don't say something so corny. I can't focus. Yes. Hu hu. Afterwards, for ten hours every day, I sat in front of the floor shop and trained in controlling my charm. Of course, I didn't forget to grind the succubus queen ten times a day for the magic and charm increasing invigoration elixir it dropped. Although it may seem like a vain effort, I couldn't sit idly either. As I had to avoid seeing those of the opposite sex as much as possible, the only person I saw from Revival Daily was Ren, who I had to meet anyways for the thrashing phase. I'm sure Crown Prince hates me. I don't hate you at all. There, you're open. Is there even a single moment in Crown Prince's eyes where I don't have an opening? Of course not. I knew it, you hate me. 
Ran is just too weak. Because of the charm discharge problem I was having, the underground training room became a prohibited area for the time being. Although Yiyun and Sophie who used the room often seemed to be displeased, when I explained the circumstance, they reluctantly accepted it. As a result, Ren and I got to occupy the training room for ourselves, while Father and Walker sometimes dropped by to watch Ren getting beat up. I was thankful that Michelle and Leon were devoting all their time to climbing the dungeon. If there were new spectators, Ren would undoubtedly cry. Oh, my son is truly talented in beating people up. I know that firsthand. Kong Shin's beaten me up before. Please leave. Are you happy watching me getting beaten up? Opening. Kohak. I was relieving the stress of being unable to see Aina and Yua by beating up Ren Koham. Feeling glad that I was helping Ren with his growth, I spent honest days in the dungeon. Ever since Ren began to stay on Earth, it seemed he had a change of heart as his quick temperament and habit of losing his sanity in battles was being mended smoothly. Although now might be too early, when I would be grinding the 70th floor master, if I held Ren for 10 days, his habit of going berserk might be completely fixed. Crown Prince, do you believe you can protect Earth? On the 10th day since my 65th floor master grinding began, when neither father nor walker was in the training room, Ren asked. It seemed he hadn't been just getting beaten up, as he was dodging my attacks skillfully. As I was about to call it a day so I could go grind the floor master, I took my spear back and retorted. Of course I do. Does Ren think he'll fail? Huh, don't kid. If there's anyone in this guild with an absolute trust in Crown Prince, it would be me. Ren retorted with a bitter smile as he leaned against his claymore. As he had used up most of his stamina and mana, he was moving quite slowly. He slowly swept his hair up. As he dripped with sweat, his lion's mane-like hair became entangled. He spoke. I can't believe in myself. Oh right, Ren had become Pan Incontinence hero. I was the one who made him one. Remembering that crucial fact, I replied with a shrug. You're lacking in training. Right, I am. That's what I thought Crown Prince would say but am really shaking. The kids that are looking only at me ah, uh, of course, Alpha is also looking at Crown Prince, but the point is, both Labique and the kids trust me wholeheartedly. They trust that I'll chase the El Paydais out and reclaim the Pan Incontinent. I I find that extremely pressuring. Don't worry about it so much. There are still two years at least. I replied as if it was something trivial and returned my spear to its choker form. Ren looked at me and asked. If you die, Earth will lose its future. Have you not thought about that? Nope. If you die, billions of people will lose their future. Even if they don't fall into the monster's hands, they will slowly wither away. Have you never despaired thinking about that? When you die, those left on Earth will resent you and curse you with all their heart. Have you ever woken up in the middle of the night when they appear in your dreams? After replying that far, I glared at Ren. Are you stupid? I'm busily swinging my spear, climbing the dungeon, and gathering more members of revival. I already had my mind full of all these, so how would I have the time to think about something that hasn't even happened and despair? Rather than worrying about all that, just swing your sword one more time. How can you do that? What I'm saying is, how can you shake away all this pressure? It seemed an unforeseen side effect came over Ren's thrashing phase. He was feeling pressure as a hero and he had come to doubt his abilities. For someone who looked so reliable, he couldn't be more delicate. Simply put, it was annoying. Ren, how many beast men are alive in Pan Incontinent? I'm not sure, but it can't be many. There's the possibility that there are none left. What would happen if Ren suddenly dies and loses the hero's power? Humans and beast men wouldn't be able to proliferate on Pan and Continent ever again though Labique and the kids will be fine. Then even if Ren dies, it's not like a lot of people will lose their future, right? That's true, but then the Pan and Continent will. I gathered mana at my fingertips and flicked it at him. It hit Ren's forehead and pushed him backward. You don't even know how many people will die, so how can you be so scared? There's probably nothing more pathetic than that. Plus, it's not like you'll be going back to Pan Incontinent alone. I and other members of Revival will also go. 
Crown Prince. Ren, you said you trusted me. Then there's nothing to worry about. I'll go back to Panon Continent with Ren, and if Ren's strength isn't enough, I'll offer my power. So rather than worrying about the consequences of Ren dying, just focus on your training. I then dealt the heavy blow. Let's double the thrashing phase's intensity. I was happy thinking that Ren was getting better, but it turns out Ren was just out of steam. He'll make sure Ren gets Ren's lost spirit back. Aren't you happy? I'm not happy at all. Double. Did you just say double? Ren's ears perked up and shook. However, I had no intention of taking back my words. However, as I had understood how he was feeling, I decided to be a bit more honest. I'm also human, Ren. Of course, I thought about such things and got a bit depressed. But Ren, if I die, will Ren blame me? Of course not. You're doing everything you can. Would you a, Waya, or Ina blame me? Rather than Earth facing an end, I think they'd be sadder that Crown Prince died. Right. So there's nothing I need to fear. I'm already doing all that I can. I put my hands on his shoulders. Run, you do everything you can too. Then, you won't have anything to fear. Plus, I'm the one that made Ren a hero. I think of Ren as my disciple, so he'll help Ren too. Is that why you're doubling the thrashing phase? Seeing Ren's sullen face, a sinister thought crossed my mind. Oh, by the way, Ren, if it gets too hard, ask Labik to sleep together with you. Chich, how can I do that? To Labik. Didn't you say Labik was like a mother? When things get hard, falling asleep in mother's embrace is the best. But this and that are totally different things. Just believe me. Go to Lebwick's room at night and ask, can I rely on you a bit? Labik treasures Ren too. She'll surely let you in. Labik will never do that. Ren, do as I say. Labik won't refuse, I promise. Really? Really? You can kick me otherwise. Mm alright, if Crown Prince is willing to go that far, he'll give it a try I didn't know Labik thought of me as a son. Well, something like that. I'm sure she thinks of making a son with you. I replied to his murmuring in my heart and began to think about how Labik would repay this favor. Right, banquet noodles would be best. 2. 1. A Korean reader asked the author what this meant. The author replied, try substituting mana with some other unit. 2. Traditionally Korean noodles served at weddings. Chapter, 216. You have consumed the succubus queen's tattoo invigoration elixir to the limit. The succubus queen's tattoo became enhanced to its peak performance. Magic and charm increases by 14. The power of all skills and authorities is multiplied by 1. 5 times. You equip the succubus queen set. Your magic and charm increases by 35. When the succubus queen set is equipped, you can use sweet nightmare once per day. When Sweet Nightmare is used against a target with lower charm than you, you will steal half of the target's health and inflict critical charm status effect to the target. When Sweet Nightmare is used against a target with higher charm than you, you will lose half of your health and mana, and fall into inescapable avolition status effect. The day I made Ren fall into that hellish trap, I successfully completed my Succubus Queen grind. As magic and charm increased by 4 points every time they increased by invigoration elixirs, with the 14 points that went up at the end, my magic and charm had increased by 50 points total. In effect, the succubus queen's tattoo was increasing my magic and charm by a terrifying 100 points. Plus, the tattoo's effect didn't just increase my stats. In addition to doubling the effect of my charm against the opposite sex, I could double my mana once per day. Although the hidden meaning behind it was incredibly disturbing, I had no choice but to use it since it was undoubtedly helpful. Within my skill arsenal, there were quite a few skills that were affected by charm. Provoke, Overwhelm, Absolute Soul, half of the Elementalist skills, half of the Tamer skills, and so on. In fact, it might be easier to say that only my spear technique was unaffected by charm. I couldn't tell if charm was that important, or if my skills were just strange. 
50% increase to skills is one thing but authorities. The evil eyes of petrification might be included. My evil eyes were arguably the ability that was most sensitive to my magic and charm stats. While the result of its effect was based on my magic stat, it was also amplified by the difference of league between me and my target, and the negative emotions the target had toward me. With how things were turning out, it was almost as if the evil eyes of petrification was created to become mine. After all, just obtaining the succubus queen's tattoo had nearly increased my evil eye's strength by half, but now that it was fully upgraded, it gave another 50% boost. I was itching to test it out. Will I be able to petrify monsters in beyond now? No, that's probably wishful thinking well, let's go clean up monster territories on earth later and test it out. Although it had only been a few days, the succubi battle units had swiftly taken care of a countless number of monsters. No matter how stealthy they were, with the discernible results they produced, it was difficult to remain hidden. After all, satellite observations revealed the number of monsters clearly dwindling. As if to satiate the hunger they'd be holding in all this time, the succubi sucked all monsters' seeds dry. As monsters absorbed by the succubi's magic didn't leave behind their corpses or even mana stones, such an expression wasn't an exaggeration. Just like that, Earth slowly began to contain fewer monsters. Although now wasn't a good time, Revival's members should soon be able to join the succubi in sweeping the monsters away. Soon, countries that lost their lands to monsters after two moon would be able to reclaim them. Soon. As soon as I thought that my heart began to pound. I, a single dungeon explorer, would come to command such a large-scale operation. The past me who just found out about the dungeon would never have imagined it. I'm sure we can do it. In fact, we could even exterminate all monsters and demons before the world's enemies arrive. I murmured with a smile. Thinking about what kind of an expression the demon lord would have upon our reunion, I began to look forward to the future. Thanks to toiling away for ten days, I could now somewhat naturally conceal my charm. As the charm stat was related to the magic stat to a certain degree, I could block the release of charm by circulating per Yuta circuit. Although the process was easily described in words, with how much charm I came to exude, completely containing it took some effort. Regardless, there was no longer any problem. Shin Nim, seeing as how happy you are, you must have finished grinding. Yep. Floor master skills really are amazing. Ah, come to think of it, the 65th floor master skill wasn't the type of skill I hoped for. I was hoping I could synthesize it with the skills I got from the 60th floor master and 10th floor beyond master of course, sweet nightmare was still a powerful skill, just that it was nothing more than a suicide skill without high charm. All this time, I wondered why the succubus queen blanked out when I had yet to do anything. I thought it was a bug of some sort, but it turned out that they were dazed from their failed skill. As for me, since my charm was higher than even the succubus queens, it seemed I didn't need to worry about the skill's penalty too much. I'm off then. Where are you going? Beyond's fifteenth floor, of course. Rest a bit. Rest. With me. Loretta shouted, but I shook my head with a grin. We can play after I clear Beyond's fifteenth floor. Really? Yes. Yay. Loretta shot up her arms in pure happiness. After smiling at her one last time, I headed to the gate leading to Beyond's fifteenth floor. At that moment, Loretta suddenly shouted. Wait! Beyond's fifteenth floor. Yeah, what about it? Yuak, that place not even Beyond explorers had succeeded in breaking through on their first try. Wait, they'll threaten Old Lord and give some advantage to Shin Nim. Loretta, it's already too late. Half of my body was already through the gate. Loretta frowned. Jeez. When you die, come to Fairy Garden. Then we can play together. It sounds like you're sentencing me to death. I shouted at Loretta who seemed to be certain that I would die. The next moment, the surrounding scenery changed. I had entered Beyond's fifteenth floor, where even the mighty Beyond explorers had failed to break through on their first try. Since I'm here, it's not like I can run away. With a hint of anxiousness, I murmured as I stared at the door in front of me. Not a single Beyond Explorer succeeded on their first try. 
Did that include Ren's father and that person from Beyond's residential area? At that moment, I remembered that Revival had a reliable senior Beyond Explorer. I immediately messaged her. Daisy. Un. She replied extremely quickly. She also sounded energetic. At the mansion. Some ayer made me food. Delicious. Um, that's good there's something I need to ask. I'm eating. Busy. Have you cleared Beyond's 15th floor? Still on the 82nd floor. Beat Beyond's 14th floor. Kong Shin, you're at 15th? Yeah. I was going to ask you about it but never mind. Wait for me. 15th floor, together. That's possible. Un. Form a party, then enter. Same floor, possible. I see but am already inside. Master doubting guild members potential, not good. Sorry, I didn't think we could challenge beyond as parties. We can challenge the 16th floor together then. I'm back to eating. Sure, sure. I finished my conversation with Daisy, who seemed to be sulking. It would have been nice if she told me about it beforehand looks like she didn't think I would arrive at the 15th floor so quickly. Daisy seemed to have wanted to challenge the 15th floor with me. It made sense why. Although we were far apart in the first dungeon, since our progress in beyond was about even, it was undoubtedly better to challenge the floor master together, especially since there was a high chance of dying. No matter how important the solo clear reward was, it wasn't worth wasting a month's worth of time. That said, even if we cleared the 15th floor together, Daisy's dungeon clearing speed was different compared to mine. After all, she was around the 80s level and I was around 60s. I could climb the first dungeon in just a few hours. Although I didn't think this would continue forever, I would still be faster than Daisy for a while. If we tried to match our speed, we would end up wasting more time than necessary. Of course, it still would have been nice to clear the 15th floor together damn. EEI, it's too late. Let's just go in. I held my crossbow. The moment I saw the floor master's weapon, I planned on firing dozens of bolts and instantly using weapon swap. That way, my spear would get the bonus from weapon swap. I also summoned my elementals. As I wanted to place more emphasis on power than speed, I infused pika into my weapon. To bolster my defense and create chances to counterattack, I infused Ryuya in my armor. Finally, to further increase my already quick speed, to gain the ability to fly, and to increase my overall ability, I infused Sharana into my body. Furthermore, I released the charm I was suppressing. Most likely as a result of Spirit of the Tamer, a sweet scent began to spread out. Yu Yu, although it was my own ability, I found it unpleasant. This might be the perfect chance to use Sky God's Rage. In fact, I may have saved it for this very moment. I kicked open the door. Then, as always, I shouted. Fight me. You hook. I couldn't help but gasp. A large, truly humongous space was waiting for me. That's. The fifteenth floors beyond master should have the traits of the skeleton knight and the giant ghoul. That is to say, it should be made of bones, have rotting flesh, be an undead, have great regeneration ability, and have terrifying charging ability. Goo. It roared. Several spots where chunks of flesh were missing revealed its eerie black bones, while its tail was only made of bones as it swayed in the air threateningly. Its skin was certainly rotting, though most of its body was made of bones. Although I couldn't be sure, I had the feeling it had an incredible regeneration ability and possessed an unavoidable charge skill. Of course, it was undoubtedly an undead. Gua. Dragon Zombie used Roar of Resentment. All living beings fall under a powerful curse and have their bodies mutated by resentment of evil. High-ranking chaos and fear permeates the area. Your pure soul perfectly countered the curse. You nullify all mental status effects. Your immunity to mutations prevents your body from mutating. The fact that I could counter this terrifying roar was certainly a good thing. However, there was something more important. Rather than looking down on explorers that failed on their first try, don't I need to look up to the explorers that defeated this damned guy? It wasn't anyone else. 
I, Kong Shin, had to fight this 200 meter long dragon zombie. Chapter, 217. I don't even know where to begin. With how huge the dragon zombie was, it didn't feel real. As a test, I aimed my crossbow at its I know, they had already rotted away into oblivion. That meant the effect of my evil eyes would be halved. Furthermore, since it was an undead, charm wouldn't work on it either. There was no chance to use all the weapons I honed through grinding the 65th floor. Goo. Kook, it's coming. For a zombie so big, the dragon zombie charged towards me with an incredible speed. I hurriedly soared into the air and dodged its charge. However, when it smashed into the wall, a countless number of bone spears shot out of the walls toward me. What? Shocked, I twisted my body in the air. However, with how many there were, it was impossible to dodge them all. Ruyue. An. Thousands of ice crystals formed around my armor, blocking the bone spears. Even so, a few managed to break through the ice, damaging me. I could feel a considerable amount of mana flowing into me. It meant that although this dragon zombie was an undead, it possessed an enormous amount of mana. Eat this. I consecutively fired dozens of bolts brimming with lightning. Thanks to its huge body, the bolts hit their mark without any resistance and crackled with lightning. Even so, they didn't seem to affect the dragon zombie too much. Kook, there goes my bolt spamming plan. Without hesitation, I swapped my weapon. At that moment, the dragon zombie roared. Your roars won't work. Was what I wanted to shout, but contrary to my expectations, terrifying bone spears pierced through its rotted skin and shot out of its body similar to when it hit the wall before. Goo. This bastard. It was like a machine gun endlessly firing bullets. With how many bone spears it was shooting out, it was difficult to even get near it. However, the crossbow bolts had little to no effect, and it was impossible to tell how long it would take to kill it with just the power of my elementals. Just like always, I had to take part in this fight by close combat. I grabbed one of the thick bone spears that shot towards me. With chaotic spear in one hand and the bone spear in the other, I charged forward. Of course, I didn't forget to activate divine speed. Goo. Yura. All the bone spears seemed to be traveling slowly. Using the spears in my hands, I hit them away like a headless chicken. What was a mere three second period felt like thirty seconds as I closed the distance between me and the dragon zombie. Eat this. Heroic strike. By sending the aura filled bone spear in my hand flying, I obliterated the clump of bone spears in my path. Then, holding on to the chaotic spear with both hands, I shot towards the dragon zombie's neck. Even though it didn't have any eyes, it managed to detect me, as it opened its mouth to swallow me whole. Humph. I stabbed my spear into its nose bridge and let the gathered energy detonate. Come on, even a critical hit can't cut off a bit of its flesh. Kwang. As I was expecting, it shot out a large bone spear from the attacked area. Honestly, it looked like a dragon, but it really was a damn cactus. I quickly pulled my spear out and drew forth Ryu's power. When the bone spear was close to piercing my chest, the freezing energy made it flinch, and I safely escaped using this opportunity. A moment later, the giant bone spear passed by my head and shredded through the air. Goo. Immediately afterwards, the dragon zombie charged. Though I knew what would happen when it hit a wall, I had no choice but to get out of its way. After all, I couldn't take a charge from its 200 meter long body. Ruyue, barrier. Sharana, strengthen it. Got it. Yes, master. I distanced myself from the walls as much as possible and ordered my elementals to create a barrier around me. Then, I troubled over what to do. Should I continue? No, it'll die if I do. The heroic strike just now had a good amount of my mana, and was even a critical hit. Ordinary floor masters would have lost half of their health with that attack. However, that bastard didn't even flinch. Damn. Plus, I would be in trouble the moment I was hit by even a single bone spear. Could this battle get any more unfair? Everyone would have taken out their god's true names here and still died. However, I wouldn't die. 
I had two gods' true names. Plus, I had. All right, they'll show you my full strength, you goddamned lizard. I frantically dodged the bone spears that broke through the ice barrier as I shot my body upward. Soon, this huge space's ceiling was in my view. Though I didn't know what material it was made of, there wasn't even a scratch even with all the bone spears that struck it. Found it. The special large-sized bone spirit shot out when I attacked it before. I flew up and grabbed it. Then, I moved Pika, who was inside the chaotic spear, to the bone spear. The dragon zombie was watching me with its hollow eyes. It then flapped its rotting wings. It was trying to fly. Hugh Gigant time. The already big bone spear became a hundred meters long. The weight in my hand caused me to groan, but it was still acceptable. Ruyue, materialize into human form. Hold that guy. After leaving my armor and materializing into the form of a beast girl, Ryue drew a silver trajectory as she shot toward the dragon zombie. Human form materialization had granted her a terrifying upgrade in power, as she grabbed the bone spears the dragon zombie shot out one by one, froze them, and shot them back. Meanwhile, I activated the skill I received from the 60th floor master superior doppelganger. Powered form. In that instant, a thicker and sharper armor appeared over my armor. The superior doppelganger possessed the ability to copy the powerful genes of its enemies to strengthen itself. The skill I received somewhat reflected this characteristic. You activated powered form. Your defense and attack power increases by 30% for 5 minutes. Sacrifice. A black aura enshrouded my spear. With this, the spear had doubled in power. If I used heroic strike, it would undoubtedly hurt. However, I wasn't done yet. Sky God's rage. Good, master. It'll maximize its power. Zeus lightning descended on the 100 meter long spear. Any impurities left in the bone spear was completely washed clean, as it overflowed with pure golden divine power. It was almost as if it was a completely different weapon. Seemingly understanding the power behind it, the dragon zombie desperately shot out bone spears. Careful. It's over. Now that ID used sacrifice, if it didn't die after this, I would likely die. However, a real man didn't hesitate. I threw the 100 meter long lightning. One could imagine how large this space was with how long the spear flew. Right, such an enormous spear could fly for two seconds, even when it was so fast that I could barely discern it with my eyes. I can't hold it back anymore. Let go. Now. The moment I gave the order, Ryue let go and flew back to me. At the same time, the lightning spear flew by her side and pierced through dragon zombie's neck, skewering it perfectly. I immediately coughed out a mouthful of blood. It also hurt like hell. My head felt blank. Because of how much life force I lost in an instant, I felt my body go limp. However, I grit my teeth and raised my head. Did it die? It didn't die. Pika exclaimed as she left the bone spear and flew back. I barely steadied myself in the air and examined the dragon zombie. The bone spear was still skewering it and erupting out with Zeus' divine power. With how the spear was sticking out from its mouth, it really did look like a kebab skewer. Goo. However, even with a giant spear penetrating it, the giant zombie dragon only let out pain screams as it flapped its wings to fly up. To think it was still alive it really did have a zombie-like life force. Wait, it really was a zombie. Damn. Ha, ha kook, this feeling. Devourer activates. Choose a target. With my HP hitting 10%, Devourer activated. I was thankful Sacrifice left 10% of my HP. Otherwise, Die Hard would have undoubtedly aviat. That said, I didn't think this dragon zombie could withstand the attack that crushed the power basilisk. Not to mention, it was even stronger than before. Though there were other explorers attacking the power basilisk, even taking that into account, this bastard was stronger than the power basilisk. How is that fair? Goo. Well, it's not completely absurd, I guess. Dozens of dark spheres rose up in the air. Seeing as how strength was leaving the dragon zombie's body, 
these dark spheres seemed to be the demonic energy forming its body. Even if it couldn't use magic, it looked like it could still utilize this energy. For getting rid of disgusting things, burning it was the best. Pika, it's your turn. Materialize. But master, master's mana is. It's fine. Now, it was time for my tattoo to shine. I immediately activated the succubus queen's tattoo. My mana, which had fallen to the bottom of my reserves with Ryu's materialization and the heroic strikes, skyrocketed, only stopping when it reached double the usual amount. My body was still worn out from sacrifice, and with mana suddenly filling up, I felt short of breath. Pika seemed to have realized how I was feeling, as she hurriedly materialized. Ill protect master from that evil energy. Thanks. My HP was at 10%. Although I gulped down a health potion, my HP only went up slowly. It seemed the recovery was being hindered by Devourer's effect. It was as if it was telling me not to play any tricks. I clicked my tongue and held up the chaotic spear. Then, gathering up the overflowing mana within me, I formed a whirlpool of chaos flames. Desire Thorn, Sacrifice. I activated the other two skills my armor, Pure Black Desire, had. The former increased the power of charge type attacks by 50% and helped me regain HP, while the latter doubled a skill's power in exchanging for making me take 25% of the damage. Since Devourer was also active, Pure Black Desire's abilities were in full effect. Goo. Humph. The demonic energy balls flew toward me. Pika harumphed and burned them up with her lightning. I also charged as I shouted. Qua. You activated Frozen Roar. All enemies in the battlefield freezes in place. All allies temporarily become super armored and all abilities are increased by 50%. Your chance of landing a critical hit doubles when fighting enemies affected by Frozen Roar. If you're alive after this, then they'll call you Hyung Nim. The twin-headed ogre's tattoos on my arms let out a bright red glow as if they were on fire. Once per day, increasing close-ranged attack skills damage by 50%. It went without saying that charge-type skills were close-ranged skills. Eat this. Wind King's Rage. I shot down towards the dragon zombie. As there were no trash monsters between us, I charged in full throttle. Focusing the enormous wind and lightning energy at the tip of my spear, I thrust forward. Ha Kook. Immediately before my spear stabbed it, a bone spear struck my chest. Although it didn't penetrate my armor, the enormous shock devoured what little HP I had left. I couldn't believe it still had bones to shoot out. Goo. Am not dead yet, fucker. Although I thought I would die for a second, Die Hard activated soundly and raised my HP back up. With how low my HP was, there was no way I would have charged head on without an insurance. Although Devourer tried to hinder Die Hard's recovery, my HP was thankfully going up. Although my charge's momentum was cut short, I continued forward and stabbed my spear in the dragon zombie's head. At the same time, Desire Thorn and Devourer's effect activated. Black energy left the screaming dragon zombie's body to become absorbed by me, but dissipated due to sacrifice's penalty. As I gasped for breath, I examined the dragon zombie, hoping it would scatter into particles of light. Cool, cool. What, you're still not dead? It roared. Lumps of flesh sprung up from its body like boiling water. It was trying to spit something out. In panic, I shouted. Just die already. Crimson roar. In the next moment, everything within my sight turned red. The dragon zombie's roar and my shout both became flames. In this space, only flames existed. With that, it was over. Congratulations. A first in Beyond's history. You defeated the floor master, Dragon Zombie, on your first try. Chapter, 218. Congratulations. For the first time in Beyond's history, you defeated the floor master, Dragon Zombie, on your first try. You received three skill points as a reward. Current skill points, 10. Your achievements reached a threshold, allowing you to obtain a third god's true name. All gods eyeing you begin to compete. You obtained the title, Zombie Dragon Master. 
All stats increase by 2. The title's effect will apply even when the title is not equipped. You obtain the entrance ticket to the SS Rank 2 Man Event Dungeon, Deadland. You cleared Beyond's 15th floor. You obtain the qualification to challenge the first dungeon's 66th floor. You obtain 5 bonus stats. Your maximum HP and MP increase by 2%. Experience has been added to the skills you frequently use to progress through Beyond's 15th floor. You receive the only reward left hidden for the first explorer. Congratulations! Your luck stat increases by 10. 1. Thorn Throne Epic Although messages were ringing in my ears, it was hard to hear them as I had just used Crimson Roar. I calmly waited for the flames to subside and read the message log. When I saw the line about the event dungeon, I coughed. It was Wonderland before, now it's Deadland. Plus, this one was SS rank though it was only for two people. Scary. Should I just sell it at the auction house? At that moment, someone's face flashed across in my mind. It was the face of someone who was arguably the second strongest member of Revival and loved the undead. Unlike the dungeon, monsters didn't scatter into particles of light in event dungeons. To Daisy, who loved the undead, this deadland was probably more of a wonderland than the wonderland. And this is the secret reward. Secret. Thorn Throne Epic. Its simple name made it even more scarier. Since it was the reward for defeating that damned zombie dragon, it was certainly not simple. With a firm mind, I grabbed the reward which was clearly labeled Epic. Its name didn't give any hints as to what kind of an item it was. When it materialized in my hand, I saw that it was a ring. It looked like it was made of dragon bones and glowed in a hazy black color. Its surface was spiky, as if it had thorns. If I wasn't careful, I felt that it would prick me. Thorn Throne Epic. Durability Unbreakable. Equipment Requirement Kong Shin. Option Strength 50, Dexterity 50. Constitution minus 20, Magic minus 20. When using attack skills, there is a 5% chance, dozens of dragon bone spears will shoot out. When attacked, there is a 10% chance, a bone spear will shoot out and attack the enemy. Skill Thorn Throne, usable once per day. For 5 minutes, your body gets covered with an armor of bones. You reflect 20% of all incoming damage. At this time, the enemy becomes afflicted with the unavoidable debuff soul contamination. This ring was deserving of its epic grade. No, perhaps it was even worthy of the legend grade. Though it decreased my constitution and magic stats, with its incredible strength and dexterity stat boost, it was still a 60 point net gain. The decrease in constitution and magic could be easily made up by distributing bonus stat points into them. Furthermore, the chances of its option activating was high. It was incomparable to the Death Blood Ring. Though, I did find it a bit perverted that the chance of the effect proccing was higher when I was attacked than when I attacked. Regardless, the Rayal Kicker was the skill the ring contained. It's here. It's finally here. The skill I was hoping for was a transformation skill, one that would let me display even greater strength for a limited period of time, just like the powered form I received from the 60th floor. Thorn Throne was precisely the type of skill I was hoping for. Although its offensive nature somewhat worried me, I hoped it would be fine. I immediately extracted Thorn Throne from the ring and stored it in the pocket watch. Then, without hesitation, I activated Skill Synthesis. I then placed Thorn Throne in the base skill slot and placed Powered Form in the supplemental skill slot. Of course, there were more. I placed Electric Guardian Form skill, extracted from the armor given by Beyond's 10th floor boss, Powered Lizard Knight. As for the reason I wasn't wearing it, as it was a unique grade armor, it paled in comparison to pure black desire. The reason I wanted a transformation type skill in the first place was because I had obtained Electric Guardian Form on top of Powered Form. Electric Guardian Form, for 5 minutes, an armor of lightning covers your body. All incoming magic damage decreases by 30%, and your speed and attack power increases by 20%. Although it was a bit lacking compared to the powered form or the thorn throne, it was still a transformation skill with excellent effects. It would only help, not hurt, as a supplemental skill. 
A man should be daring. I still had two skills left. One was Dragon Skin, the other was Gigant Time. While Dragon Skin greatly boosted my defense, it decreased my speed significantly, making me reluctant to use it in most situations. Since I generally didn't need Dragon Skin more than once per day, I decided to include it in the skill synthesis to amplify its effect. It was the same for Gigant Time. By combining multiple skills together, they could help to lessen each other's weaknesses. In truth, I had too many skills. It was best to lower the count whenever possible. Skill Synthesis Seeing the circular stone slab rotating, I let out a small sigh. I had a good feeling about it, just like the time I created Absolute Soul. Considering all the skills that went into it, it was only obvious. If I didn't like the resulting skill, I planned on synthesizing it away immediately. Soon, just like when Absolute Soul was created, the stone slab let out a brilliant light. I watched without breathing until the stone slab stopped spinning. At that moment, something unexpected happened. The stone slab, which was continuously shooting out brilliant light, suddenly crackled with lightning. W what? I thought this skill couldn't fail. The stone slab continued to crackle with lightning. Every time the lightning flashed, the golden brilliance the stone slab was letting out became a bit darker. It also began to spin, fluctuating in speed as strange symbols flashed above it. Oh, please, no. Dear God, Buddha, Allah, the dungeon's lord, please let it succeed. This skill can't even fail. Stop making me all nervous. As if to answer my prayer, the stone slab finally came to a stop. On top of the cracked stone slab crackling with lightning was a strange symbol that did not shine with even a hint of its original brilliance, instead letting out an eerie black light. Scary. Master, are you learning that? You you, that's dangerous, Shin. Master, I think that mana both accepts and rejects everything. It's a very powerful and dangerous power. Hey, why are you guys making me worry more? I was already feeling uneasy, but now that the elementals gathered and trembled, I felt even more uneasy. However, I couldn't just reject the skill and return it to its previous form. I had spent my precious skills for this. I strengthened my heart and put my hand on the symbol. At that moment, electricity flowed through my body. A shock incomparable to when I obtained absolute soul roared inside me. A skill that raised my league just by obtaining it. What the hell did I make? You obtained the transcendent skill, Overlord. A supreme being whose existence suppresses all. Once per day, for five minutes, you equip an armor made of the black amorphous mana Enigma. Your mana also becomes unionized with Enigma, transforming you into a five meter tall giant. Enigma is a mana that reigns over all mana. Being so rare that not even a proper name could be given, this ultimate mana is said to stand on the opposite side of divine power. Enigma affects even your weapons, granting you the ability to enlarge them up to 20 times by will and dyeing them with black mana. As no being can completely analyze this mana, your attacks become unpredictable and no attacks can display their full potential against you. While this skill is active, your HP and MP triples, and your stats double. When attacking the enemy, you have a 10% chance to afflict a random highest rank status effect. When attacked by an enemy, you have 20% chance to afflict a random highest rank status effect. Learning Overlord increases all of your stats by 30 points. Overwhelm and Absolute Soul becomes level 5. Even while Overlord is not active, you are affected by a part of its effect. Your HP and MP increases by 20%, and with a 1% chance when attacking an enemy and a 2% chance when being attacked by an enemy, you afflict a random highest rank status effect. This skill has transcended the control of the dungeon. It cannot be further synthesized. To create a skill above this skill, you must reach a realm higher than your current realm. You created a transcendent skill. Transcendent skills are skills born under the dungeon system, yet transcending the dungeon system. Even existences capable of ignoring the dungeon's influence cannot look down on this skill. Just by possessing this skill, all world's enemies will be on guard against you. The Lord sends his highest praise at this amazing achievement. You obtain 10 skill points. 
Current skill points, 20. AA. I exclaimed dumbfounded. As I carefully went over the flurry of messages, I interpreted what this skill, overlord, meant. The conclusion I reached was simple. I finally obtained it. A way to defeat the world's enemy. I had finally done it. A way to fight against them. A power not weaker than a god's power, the greatest power I could wield. Perhaps it was the time limit, perhaps it was because I had incorporated all the skills I could, or perhaps it was my unnaturally high luck stat. I had no way of knowing. However, I knew one thing for sure. By obtaining Overlord, I had taken a step forward towards the future I had to protect. When I left Beyond's fifteenth floor, Loretta received me with a blank expression. Now that I learned Overlord, I could just barely begin to understand the tip of the power within Loretta's body. She was so powerful that I could only barely wound her after using Overlord. In other words, she was already a transcendent that could wield Enigma as if it was her own. That was why I couldn't see through the power all this time. After all, there was no way for me to estimate the strength of someone who wielded a power on a completely different dimension. Shin Nim, recently, you've been changing every time I see you. It's making me very flustered. Um, you defeated it? Yes. At Loretta's question that simplified what happened, I gave a quick reply as I struggled to estimate the total amount of Loretta's unfathomable power. After thinking for a bit, Loretta asked. The power inside you do you know what it is? At Loretta's question, which implied that she already saw through my new skill and power, I once again answered briefly. Loretta then sighed, seemingly from relief. Then, she asked as she stole a glance. Should I congratulate you? Yeah. Seeing that Loretta's tone had gotten brighter, I gave up trying to estimate Loretta's power and answered. Immediately, she continued. Then, tonight, together in my cabin. No thanks. I didn't even finish. Shin Nim, stupid. Stupid, stupid. Loretta flapped her ears endlessly as she shouted. I replied with a grin. Like I said, I can't until I defeat the world's enemy. But. But. When you reject me so cold-heartedly, my heart tears up into a thousand pieces. You shouldn't ask when you know you're going to get rejected. I thought you'd go with the flow and go for it. I hope you realize it's not working because you're too scheming. Hying. Loretta drooped her ears as she made a tearful face. I grinned and patted her. But as promised, we can play for today. I'm feeling a lot more relaxed now. Okay. Should we start with strip poker? Bye, Loretta. Ah. I'm kidding. Play with me. Seeing Loretta hanging onto my legs, I announced my surrender. I then really ended up spending the whole day with her. Of course, we didn't play strip poker. Really? Chapter, 219 When I came back to the guild house after finally freeing myself from Loretta, I met Waya who looked unusually happy. Waya. Shin. Listen, I became a dimensional mercenary. After hearing her, I checked and saw that she had become a first dungeon gold rank explorer. Before I climbed up to the 65th floor, I had heard that she was near the end of the 79th floor. Before I noticed, she had broken become a platinum rank in the second dungeon and had advanced to the first dungeon. If she became a dimensional mercenary, it meant she had obtained the magic she lacked, dimensional travel. In other words, she had defeated the 50th floor master Wendigo alone. Of course, it wasn't surprising as Waya should have been the ice-wielding Wendigo's natural enemy. In fact, it might have been killed the moment the fight began. In any case, after reporting to me, Waya shouted energetically. Let's go take on a dimensional mercenary mission. With just us two. My dimensional travel still has over a month-long cooldown. Can't you do something about that with your skill points and will? Nope. TSK. She clicked her tongue openly. Then, she suddenly tilted her head as she stared at me. Shin, did you change somehow? Oh, I just obtained a new skill. A pretty good one. Mm, -hmm, for that to be true, you look more than a little stronger humph, it'll surpass you when I obtain a god's true name. Got it? Waya really was sensitive to mana. 
Seeing Wyatt clenching her fists, I replied with a smile. Yeah, I hope you do. You you, that way of talking whatever, join me for a drink. You won't refuse this too, right? That doesn't have a cooldown time. It seemed I wouldn't be able to enter the dungeon again today. As I followed Waya who led me forward excitedly, I made a bitter smile. Well, I could just rest today and work harder tomorrow. The next day, around noon, I messaged Labik. How was it? HH how what? Seeing from your reaction, it looks like Ren took my advice. I didn't want to think this, but perhaps Ren really was an idiot. No, perhaps he was Ren because he was an idiot. With a smirk, I interrogated Labik. What happened? HH how can I tell anyone that? Not not that anything happened. Eh. Not believing my ears, I asked again. Nothing happened. Why yeah. We just slept in each other's arms. You want me to believe that? What else was I supposed to do? I was already frozen from nervousness. In fact, I deserve praise for being able to be with Ren Nim for that long without fainting. Ah. Can a grown-up woman and man just sleep together in bed without doing anything? Well, I guess if they were tired no, even so. Just when I gave you the perfect opportunity. Rather than that, I'm more worried that Ren Nim slept so peacefully he must not see me as a woman. Geez, that doesn't matter. You should just. Can I tell the other girls what you just said? No, please save me. I'm trying to help Labik here. Also, I'm different from Ren. Humph, that's what you get for speaking as if it's easy. But still, thanks. Ehu, good luck. Not knowing what to say, I hung up. Regardless of what happened, with this, she should have gotten closer to Ren. I predicted that Ren would start visiting Lebwick's bedroom more often. Then, one day. Although I would need to wait longer until the day I ate banquet noodles came, the current situation wasn't so bad. With that thought, I went back to the dungeon. The 66th floor surprisingly had bats once again. I could easily predict what monsters I would face. Though I couldn't confirm my suspicion as the 66th floor only had bats, I knew someone who could tell me the answer. Yep, you're right. It's the incubus. I knew it. After reaching the 66th floor shop in just one hour and a half, I could get a confirmation from Loretta. Filling up ten floors with just bats and mares, isn't that being too cheap? Kulham, I mean, it's true that just sending out succubi is unfair. Resistance against charming is very important. It's something both male and female explorers need to possess. That's true. I've been seeing the charm stat in a new light recently, but still incubi. Uhuhu, you want to know what happens to female explorers charmed by incubi? No. I blocked my ears, and Loretta made a cute smile and replied. They only get their life force and mana drained to death. For the record, it's the same for male explorers who get charmed by succubi. Shin Nim just never got to experience it. The dungeon is a place to help explorers grow, not a place to toy with their hearts and body. Are you perhaps disappointed? My friends are climbing the first dungeon too. My sister and Da Aina included. Oh. Ho ho ho, aren't you glad I let you know before you started worrying profusely? Loretta made an awkward smile and looked away. Though I gave her a glare, it was true that I considered joining the girls if needed. Relieved, I left for beyond. Beyond 16th floor had the Dullahans right, Dullahans, plural. Human, fight me one on one with honor. Are you a knight? Fight me. With over a hundred so-called knights asking for fair fights, I gave up on fighting fairly immediately. Since I knew I would face Dullahans, I already had a plan in mind. Resolved to stay on the 16th floor for a long time, I initiated my plan setting things on fire. Ha! After enveloping my chaotic spear with a whirlpool of chaos flames, I shot it forward. Of course, just once wasn't enough. With everything that happened, I had over 110,000 mana. I swept through the entire floor by pouring in mana to create chaos flames. Cack! These flames! Outburst! Hit by the chaos flames, the Dullahans panicked. 
They didn't even think to charge through the wall of flames, as they tried to attack me with their skills. However, the rock shards created by outburst became tiny fragments as they burned up when they passed through the chaos flame wall. By the time they hit me, they were no different than ant bites. Wait, what's that? Qua. A strange scene entered my eyes, and I shook. The floor's special property. I'd been looking down on the 16th floor's special property. On the 15th floor, monsters split when they hit the walls, and even the dragon zombie's bone spears multiplied and shot out. The 16th floors, on the other hand, fused everything that hit it. For example, the rock shards that fell to the ground after hitting me returned to floor and restored the hollowed walls. The reason I used the term fuse instead of absorb was because even the chaos flames I shot out fused with the floor. The entire floor became hotter and was dyed in a more reddish black color. If every magic and techniques I used transformed the floor's environment, it was possible for me to be hurt by my own attacks. That said, I was thankful that I found out about this now rather than when I used a different attack. Although chaos flames burned indefinitely, they could never hurt the me, their creator. Quiak. Painful. Extinguish this flame. If you're a knight, fight me fair and square. You shouldn't say that when there's over a hundred of you. Even though I didn't do anything, the floor affected by chaos flames caused the Dullahans to writhe in pain until they died. It seemed that they realized that the chaos flames would disappear if I died, as they charged at me. However, I had no fear for the Dullahans without outburst. I simply fought them all together with lightning spear storm and used heroic strikes with chaos flames to finish them off. He's strong. Attack with outburst. But if we do, the walls will fuse again. Knights don't fear death. Knights only fear cowardly defeats. It seemed the wall's fusion property didn't activate randomly. In the first place, everything was designed to give the monsters an advantage. The fusion took place when the Dullahans used outburst. I understood that through their conversation, and seeing the thousands of rock shards caused by the Dullahans that didn't fear death, I created specially large chaos flames without hesitation. Quiak. Coward. I might die here, but I didn't lose. To be honest, it was stupid. Regardless, because chaos flames spread across the whole floor, I broke through beyond 16th floor by simply running for 5 hours, all the while thinking that this might be a new record. After leaving beyond, I drank the 10 gold worth fatigue recovery juice as I always did and headed to the guild house. Surprisingly, Yua was there as well. Yua, shouldn't you be at school? Appa, it's 9p. Eh. I checked the clock, and it really was 9. With how much time I've been spending in the dungeon, I seem to have lost my sense of time. With a bitter smile, I patted Yua who approached me. My bad. Wasn't Appa going into beyond? What happened? Mm, well, I got lucky, so I finished it quickly. Appa really is amazing. Nice. I raised Yua's respect for me naturally. Appa, I became gold rank today. Already. She defeated the Wendigo. Of course, Yua must have grown stronger, but the Wendigo's freezing energy shouldn't have been so easy to deal with in shock, I examined Yua from head to toe. Yua then spoke with a hint of embarrassment. I'm fine, Appa. I'm not hurt. Really? The floor shop owner treated me kindly and sold me equipment to deal with the freezing energy for a cheap price. Our guild is really amazing. Uh, yeah. Loretta must have done something in the background since I didn't want to ruin Yua's good mood, I chose to stay silent. However, I soon noticed Yua staring at me intently, almost as if she wanted to ask something of me, but was hesitating. Um Appa. If there's anything you want, tell me. For you, I can even pluck the moon. I was truly confident in being able to do so. Although it would be difficult to pluck both moons, Earth's original moon should be possible if I use all my power. However, Yua laughed and shook her head. I'm happy with just looking at the moon. We don't have anywhere to put it anyways. Right. Instead you see, I want to tame monsters other than mantises. I know I can get stronger than Wei if Appa is busy, it's fine, but when you have time can you go with me to monster territories on Earth? 
I replied without a shred of hesitation. Actually, Appa's been planning on taking care of a few monster territories. How's a week later? Really? I love you, Appa. Just like that, the reclaiming of the Philippines began. Chapter, 220 Even if Yua needed to tame new monsters, I couldn't delay my dungeon progress to make time for it. Of the two-year time period, a month had already passed. However, there was a way to hunt monsters on Earth and not slow down the dungeon progress. That was the period of time where I needed to grind floor masters, during which I had free time once I finished my daily grind. Since the 65th floor master was a succubus queen, the 70th floor master was likely the incubus king. Even if he was three times stronger than the succubus queen, I still had the confidence to defeat him in under five minutes. Even if I took an hour to rest between the fights, I only need one hour and fifty minutes to grind him ten times. In other words, I would have about twenty-two hours of free time. It was more than enough time to take care of Earth's monsters or travel to Mars and back. Telling Yua to wait a week was the same as declaring that I would reach the seventieth floor in a week. This was possible for a simple reason. The first dungeon posed no problem for me whatsoever, and beyond floor's property was also helping me. To be fair, I was a bit worried about the Grim Reaper. He was one of the most difficult floor masters I fought. However, with the terrain property helping me, it seemed doable. Goo. Hateful human, do you not know the word fair? That's what I want to ask you bastards. After breaking through the first dungeon's 67th floor in the blink of an eye, I immediately charged into beyond 17th floor. There, I thoroughly scorched the Dullahans. While they possessed powerful skills and tough bodies, they seemed to have left their ability to learn and manners at home. It was the first time I was able to sweep Beyond's floor so easily. Against the Orc Lords, I really had to use my brain. You cleared Beyond's 15th floor. You obtained the qualification to challenge the first dungeon's 68th floor. You obtained 5 bonus stats. Your maximum HP and MP increase by 2%. Experience has been added to skills you frequently use to progress through Beyond's 15th floor. You mastered high rank martial arts technique. Your body and mana reaches a perfect harmony. Positive effects will be added to all actions done with your body. All physical attack damage and speed increases by 20%. Although you have the groundwork to create a higher martial path, you cannot create a new technique yet due to your lack understanding in martial arts. Oh. The only thing I did on the 17th floor that could be considered martial arts was kicking the heads that flew at me. I only did it out of annoyance as the Dullahans literally used their heads when I said they didn't try to use their head. I didn't think it would lead to this. I especially liked martial arts technique as it affected other abilities and skills. I didn't think I would master it so quickly, but I couldn't complain, as the 20% increase to physical attack damage and speed applied to my spear technique. However, it suspected that it would be difficult or even impossible to create a higher martial arts technique. I had only learned and honed what was passed down in the family and having had experience with creating Mad Typhoon, I couldn't even begin to understand how to create a new martial arts technique. In getting stronger. It really feels like the best way to move has been ingrained on my mind. 20% increase to attack power and speed. Although it looked simple in numbers, in truth, it only meant that I could more skillfully draw out the power hidden in my body. Mastering a skill by beyond skill experience enhancement was great, but I still needed time to thoroughly understand the change. Of course, as I didn't have much time, I would have to get used to it through brawling with monsters. Alright, let's bring Latte and head to the 68th floor. I gave a spirited shout and jumped into the gate. Being able to focus solely on the dungeon was a refreshing feeling. After finishing our joyride through the 68th floor, I sent Lade back to the mansion and was about to jump into Beyond's 18th floor. At that moment, I received a message. As it was a man's voice, I thought it was Ren or Father, but when I heard the entire message, I froze in front of the gate to Beyond. It's been a while, friend. Right, I was thinking it was about time I was interrupted someone didn't want me to just freely climb the dungeon. After letting out an inaudible sigh, I opened my mouth. It's been a while, Ellos. How many months had it been? From what I remember, 
The last time I talked to Elos was when Ludia and Shuna went with Elos' party to defeat the 40th floor master. Immediately after that, Ludia's Luca continent was. When I contacted Elos after everything had been taken care of, he didn't pick up. After obtaining an ability after coming to Earth, Ludia could climb the dungeon with just Shuna so there was no problem, but we were both worried about being unable to contact Elos. After all, he was the first friend I made in the dungeon. I was worried sick. I knew you weren't dead because you didn't disappear from my friend list, but. Huh, sorry. A lot happened. Just like always, he sounded calm and collected. If he was gone for a few months, he must have been so busy that he could barely sleep, but his voice did not show any such signs. Is everything taken care of? Yeah. We stopped the invader's major attack. The hero survived too somehow. That's great. Yeah it's great that you and Paludia are alive too. I'll see you later. We can defeat a floor master together or something. Huh, yeah, hurry up. I knew it would be impossible to party with Elos. Even so, I encouraged him fully. Elos probably didn't think that I could have reached the 70th floor in just a few months. Although not a long time had passed, many things had changed. Thinking about everything that happened, I was about to say goodbye. Elos, however, seemed to have something else to say. I heard you became a dimensional mercenary. Hmm. Oh, yeah, you knew. I'm really proud to be your friend. I respect you as a friend too when you're free, can you come to my continent? We're currently preparing a final offensive to drive away the invaders. When my dimensional travel cooldown time ends, they'll be more than happy to go. Ha, huh, thanks. You couldn't be more reliable. It seemed the war between the Edeus continent and its invader was coming to an end. Unlike the Luca continent and the Panon continent, the Edeus continent seemed to have the power to resist and was even winning by the sound of it. Perhaps, there were warriors as powerful as me fighting alongside the hero. If Elo's world could drive away the world's enemy, it was a cause for celebration. If I couldn't give them a hand, I would be even happier. I inwardly placed a dimensional mercenary mission on reserve and jumped into Beyond's 18th floor feeling refreshed. Foolish human. Why must you give yourself to death? As expected, I ran into Grim Reapers filling up a wide passageway. The Grim Reaper possessed several abilities. They were skilled in handling their large scythes, shot aura waves, shot dozens of small scythes, and even blinked behind me suddenly. The death roar they used doubled the undead's attack and halved the living's defense. They could even make scythes pop up from the ground. I really wanted to ask, couldn't they have conquered a world by themselves? Not to mention, they were even stronger in beyond. We shall guide you to death. Come with us. Who'd want to go with you floating hobos? I prepared myself for what was to come, leaving everything to continued use of divine speed and mana recovery through absolute soul. The Grim Reapers teleported like ghosts from horror movies and sent aura waves flying toward me. Using Ryu's power to block them, I flew up. Die! In the next moment, a Grim Reaper appeared behind me and swung his scythe. However, the cape hanging on my back immediately fluttered and hit the scythe away. Although the Grim Reaper's sudden blink attack was the most annoying attack, it was a considered an ambush. As such, Felix's chaotic cape nullified it with its anti-ambush effect. Your first. Heroic strike. Kia. The spear I thrust out penetrated the reaper's body. Although small scythes shot out, they were easily blocked by my armor. They didn't work either. Even though the grim reapers had gotten stronger, my increase in strength had more than made up for it. With an evil grin, I twisted the spear which was still stuck inside him. The reaper instantly became particles of light and scattered into the air. Just a single heroic strike with a normal amount of mana could kill a reaper. This human is resisting. Foolish. After sending one reaper away, I turned to the others. In the air, dozens of large scythes were slashing down towards me. Don't you get tired? I quickly dodged and the scythes also struck the ground. The passageway immediately began to transform. The floor, which was made of stone-like material, became metallic and sharp spikes protruded out, 
making it impossible to step foot on the ground. Of course, I didn't believe that the spikes would stay on the ground forever. The grim reapers shouted together. As you rejected a comfortable death, you shall face a cruel gruesome death. Qua. Grim Reaper uses death roar. Absolute soul, overwhelm, and high charm nullifies death roar. What? O.R. Roar. I was also surprised. I didn't think I could completely nullify death roar. I thought only world's enemies could ignore the dungeon skills. However, not only did I nullify the debuff from death roar, I even nullified the self-buffing part of death roar. Wait then was it the same for Orc Lord's war cry? His league a truly lofty league. Overwhelming grim reapers is this man human. The reapers also seemed shocked as they froze in the air. I didn't miss the opportunity and used elemental tempest and sacrifice. Quiak. You you are the dungeons. The reapers disappeared muttering things I couldn't understand. After absorbing elemental power, the passageway began to glow in a five-colored light and shot out its spikes. However, with no reapers attacking me, dodging them was piece of cake. I quickly weaved through the spikes and flew across the passageway, murmuring. If him this much, the world's enemy I need to get stronger. I was no longer the kid that didn't know anything. Now that I could fathom the enemy's power, I could set a clearer goal for myself. Although the dungeon was powerful, it undoubtedly had a limit. Perhaps, what the dungeon wanted from me was to surpass the power it bestowed me. Overlord, God's true names, and absolute soul. These were all ways to accomplish that. Although I should be happy, I wasn't. With a stiff expression, I progressed through beyond, believing that someone beyond the dungeon could answer my questions. For days later, I reached the first dungeon's 70th floor. It was two days earlier than the promised day with Yua. Chapter, 221. Another man. You're too honest. The 70th floor master was, unsurprisingly, the Incubus King. With stylish clothes and handsome features, he indeed possessed looks that could capture any women. Although his high charm could affect both men and women, I was unaffected thanks to my high charm. I do not enjoy fighting. I would rather whisper into the ears of beautiful women. Yeah, yeah, I get it. You're a creep. Come. I especially hate men who give off enticing scents like you. They steal my women. Mind your own business. The Incubus King charged at me with an ornate longsword. When he swung his sword, thousands of ice spears appeared in the air. If anything, I had to recognize his boundless mana. My ice spear will penetrate you. Can you stop making everything lewd? Also, it'll be the one penetrating you with my ice spear. I smirked and charged forward. At the same time, Ryue flew up. In her beast girl appearance, Ryue shouted. Anyone who bullies Shin, he'll teach you a lesson. Immediately, the thousands of ice spears flying toward me halted. Then, along with Ryu's hand gestures, some became bigger and some combined with others. The Incubus King waved his sword around with a shocked expression, but it was too late. He had completely lost control of his ice spears. A mere elemental dares to go against me. If you look away, you'll die. Not that he wouldn't die if he didn't look away. While he's staring at the ice spears in the air, I used divine speed and shot a heroic strike wrapped in chaos flames. The attack drilled into his shoulder and created a huge hole. Quiak. My noble body. Didn't the other men that went through here do the same thing? Are you looking down on me for being restrained by the dungeon? You're no better, a mere human being played by fate. In his rage, the Incubus King charged towards me. I grinned and held up my spear. Chaos flames and white aura mixed together, burning in a hard-to-describe form. I then charged toward the Incubus King fuming with a navy demonic energy. Go to hell with your fate bullshit. At the same time, hundreds of ice spears strengthened by Ryue descended. The Incubus King swung his sword and created a barrier. He then used magic to break the incoming ice spears, but his face was grim, as if he already knew he would lose. He wasn't wrong. He had already used quite a lot of his mana to create the ice spears. 
When it failed, his defeat was only a matter of time. Human, human, human. Despair. Surrender to fate. Become a loser and forever slumber in resentment. Stop talking about yourself. The ice spears then broke through his barrier and struck his body. His beautiful clothes became shredded as his limbs also became severed. Coincidentally, only his face remained unhurt. Kohak I won't forget you. The incubus king coughed out black blood and glared at me. I struck my spear into his face and replied. Bullshit to the end. Even when I see you floor masters ten times a day, none of you remember me. A grand achievement. You defeated the floor master, Incubus King, alone. Amazing. You became level 71. You obtained the qualification to challenge Beyond's 20th floor. You obtained five bonus stats. You obtained the title, Incubus King Slayer. All stats permanently increase by one. This effect will apply even if the title is not equipped. You became gold rank 2. Congratulations. You defeated the Incubus King alone. You obtained the special reward, Superior Incubus King's Top. You obtained 500,000 gold. Choose your reward. 1. Captivation Magic Book. Unlike the Succubus Queen, it seemed somebody had already claimed the first reward for the Incubus King. In other words, an explorer who had been bewitched and killed by the Succubus Queen had slain the Incubus King in cold blood. Incubus King, you poor guy. Regardless, the solo kill reward was the important thing. Captivation Magic Book. Another item beyond my expectations had come out. I couldn't refuse the reward either. Thinking I might need to learn to control my charm again, I sighed as I chose the reward. You learn the passive skill Captivation. Captivation strengthens your charm. At level 1, it increases your charm by 10%. Against members of the opposite sex, your charm will have double the effect. I knew it. If this effect multiplied the amplification I got from the succubus queen's tattoo, then my charm would have quadrupled the effect to females. Even if the effect worked additively, it would still be triple. Since the skills I obtained from the dungeon all worked additively, my charm most likely tripled instead of quadrupling. The 60th through 70th floor really increased explorer's charms. Why I must love it. Regardless, since my charm reached a troublesome realm once again, I had to control my charm before I headed out to the floor shop. Welcome back, Shin Nim Yuyu, your charm increased again. If you want to resent someone, Loretta, resent the one who made the dungeon like this. Why would I resent anyone? I'm fine as long as Shin Nim doesn't go around seducing women. In fact, I have to thank the Lord for this. At least you're honest. At my wry smile, Loretta puffed out her chest proudly. Being honest is my good point. Then, Shin Nim, now. See you later. I knew you'd say that. I hate you. Leaving Loretta behind, I went back into the floor master room to fight the Incubus King again. To implement my plan in time, I had no choice but to work hard. Two hours afterward, at the guild house on Earth, I checked the guild members who wanted to participate in this expedition. I had already notified everyone on the day I talked to Yua, and after I cleared the 70th floor earlier than expected, I told whoever coming along to finish their preparations by today. The result was that it would be faster to count the number of people not here. No, wait. Everyone's here. We're going to reclaim a country. Isn't it obvious that we'd come? Waya spoke as everyone's representative. She was wearing formal attire and was holding a long silver stick in one hand. She stood next to an empty wall, ready to give a presentation. Michelle and Leon also nodded. She's right. I joined Revival because I believed we would drive away the monsters from Earth. This is the first step. There's no way I can miss it. Well said, old man. Besides, if I don't help, it'll feel weird receiving help to reclaim Texas or California. Kuu, having California taken by them was indeed a great catastrophe. Huh, it's fine, it's fine. Although we can't bring the dead back to life, lost lands can always be reclaimed. Over 10% of you. Population lived in California. 
When two moon occurred, a large-scale monster attack decimated half of California's population. Even those who survived had lost their families, properties, and hopes of living. Well go to California soon, so don't worry, Leon. I believe you, friend. Shush. Waya silenced us and projected a screen onto the wall. The place we're going to today is the Philippines. Philippines. Because of monsters, 90 million people lost their lives in the Philippines. That's 90% of their population. It was one of humanity's greatest catastrophes. I've seen a satellite image. It's full of vegetation like it has traveled back in time. It's possible that it's part of another world's natural environment. Even if you've been to the Philippines before, don't think the Philippines we're about to go to is the same Philippines as the past. Waya spoke with a stern tone and pointed to the Philippines on the screen's map. Then, a few pictures popped up on the screen. Tall trees and dense vegetation made it look like we were looking at a scene from the Jurassic period. Inside the forests, we could see giant monsters roaming about. Their pictures taken during the Philippines during the catastrophe. At the time, three SS rankers including me fought against the monsters there. Back then, we had to retreat without even killing 10% of the monsters in the coast. Like the other occupied countries, Philippines monsters are rather high-ranked. The weakest are a ranks with 60% being S-rank, 10% being SS-rank, and 1% being above that. Only that? Ow! Don't look down on others just because you're strong. Lydia hit my head. I reflected. They might have gotten even stronger by now. We can probably safely assume that most monsters had a half-rank increase. The succubi battle units recovered most of the islands other than the mainland, and their reports prove that this is true. Right. The monsters there were unusually strong. Dear husband, this Philippines I think there's something in its center region. I felt a powerful aura that made me tremble. It could be a commander-level monster. In any case, this operation can't be done without Shin. As you know, Shin, your evil eyes will be important. Leave it to me. I could petrify all monsters below SS rank without having to use mana. However, as monsters with relatively high ranks could naturally cancel the petrification over time, we had to go through the process of shattering their petrified bodies. Waya then showed us more pictures of the Philippines, explaining the monsters endemic to the area. With the Philippines being an island nation, even coastlines had powerful oceanic monsters. As for deeper inland, there were many powerful mammalian monsters, insect monsters, and harpy-type monsters. There really were monsters of all sorts. There's also the matter that served as the how this operation started finding elite monsters for Yua. Daisy, you stop drooling. Good monster are, dead monster. Your definition of dead monsters is undead monsters. Makey, strong because dead. Other mantis, weak because alive. Is Makey the name you gave to the evil mantis queen? Kong Shin, smart student. While I smacked Daisy's head, Waya's explanation was reaching its end. We've already explained the situation to Guardian and Freedom Wing. The media will talk about us around dinner time. There are some volunteers from various agencies. Reject everyone under SS rank. That's everyone then. Waya burned away some of the papers in her hand. Now that I thought about it, the only SS rankers not part of Revival were the ones we made into first dungeon explorers. They were undoubtedly still busy climbing the dungeon. Once the papers in her hand became cinders, Waya's expression became serious. Let me confirm one last time. We aren't forcing anyone to participate in this operation. If you're unsure of your abilities. While snorting, Lydia retorted. You might want to go with Shin alone, but I won't let that happen. Tisk, even if I wanted to, sister-in-law is coming anyways. Waya turned away and grumbled. Yua tilted her head and asked Waya. Sister-in-law. What does that mean? My understanding of this must be wrong can you tell me? Scary. And cold. Thinking perhaps it was just me, I looked at Waya who was a SS rank flame ability user. Seeing how she was also trembling, it seemed the temperature around us had gone down. Yua, don't be so scary. 
I want to get close to you. Why do you not like me? There's no way I don't like you, Uni. Haha <laughs> so, what's the other meaning of sister-in-law? Don't bully Waya, Yua. Her life points have already hit zero. Reclaiming a country with just us it's almost like we're superheroes from comic books. You're not wrong, Kong Yunggong. We're this world's heroes. Shin, Yunggong 1. What choices of names? Who cares? Shin, Yunggun. What better describes them? Men, stop blabbering like idiots. We're heading out now. All 17 members of Revival immediately set off to the Philippines. From this moment on, we were the main characters of this heroic tale. 1. Shin means God and Yunggong means hero in Korean. Chapter, 222. The 17 members of Revival along with Pleen, Latte, and Licorice, totaling 20, got on Waya's private plane. As the Succubi battle units were already in the Philippines, only we needed to go. For the record, Walker was the pilot, being unexpectedly skilled in many areas. Among these members, not everyone was harmonious. In particular, although I hadn't been paying much attention, the monster members didn't get along. You vulgar bat, get off of Hero's lap. Are you stupid because you're bird-brained? This is where I belong, dear husband's lap. Stop squawking noisily and go away, wyvern. Your scales are getting in the way. I want to be next to Shin too. As Pleen was weaker in both magical and physical abilities, she had the least say, while Latte and Licorice fought fierce psychological battles. Strictly speaking, Latte was weaker than Licorice. However, Latte was still above Licorice in physical abilities. Of course, I wasn't too happy with this arrangement. The fact that they were fighting over me was even more troublesome. The other girls already gave me a headache, but now even the monsters were joining in. When I was just about to say something, a thin layer of ice spread over Licorice who was sitting on my laps. Kayak. What's this? Daddy's lap is mine. Ina pushed off the slightly frozen Licorice and plumped down on my laps. I widened my eyes and shouted. Ina. You can control your ice magic now. A little bit. Did I do well, Daddy? Yep. Yep. Good job. Kook, dear husband abandoned me. Serves you right, Bat. You go away. And you too, sparkly eyes. My daughter. My daughter was establishing order. Touched by Ina's power to shoo the monsters away, I hugged Ina, who made cute noises. Ah, of course, Yua was sitting in the window seat next to me. I wonder if my kids will be safe in the Philippines. Yua murmured in worry and looked out the window, though there were only clouds in sight. Are you talking about your mantises? Yes, they're still young. So I'm a bit worried. Although a few of them had died as they climbed the dungeon, most of the mantises survived and grew stronger with Yua. With the buffs Yua could cast as a tamer, each mantis had power on par with an S-rank monster. I couldn't help but shiver thinking about how strong they would be when they fully grew up. Even now, they certainly weren't weak. Don't worry. They look all grown up to me. They only got bigger in size. They're still kids at heart. ITLL be fine. Guys grow up by being apart from their mothers. But there are more girls. I didn't know. Sorry, Mantis girls. In any case, they were live monsters and couldn't enter the inventory like Daisus undead monsters. For when we needed to travel, we temporarily put them in the guild's resort, resting place of the angels. Yua would then go back to the dungeon and bring them out when she needed them. Looking back, obtaining resting place of the angels was God's work. Well be there in thirty minutes. The succubi units cleared space for us to land, but with so many monsters are popping up from the ocean, they're apparently having trouble holding on. Get ready. Yua, make sure you bring out your mantises when you see an opportunity. Yes, Uni. Shin, are you ready? Leave it to me. Seeing the effect of my evil eyes strengthened by charm, I was sure everyone would be stunned. With a grin, I initiated Peruta circuit. The time to release the power I had been hiding was getting closer. 
Twenty minutes afterwards, while the plane was still soaring through the sky, Wyatt shouted sharply. Attack incoming. The outside suddenly got noisier. At the same time, Wyatt did something, making the plane's walls transparent as if we were floating in air. I mused, technology sure advances fast. However, now wasn't the time for that. There were already monsters all around the plane. Of the flying monsters in the Philippines, there were harpies, giant eagles and hawks, dinosaur-like monsters, flying insects, and even wyverns. I immediately thought of capturing a strong male to introduce him to Latte, but I rejected the idea when I turned around and saw Lottie's cold and terrifying gaze. Damn, could my tamed beasts read my mind. An ambush by flying monsters. Daisy, can you take care of it? Kana, already on it. Daisy answered confidently. Immediately afterwards, a ginormous tuna. Like monster appeared in the air. I was wondering what monster Kana was. It was none other than Iken, one of Daisy's strongest undead monsters. Kana, learned transparency. Grew up well. Daisy strutted out chest and made a proud expression. I thought undead monsters couldn't grow. Regardless, it was amazing that it learned a new skill. Unlike what I thought before, it seemed undead monsters could grow. Oh Ong. Iken cried reliantly. Just from that, some of the weaker monsters exploded. What a monster. Daisus obtaining it in the Panan continent couldn't have been better. Kana, send them flying. Beam. The moment Daisy shouted, Iken. No, Kana, opened its giant mouth and sucked in the surrounding air. Naturally, the nearby monsters couldn't overcome the suction force and was pulled into Kana's mouth. Most of the attacks towards Kana dissipated when they hit the light shooting out from Kana's body, and even the attacks that managed to get through the light couldn't penetrate Kana's skin. It seemed flying monsters could be just left to Kana. Goo. Finally, Kana shot out a giant pillar of light. Everything in its path was wiped clean, and as surrounding monsters moved to fill up the now empty space, it could clearly be seen that their numbers of thinning. I've heard the description, but that thing is too overpowered. Kong Shin, almost won against Kana. What do you mean almost? I did win. Kong Shin fought, El paid eyes. Can't win against Kana. You. While we quarreled, Kana leisurely took care of the rest of the monsters. With Kana guarding us, we safely landed on the coast. Dear husband. Dear husband is here. When we got off the plane, the succubi fighting the monsters all turned to face me. I could feel the other girls poking me with narrowed eyes. I'm telling you, it's not my fault. Is everyone off? Walker. I'm here. After confirming that everyone had gotten off the plane, Waya stored the plane in her inventory. The monsters hurtling towards the plane changed their direction towards us, but were immediately shot down by the succubi's magic. Dear husband, we're extremely sorry to say this, but can you participate in the battle? Many kids are lacking in mana, so they can't handle the monsters properly. Yeah, I'm going now. I immediately summoned Sharana and infused her into my body. Although I also summoned Ryue and Pika, I didn't infuse them in my weapons. Spirit aura was only needed against monsters I needed to put in effort to defeat. Against a large number of enemies, I only needed Sharana, and the other elementals were better off in their materialized forms. I soared into the air and shouted. Fight me. You used provoke. All enemies in the area charge in to kill you. This feeling, I had felt it before. It was probably in the Panan continent. The feeling when all beings in the world were staring at me and attacking me. It was the moment when my heart tightened the most. In one go, I fully released all the charm I had been holding back. At that moment, even I felt an electrifying scent. While I was rather annoyed, my evil eyes, strengthened to the extreme by my charm, radiated a powerful golden light and shone down on everything in my sight. In this regard, I couldn't be happier with my high charm. Furthermore, everything in the world became stone. My God! Waya murmured in a stiff voice. Everyone else also only stared at me speechless. I waved my hand and spoke. 
sorry, I fully released my charm, so you shouldn't look at me for too long. Un, right. But well, it's too late to try to ignore your charm, so don't worry. Kuhum. Waya, striking at this moment. I blushed and looked away. Amazing. All monsters in this area was. Ah, as expected of dear husband. Other than me, Revival's members, tamed monsters and the succubi battle units, all else had petrified with nothing spared. Rocks rained down on the ocean, making fountains spout up everywhere. Likewise on the earth, loud noises rang out as rocks hailed down. Pika, can you destroy all the rocks that just fell down? I don't want to go in the ocean. But okay, I got it. Ryue, you know what to do, right? Leave it to me. Ice rain. The two elementals each charged to their designated area and started to break the petrified monsters. Then, the others finally snapped out and started to work on breaking the monsters. They didn't forget to comment on what just happened. At this rate, can't we be done with the Philippines in just a day? I won't be surprised if I get a stonebreaker title. I've never experienced such boring monster hunting. Hey you! Make sure you get everything on camera. We have to record dear husband's magnificent glory. Yes, queen. First, I stole the camera from the succubus taking licorice's orders. Then, feeling the presence of monsters in the distance, I calculated the amount of time we had until they came to a threatening range and confined my charm again. The scent that was emanating from me died down noticeably. Wait, didn't that mean this scent could even be seen visually? You're not even human anymore, son. Did you eat an air freshener? Shut it, dad. I retorted curtly at the snickering father, as I held my spear back up. At that moment, Daisy murmured in regret. Petrified monsters. Can't make undead. Oh. That wasn't it. Yua also made a vague smile and spoke. Appa, I can't tame monsters when they're petrified. Oh, mm. Right. I worked my brain helplessly. Then, I finally came up with an answer to solve this crisis. Let's find a monster that's strong enough to withstand my petrification. Will there be one? I don't know. Almost as if I used my evil eyes again, a somewhat unwelcome silence descended once again. Wanting to shake it off, I shouted energetically. Now, let's do this. I'm sure there will be a monster willing to be you as friend. How irresponsible. Undead. My undead. Friend. Will I find one? What, you're unhappy with my performance? You're not being honest. Chapter, 223. After taking care of the first wave of monsters gathered at the coast, only the dense forest stretching out to the horizon filled our eyes. The greenery truly extended to every corner of our eyes. No one would be surprised if a dinosaur's head suddenly popped up. We had nowhere near enough time to thoroughly search every corner of Philippines for monsters. We couldn't waste time. Of course, we had come with a solution prepared. So I just sing songs that attract. Yep. Just focus on singing. It'll take care of the rest. The solution was none other than plain. To kill monsters with my evil eyes, I needed them to be within my sight. Although it would be nice if I could draw them towards me with Provoke, Provoke's range wasn't that big. However, unlike my shouting, Pleen's singing traveled far and wide like the sweet scent of flowers attracting honeybees. Pleen had never accompanied me to event dungeons or dimensional mercenary missions, but now was her time to shine. Ah, come to think of it, she did shine before when event dungeons appeared on earth. La 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 la. What a beautiful voice. Don't get infatuated, father. Snap out of it. Father looked like he was ready to crack open a beer bottle. I restrained father and strongly circulated Pryuta circuit. I could feel countless number of monsters coming over, attracted by plain singing. Battle units, you guys can rest. You must be tired. If you want, you get even go back to resting place of the angels. Thank you for your consideration, dear husband, but we can regain our strength through battle. Alright, then be on standby. You guys can help take care of the monsters unaffected by evil eyes. 
Yes. To be honest, the succubi's mind-sharing ability was rather convenient. I could just grab one randomly and the rest would understand what I told her. That said, I wanted to decline their favorable impression of me from going up at the same time. Everyone prepared their bodies and minds against the strong enemies we would face. As I circulated per Yuta circuit and waited for the monsters in the distance to arrive, I thought about ways to effectively release my charm. The strength, dexterity, and constitution stats directly affected my body, the magic stat was my mana itself. Although I wasn't sure what the luck stat did exactly, I could more or less control the other stats. I could display as much strength as I wanted and display as much speed as I wanted. If that wasn't possible, it would be impossible for explorers to live their everyday lives. At first, I thought the charm stat was like the luck stat, something outside of my control. However, after experiencing many things, I came to realize that it was controllable. Then, it must be possible to control how much of it I use just like other stats. Furthermore, if I could focus it to strengthen one part of my body, like the eyes for example, and stop releasing my charm through my whole body, I could get Waya and Ludia to stop looking at me with judgmental eyes. As such, learning to control my charm was one of my top priorities. After all, charm was a monster-like ability that could even demolish an ability user's self-control. La la, la la la. La. They're coming. I can feel it. Would it be about zero? One percent of the Philippines monsters. I don't know, but there sure are a lot. Zero. One percent so we only had to do this 999 more times. Although I tried to trick myself into thinking positively, I couldn't help but sigh. Dealing with monsters on a scale of a country was no joke. Don't sigh too much, Shin Im Happy, it's been a while since I did something with you since I can't be with you in the dungeon. I get it, so go away, Ludia. Your eyes are really dangerous right now. Dear husband is so strange. It is only natural for a man and a woman to embrace each other, why does he refuse it so adamantly? For the first time, I agree with you, Licorice. Why don't we exchange some ideas? Sure, let's cooperate, Witch. I swear I'll learn to focus my charm to only my eyes. If this continues, it'll be conquered before I can conquer the Philippines. In just four days, we managed to completely wipe out monsters from 40% of the Philippines. Although there were monsters powerful enough to resist plain singing, they couldn't hide their presence from us. We just had to find them and kill them. These monsters could also resist my petrification. When I asked Daisy and Yua if they were interested, they shook their heads. Not this one either. Not cute. It's not cute. Is there some standard I don't know about? Is it really because they're not cute? We only had five hours to rest per day. I was the only one who thought it was too long. At first, everyone rolled their eyes and called me a tyrant. I know we're on standby most of the time, but Shin, you're always using your power. Are you okay? Eh. You were worrying about me? As I planned on taking two hours out of that five hours to hunt floor masters, I couldn't help but be flustered by Yi Yoon's question. Were these people still doubting the power of explorer's stats? I received the answer to my doubts the next morning. Strange. Why am I not tired? Hmm, even after I became an ability user, I still felt sleepy from time to time but now am not sleepy at all. So this is the power of stats. Wait, these people. Were they in the dungeon for only eight hours a day like some office work? When I asked them, the others gave me stares that said, What's this monster? It seemed I was the weird one. Waya advised me seriously. Shin, I know you feel pressed for time, but there's a certain level of stress you get just from battling. Without you even realizing, your mind is being hurt. You're already getting stronger quickly, so don't push yourself too much. Many of us here feel pain seeing you hurt. Why yeah? Since she was genuinely worrying about, I couldn't refute her even though I really didn't feel anything. Feeling awkward from Waya's stare, I nodded. In the end, I didn't tell anyone I spent two hours hunting floor masters. Though, I suspected that a few of them already knew about it. It was on the fourth day that something unexpected happened. 
During these four days, we went around the Philippines using clean singing and my evil eyes to wipe out monsters. Before we noticed, the number of monsters swarming us decreased. It wasn't that there were more monsters that could resist clean singing. There should be more monsters the closer inland we get. How strange. Dear husband, they'll get the kids to survey the area. Might die, dangerous. Undead, safe. Daisy stopped licorice and took out a skeleton of a hawk from her inventory. Then, she put a small crystal ball in its eye socket. Scout. Kia. The hawk cried and soared into the air. Its speed was incredibly fast. At the same time, Daisy took out another crystal ball that seemed like an enlarged version of the one she took out before. We can, see with this. Wow, so we can use this to see what the hawk is seeing. Floor shop 770,000 gold. Revival privilege, 70,000 gold discount. Without me realizing, my name was being used here and there. I told myself to apologize to Loretta next time I saw her, as I looked into the crystal ball. The hawk's incredible fast made it hard to see the surrounding scenery, but once I got used it, I could see the dense forested area around us. For about five minutes, nothing was out of the ordinary. As we already cleaned up this area, there weren't any monsters that came into view. Although it would have been nice if that continued, Waya soon shouted. Wait, what's that? Monster migration. Daisy answered with a shocked expression. She was right. A group, Noah heard of monsters had finally entered the hawk's view. Strangely, they were all moving towards one direction. Land monsters were plowing through the forest, while flying monsters flapped their wings and cut through the sky. It was almost as if they were racing towards the same finish line. This is. There really is a commander. Wyatt gulped. I could feel her voice trembling slightly. I understood why as one of the monsters running in the crystal ball was. Isn't this the same type of monster as the one you hated? Yeah, it's the same monster as the one that didn't get petrified. From how much mana it had. Some ayer continued why is murmuring. It was an SS rank. Ho. It was clear what that meant. There was no way an SS rank monster would run like a dog playing catch for a monster weaker than itself. It meant that there was a monster that was overwhelmingly stronger than an SS rank monster. A map, anyone? Here you go, Wyanim. One of the succubus handed Waya a 3D hologram map of the Philippines. Comparing the map with the scenery in the crystal ball, Waya estimated where the monsters were heading to. Luzon Island southernmost area. Waya voice fell. Soon, she came up with an answer. Bulosan volcano they're going to a volcano. My instincts told me a monster my evil eyes couldn't do anything against was there. It's fine. I don't know if there's enough space there for all these monsters to gather, but this is more convenient for us. Let's head over there while we take care of the slow ones. No, we don't know what will be there, Shin. Let's split up our forces. I don't know what the monsters are up to, but they're certainly not trying to help you kill them all at once. That was true. Then let's kill them before any more of them reaches the volcano. We have six succubi battle units. Well split up and go with them. Shin, you go with Pleen and kill as many of them as you can. Got it. Succubi, line up. The battle units immediately began to line up. The other members of Revival also stood nervously at Waya's frosty vigor. There might be a monster stronger than any monster we've faced so far. You can't just rely on Shin to take care of everything. Make sure you're resolved. Oh, my daughter candidate sure is feisty. Father, you just scared other daughter candidates with that. Guys, is the Philippines the only country with a monster like this? Probably not. I couldn't help but recall the demon army commander I met in the Luka continent. A monster far surpassing him was likely waiting for us. A monster that could control SS rank monsters how many monsters like this existed on earth? So the real war is beginning him shaking a bit. Humph, we just have to kill them. What, you're scared? At Michael's muttering, Walker snorted and replied. Michelle grinned and retorted. Of course not. 
but since you're so full of spirit, they'll be expecting a lot from you. Trying to act cool, old man. After splitting up into a total of seven teams, we set off. Our final destination was Luzon Island's southernmost area, Bulusan Volcano. The battle was not far off. Chapter, 224 La 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 la. Dear husband, I think we're done with the monsters in this area. There really aren't many Pleen, it's fine now. Pleen, who was entertaining our ears and leading the monsters to their deaths, immediately stopped singing at my request. I sent out my elementals to shatter the petrified monsters as I looked around the area. Far in the distance, I could see a volcano shooting up into sky. Bulusan Volcano. As expected, it had grown to the point its original appearance was unrecognizable. Dear husband, can you feel it? The breath of the fierce beast that's hiding its presence. Of course, now that we're this close, I can feel it clearly. This might be. Latte, who was listening to our conversation, spoke out with a bit of hesitation. I turned to face her and asked. Do you recognize it, Latte? Have I not explained to Hero about them? No. It'll keep it short and simple. There are no humans in the world I came from. Only existences that humans call monsters lived there. Of the five major countries, there was a country centered around a volcano with its king commanding a powerful army. And that's. Latte slowly nodded her head. I didn't notice their special characteristic from any of the monsters we've seen so I didn't say anything, but now that we've come this close, I can feel their auras. Even among us monsters, we wondered how the monsters in the army he commanded were so strong. Today, I have the feeling he'll find out why it's making me rather anxious. Ah, I heard about them too. Larva Immortal Leg, right? It's Lava Immortal Legion, idiot. I lived in an island so I don't know these things. Now that she mentioned it, Pleen also came from the same world as Latte. Seeing Pleen yelling at Latte, I patted her head and calmed her down. Pleen's doing fine, so don't worry. Ehe. This is why idiots are too easy to handle anyways, Hero, if the king is really here, even Hero's guild members might not be safe. ITLL be best for only a selected few of them to fight him. If we get rid of this king, we only have to deal with four others. That sounds like a deal to me. It would be nice if that were the case. Latte still looked uneasy. With how confident she usually was and this being the first time she was showing this side of her, even I began to worry. Losing the world's power and being connected to earth it was certainly the five kings that commanded us. But I always thought that there was someone above them. I don't know why and I can't remember who it was, but I know someone was there. That's not too surprising. When there is huge gap between the leagues of two beings, it's possible that the being of lower league can't recognize the being of higher league even if they were facing each other directly. Even if the being of lower league recognized the being of higher league, hell forget once he turns around. These powerful existences can cause mental pressure just by being in someone's memories. That's why beings of lower league forget about them, to protect their minds. This is the first time I've heard that. I replied to Licorice's explanation with a bitter smile and loosened my body by stretching. This unknown leader was most likely the world's enemy, but the one I had to worry about currently was the one waiting for us in the volcano. We already took care of the other areas. Once we clean up the Bulusan volcano, we'll be done with the Philippines. Be careful, dear husband. The dungeon's power might not work on this guy. I have a plan even if that's the case. Don't worry. We got this. After giving an encouraging talk, I opened the guild communication channel and reported. We're done. How about you guys? We're almost done too. Just wait a bit, friend. Already? Your evil eyes are too overpowered. Hold on, we're finishing up too. Almost done. Makey, doing work. We encountered an SS rank giant monster. Kong Young Gong is holding it back. If you're done, come help us, Kong Shin. It seemed Walker was having trouble as he gave a serious report. I immediately gave Latte a glance. Even as she grumbled, she returned to her wyvern form, and Pleen, Licorice and I immediately jumped on her back. 
let's go take care of the SS rank first. I can feel its aura. Ill hurry. Lotte flapped her wings once, soaring up so quickly that the surrounding scenery seemed to warp. In just two minutes, we saw the giant monster walker mentioned. It was indeed a giant monster, as a twenty-meter-tall giant was wreaking havoc with its giant sword. A peculiarity was that its entire body was made of fire. No, that's lava. The moment Latte caught sight of the giant, she growled. It's as I thought, hero. It's him. The king is in the Philippines. That's the Lava Immortal Legion. To be exact, it's the Lava Immortal Legion's destroyer, a soldier in the forefront of their assaults. Soldier. Not a commander, but a solider. As if to say yes, Latte accelerated. She really was ruthless. I immediately took out my chaotic spear. Although Chaos Flame was the strongest attribute I could wield, even the powerful Chaos Flame had a flaw. It was that it wasn't that effective against the fire attribute. So, for now. Everyone hold on. Latte, accelerate. Leave it to me. Oh, this isn't bad, dear husband. Grab onto Latte, not me. The ones fighting the destroyer realized I had come and looked up at me. Although the destroyer also found out, the vibration from the spear attack father shot out caused a chunk of lava to fall off its leg. Grua. Ruyue, Sharena. Above my spear, a whirlpool of ice raged. In just zero. Five seconds, it would reach the enemy. Carrying the ice energy strengthened by absorbing the wind latte raised, the chaotic spear shot through the air. The tip of the spear was shining in white. Eat this. The moment Latte crossed its body, the spear I thrust directly struck its shoulder. Lava and ice collided, causing steam to rise, while its shoulder burning in orange flames froze, melted, then fell off its body. In other words, I had cut off its arm. Gua. TSK, I could have defeated it by myself. Be honest and thank me, Kong Yunggong. They absorb flames and regenerate themselves. Make sure you don't use any flames. Quick, destroy the arm that fell off. Ruyue. Dozens of ice spears appeared in the air and rained down on the giant's arm on the ground. In an instant, the arm completely melted away, and the enraged giant roared and swung its giant sword towards me with its remaining arm. Its sword burning with lava instantly elongated, breaking past Lottie's speed and attacking me. However. I said your opponent is me. A sharp shockwave shot out from the tip of father's spear and struck the giant's body. Meanwhile, Latte turned around to face the giant and charged towards it again. While the giant flinched from father's attack, I stabbed my spear inside its chest. Grew up. Now, everyone, use ice magic. Licorice held clean and shouted as she flew off from Lottie's back. The succubi all launched ice spheres into the air, while Licorice created an overwhelmingly bigger chunk of ice. Dear husband, go first. Got it. I've been waiting. I raised Ryu's power to the peak and a freezing energy that seemed to freeze even its creator began to emanate from the chaotic spear. The giant roared and held up its giant lava sword, while father and walker also charged towards the giant. Hap. With a spirited shout, I charged. The giant's giant sword instantly swept over me, but I ignored it and continued forward. Its terrifying heat immediately engulfed me. Kogagaga. Son. Don't overreact, old man. Kogagaga. The giant stopped its mad laughter and tilted its head. It was to be expected. After all, it should be able to feel its flame subsiding. Felix's chaotic cape fluttered and let out a radiant light. The giant's flames were certainly above the realm of SS rank, making it impossible to absorb them. However, it was still possible to nullify them. I soon popped out of the giant sword and stabbed my spear covered in ice aura in its face. It was a heroic strike. Qua. When did this become Revival's official chant? Can we not use such a threatening chant? After the giant made a thundering roar in pain, the succubi's ice magic descended. The crime of trying to harm dear husband, pay for it with your life. Attack. Freeze him. Cool. 
The earth trembled and the lava giant kneeled with its upper body frozen. Without hesitation, I shot an aura wave containing a compressed snowstorm and exploded its head. Having lost the control center, the lava forming the giant's body fell and scattered. The succubi then shot out ice arrows and thoroughly destroyed the lava. There was no longer any sign that the lava giant had existed. After confirming that its presence disappeared, I took back the spear I was still aiming towards it. Done. As expected of hero. Wow. Amazing, dear husband. I sighed and murmured, while Latte murmured in amazement. I would have liked the succubi to express themselves like Latte, but it seemed they were deeply touched as they were all running towards me. I immediately looked for licorice. Licorice, do something about them. Dear husband is so cool. She's their leader. Right, they share their emotions. Could there be anyone more able yet tiring? After restraining the succubi, I smacked Licorice's head and shared the information Latte told me with Father and Walker. After listening to Lottie's explanation, even Father made a slightly tired expression. You mean there are a lot more of these guys? Yes. The fact that they're here means that the king's army has moved. They will start their advance soon. Advance? Invading the enemy's territory and gathering up an army. It's a rather human method. Don't look down on them because they're monsters. Latte, who was back in her human form, retorted mockingly at Walker. They're a race that can use their heads like humans. If you look down on them, you'll regret it. Well, I know that. I've met intelligent monsters in the dungeon too. I asked Latte to return to her wyvern form. It was time to meet up with the others. We know their identity, so we don't need to hesitate. We're going to go defeat this king. All of us. You say that, but I bet you're going to take the last hit again. How else would I act like a guild master? I rebutted Walker while he and father got on Lottie's back. The succubi also turned into bats and flew up. Let's go. We're meeting up. Shin, a scary giant monster appeared. Hying, my shadows aren't working well. Let's go help the others first. Just when I was trying to act cool Yiyun, you did this on purpose. Chapter, 225 After that, these so-called destroyers appeared in many other places. There was one where Yiyun was, and other teams also reported that they discovered the destroyers. Although Waya and Ina's team instantly destroyed the one they found, the other teams had difficulty defeating them and had to request for help. Naturally, we began to move together as we met up, and by the time I killed the fourth destroyer, everyone had gathered together. Are we done with the ones that came outside? Who, I can feel the heavy mana vibrating. Also, hasn't it been getting hotter, guys? Hotter? Well, maybe with all the bullets you've been shooting out eh? Only after Leon's comment did I realize that the temperature rose. Because of my elementals and Felix's chaotic cape, I had not noticed the change in temperature until now. Meanwhile, the others were already dripping with sweat. Other than me, the only ones unaffected were Ina, Waya, and Daisy. Ruyue, can you cool the air around us so that the guild members are comfortable? An. But I can't when we're fighting. The heat energy here is too strong. That's fine. Ruyue immediately released her freezing energy, and the others could finally catch their breaths. The heat hasn't affected me much since I became an ability user, but this is impressive. Hero, we need to hurry before it gets hotter. This is a sign that the king has started to move his forces. We have to take care of his subordinates before he gets serious. All right. Let's hurry, everyone. Since we couldn't take out our plane here, everyone got on Lottie's back. She grit her teeth and grumbled, but she accepted my request after I promised her a reward. Since we're in a hurry you'll allow it. Sorry, Latte. Elida and Pleen also left, as the two of them wouldn't be able to withstand a hit from the king. Pleen became depressed, saying that she couldn't be of help again, while Elida also argued, saying that she wanted to stay. Since Pleen's power helped us immensely in recovering the Philippines, it was relatively easy to console her, but convincing Elida was harder. You need my ability. But Elida, it's too dangerous. 
It's possible that you might die from the aftershock of the king's attack. You have to level up a bit more. Once you become gold ranked, you can accompany us on jobs like this. I won't complain even if I die. Well be troubled if you die. We're going to need your ability in the future, so please, leave it to Ludia for today. I'm more than enough. In that case he'll acquiesce. He'll get stronger so that I can be of help to everyone. When Ludia stepped up, Elida seemed convinced and went back to the mansion with Pleen who had become happier after I consoled her. Michelle then spoke with a bitter smile. She has a type of obsession with these things. I found out after I got to know her better. She won't hesitate to risk her life to save others, a bit too philanthropic, you could say. Because of her immense love for others, it almost looks like she has no love for herself. Michelle can take care of her. It should be the guild master's job to take care of his guild members, but I'm banned from talking to Aleda about personal things. With that, I pointed behind me. Lydia and Waya were glaring at Michelle. Shin can't take care of each and every guild member personally, Michelle Ajushi. Are you trying to make me, Matara's priestess, commit murder? I simply laughed without saying anything. Michelle placed his hand on my shoulder with a look of pity. If it's tough you can talk to me. It's a bit embarrassing to say this, but I've had my fair share of such experiences when I was younger I know how you feel. Michelle. I felt like I was tearing up. I nodded my head ever so slightly so that the girls wouldn't find out. As we got closer to the volcano, the ground fissured and shot fire into the air. Latte also became more and more anxious. Hero, I'm speeding up. Got it. At that moment, Ryue finally announced her surrender. It's too hard with my power alone. Damn. Even Ryu's strengthened ability couldn't block the temperature change. When she returned to my weapon, the others immediately began to feel tormented. This is too much. Elena, can you do something? I'm bad at using my power delicately, I can freeze you though. Never mind. It's too hot. Should I take off my armor? ITLL be hotter if you do. Just endure it. I didn't think it was possible for any environment to affect Revival's members so harshly. I shouted out a message as I grit my teeth. Heat can greatly hinder your movements. When we encounter this king, he'll handle him from the front. If the heat gets unbearable to the point you think you can't continue, tell me. Son, my body isn't so weak that a heat of this level can hinder my movements. That's just you, father. Others aren't like you. Perhaps, only Labique and Ren, who were beast men, and Michel, who trained in the ways of the sword his entire life, could be like father. Thankfully, Waya, who seemed most likely to be affected by environmental effects, was a flame ability user. I see one. Heroic strike. The moment a destroyer entered my sight, I threw my spear and intercepted him. Everyone else also poured long-ranged attacks and killed it. However, up ahead, over ten destroyers were marching towards us. Damn. Latte, how many of them do you think are there? From what we've seen so far, over a thousand. There are also many that are stronger than the destroyers. Wow. I almost lost hope. A thousand SS rank monsters and more monsters above that level. There was the king to worry about too. A sigh naturally left my mouth. Hero, we must lower their count now. The king's army increases in size over time. Now that we're here, we can't go back. Right. We can't back off now. It's good that we killed so many monsters before the witch made a wise decision. At Lottie's words, I got a hunch. Is that army made of monsters? Is that why they called all monsters living in the Philippines to the volcano? It's why the Lava King is terrifying. The more he fought, the stronger his army became. A role model for necromancers. I must take notes. Daisy said an unnecessary comment as she clapped in admiration. I then smacked her head, while Waya grit her teeth. If I knew beforehand, I would have gathered an army and attacked much earlier. Who knew this Lava King would be here? You did well Waya there's no need to blame yourself. I tightened my grip on my spear. 
Seeing the destroyers beginning to make their appearance on the land booming with fire, I shouted. Ruyue, materialize into your humanoid form. It's time to show your prowess. Ryue transformed into a wolf girl. Ren exclaimed in awe, forgetting the current circumstance. Be beautiful. Uck. Ren, la beak. Stop blabbering and get ready to fight. We're descending now. Gee got it, crown prince. I glared at Ren and Labique, and shouted. Every time you get hit today, they'll lengthen your thrashing phase by one day. Labique will also get a taste of a thrashing phase if you're not careful. Everyone else, get ready to fight. We're going to destroy this army before the king comes. Yes. He'll protect daddy. Latte shot down like an arrow. Ryue cooled the path we would take, as she charged forward first and swept the destroyers. Her claws became enveloped in ice as they slashed at the destroyers. A destroyer had been destroyed without having a chance to counterattack A. Eh? Her weapon might be different, but her movements are a lot like Kong Shin. So that's why her movements look familiar. It's our clan's movements. The meticulousness and viciousness in charging forward without looking around while not being hit even once. Don't call it vicious. Elementals naturally take after their masters. We should go too, master. Instead of Ryue, I infused Pika into my spear. I couldn't use Chaos Flames today, and if I couldn't use Ryue, Pika was the second best option. Now that it had come to this, I became a bit sad that I had already used Sky God's Rage today. At that moment, as if she had read my mind, Pika commented. Leave it to me, master. He'll show you a lightning that can even cut through fire. Thanks, Pika. I will. At that instant, I felt the connection between Pika and me getting deeper. With a smile, I made Latte land. Once everyone including the succubi battle units landed, I got back on Lottie's back and shot up. Waya shouted. Shin, be careful. Don't worry. Rather than that, don't die, everyone. As long as no one dies, we'll be fine. I looked at Ludia, who had over twenty elixirs. When a large number of event dungeons appeared on earth, she had taken all the elixirs. Knowing what I meant, Ludia sighed. I want to use them for Shin only but I guess there's no choice. Hoo, Ludia, if you want Shin to love you, you'll have to show a generous side of you to others. Don't call me Ludia, why a Mastiford? It looked like everything would be okay. I softly smiled and turned away. The volcano in the distance that seemed to be shooting out mana for a while finally erupted grandly. The heat even made me frown. Latte shouted like she was screaming. Presences of monsters in this area disappeared. A unique soldier has been born. Damn, there are all these destroyers too Latte, accelerate. Dear husband, take this. When we were about to charge at a nearby destroyer, a crystal ball flew toward us. When I quickly grabbed it, I saw a dark pink colored spherical object. Of course, it wasn't for decoration. Such a tiny ball contained an immense amount of mana. I tilted my head in confusion and saw Licorice smiling at me. It's made from a portion of all the mana collected by the battle units. It contains our love, so use it when you need it, dear husband. But Licorice, this is the succubies. If dear husband dies, it won't matter no matter how strong we get. I hope that will be of help. Thank you. Ho ho. I thought she'd boast more, but she only made a small smile before flying back. Dozens of magic circles appeared around her, shooting our magic that targeted down the destroyers. Each and every one of them was powerful enough to make me shake. Obtaining licorice before the Philippine subjugation was truly a godlike move. I can't lose to Ryue or licorice. I put the crystal ball away as I reaffirmed my resolve. Just from a quick estimate, the crystal ball contained three times my mana. As I currently had over 120,000 mana, this small crystal ball had over 360,000 mana in it. If something like this exploded, it would be able to easily blow up a country. Without a doubt, it would help me greatly. Hero, I'm going to strictly charge from now. You're telling me to kill everything in one hit? Got it. I'll show you what Wine King's rage is. 
My body flashed for a moment, and a massive wind and lightning energy fell into me. Sharana, who was infused into my body, and Pika, who was infused into my spear, both exclaimed. Master, great. Huhu, master is the best. This is only the beginning. You guys control this energy. Latte charged. Her destination was the new destroyer that just popped out of the fissure ground and overflowing lava. Goo. I thrust my spear forward, each attack containing lethal power. Wind and lightning stormed. Lottie's charge didn't stop. From the giant hole I just pierced through, lava spurted out like blood. The destroyer immediately collapsed. It had died. All of you fight me. Mere soldiers like you, I can take care of all of you by myself. You used provoke. All enemies in the area will hold infinite hostility for you. Just by coming out victorious against them, you will make another achievement. The destroyers marched forward. Just like Latte said, about a thousand destroyers popped up from every corner of the ground, as they all glared at me and moved towards me. I gulped down my saliva along with a surging sense of tension and shouted. Let's go. Wind King's rage wouldn't stop until all of them were dead. With absolute soul's power, I would make that possible. Second, third, fourth. Grew up. Leaving behind giant holes and bursting lava, Latte charged forward. The whirlpool of wind and lightning enveloping my body cut through the air as it left traces of destruction. It wasn't just me. Other members of Revival also charged alongside me. About 200 succubi shot magical attacks without rest, while the roar of the fighting destroyers shook the land. The war between Revival and the Lava King's army had now begun. Chapter 226 Sorry, Appa. If I hadn't have made such an unreasonable request. No, rather, it's good that you did. We can fight them before they're fully prepared to take us on. Although Yua had a large army, to the SS rank destroyers, mantises were nothing more than easily flammable bugs. They felt short in rank and were disadvantaged in attributes. Although Yua wanted to stay, saying that this expedition was planned partly because of her, when father stepped in and gave her a stern talk, she had no choice but to go back to the guild house. I'm sorry that I couldn't help more. It's fine. Yua will get stronger, you can help me then. For now just pray for Appa's victory. At the same time I replied to Yua, I shot my spear forward and blew up the destroyer's head. The lava that its head was composed of jumped up at me as if to melt my head, but with flame sucker's power, it dissipated without having achieved any damage. On. Appa, good luck. For now, that's enough. I could really feel myself brimming with energy. My younger sister was an angel who always thought about me and cared for me. For her, I had to go back safely. I looked for the next target and charged. I charged, and charged again. You oh oh. The destroyer's earth-shaking roar rumbled in my ear. The heat from the lava also made my sight hazy. Thundering sounds rang out from all sides, as the magic of the succubi and the aura attacks of the other guild members cut through the air and faced the destroyers. Eat this and die. I drew on Pika's power to the limit, shooting down several destroyers and absorbing as much mana as I could. Although I had to make contact with the enemies to do so, as long as I fought in close range, Absolute Soul could absorb about the same amount of mana as I used in my attack. Considering the fact that I was also using Peruta Circuit, my mana didn't have a chance to go down. Of course, now that I had Ryue materialized and fighting by herself, that wasn't the case. Hero. Speed up. Understood. Few of those in the guild could fight and come out victorious against a destroyer in a one-on-one -on -one fight. So, as to lessen the danger they would face, I had to defeat as many as I could. With Wind King's rage, even if I didn't kill them in one blow, I could at least neutralize them. I used Provoke to draw the enemies toward me once again as I charged through the air with Latte. Crown Prince, if you push yourself too much and get hurt, ITLL be the end. My father also. I'm not pushing myself, don't worry. All this time, I had worked hard to get stronger for this moment. Compared to climbing the dungeon day and night, challenging my limits and beyond, 
and fighting the floor masters ten times a day, this much was nothing. Hap. Lottie's wings wrapped around one of the scarlet flames flying toward us and returned it. Although it couldn't damage the destroyers, it could at least help stop its movements. Immediately afterwards, we charged towards a destroyer and hammered it with a spear wrapped in a whirlpool of lightning. Gua. Latte, how many have we killed so far? 178. Latte and I had already bathed in the destroyer's flames. Although I wasn't hurt thanks to Flame Sucker, which nullified flames, Lottie's body was already fairly burned. However, Latte didn't stop and continued to charge. Her injuries soon caught my attention. Hero. Don't think about useless things and attack, burns like these only take me a day to recover from. Alright. Let's go. Wind King's rage did not end unless I stopped it. In other words, I could continuously deal wind, lightning, and charge damage. Thanks to the giant wolf's tattoo, I could also deal an additional 50% in damage. One thing that was somewhat regretful was that 60% bonus damage to charge type skills disappeared when I upgraded my armor to the pure black desire. Instead, I had gotten desire thorn, which could steal the life force of others. This, however, was limited to once per day. In any case, I didn't have the time to be listing out regretful things. Right now, I had to focus on using the abilities I had to kill the destroyers in one blow. WAP Even if Wind King's Rage could be continued indefinitely, as it was a charge type skill, I had to keep charging for it to stay in effect. In other words, Latte also had to charge without stopping. I opened my eyes widely and continuously thrust out with my spear. If I let my guard down even for a second, would be charging into a destroyer unprepared. I had to maintain my focus. If I had no experience fighting such battles, if I had not had those battles in the Luka continent and the Panin continent, maintaining a skill like this would have been unimaginable. Master, I can feel the presence of a powerful existence. Sharana, who was infused into my body, reported to me as we killed the 26th destroyer. Even as I continued to charge, I looked up and scanned the horizon. There, I saw a line of monsters marching, swinging whips made of lava. They're here. The sweepers. Cleaners. I didn't know what they were trying to clean, but it was inevitable that I would have to fight them. I had to eliminate the destroyers before that. I grit my teeth and shouted. Latte, charge. We can't end this with just Wind King's rage. Grya. Latte roared and flapped her wings in response. The spear I shot out towards the destroyers gathered wind and lightning and tore them to shreds. Master, the wind energy is getting stronger. I can still control it, but I'm not sure if Master will be fine in the center of it all. It's the same for me, Master. But since Master can even wield a god's lightning, I think it will be okay. Right, it'll be fine. This much is nothing. Indeed, with just a single misstep, the wind and lightning gathered at the tip of my spear could easily explode and cause me to let go of my spear. However, my clan's unique technique, which Heroic Strike was derived from, already required learning how to control such chaotic destructive power. Otherwise, it would have been impossible to squeeze out every ounce of power in my body to focus it in one point. The more I thought about it, the more I came to understand that my ancestors trained in rather perverted methods. Of course, since I was benefiting from that, I wasn't complaining. Ice Age. In the distance, someone shouted. In an instant, a bone-chilling freezing energy reached where Latte and I were located. I glanced toward the direction the freezing energy came from and saw Ina who was destroying dozens of destroyers with lotus-like ice. Her truly incredible destructive power was fitting that of an SS ranker. It seemed Ina had exerted a great amount effort to use that skill as she staggered. Although I wanted to go give her a hug, I couldn't do so at the moment. I grit my teeth and continued to charge. Once I had taken care of everything, I would hug her as much as I wanted. You oh oh. They're coming. As the succubi battle units and the other members were all doing fantastic, over half of the destroyers had fallen. Before I noticed, the atmosphere of the battlefield had changed, and the sweepers were charging closer. Their whips are dangerous. 
They're hotter than the destroyer's swords and have the ability to elongate. That doesn't sound like much. I shouted spiritedly on purpose and drove Latte towards them. If the Wind King's rage at peak power could not penetrate them, nothing could. A living human. We love humans. They're delicious. Human flesh is so tender, it just melts in your mouth. When they noticed me, they sent their whips flying towards me as they blabbered incomprehensible things. I pushed the oncoming whips away with the wind energy around my spear and charged towards them. Taste this delicious human flesh. When I stabbed the sweeper with my spear powered by Wind King's rage, its powerful rotational power drilled a huge hole through the sweeper's chest. The sweepers that witnessed their kin's death widened their eyes and swung their whips, but I continued to charge forward without paying them any mind. Even if I were hit by the whips, with my cape's ability to nullify flames, I barely received any damage. Not to mention, unlike Daisus' whip, their whip's movements were completely readable. There was no way I would be afraid of attacks I could read. Kugyajiak. Human human, human. You guys are pretty tender yourselves. After fighting a few of them, I could instantly tell their special characteristics. They certainly possessed flames more powerful than the destroyers, but their constitution was weaker and hence had weaker defense. For me, they were much easier to deal with. Latte, dodge. Lottie's movements continued to get faster. Now that I thought about it, her abilities seemed to have doubled since the first time we met. She had also gotten bigger and more lustrous. This change could be easily seen by the fact that she was charging through SS rank monsters when she was only an S rank monster at first. Hero, there are more coming. I know. Keep charging. I gripped the spear in my hands tighter. With a bold smile, I concentrated my energy into my spear. One's martial path had to be honed through real combat. Charging forward with my life on the line, through infinite repetitions, I was coming to better understand the profoundness behind thrusting. The moment I mastered the high rank spear technique, I thought I saw the end of Manila's spearmanship. However, I was only 21. There was no way I could have mastered a lofty martial path in just 13 years. Now I understood that. At the same time, I understood that the skill system wasn't perfect, and that simply relying on skill levels was the same as drawing a line to my limit. Furthermore, normal spearmanship couldn't be the same as spearmanship while riding. The spear technique I displayed on Lottie's back was certainly not the same as when I was on my own. The more I became attuned to Lottie, the more I read her movements and modified my own, my spear attacks would display greater prowess as it matched the limits of her speed. After thrusting out again, the leftover force of the attack exploded the shoulder of a sweeper standing next to the intended target. I immediately swung my spear to the side and struck his whip away. Latte, who seemed to have read my mind, changed her trajectory and charged towards that sweeper. Then, with a simple attack, I was able to take its life. As time went on, my attacks were becoming more destructive, though it still contained the same amount of power as before. It meant that my spearmanship was advancing in a realm where mana didn't matter. I couldn't help but smile knowing what was happening. Becoming stronger was this enjoyable. No matter how much at risk my life was, no matter how many enemies I had to face. Good good. Hero, were you hit by a status effect? Im immune you mental status effects. Latte, speed up. Hero. Wind King's rage didn't stop. Until all the wind and lightning in the world gathered to the tip of my spear, my charge would not stop. Goo. Just when I was thinking that, Something blocked our advance. Although we tried to charge right through, my spear couldn't penetrate it. I controlled the energy trying to run berserk, as I reluctantly took my stance for the final blow. I raised my head. I wanted to know just what my spear couldn't penetrate. A giant over dozens of meters tall was glaring down at me. It wore a thick armor of fire and held a spear of fire that somewhat made me desire it. I asked Latte. Is this the Lava King? Sorry hero, but no. After hearing that, I sighed in relief. Not using Overlord the moment I saw him was truly a heaven's fortune. It was the start of a middle boss battle. Chapter, 227 Lava King's army's knight commander, Lava Heart, has appeared. 
Before defeating him, it is impossible to defeat the Lava King. Note that there will be no tomorrow if you do not win. I pray for you victory. Thank you, Message Nuna. I murmured in response to the message that rang in my ear. The giant knight I could not contain in my sight glared down at me and shouted. How foolish, hero. You dare to challenge the king with such meager power. Shut it, giant. His words caused the earth to rumble. I thought my eardrums would rupture. He was extremely hot, and the burning flames making up his body caused the earth to melt, sinking his feet into the ground. If I wasn't wearing the Felix's chaotic cape, even I wouldn't be able to overcome this heat. Since you awoke the king, you must be prepared to face the punishment. Sorry for waking up a sleeping guy. They'll put him to sleep again as an apology. For eternity. You. The spear he held descended towards my head like a bolt of lightning. Although it seemed to be a simple attack, a terrifying pressure of mana strangled me. Huh, even with this much power, he wasn't the king. I could only smile bitterly. Latte, you can dodge it, right? I will. Latte replied confidently as she flapped her wings. The black flames that ignited along her wings set the mana restraining us aflame. In the next moment, she escaped from the trajectory of the spear and charged towards his thighs. Feeling the wind and lightning energy from the final blow gathered at the tip of my spear, I shouted. Pika, Sharana. Let's go. Leave it to me. The two elementals shouted back in reply. They weren't just controlling the energy. They were harmonizing it with the heroic strike I was preparing. If the intimacy between us had not reached the peak, it wouldn't have been possible even in my dreams. Is the thing you're holding a toothpick? How funny. You dare to attack me with just a frail weapon. I'm sure you'll change your mind once your thigh bursts from being poked at by this toothpick. The final blow of Wind King's rage added with a heroic strike I was focusing all my mana to make. The wind and lightning energy danced as if to match my breathing. Pika and Sharana's power heightened. Everything was becoming one with me. Hero, I will erase you and raise the curtain to the end of this world. Know your place, grunt. Also, die. As I opened my eyes widely, I focused on the one point I would thrust at. The giant's leg, covered by his armor of lava, grew closer. Although he was simply trying to kick me, a highly dense mana emitted a powerful pressure enough to crush me to death. However, I would not lose. I couldn't. Eat this. Sacrifice. Desire Thorn. I directly used my trump card skills and thrust out. In that instant, everything that was pressuring me disappeared. The enormous energy gathered at my spear tip had sucked in the nearby mana and freed me. Feeling that power, I gulped down a mouthful of saliva. If this attack couldn't deliver a fatal blow. Although Desire Thorn would restore my health, I wouldn't be able to avoid the pain. Don't worry about the consequence and attack, hero. Hap. With Lottie's trustworthy words, I threw away my hesitation and thrust my spear towards his oncoming thigh. In that instant, a tremendous pain swept over me. From the pain well beyond what I had imagined, I staggered. Although the damage would never be enough to outright kill me, the inflicted pain was a different story. To hold on to my spear, I used all my strength to control myself. Thankfully, the pain seemed to have ravaged the giant as well. Quiak. The moment my spear attack reached its destination, the giant's enormous scream rumbled the earth once more. His leg burst completely, sending lava towards me. Although thorns extending out from the spear tip absorbed most of it and restored my health, a great amount of lava still shot towards me. Even as I wreathed in pain, I spread my cape out and wrapped it with mana. Even if I was fine, if Latte was hit by that attack, she would undoubtedly melt. However, Latte was not hit by even a single drop of lava. Even though her body should have felt heavy as a result of my skill, she had gotten away with an incredible acceleration. Her extremely quick movements even made me falter. Latte. Recover, hero. I already said you should leave all the dodging to me. Latte was too cool. I followed her advice and hurriedly gulped down a potion. 
my health which even desire Thorn couldn't fully restore seemed to be slowly going back up. When I looked back, the giant's detonated leg sat on the ground melting the entire earth. I wanted to believe that his flames weren't EX ranked, but the destructive power was one that I had never seen before. If it was Waya, could she surpass this power? I couldn't be sure. Qua! You little insect! Soon, the giant, who was staggering after losing his leg, surprisingly shrunk, creating a new leg and standing tall. Although he had gotten shorter by about ten meters, he had returned to a perfect human form. I was confident that I had dealt a critical damage, but he didn't even seem to be on the verge of death. It seemed I would need to fight him for a long time. For the first time in a while, I recalled the Orc Lord, the one that I had fought when I was level 5. Pay the price for harming this indestructible knight. If you were indestructible, I wouldn't be able to harm you, you idiot. The giant screamed and swung his spear. With how big the spear was, I could only hear the sound of it cutting through the earth after I saw it flying with my eyes. Latte dodged this attack with an almost godlike maneuver. Even I couldn't be confident of dodging the previous attack unless I used divine speed. Hero, I'm charging again. Yeah, go ahead. At that moment, someone was approaching me with a cold freezing energy. I thought it was Aina at first, but it turned out to be Ryue. Shin, let's go together. Ryue, you deal with the army. I'll deal with him alone. But Shin is in danger. That guy is too strong. If we don't take care of the army now, we'll be in greater danger later. Ryue, please. An. Okay. Ryue fell back obediently. Immediately afterwards, another spear attack flew towards me. Although his spear had stayed the same size unlike his body, as he had gotten weaker, the pressure I was facing was lesser than before. Latte could also dodge his attacks easier. I shot bolts of lightning from my spear as I shouted in the guild communication channel. Everyone, focus on eliminating the lava army. I'll handle this giant. Again, focus on eliminating the destroyers and sweepers. Well leave it to you, son. If you die, they'll kill you. Good luck, guild master. Go fight instead of cheering me on. Even as I complained in a muffled voice, I smiled and held up my spear. However, on the other hand, I thought that I couldn't win like this. I had used Wind King's rage and had even used Desire Thorn and Sacrifice. Even so, the giant seemed completely fine other than that he had gotten shorter. I was confident I would be able to crush him if I used Overlord, but I recalled what message Nuna said. I would have to face the Lava King after this giant. As I couldn't use Sky God's rage, the only method I had left was. Alright, let's try it. I activated the Succubus Queen's tattoo. Immediately, my mana rose to double its maximum amount. If this wasn't enough, I would have to absorb the Crystal Ball Licorice gave me, but if possible, I wanted to save it until I faced the Lava King. I wanted to end this fight with just the doubled mana. I acknowledge that you have many mysterious power contained in that tiny body. Still, you are weak. Well, you only know how to talk with that huge body. Fresh lava began to flow along his spear. Lava dripped down in all directions as a thick aura shot towards me as if to pierce straight through. I cursed inwardly and dodged the attack by relying on Latte. Then, I immediately threw the chaotic spear tempered with heroic strike. Quayak. Having penetrated the giant's lower abdomen, the chaotic spear flew back into my hand with lava scattering everywhere. Once the giant filled in the hole in his abdomen, he had shrunk by another meter. I was beginning to see a way to defeat him. You'll soon reach my height, ha uh -huh. You. Lava Havoc. Shit, I provoked him too much. He seemed to have gotten annoyed as he struck his spear in the ground along with a fierce cry. Latte quickly soared up. Tell everyone to run. Staying on the ground is dangerous. Damn, everyone. Dodge. Don't stay on the ground. Soon after, the entire volcanic region flipped upside down. Scarlet lava erupted from everywhere. The power of this lava was so strong that even many of the SS ranked destroyers melted down. Screams rang out from several places. No. 
Could there have been a casualty? I wanted to look around, but the giant didn't give me the chance to do so. His main target is us. Hero, prepare yourself. You puny arrogant human, you shall pay the price for your sins. A cone of lava erupted from right below me. I gasped and shouted. Latte, quickly, transform. Latte immediately transformed into her human form. I then instantly held her in my arms and shot up using Sharana's power. Although I had flew up hundreds of meters in an instant, the jet of lava was chasing after me. As if that wasn't enough, even the giant spear flew towards me from the side. I used divine speed and flew up even more quickly. Only then did I barely escape the lava. You're fast like a rat. The giant, Lava Heart, gritted his teeth and thrashed his spear about in the air to vent his anger. Meanwhile, I hurriedly confirmed the guild member's safety. Is everyone safe? Two members couldn't dodge in time, but they're alive. With elixirs, they'll be fine. But some of the succubi. Kayak. While Wyatt gave a report on the situation, a wind-splitting scream rang out. Not far away, an immense mana was going berserk. Without a doubt, it belonged to Licorice. It'll kill you. Licorice. Dear husband, I must kill him. I couldn't stop her. I couldn't ask her to focus on killing the destroyers in this situation. Not to mention, while the Lava Heart's attack had harmed us greatly, it had caused even greater harm to the Lava Army. Even if Licorice joined me, it would be fine. All right, come. Even before the words had left my mouth, Licorice was consecutively drawing giant magic circles in the air. She glared fiercely as a strange scent flowed out from her body. I knew instinctively. That was the scent of blood. Oh resentment of fragrant flowers, branding of rose. Become blind from beauty and forever wander in the prison of dreams, sweet nightmare. Licorice's mana condensed to the point it was visible with bare eyes as it enshrouded the lava heart's giant body. At that instant, his body shrunk rapidly. He was now only twenty meters tall, half of what he was only a moment ago. It was an unbelievable change. Quiak. Succubus Queen. A mere microbe dares to seduce me. Quiak. Sweet Nightmare was the floor master skill I got from the first dungeon Succubus Queen. When used against a target with lower charm than the user, it stole half of the target's health and afflicted him with the critical charm status effect. That giant possessed an overwhelmingly giant body and league of existence. I suspected that its charm might be higher than mine and didn't gamble, but Licorice had used this skill without hesitation and had succeeded. She was a succubus queen whose charm doubled against those of opposite sex, but to think she would come out victorious against such an opponent. Although I couldn't fully accept it, she soon resolved my doubt herself. Kohuk, a mere succubus. My clan's blood vengeance only just started. Dear husband, attack him now. The branding will restrain him. Got it. Latte, let's go. Understood. Blood vengeance. It seemed it was her clan's special ability, one that increased her power when members of her clan died. In that case, if I killed members of her clan when I first met her. Just thinking about it made my hair stand. Message Nuna's warning was surely justified. I gulped down a mouthful of saliva and charged towards the lava heart with Latte who had returned to her wyvern form. Thanks to Licorice's secret skill, he was no longer as overbearing. Quiak. A mere human and succubus will never make me kneel. Lava Lance. Dear husband, continue charging. Licorice shouted in a splitting voice and threw another magic circle. I could feel that she had expended her full strength, as the enormous magic circle drawn in the air flashed and shot through the air, erasing everything in its path. However, the moment the magic circle passed through me, I felt my strength surging. The giant spear of lava flying towards me didn't seem so scary anymore. Good. It'll pour all the mana I have left. Hero, I will fly at full speed. Latte roared and flapped her wings more fiercely. A spear made of boiling lava descended towards us. However, before we were swallowed by the lava, the magic circle licorice shot out clashed with it. Although it couldn't erase the spear, 
the lava was blocked by the magic circle and became unable to advance. Although cracks were appearing on the magic circle with uneasy sounds, the time it was buying me was more than enough. Sacrifice. I will end this now. I am the indestructible knight, Lava Heart. The one who will offer the power of the hero to the king shall be none other than. Before he could finish, the bullet like chaotic spear I launched pierced into his chest. Pika and Sharon both shouted as they fully released their elemental power, and I also poured all my mana into the attack. At the same time, I pushed Absolute Soul's power to its limit. Just die, you bastard. Qua. I will achieve our blood vengeance. Mere microbes dare. Quayak. Licorice squeezed out her mana to its last drop, shooting an arrow into his mouth. The moment he flinched, I detonated the mana I doubled from the tip of my spear. Now was the time to finish him. Cook. His scream caused the earth to fissure. Just the mana behind his scream caused great damage to everyone in the battlefield. It was truly made me shiver. However, that was only its death throw. I could feel it. Licorice's magic had weakened it by a level, and the spear attack I poured all my mana into had taken his life. At the same time his life came to an end, I could feel his lofty league crumbling down. You. The king shall punish you. All of you. None will survive. Even after losing his life, he cursed us. It was truly a colossal curse that had even taken form. Using his flickering flame of life as sacrifice, he was casting a death curse. You coward. As if I d let you. Don't look down on absolute soul's power. I jumped up from Lottie's back and charged towards the ball of mana he vomited out. Before his eyes closed from death, I could see him making a final smile. What he had just done was undoubtedly to force me to make this move. Immediately afterwards, at the same time the lava heart completely died, his curse directly slammed into me. Then, a concise message rang out. The power of absolute soul completely cancels the curse. Phew. I had succeeded by a hair's breadth. Although I was fine, anyone else hit by the curse would have faced a dreadful fate. This self-proclaimed knight had no honor. Dear husband, no. You can't face that curse alone. Eh. Licorice flew towards me in a hurry. After seeing that I was completely fine, a look of confusion emerged on her face. When I smiled silently, she asked curiously. How are you fine after being hit by that thing? That was the essence of a curse containing that guy's last remaining compressed life force. It's the power of absolute soul. What, aren't you happy? Of course I'm happy. Hick, I'm glad, dear husband. Licorice broke out into tears. Now that Lava Heart died, she could finally express her sorrow from the dead succubi. I smiled bitterly, embracing her and comforting her. Sorry Licorice. Because of me. No, dear husband. I never thought it was possible to protect dear husband's world without losing anyone. Hick. The other girls would surely be okay with what I was doing. I silently comforted the crying licorice. Then, I felt a sudden sense of emptiness. Wait. El Latte. The lava heart's lifeless body of lava containing nothing but boundless mana was falling down on Latte. I called her hurriedly, but she stayed still facing the lava without thinking to dodge it. I couldn't lose her like this. When I was about to use Shadow Blink to go save her, a refreshing fanfare rang out in my ear. Congratulations. After meeting extremely rare conditions, Darkwing Latte evolves into a higher species. Chapter, 228. What? I couldn't help but doubt my ears. Evolve? Into what? What's a higher species of Dark Wings? Licorice, who was in my arms, expressed her shock. Evolution it's because she contracted dear husband. She received a portion of the dungeon's power. A portion of the dungeon's power? There's no way something like that is natural. Because she's gained worthy achievements, she received the dungeon's blessing through dear husband. Though, I never would have thought a mere wyvern could have gained enough achievements to cause an evolution just what was she? She used to the boss of a region. 
rather than that let's go see Latte. With licorice fretting about not wanting to let go, I gave up on getting her off me. When I was about to approach her, Latte who had bathed in the falling lava suddenly shone and was encased in a red light. Even I could feel the intense heat emanating from her. Shin, what happened? Did you defeat that hup? Waya, who quickly flew towards me, saw licorice in my embrace and narrowed her brows before closing her mouth. Waya was indeed quick to understand the situation. I was truly thankful. I expressed my thanks with my eyes and spoke. Lottie's evolving. Evolving. It didn't take long before the shining light subsided. However, at the same time the light enveloping Latte subsided, Latte also seemed to be shrinking in size. Latte, who had been gotten a lot bigger since our first meeting, was now doing the opposite. Eventually, Latte shrunk to about 4 meters. The light then flowed into Lottie's body and she made her appearance. Although she was still black, there were red lines trimming the edges of her wings. She seemed to have gotten swifter, and her eyes were a deep red color. Her evolution indeed seemed to be related to lava. Dark wings are a rare species of wyverns capable of controlling cursed flames. They are well acknowledged for their swift wing beats and powerful flames, but in truth, they are simply the fallen results of a powerful species of ancient dragon being cursed. Dark wings that transcend their limits are said to be able to return to their original form, but not only are there very few dark wings, even their fallen forms are so powerful that it is hard for them to reach their limit. Darkwing Latte will become the first Darkwing to regain her original form. Darkwing Latte evolves into Blaze Queen. I didn't know how the dungeon helped her, but her evolution was closer to a return. Latte, who easily shattered everyone's imagination, approached and spoke. Hero, have you seen my transformation? Yeah, I did. Your energy seems to have doubled. Just by getting close to Latte, I could feel an intense heat. It seemed her energy became compressed as she got smaller. Latte flapped her wings excitedly. Winds carrying flames blew and stirred the surroundings. Huhu, so this is my true form. Reclaiming my true form in exchange for betraying other monsters and choosing the life as a human servant, truly strange. Hu ha ha ha. Do you even know what you're saying? Hero, it seems you truly are my blessing. Yeah, I'm happy that you're happy. Though it was a bit difficult as I was holding licorice in one arm, I pat Latte who approached me with the other hand and spoke. I'd be happy to hold a congratulatory party, but you should know our current situation. Wait just a little bit more. I can wait however much you want, my hero. Latte replied spiritedly and pushed her back towards me. Before I got on her, I pat licorice who was still in my embrace. Licorice, you used up your mana, right? Un. Sorry, dear husband. I knew we still have to face the king, but I couldn't control myself it won't recover for a while. No, it couldn't be helped. It's fine. You can go back to the mansion and rest. Well deal with the lava king. Okay, I trust you. Licorice replied silently and gave me a kiss on the cheek while his brows twitched. Then, she returned to the dungeon before I got on Lottie's back. Alright, now it's time to mm. When the lava heart died, I thought that everything he owned would turn into lava and disappear, but surprisingly, his giant spear was still there stuck to the ground. Imbued with the lava heart's remaining mana, it had been maintaining its weapon form. Eight. I lightly hurled the chaotic spear. The moment it hit the giant spear, it shone and was absorbed into the chaotic spear. Crimson chaotic spear absorbed the lava giant spear. Growth, 77%. Hook, so much. Previously, the growth wasn't even at 70%. Even after eating all those event dungeon weapons and floor master weapons, it hadn't grown by even 23%, but this time it had grown by almost 10%. Although I didn't know how I was going to fill the remaining 23%, I believed it was possible to evolve it to the next level before the two-year mark. As should I have checked its item description. No, it would have been eaten by the Chaotic Spear regardless. The Chaotic Spear spun through the air and returned to my hand. I then faced Waya who had been standing with her mouth open and asked. How are the two that got hurt? Are they okay? 
Thanks to Lydia's quick healing and the elixirs they're fine, though they lost some of their equipment it was Walker and some iron. I can see how they got hit by the lava. Walker most likely got hurt trying to protect Sophie, and it was probably the same for some iron except with other guild members. As I could imagine how painful it must have been for them, I grit. My teeth and turned to face where they were. It was best to take care of everything as quickly as possible. The number of destroyers and sweepers was only half of what it was when they first appeared. Beyond them, a new wave was beginning to appear. They were most likely the last wave of soldiers, as although there weren't many, each and every one of them seemed powerful. I aimed my spear towards them and quietly spoke to Waya. Waya, you protect the others. I'm more worried about you. It'll be fine, really. Shin. Hurry. In all honesty, having used sacrifice for that last attack, my health was quite low. I gulped down a potion and threw the leftover bottle on the ground, breaking it. It was a signal of sort. It'll be going ahead. Shin, be careful. Of course. Having evolved into a Blaze Queen, Lottie's speed far surpassed my imaginations. Even when she was a dark wing, she displayed a shocking speed with that large body. Now, it almost seems like she was traveling at the speed of light. Hero, ready your spear. I know, I'm ready. I replied energetically and ushered Mad Typhoon's power up. The enemies I now faced were Lava Knights who were seemingly shrunken versions of the Lava Heart. Since I was able to defeat the Lava Heart, there was no reason for me to be afraid. Fight me, you goddamned bastards. Open the path towards your king. My roar thundered throughout the volcanic region. Seemingly having understood my words, the lava knights held up their weapons and charged towards me. Almost as if she was waiting for this moment, Latte raised her voice and laughed. I shall allow you to feel the dignity of this blaze queen. Her body shone in a brilliant light like when I used divine speed. Without giving me a chance to do anything, she charged towards the lava knights, shattering their bodies upon contact. Although their bodies erupted into lava the moment they died, Latte seemed unhurt. Hero, my body has gotten stronger against flames. Don't worry about me and fight them freely. That's nice to hear. It was a growth worthy of the word evolution. I grinned and pointed my spear crackling with lightning towards the lava knights. Come at me. It'll destroy you all. After some time had passed, when I looked back after hearing the death throes of a lava knight, only Revival's members were remaining on the battlefield. The numerous destroyers, sweepers, and lava knights were nowhere to be seen. The battlefield, which had been filled with noisy cries and erupting lava, was now dominated by an odd silence. Is it over? I murmured, unable to believe it myself. The other members also looked around them as they dripped with blood and sweat. Indeed it is, hero. There is only one remaining presence in this area. Latte retorted in a calm manner. It was clear who the one remaining presence she was referring to was. It could only be the Lava King. Volcano Large Energy. Daisy approached me, seemingly looking extremely tired. Although she always maintained a neat appearance when wearing her uniform, her clothes now were messy and she was also full of sweat. It felt like this was the first time I saw Daisy sweat. My undead, many gone. Lava King, give me. Do you think you can control him? Probably. Giving up control of all other undead, possible. That's not good. For times like today, ultimate weapon needed. At her words, I hesitated. She was right. Although her undead monsters were strong, it was sometimes better to have one with absolute strength. That said, Daisy was truly amazing. Even though we had not won yet, she was already thinking about obtaining an undead. All right, fine. Hoo hoo. After listening to my answer, Daisy smiled. I then gathered the other members together. Their poor states couldn't be described with words. It seemed Walker and Samir, who had lost their equipment, had even more difficulty as they fought with low tier equipment. Furthermore, the succubi battle units also had additional casualties. I was glad that this damned lava army was taken care of, but I could only sigh at the succubi's death. Really thanks, everyone. 
You did well too. We won somehow. I thought we were going to die. I'm exhausted. While everyone threw in their comments, Ina jumped into my embrace silently. She was probably the one who did the most work today. She must have killed far more soldiers than me, and must have used far more mana as well. Feeling like I had made Ina suffer needlessly, I hugged her and pat her back. Thank you, Ina. You did well. You um, am not done. Ill fight with daddy. My lack of ability is making my Ina suffer sorry, I still need Ina's power. Can you help me? Un. Ill protect daddy. Feeling even sorrier, I held Ina tighter. Leon then asked. Friend, is that guy not coming out? Yeah. He apparently doesn't fight unless he's in an environment where he has the most advantage. What an annoying guy. Okay, now let's pick the members. At my words, a few reacted immediately. The first to jump was none other than Samire. I can still go on, Shin Nim. No, Samire. But I haven't even used my god's power yet. I only got hurt before because I wanted to save it for the boss fight. Samire. I shook my head once again. I'm only looking at one condition for the members I'm selecting now. Will they die in one hit or not? Even though you have your god's power left, you're too exhausted. ITLL be difficult to fight again. Shin Nim. Son, I can go on. You can't either, father. Hey. I didn't back down even with father's protest and continued. All the succubi did amazingly today. Go back to the resting place of the angels and rest. We can hold funerals for the fallen comrades when the battle is over. Dear husband. Now, I'll announce the ones coming with me to fight the Lava King. ITLLB me, Daisy, Waya, Ina, and Yiyun. What? What about me, Shin? Not you, Ludia. It's too dangerous. Shin. No. But you'll let Su Yiyun go. If anything, Yiyun's evasive ability is the best among us. Look at her. I pointed at Yiyun. Not only did she have very few injuries, they were all light and her clothes were much cleaner than the others. I wasn't bringing Yiyun for no reason. Her evasive ability was number one in the guild. As for her strength. Yiyun has that thing. Yu Yu. Yeah, they'll use it Yu Yu. Yiyun seemed to have realized what I was referring to, as she frowned a bit and murmured. But Master is aiming for Shin. She won't do anything funny in the middle of battle. Don't worry, Yiyun. If she tries to do anything, this Uni will stop her. Even if I have to burn her. It's my body, Uni. Then, Ren spoke in a dissatisfied tone. Crown Prince, I also have deific manifestation. If Ren uses deific manifestation, you'll jump straight into the mouth of the volcano. You need to wait until the thrashing phase ends. Phew. Hearing that I wouldn't be taking Ren, Labik sighed openly. I spoke with a bitter smile. Anyone else will just get in our way. Just stay back and rest, okay? You you. I don't want to. Ludia, I'll leave you to heal the others at the mansion. Please. But Shin Yu Yu. Ludia puffed up her cheeks, then turned away in the end. Do whatever you want. Go die if you want, stupid orc. Thanks for listening to me. Ait. Even after telling me to go die, she threw a few bottles of elixirs towards my face. I easily caught them, after which Lydia turned away again with a hump before returning to the dungeon. Then well be off, father. Don't secretly follow us. Kuhum. You're looking down on your father too much. When father gets a god's true name, father can come with us. Cook. Fine, I swear I'll get that damn thing. After having everyone return to the mansion, I looked at the remaining members and declared. Let's go hunt the king. Our destination was the mouth of the Bulusan volcano. There, the lava king was waiting for us. Chapter, 229 The temperature rose as we got closer to the volcano, and the earth melted from the unnaturally high temperature. As Ina, Waya, and I were fine as we had methods to deal with heat, 
Yi Yun seemed to be holding on barely with just her monstrous willpower, and Daisy didn't seem to be doing any better. Hot clothes off. Don't, Daisy. You'll hurt my eyes. Kong Shin, rude man. My body, pretty decent. No, I meant that Waya would poke my eyes but Waya would really poke my eyes out if I said that, so I stayed silent. Waya spoke out in my place. Daisy, the reason I like you is that we don't growl at each other about Shin. Don't try to make an enemy out of me. Not sure, what you mean. Good. Suddenly, the surrounding heat became more intense, and an ominous smoke was spewing out of the volcano. Hero, it's him. The king is inside the volcanic crater. Got it. Guys, it's time. It's good that you're easing your tension, but that's enough joking around. Shin, I'm not joking. This is more important than this so-called lava king. Well I'm sorry, but us surviving is much more important to me. Why yeah I got it. Waya's face reddened and she turned away. I might have been a bit harsh, but I didn't regret it. We were getting closer to the crater. The atmospheric mana vibrated, the earth tremored, and an overwhelming pressure descended on us. I stuck out my tongue and licked my lips. Even though I knew my life was at risk, my heart trembled in excitement as it always does before fighting a powerful opponent. Exhilaration dominated over fear. Even I thought I was a bit perverted. Hugh. I took a slow breath and calmed myself. Although I asked Yiyun to call Duka to fight, I planned on fighting the Lava King without the help of Pryuta. If I used deific manifestation and couldn't defeat the Lava King, I would be leaving myself open to attack. More importantly, Pryuta couldn't use my class-specific skills and skills within the Collector's pocket watch. Unless Pryuta came in his real body, he was far weaker than me when I used Overlord. That was how much I'd grown. Though, that also meant that I was much weaker without class-specific skills and the pocket watch's skills. Daddy, I can't use deific manifestation. Hmm. Did it fail? Un. So I can't use it. That's okay, I'm as strong even without it. The others also took out their weapons and raised their spirits as they checked their health and mana. The moment we arrived at the mouth of the volcano, Latte suddenly shouted. It's erupting. Latte immediately turned her body and flew away. At the same time, a colossal heatwave swept over us. I poured mana into my eyes to withstand the light and heat, and when I checked the surroundings, a giant tree of lava was sprouting up. Dear God. This isn't ordinary lava. It's an overwhelming lump of mana. Kohaha. Why have you come all this way? You have killed all of my subordinates. You are the first to have ever done so. Kohaha. A hearty laugh of a man rang out. Shockingly, the lava that erupted as if to cover the skies didn't fall and were gathering in one point. Then, easily absorbing all of its mana, he appeared. Elegant red scales covered his giant body, and two crooked horns rose above his head. He had yellow reptilian eyes, a long and thick tail, and a pair of bat-like wings that stretched out towards the sky. Simply put, he was a dragon, a giant dragon that easily reached 150 meters in length. The Lava King Grand Raid commences. You met one of the enemies aiming for the world's power. The dungeon's power is not fully effective against a world's enemy. The Grand Raid system exists to give what little support it can to explorers who are fighting against the world's enemies. The Lord's Blessing converges on your party. As a result, the enemy can only ignore up to 30% of your party members' skills and levels. Absolute Soul nullifies a part of the enemy's power. Your skills and levels will be 90% effective against the enemy. Remember that you will not be able to bring out your items and skills full power. We wish you luck. You will receive a huge reward if you defeat the Lava King. Why have you come to disturb my sleep? Until he arrives, I plan to simply sleep, but you lot have ruined it. Now there are no more monsters to serve as materials for my army, so now I'll have to relocate too. Don't worry, they'll make it so that you don't have to. Even as I felt his overwhelming existence, I smiled with effort and retorted. Inside my head, I was busy flicking the abacus beads and calculating his league. 
he seemed to be level 90 at the very least, and he could even ignore everyone's skills and levels. Isn't that too much? I was thankful that I had learned Absolute Soul. However, his scale armor and the endless pit of mana in his body could only make me sigh. He seemed to have reached the limit in both physical and magical defense. It was likely that he possessed the so-called EX ranked power, or one that was only a step below it. Um, as expected of a hero. You can carry such a large strength in that tiny human body. TSK, really, killing you would be such a waste. If only you weren't a hero, I would have taken you in as my subordinate. Sorry, but I have no plans to bathe in lava. Kohaha. I like your character too. Truly a waste. His giant eyes were solely focused on me as if the others weren't worthy of even talking to him. At that moment. Kana, might melt ill use deific manifestation. Deific manifestation. Daisy and Yiyun both use deific manifestation. Yiyun's master, Duka, was the first to descend. The moment she opened her eyes, she saw the giant dragon and screamed. Whoa, what's this? It's so strong. Is this the world's enemy? No, he's the one right under him. Oh, dear. We meet again. We must be fated. Waya silently ignited a fireball above her palm. Someone else then smacked Duka's head. Surprisingly, it was Daisy. You. Duka. To think I have to see you even after death, I'm appalled. Oh, Hecate. What are you doing here? My disciple called me. Focus on that giant turd, would you? Daisy's master and Duca knew each other. I wasn't the only one shocked. The Lava King also seemed shocked. You two are gods. I can smell the stench of gods. I'm surprised you noticed us. Daisy's master, Hecate, snorted as she talked back to the Lava King. Then, she approached me and whispered. Child, you have Zeus' power. Can you use it? And no, not yet do you know Zeus. Oh, how unfortunate. Also, how could I not know Zeus? Im Hecate after all. I had no clue what she meant. I told myself to look into it later. You must have heard from Daisy, but we have to defeat him. Please help us. Of course. Duca, follow me. I want to play with dear a bit more Chet. With Hecate's power, undead monsters began to appear in the air. Although they were monsters Daisy normally controlled, they seemed to be blessed with a special power. Duca also seemed to have received Hecate's power as she floated in the air while grumbling. Cuckoo, this is getting exciting. I didn't think you'd be hiding this much power. Kohaha. Kohaha die. This sly bastard. The Lava King suddenly sent a fireball towards us in the middle of laughing. Because of its incredible speed, I was about to use divine speed, but Latte quickly turned around with a sneer and dodged it. Meanwhile, Waya and Ina both flew up into the air. However, what Waya did as she flew up shocked me. The flames she shot out from her hands was gently enveloping the flames shot out by the Lava King. She could receive his flames head on. Waya spoke as she made a provocative smile. Your flames sure are tasty. Hmm. A human. A human that can wield flames so freely who are you? Truly an interesting bunch. Kohaha. He shot out more flames. This time, the flames didn't just come from him. The volcano also erupted and spewed out a lava that was filled with mana. It then broke into dozens and rained down on us. Shin, I can't block them all. Don't worry about the ones coming my way. Kwa. The moment the words left my mouth, Latte breathed out golden flames from mouth. Her flames clashed with eight streams of flames flying towards us before swallowing them and disappearing. What the others did weren't so different. Ina's ice froze the lava, and Duca easily evaded the attacks coming her way. As for Hecate, she swung the whip in her hand, and a blue barrier appeared around her and the elite squadron of undead monster, protecting them. Good, good. It would be boring if it was so easy. Kohaha. The Lava King only laughed even though his attacks were blocked. It could only mean that he hadn't used his full strength. 
Immediately afterwards, the surrounding temperature shot up once more to the point that average ability users would be burned to death just by being in this space. But to pick a fight with me with just this much strength, truly foolish. Giant fireballs appeared in the air. Their pure and oppressive essence of fire blazed as they danced. Ina frowned and held her arms out, creating numerous crystals of ice. However, even Ina couldn't completely cancel out the fireballs. It's too hot. I hate sweating. Kohaha. A little kid with such an overwhelming magic power. It seems I might have come knocking on death's door. Kohahaha, life should always be blazing. In front of this king, set your lives ablaze. Foolish brute, you're destined to burn yourself to death. Although the voice was undoubtedly Daisus, Hecate's voice gave it a mystical silvery feeling. Hecate swung her whip, and the undead monsters charged towards the flame dragon. They all dodged the oncoming fireballs as they each attacked the flame dragon. Kohaha. Dead beings injuring this lava king, truly interesting. The lava king exploded with an enormous amount of mana. Even with protective barriers surrounding them, half of the undead monsters were instantly annihilated. Hecate made an annoyed growl and swung her whip, strengthened the undead monsters again. However, the Lava King seemed to have only just begun. He flapped his wings once and the undead monsters were all pushed back. Then, he immediately charged towards us. He'll annihilate everything. You will pay the price for looking down on me. Kohaha. As if. Duka shouted and instantly disappeared from my sight. Immediately afterwards, the Lava King stopped charging. Shockingly, a streak of blood shot out from his neck. Duka had successfully injured him. Koo, this guy is too big. It feels like I only poured a bucket of water in a sandy beach. Kuhu, it's been a while since I've felt pain. His howl shook the earth and raised the surrounding temperature once more. I was dumbfounded. With just his existence and his overwhelming mana, he was trying to steam us to death. This is what is known as absolute. Absolute fire. The volcano erupted once again. Shockingly, he jumped into the lava, and when he re-emerged, the wound on his neck was gone. Tiny human, how will you extinguish an inextinguishable flame? As long as fire exists in this world, I will never die. That is why I, Lava King, reign as a king. You're too noisy, you damned lizard. Waya shouted and reached out with her hands. A part of the lava being absorbed by the Lava King changed direction and flowed into Waya. She threw her Cyclops Lord's golden eye into the air and shouted. Ait, everyone get ready to attack. Golden pupils, curse him. Eh. Cyclops Lord's golden eye had another effect. While I stood shocked, the golden eye fiercely rotated, seemingly compressing its power. Then, in an instant, it shot out a beam of light toward the flame dragon. The result could only be described as shocking. When the Lava King was hit by the golden laser, the golden eye that shattered. Qua! That one hurt quite a lot. Impressive, impressive. I lost an epic grade item, so it better have. What are you all doing? Attack him. I didn't know how big of an attack that was, but since it could deal that much pain to the Lava King who could ignore a portion of item's effects, it was understandable that the golden eye shattered. I turned my eyes away from Waya who seemed to be on the verge of tears and tightened the grip on my spear. Latte, sorry, we'll have to fight separately. I can't injure him alone. Hero should do what hero needs to do. Lottie's fierce wingbeat smashed away the heatwave I gave her a grin and jumped off her back. The Lava King then shouted. Oh. You're fighting me yourself. Outstanding. Truly a blaze. Sorry, but I'm no blaze. Then what are you? Kohaha. I'm an overlord. In that instant, I became a giant covered in black armor. You used overlord. While the skill is active, your HP and MP triples, and all stats double. When attacking the enemy, you have 10% chance to afflict a random highest rank status effect. When attacked by an enemy, you have 20% chance to afflict a random highest rank status effect. 
Through my body, the power of an absolute destroyer had descended on earth. Chapter, 230 After using Overlord, I examined my body, surprised by the effect. My five-meter-tall stature, the black armor of mana covering my body, and the overwhelming power touching my skin made me tremble. Even the Lava King could not laugh seeing my appearance. That power. I obtained it just to beat up bastards like you. In truth, I didn't care about anything the Lava King was currently saying. Following the sense of omnipotence flowing through my body, I lengthened my spear to several tens of meters and shouted. It'll defeat you within the next three minutes. Try it if you can. The Lava King opened his mouth and vomited out flames once again. However, I charged into his mouth directly. Before I could even try to block his fire breath, Lade blocked it on her own. You want harm hero. Eight, a mere wyvern acting so bothersome just by learning to wield flames. I flew past Latte and straight towards the Lava King. The chaotic spear, which had elongated to dozens of meters, was flashing with a threatening black lightning. Eat this. Kohaha, I like your courage, hero. A giant barrier of fire appeared in the air, and the spear I thrust out clashed with the barrier, crackling with a terrifying amount of lightning. I twisted my waist, adding more strength to my spear and pushing it forward. In an instant, the barrier of fire became dyed in black before it shattered easily. My spear then stabbed his neck. His blood spurted out towards me, but I quickly pulled my spear out, swinging my spear lightly to make the blood dissipate. Quiak. Hoo-hoo, what a beautiful sight. Hecate's voice rang out. She then soared into the sky and swung her whips here and there. All of the undead monsters then howled before beginning to attack the Lava King who was writhing in pain. Ina also took advantage of this chance, creating giant masses of ice in the air and firing them at the Lava King. It's hot. I hate you. Kaya ha ha ha. You're too cool, dear. Duka, control yourself. Once exposed, the Lava King's body was only a good shooting target. I twisted my body in the air once more stabbing the Lava King again and again. In the next moment, Duca's figure seemed to flash in the corner of my eyes and another stream of blood spurted out from the Lava King's neck. I didn't know why that woman liked attacking her enemy's neck so much. Kukuk Kuhaha. Humans, you are indeed interesting. But if you think this is enough to make me troubled, you couldn't be more mistaken. Kayak. Duca screamed and quickly jumped off his body. Centered around his body, a powerful heatwave pulsed out, sweeping over all of us. I quickly reached out with my hands and unfolded Enigma. Enigma's domain then perfectly halted the heatwave's advance. Even I was surprised at my own power's strength. So it's as I thought. Hero, you really are interesting. Sorry, but I don't find you that interesting. Waya, the volcano's going to erupt. The reason he was talking was to give himself time to recover. I spread Enigma out like a net and suppressed the Lava King's attacks completely. Then, I aimed my giant spear filled with an ample amount of heroic aura towards him. The Lava King flapped his wings fiercely and shouted. Hero who has reached the limit of a human being, see if you can overcome this king. That's exactly what I plan on doing. I shot my spear forward. The Lava King faced it directly breathing out flames. However, Latte blocked his flames coming towards me. Her body was already wrapped in a blinding brilliance. On the other hand, the volcanic crater under us was rumbling unnaturally. I could see Wyatt jumping in haphazardly. Child, you'll die. If this is all it takes to kill me, I'd rather die. Shin, they'll stop him from recovering. You kill him. I'm trusting you, Waya. In truth, I was worried sick about Waya's safety, but I tried my best to not think about it. Even a bit of extraneous thoughts made one spear shaky and halved its power. Right now, it was more important to focus on dealing a devastating blow to the Lava King. The giant spear version of Heroic Strike clashed with the Lava King's scarlet flames, which even Latte couldn't block, and scattered its energy to the side. I once again fiercely circulated Peruta circuit. The atmospheric mana became absorbed into my body, becoming part of the whirlpool enveloping my spear. Kohahaha. 
I was hesitating because it would be a waste to burn you into ashes, but I won't hesitate any longer. Try it. The moment my spear neared the lava king's face, his eyes flashed, and hundreds of fireballs ignited in the air, swooping towards me. If I hadn't used Overlord, I would have had no choice but to dodge them, but my current self didn't see the need to dodge them. I continued onward with a penetrating force and charged into the flames. Latte exerted flames from her entire body and charged in with me. Latte, I'll leave it to you. I can't block them all, hero. I can handle the rest of them. Controlling the mana of Enigma covering my body was none other than Peruta Circuit's rotation. Peruta Circuit's rotation sucked in a portion of the amorphous mana making up my armor and became a pitch black whirlpool. The Lava King's ravaging flames were also sucked into the whirlpool. Of course, it wasn't that they couldn't damage me at all. However, this much pain was more than bearable. Sacrifice. Along with his scream, a large amount of the blood he vomited rained down. Although I was also injured from Sacrifice's side effect, while I was using Overlord, the pain was reduced. Seeing the king writhing in pain, I grinned. Does it hurt? It hurts for me, too. Now you've made me mad. Qua. Eternal flame. Along with the pulsing of his mana, the volcanic crater rumbled once again. Soon, it would erupt again. Even as he tossed blood in all directions, he cried maniacally. I am eternal. As long as even a single wick of flame exists, I will never die. Like I said I won't let that happen. I threw my spear towards him. Carrying a black whirlpool, the chaotic spear cut through the air and pierced the lava king's wing. Then, I pulled it back by controlling the enigma. I felt like the lava king's monstrous weight would pull my arm out. I really had to exert all of my energy to pull him towards me. At that moment, Ina stepped in to help me. Don't bully daddy. I hate you even more. Ku ku ha 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 ha. You, your ice is truly surprising. Ina's attack at full force froze his body in an instant. Without missing this opportunity, I yanked him towards me. Hecate also made the best out of this opportunity, holding her hand in the air and shouting. Little one, the blood you shed will strangle your neck. Hecate's magic flashed. The blood flowing out of his neck and burning in the air squirmed together from Hecate's magic, becoming a red chain that dug into his body. Strength then left the Lava King's body, and it became easier to pull him. Latte also tackled him to make him lose his control over his center of mass. Although Lottie's figure was much smaller than the Lava King, her tackle was powerful enough to make him groan in pain. Every time Latte struck his body, he was pulled closer to me more quickly. Even so, there wasn't enough time. Before I could completely pull him away from the range of the volcanic crater, the volcano erupted with a scalding lava. Kohahaha. His endless mad laughter suddenly came to halt. The eruption had suddenly stopped as if the throat of the volcano had been plugged. It was undoubtedly Waya's doing. Using this chance, I quickly yanked on the lava king. Kwa. Duka. I'll help you. Duca's body instantly separated into dozens of copies. With each of them possessing a frightening amount of magical power, they all charged towards the Lava King and stabbed him with their daggers exuding a black aura. Duca then shouted. Feel the weight of my blade. Dance of the fool. Kuhahak. You bitch. Just the fact that the Lava King had stopped laughing showed the situation the Lava King was in. Moreover, he had realized he couldn't recover like before. He must have laughed, thinking that he could regenerate himself no matter how much damage he took, but now, each and every attack was bringing him closer to death. When Duca backed off after succeeding in her attack, I reached out and retrieved my spear first before charging at the Lava King, who was still writhing in pain from Duca's unknown skill and power. It would have been nice if I could use Wind King's rage at this moment, but as I had used it not long ago and had even fully charged it, it was regretfully unavailable for use. Hap. Die. Even so, my charge was monstrously powerful. The chaotic spear dug straight into the middle of his chest and detonated the mana of Enigma, messing up the Lava King's insides completely. Kuhahak. 
I controlled Enigma with Pryuta Circuit to the best of my ability to do as much damage as I could. There really was nothing better than Pryuta Circuit for controlling a large power that even I was incapable of understanding. Even after leaving my spear and thus my control, Enigma continued to spin endlessly as it ravaged the Lava King's body. It almost felt like it could kill the Lava King directly. A mere human dares to injure my body. The flames on his body exploded. Although his mana was decreasing, it was still overwhelming. As his giant mana became a torrent of flames of an indescribable temperature and swept toward us like a tidal wave this was undoubtedly the highest ranked flames he could ignite. I knew instinctively that this was the EX rank. Flames one must burn his soul to ignite. Everyone dodge. You don't have to. At the same time I shouted towards everyone to dodge, Waya also shouted. She was soaring up from the crater. Her eyes were shining with a strange red light, and there were no signs on her body that she had stopped the volcano's eruption. Instead, several tens of enormous masses of magma circled around her, as if to act as her guard. Waya, you. Do you get it now? Waya smiled bashfully. Then, she made a peace sign with her fingers. I can go to beyond now. That's what's important. Leaving my shouting behind, Waya shouted. Let's see if your flames can win against Agni. The Lava King's flames fiercely clashed with the masses of magma Waya shot out. Surprisingly, they were neck and neck. A god's true name could even resist EX ranked flames. In any case, I had to make use of this opportunity. I gripped my spear and charged towards the Lava King. The mana of Enigma gathered on the spear tip and caused a powerful rotation. It was almost as if I was using an electric drill. Kook, do you think a human can overcome this king just by obtaining a god's power? That's why there's the saying, there's no shame in a pack of hyena attacking a lion. I replied for Waya as I charged towards him with my spear. His flames were occupied with Waya's flames and could not affect me in the slightest. The Lava King seemed to have resorted to physical brawls, as he flew towards me with his giant body. Why don't we fight? You sure can move quick for someone so heavy. With every flap of his wings, the distance between us shortened. His tail shook ominously as it gathered flames at the end of it. As a precaution, I called Latte. Latte. My all for hero. Although her battle cry was a bit worrying, I ignored it temporarily. She flew in front of me and hid herself within the light. The name Blaze Queen suited her perfectly as she was a brilliant luminosity, not just flames. Take this. Stop annoying me, Wyvern. Latte charged forward, and the Lava King swung his tail. Surprisingly, in the middle of flying, Latte disappeared. The moment the Lava King's tail struck empty air, Latte penetrated his abdomen and appeared behind him. A huge amount of blood became dispersed in the air. To think she could penetrate through his body directly. Cack. Hero, now. Right, now's the time. Along with Lottie's shout, I affirmed my resolve and shot my spear into him as I activated a skill. The enormous mana swirling around my body directly. In the next moment, I was thrown vulnerably in front of my giant enemy's eyes. No, that wasn't it. My body had shrunk. I was waiting for this very moment. The Lava King opened his mouth. What could be seen within was an endless void and an undulating fire of hell. I grinned. Then, he swallowed me. Chapter, 231. It was extremely hot. That was all I could think of. The Lava King's EX ranked flames were burning my mana. I had heard that there was nothing it couldn't burn but this was still too much. Before it was too late, I howled. Kwong. You used frozen roar. All enemies in the battlefield freezes in place. All allies temporarily become super armored and has all abilities increased by 50%. Your chance of landing a critical hit doubles when fighting enemies affected by frozen roar. Frozen roar's effect is suppressed. The enemy's power halves your skill's power. You could not freeze your target completely. That didn't matter. What was important was that I could now breathe. Really, I had received more damage from this guy's heat than his direct attacks. 
What an absurd monster. Even as I gritted my teeth, I took in a deep breath and pointed my spear towards the roof of his mouth. With how big he was, even if I stabbed him with the strongest attack I could make, he would only feel it as a thorn pricking him. Even if I could expand my aura to dozens of meters, it would dissipate in the process of breaking through his defense. As such, I deactivated it. What, you ask? It was, of course, Sky God's play. Qua. His scream was music to my ears. I opened his mouth forcefully and standing on his tongue, I pierced his head with my spear which had returned to its dozens meter long length. That was a feint, you retard. Qua. What kind of an idiot believes what his enemy says? You tricked me, hero. Although I was certain that I pierced his brain, he surprisingly seemed fine. It seemed that a world's enemy was a world's enemy no matter how weak he was. His biological functions undoubtedly worked differently than other organisms. In that case, what did I need to do to kill him? Perhaps I would only find out by continuously beating him up. Everyone, attack. Duca. I'm already on it, Hecate. As I ordered my party members, I poured lightning elemental power into my spear in order to deal a fatal blow before the remaining two minute time passed. Let's see exactly how many attacks you can withstand. Lightning Spear Storm. Master, this power is too overwhelming. I feel like I'm being swallowed. Hold on just a bit more, Pika. You oh oh. The Lava King's mouth seemed to want to devour me, but I held my spear up desperately and drilled a hole on the roof of his mouth. His blood fell like a waterfall, drenching me and igniting. I formed a barrier of enigma around myself using Pryuta circuit, but that wasn't enough to completely block his attack. Qua. Die. Pay the price for tricking this lava king. Koha. A scorching heat rose up from his belly. Was he trying to breathe out flames in this situation? However, as the saying went, once one rode a tiger, it was hard to get off. Quitting now would be the worst thing I could do. I decided to trust an overlord's defensive power and activated divine speed, stabbing him desperately. At that moment, dozens of bone spikes covered in black mana shot out from my body and attacked the roof of his mouth with me. Thorn Throne's option had activated. Cook, this is a dragon's. Humph, it'll melt them all. A terrifying heat erased all traces of frozen roar and swept towards me. I shouted in a scream. Ruyui. Il try. Ruyue, who was waiting all this time for this moment, exploded with her power. A thick barrier of ice was erected between the Lava King's throat and me. Sharana then joined Ryue and strengthened her ice. Despite the two elementals' effort, the Lava King's flames destroyed the ice barrier. Thankfully, his flames were slightly weakened as a result as they swept over me. Shockingly, I still couldn't nullify these flames. As expected of the EX rank. Quayak. Even as the flames clashed with enigma surrounding my body, it dealt great flame damage to me, and I struggled to prevent myself from screaming. Pure black desire increased my chances of dealing critical hits, but also receiving critical hits. Although it was great when I was the attacking, it was excruciatingly painful when I was the one being attacked. Die. I'll devour you and use you as my fuel. I want to say the same thing. It seemed the others were attacking the Lava King from the outside as it was extremely noisy and his body was rocking harshly. However, the Lava King was entirely focused on me and I was similarly entirely focused on him. Wop. I stabbed my spear into him frantically. Stabbing, pulling, stabbing, pulling. All the muscles and body acted to repeat just these two moves. I ignored the screams of my muscles and continuously used divine speed. Since my mana would fill up from absolute soul when I attacked him, I didn't hesitate to use divine speed as much as I wanted. As a result, I had dealt a countless number of attacks in a short moment, and the Lava King became afflicted with several status effects. Overlord special effect afflicts your enemy with forced sleep. Your enemy's powerful resistance transforms forced sleep into heavy chaos. Overlord special effect afflicts your enemy with massive hemorrhage. Your enemy's powerful resistance transforms massive hemorrhage into hemorrhage. 
Overlord special effect afflicts your enemy with frenzy. Your enemy's powerful resistance transforms frenzy into rage. You, that is the mana I can't control. The mana on the opposite side of divine power. You notice too late, lizard. Hap. Die Hard activates. Although Enigma was protecting my body, it seemed my health had fallen to a dangerous level. Because I was too focused on attacking him, I hadn't even realized it. If I didn't have Die Hard, I would have already died. Just whose protection are you under? How can you wield those abilities? He told me that you explorers couldn't block my path. I want to hear more, but since you probably won't tell, you'll give up. Lightning Spear Storm also didn't end unless I stopped it. The roof of his mouth was already ragged, and although his blood and flesh was dripping down on and igniting into powerful flames, I continued to attack him. Then, even Death Blood activated. Death Blood activates, using 5% of your HP to inject contaminated blood into the enemy. The Lava King falls under the blood contamination status effect. Its attack power and movement speed decreases, and it loses mana continuously. This effect cannot be dispelled unless the target dies. The enemy tries to resist the status effect, but fails. Quiak. Oh, this one worked. Cool. You used a curse. One that cannot be cleansed unless either one of us dies. I took out an elixir Ludia gave me from my inventory. As the terrifying heat immediately began to melt the elixir's bottle, I hurriedly popped the cap and gulped it down. Then, I transferred all the power of Enigma in my body to the spear. Raging flames immediately surged in and damaged me, but the elixir's power mitigated it slightly and prevented my health from going down. However, this would not last long. Most importantly, Overlord's remaining time was only several tens of seconds. When it ended, I would undoubtedly die. When the thought crossed my mind, my spear shook slightly, but I quickly wiped the thought from my head. If I lost my composure now, it would really be over. Next up was the crystal ball licorice gave me. Without hesitation, I broke it. A boundless magic power flowed out and into the chaotic spear. As it continued to crackle with lightning, the chaotic spear released a bright red light which could be seen even in the midst of the Lava King's flames. At that moment, Devourer activated automatically. My health had gone below 10% even with the elixir's power. However, when I realized that I was at death's door, I became even calmer. It was simple. If I could kill the enemy, I would live. If I couldn't, I would die. As such, there was only one thing I needed to do. This is my strongest attack. Sacrifice. If my health was below 10%, it would be impossible to activate sacrifice. However, even if I didn't attack, the dragon bone spikes that shot out from my body endlessly stabbed the Lava King, and with Devourer's power, my health was maintaining a level above 10%. Knowing my health wouldn't fall below 10%, I used sacrifice without a shred of hesitation, scraping all my mana into my spear. Kohaha. Ill admit it, you are the first to have troubled me to this extent. But did you think you, a human, could defeat this lava king? Today will be the end of earth. Despair, and die. Even in death, you will suffer. Kohaha. His belly heated up once again. Infinite mana, infinite flames. No matter how much mana I stole from him with absolute soul, no matter how much mana he lost from blood contamination, his mana was infinite. Unless his soul was annihilated, he would be immortal. An existence none can harm, that is me. Heroic strike. Even if I knew that, I thrust my spear. I had never been so focused in an attack. With only the thought of killing him in my mind and my entire Bodhis strength in my spear, I stabbed my spear into him. A massive explosion broke out. Without even a hint of exaggeration, his head exploded. The moment my spear pierced his giant dragon head, it had exploded from being unable to withstand the converged mana. Of course, along with his head exploding, I was released into the air. Although it was still scorching hot, it was much more bearable compared to when I was in his body. Now, I could even see how the others were doing. Daddy! Ina immediately flew towards me with a wave of freezing energy. 
The flames that were still burning on my body fought Inus' freezing energy, but were soon extinguished. It was then that I realized that Overlord had ended. Although I had a few seconds left, I had even spent the power to maintain it in the previous attack. Devourer also seemed to have stopped, as I couldn't feel my health going up. I suspected that my health was at 10%, where sacrifice would have put me in. I really felt like I was dying. If I closed my eyes, I felt like I would never open them again. Then. If this is your limit it is my victory. I froze. Although I had confirmed that his head had exploded, the giant flame flying towards me was undoubtedly real. Ina shot her freezing energy towards it in shock, but her mana seemed to have reached its limit too. I had also used every ounce of my strength. In that case, return would be the only. You will not escape. Gaze activates. Your movement speed falls drastically. You cannot open your inventory. Your health and mana recovery speed decreases. When being gazed at by your enemy, you will not be able to use return. How is he alive when his head exploded? Duka, stab your dagger in him before it's too late. Moonlight Restraint Hecate seemed to have done something as the headless lava king twitched. Immediately afterwards, Duka flew up to him and stabbed her dagger into the lava king's flaming body. A blue light spread out from the dagger, and the lava king's movements stopped in the air. However, his flames were still just as vigorous as before. He shouted triumphantly. Kohahaha, you think this is enough to stop me? The moment the hero dies, your loss is guaranteed. The gaze skill made me unable to do anything. If I had mana left, I could have used divine speed, but I had just used all of my mana. To think he still had such a cheaty skill. He's just as crafty as me. So this is the end. Foolish. I had expected more from you all. Found it. Agni's offering, the cosmic fire of Agni. At that moment, I could hear Waya's shout. Her eyes opened widely and between her clasped hands was a white flame exuding holiness. Immediately afterwards, the white flame in her hand flew up and seemingly burned something invisible. Although it didn't look like much had happened, the effect was truly extreme. The Lava King suddenly made a heaven-piercing scream. Bitch! Don't be rude, you damned lizard! Waya shouted sharply and held her clasped hands up high. Her red hair fluttered in the air like silk, while her ruby-like eyes burned fiercely. When using her god's power, she looked like a goddess of holy fire. As a horrific scream rang throughout the entire volcanic region, the giant flame expanded and flew towards me. However, before it could near me, Latte who had escaped Gaze's effect snatched me. The flame that missed its target then continued to expand until it exploded. Immediately afterwards, the most enjoyable fanfare I had ever heard rang out in my ears. Grand Raid Success Chapter 232 Amazing! With just five people, you have defeated one of the enemies threatening the world. The Lava King's soul has been completely annihilated by Agni's flames. As a result, all flame-type monsters invading Earth will have all abilities decreased by 10%. This is a monumental achievement. You obtained the title, Guardian. The dungeon is extremely satisfied by this result, and has decided to increase the support for Earth's guardians. When fighting on Earth, your abilities increase by 10%. And you will receive even better rewards for completing event raids and grand raids. You obtain 30 stat points and 10 skill points as rewards for completing a grand raid. Rewards will be distributed in order of contribution. Kong Shin Nim's contribution is the highest. Choose your reward. 1. Lava King's Egg Legend. 2. Flame Dragon Evil Eyes Legend. 3. Immortal Fire Dragon Whip Legend. 4. Fire Dragon Arl Legend 1. 5. Guard Ring Legend. The moment I heard the fanfare, my body went limp. I didn't want to move even a single finger, and in truth, I barely had the strength to do so. Then, as Latte put me down on the ground, Waya flew towards me. Shin. Yeah, yeah, I'm Okafsa. Yuak, witch. What are you doing? 
attacking me when I don't have any strength to resist. Even if I wanted to say something, I couldn't because her lips were completely blocking mine. I only resisted meekly as I made barely audible moaning sounds. Because of the pain and damage from sacrifice and the fatigue that swept over after knowing that the battle ended, I couldn't move even though Waya wasn't restraining me strongly. Waya only let go of me once 30 seconds had passed. After barely mustering enough strength to take a step back, I pointed at my lips and shouted. Because of the huge shock, my legs were shaking. What were you doing? I was too happy sorry, but am happy with that. And my tongue was twisted. I staggered back with my face entirely reddened. I then bumped into someone. I turned around and saw Duca. Dear, how about you do it again with me? Kayak. I leaped backwards. Duca, who was smacking her lips and approaching me, was then punished by Hecate's whip. Both Daisy and her master were too reliable. Don't scheme on another girl's man. Can't I have some fun? Ow. Mm, -mm as I thought, I can be great friends with Daisy. Even the god called by her deific manifestation is so helpful. Waya who had acquired a spot next to me nodded her head as she watched in satisfaction. I hoped Shed realized that she was just as scary as Duca. Then, without me having to say anything, Latte quickly flew next to me and protected me. Latte was the only one who understood me. Of course, I wanted to believe that she just wanted to protect her master and had no ulterior motives. By the way, how did you kill him? No, how was he even alive? It seems like it was a special magic, one that separated his body and soul. If I wasn't using Agni's power, I would have been done in two. Ah, so he took out his soul before his body was heavily damaged. Yep, and once he restored his body with lava, he could return his soul. Before he could do that, I incinerated his soul with Agni's power. That damned guy, doing all that when he was on the verge of death he was even worse than me. Wait, was I spitting on my own face? Thanks Waya, you saved us. I got my reward so it's fine if you think it's not enough, can I get it again? The remaining four. Eight points. This time, from you. No sorry. It went by two. One points. You you, straightforward women were too scary. If I let my guard down even for a second, I felt like I would just fall. The all-knowing expression of Waya's was even more worrisome. Seeing me flustered, her grin shone even brighter. Shin, do you? Let's make an undead now. It seemed like Waya was about to say something important, but Daisy, or rather Hecate, interrupted her. Waya glared at Hecate. Weren't you going to cooperate? I don't know what you're talking about, child. That child isn't your man, and I can't let my poor Daisy be alone forever. You're still young, so you should give up and find another wonderful man. You. After ruining the mood, Hecate danced towards the volcanic crater as she whistled. It was then that Ina ran into my arms. Daddy. My Ina, was it scary? Un. Ina's eyes were teary. It seemed she thought I would die. When I looked away from Waya to console Ina, Waya drooped her shoulders and spoke weakly. She had undoubtedly gave up saying what she was about to say. Arg, you'll endure it. Mommy, thanks for saving Daddy. If I don't save my man, who would? You should stop crying too. Un. Next time, he'll get stronger and protect Daddy and Mommy. Daddy will get stronger to protect Ina too. Hugging Ina, it felt like my heart that was racing because of Waya and Duca was returning to its normal pace. I could finally relax. I patted Ina's head and pondered. Although romantic feelings made my heart pound, they also made me distracted and unfocused. On the other hand, when I was with Yua or Ina, I felt relaxed and was empowered by feelings of wanting to protect them. As I thought, for me right now, family was more important than romance. Though something felt off, I decided not to pay attention to it. Wow, even with his soul gone, he still has such a powerful regenerative ability. Hecate gave an unreserved praise. When I approached the Lava King's corpse that had fallen into the lava, his severed head had been mostly regenerated. Even without a soul, his body had a terrifying strength. 
Even though so much mana had been shaved off and stolen, the mana remaining in his body was absurdly great. It was even absorbing the mana inside the lava pit. If we don't handle it soon, it will revive as an undead we can't possibly control. Hoo-hoo, it's great that Daisy called me. Is it impossible with Daisy's power? No, child. It's just that there isn't enough time. That's the same thing. Hecate, hurry up. Then, we can go play somewhere. It's been such a long time. What, you want to enjoy women since you can't get a guy? Behave yourself. Return your body to its owner and go back. Chet. Duca smacked her lips and gave up on tempting Hecate. I felt like I had caught a glimpse of the depth of the god's world, but I tried to ignore it and watched Hecate turn the lava king into an undead. Um, this guy is really overwhelming. With him out, none of the other undeads can be used. A brilliant light shone from Hecate's hands. Once all undead monsters went back into her inventory, she started the process of turning the lava king into an undead. All of her mana was sucked into the lava king and lifted the lava king's body sleeping in the volcanic crater. His body slowly became blackish red, a sign that it was evolving into an undead. In case something happened, I prepared myself to call Pryuta. However, once I became confident that she would finish her work without any mishap, I looked at the other target that was itching for attention. It was, of course, the reward list. Why I finished him off, but him the first, huh? Without you, we couldn't have one. We wouldn't have one if any one of us was missing. Especially you, Waya. Yeah, but you were the one who damaged it the most and drove it to the verge of death. All I did was finish him off. Now, hurry up and choose your reward. Ehu. In truth, there was only one thing for me to choose. The Lava King's Egg. As I wanted to give it to Yua, I was a bit worried that it would become tied to me, but thankfully, that wasn't the case. After putting the egg into my inventory, I made a sigh of relief. With this, my original goal is completed too. Shouldn't you tame it yourself? I know you care about Yua, but... After seeing that I had chosen an egg, why I raised an understandable question. I shook my head. I can't tame a fourth monster yet. If I put skill points into it, I might regret it later. More importantly, I don't have any taming-related skills, so rather than raising a monster from an egg, it's more appropriate for me to tame an already strong adult monster. On the other hand, Yua's main class is Tamer, so she can tame many more monsters and have skills that help her tamed monsters get stronger. If Yua raises a powerful monster from its infancy, ITLL grow by leaps and bounds. If that's what you say oh, this must be an orb. As expected, Waya was the second to choose a reward. What she chose was the Lava King's eyes, which even I was tempted to get. She leaped in joy, saying that she had found something to replace the orb she had lost. In the next instant, she screamed. Kayak. Waya. Are you okay? Waya suddenly knelt and covered her face. I hurriedly squatted down and asked to be sure. Was it not an orb, but evil eyes? Cook, yeah my eyes what if it looks like a reptile's now? Raise your head. ITLL be fine. No, it's going to look weird. What should I do? Don't worry. Will you take responsibility? Yeah, yeah, hurry up. If it's now, we might be able to turn him back. You promised. I took Waya's hands off her face and her face was revealed. Her eyes were shining in a deeper red than before. Almost like the evil eyes I possessed, countless particles of light were gathering in her eyes and forming a strange symbol. Beautiful enchanting pupils. They were like Loretta's with only a different color. While I blanked out, Wyatt quickly stole my lips again and spoke with a grin. No takesies backsies. You am taking it back. Really, I made it easy for you too. Still, you can't take it back. You knew it, didn't you? That nothing would happen. Well your evil eyes came from the basilisk. Ah. You fool. The basilisk is a reptile too. I shook my head, realizing my own stupidity. We both have evil eyes now. Isn't it fateful? 
not that I believe in fate or anything. I don't like that word either but anyways, congratulations. Humph, in that case, child belongs to my daisy. She already had evil eyes. Hecate walked towards us. Behind her, the reborn lava king was flying slowly. Although he didn't give off as much pressure as when he was alive, the pressure was still massive. Without Overlord, I wasn't confident in beating it one on one. Call it Loki. You didn't just shorten Lava King, right? Daisus naming sense. Hecate dodged my gaze. I gave up on interrogating her further and looked at Loki who was flapping her wings in the air. His awe-inspiring majesty reminded me of the time we fought. Perhaps because I nearly died several times, the whole fight felt like something that happened years ago. Although not even ten minutes had passed, I was now looking eye to eye with Loki, who had become our ally. I grinned and looked away. The clear full moon poured a chilling blue light over us. With all the burns we were suffering, it couldn't feel more satisfying. Feeling like the moon was blessing us, I spread my arms out. It's so refreshing. By the way, dear, do you know your armor's full of holes? Are you seducing me? It'll fall for it gladly. Ah, uh, shit. So that's why it felt chilly. Chapter, 233 After the fight was over and confirming that there wasn't even a single monster remaining in the Philippines, we returned home on the plane we put in Waya's inventory. Although everyone was exhausted, we were full of smiles knowing that we had achieved more than what we came to do. That said, a few were still unhappy. My own son is ignoring his father. Hearing fathers mumbling as he leaned against his seat, I flinched. However, to my surprise, Walker who had his body buried deep into his seat stood up for me. If you don't want to be ignored, get yourself a god's true name, Kong Yung Gong. If that's easy, why don't you do it, Walker? Walker retorted to father's rebuttal with a grin. In good. People should know where they belong. Edward says that, but he was vexed too. He doesn't like getting left out of things, you see. Now that you mention it, he did come to our raids when we didn't call him. Don't spread false rumors, Sophie. On the other hand, Yua's expression continued to be heavy. It was because of the Lava King's egg I gave her. I don't have the right to take this, Appa. Everyone got hurt because of me, and many succubi even died. Who knew the Philippines would have such a monster? It's not Yua's fault. There was nothing I could do. I thought I could be of help to Appa now. That's all the more reason you should take it. Yua is the most suitable one for raising whatever monster that comes out of the egg. Appa. Seeing Yua's dejected look, I patted her head. Who would like hurting others because of something they said or did? Although Yua couldn't be blamed for what happened, she couldn't help but feel pain. However, nothing would change by staying dejected. If I put it a bit stronger, it was foolish. Because of Yua, we discovered the Lava King sooner and defeated him. The sacrifice we had to make in the process is regrettable, but ITLL be fine as long as Yua doesn't forget about it. You can get stronger for the remaining succubi. Yes, Appa. I will. Good. Yua's expression became slightly brighter. Good, once she had a clear goal, she would undoubtedly march forward without losing sight of herself. At that moment, Yi Yun, who was standing up from her seat behind us spoke up. How come you get strangely smarter and kinder whenever you talk to Yua? Are you implying I'm mean and stupid when I'm talking to you and the others? Ow. Even while I punished Yi Yun appropriately, the plane was soaring to its destination. For the record, Leon was piloting the plane for the way back instead of Walker. Why were all the men in our guild so able? After we returned to Korea, we were showered with countless camera flashes. Of course, I simply ignored them. The most important thing right now was to get some rest. We had reclaimed an entire country. It wasn't something that people would forget because we stayed quiet for a day or two. Furthermore, there were more important things we had to tend to. We decided to hold the funeral for the six dead succubi at the resort area. The main reason was that it was the most environmentally beautiful place we knew. As the dead succubi didn't leave behind any corpses, we buried an empty coffin along with gifts we had for the parted. 
Dear husband should already know this, but funerals aren't part of succubi's tradition. Makes sense. Un, because our existences are like morning dew, disappearing the moment we die that's why this feels so unfamiliar. Licorice continued. I'm happy. That even though we won't leave anything behind, everyone here will remember us. Licorice. Although I had not known her for a long time, because she had always shown her playful side, the current her felt extremely unfamiliar. However, Licorice was the succubus queen, naturally having lived for a much longer time than me. She had undoubtedly experienced much more and had grown much more. Perhaps because these thoughts were written on my face, Licorice made a small smile and spoke. Not long after I was born in Enesis, I became the succubus queen. It was really only luck that I was born with this bloodline. Un. But immediately after that, my world lost its power. At a young age, I had to lead my clan to cross over to Elysia. For the sole purpose of obtaining a world's power, I claimed countless lives without knowing good or evil. Licorice stared at the tombstone we placed and continued. At the time, there was only one thing on my mind my clan. We had to survive. We had to survive. That was the only thing I could think of. That's why when even a single member dies, I lose my reason and go wild you saw it, right? I did. When the war ended and I realized that we'd lost I negotiated with the Lord and found shelter in a place isolated from the dungeon. In truth, I just wanted to rest a little. I see. Of course, I knew I couldn't stay like that forever. If I did, the entire clan would simply wither away. I knew a day would come when we would have to fight again. Whether I was on the side of the humans or the monsters, whether I was on the defending side or the attacking side, none of that mattered. What mattered was that my clan survived, just that. Ah, uh, no. I would be lying if I said I wasn't looking forward to meeting the man who would become my husband. You see, the one regret I had was never having even touched a man's hands after being born as a succubus. Hoo hoo, I was scared on one hand, but my heart also fluttered on the other that's how I waited for dear husband. For that part, Licorice spoke as she looked at me coquettishly. Unable to find the words to respond, I scratched my face awkwardly. The attacking side and the defending side, monsters and humans. Which side was at fault? That, I didn't know. I had always struggled to protect the place I belonged, and the only thing that had changed was that there were more people I had to protect. Of course, Licorice and her clan included. That's why the fact that those I had to protect died made me. So you don't need blame yourself, dear husband. We had long since prepared ourselves for this fight and this sacrifice. We never even dreamed of surviving until the end without any casualty. Did she also have the evil eyes Daisy had? I stared at Licorice with doubtful eyes, but she only gave me an enchanting smile in return. In the end, I sighed and retorted. Will you continue to fight with us? If dear husband dies, he'll die too. Plus, I have to avenge the dead clan members. Don't ask such obvious questions, stupid husband. The one who calls people stupid is the stupid one. In any case, thank you. Hoo hoo, I'm happy to have met dear husband. I'm glad that my husband is you. Her expression was too happy for me to nitpick about when I had become her husband. I told myself to address that problem later and shut my mouth. However I also had a feeling that I might have to change my stubbornness in this regard. Once the funeral ended, I visited Fairy Garden for the first time in a while. Of course, I only had one goal. That was to give pure black desire to Lin for repair. However, when I visited Lin's workshop, a shocking scene entered my eyes. Lin Lin is working on his own accord. I'm. Blacksmith. You. Damned. Bastard. Lin retorted to the beat of his hammer with a stronger force behind each strike. Curious as to what he was making, I asked. What are you working on? Hasn't. Anyone. Taught. You. Not. To. Talk. To. Someone. Who's. In. The. Middle. Of. Working. 
but Lin's different than those novice blacksmiths. Plus, why should anyone wait four to five hours to see a blacksmith? It's not like they have anything to learn. So you know. Lin's shouting suddenly stopped. I thought he would put on an aloof act next, but that didn't seem to be the case. He put down his hammer and dipped a red-hot piece of metal in water to cool it down. So, what is it? A ring. For me. Kong Shin, have you been hit by a hammer before? Are you trying to have a taste? Even though I had gotten much stronger than the first time I had met Lin, I still had no confidence to win against him. He seemed weaker than Loretta, but he was still a transcendent who had far surpassed my level. As such, I declined his offer politely and asked again. So who is it for? Loka. Locanian. When I looked at him with a shocked face, Lin responded awkwardly. Yeah, we got one. It's a bit late, but I thought I should make her a ring. For a moment, I tried to process what he just said. Then, I spoke with a blank expression. Congratulations, Lin. You understood with just that. Damn it. To think that Lin would become a father pft. I see, you don't think a hammer is enough and want to try the anvil. Forgive me. Lin looked at the completed ring. Then, he began the detailed refining process as he breathed out fire from his mouth. In this entire world, the only person no, draconian who would make a ring like this would be Lin. I asked Lin again. So Lin, um how? I always planned on taking responsibility for Loka it's just that we haven't gotten a baby until now. That's the most surprising thing I heard out of your mouth. Not that I won't do it with other women. That's the worst thing I heard out of your mouth. Light flashed. Lin was imbuing the ring with magic as he was refining it. It let me realize once again how skilled he was as a blacksmith and as a magician. Even as he was performing such a difficult task, he yapped endlessly in response. Men with both ability and charm are few in number, and all women want such men. If they want me, they'll give myself to the women I like. They'll be able to enjoy myself, and the women will be happy too. It's killing two birds with one stone. You shouldn't think too hard either. I heard from Nunim that it's quite crazy. No one's doubting that you're a hero, you don't have to bring so many women around. You'll never be able to do that. Then just do what you want. But know this. What will happen to the women who are only looking at you is up to you. ITLL be nice if they'll leave for other men, but there are surprisingly many women who can't do that. Not everyone can be like Loretta Nunim. I heard she has a first love. Are you hoping girls you throw away will remember you for hundreds and thousands of years? Then you're the worst. Like I said, you're Loretta's Nunim's new love found with great difficulty. You managed to make Nunim fall for you when she had given up on love, but if you make her sad again it'll kill you. The killing intent that shot out for a moment made me flinch. I realized once again how much I had grown. If it was in the past, I wouldn't have noticed anything, even if I fell under a status effect. Lin seemed to have noticed that too as the corner of his mouth twisted up to a smile. In just saying it. Well, if you have the ability, it's best to just accept everyone. It's not like Nunim will give up at this point just because there are one or two more women. Lin's values and mine are too different. Of course, we lived in a different world after all. In the world I came from, strength was all that mattered. Those with power would be forgiven no matter what they did, and those without power chose a master to protect their bodies and minds. The lucky ones were the ones who could make the choice for themselves. Most didn't have such luck there were many men who took up women, and also many women who took up men. I was especially strong, so many wanted to come under me. Amongst them, women paid with their bodies. This was the first time Lin had said anything about his world. I became a bit curious, and asked. So did you accept them all? Are you crazy? I have eyes too. Plus, what am I going to do if I accept every girl that comes to me? If I was lax about that kind of stuff, I would have never see the end of it. If you don't have feelings for them, you have to cut them off. UK. It was kind of like your current guild. I only accepted those with abilities. Of course, they weren't just women, but men too. 
There were also many that I simply protected, and I didn't always make them my women or servant. I had my fair share of troubles you see. Also, it's not like I could take them with me wherever I went. Was Locanian also? You could say that she was my first ally. I knew it. Are you done asking now? I'm still curious about a lot of things. Then bring a good bottle of wine later. The rest won't be free. Got it. Lin cooled down his ring and scrutinized it to check that everything was perfect. Then, as if satisfied, he sighed and put away the ring somewhere. Then, he took out of a cigarette from a place different than the place he had stored his ring. Finally, he tilted his head and asked. By the way, what are you here for? Repair my pure black desire, Lin. Wake. More work. Come on, just how did you poke holes in a legend grade armor? You see, I fought a weak world's enemy. What weak world's enemy? There is no such thing. You you, I should have chased you out the moment I saw you. I suddenly felt much better. When I met Lin, I really had to see his troubled face. Chapter, 234 The succubi filmed the entire Philippines recapturing process without leaving anything out. The number of videos we had was too many to count, and we didn't attach any difficult conditions for the media to obtain them. We only stopped them from separately editing them. Rather than making the video easy to see for the viewers, we wanted to directly relay the situation from the battlefield to the viewers. Of course, it was also to prevent any malicious editing. To be honest, releasing the videos was a bit embarrassing, but my feeling of wanting others to understand the situation Earth was under was greater. No ability users could easily handle the monsters shown on the videos, and if Waya and the succubi didn't protect the cameras with their magic, they wouldn't have been able to properly film anything anyways. Humanity had to understand this and fight against the monsters more seriously. The current trend of seeing monsters as a source of income had to be changed. As we expected, the reaction is huge. Negatively. Also positively. Waya grinned and scrolled through the screen in the air. I could clearly feel the passionate reactions from ordinary civilians and ability users of all countries. Even now, messages were pouring in endlessly. There's just too much evidence for everything to be a lie. Look, we're getting so many inquiries asking for how to apply to revival. I already announced that the condition is being an SS rank, though. How cold. Philippines no longer has monsters. At least, not at the moment. The land of the monsters became a land full of resources, and the surviving Philippine citizens are hailing us as gods. I mean. We didn't ask the Philippines for money, and we clearly told other nations eyeing the now empty Philippines that they had no rights over them. What was important here was that we didn't benefit financially. The moment we requested something, we would become no different than those who saw monsters as money. What we had to gain from the Philippines was much more important than something like money. Of the Philippine population, 90% had died from the monster's invasion. In other words, only 10% had survived. Although that may not sound like a lot, that was over 10 million people, and that would be enough to run a country. For the Philippine citizens who were left without homes and land, the current Philippines would serve as the perfect foundation for recovery. There was an enormous amount of new mines and natural resources, and they would be able to test new crops and minerals that crossed over from another world. It was truly a land filled with treasures. Of course, giving some of the new resources away to other powerful nations would be inevitable. Building everything up from scratch would simply be too hard. However, if Revival stepped in to ensure the trades were fair, Philippines would undoubtedly be able to rise again as one nation. Like you said, there are criticisms too, especially from Koreans. As you know, Koreans don't think too highly of the Philippines. They're asking why you're helping a country that has always committed crimes against them. Just laugh it off. Although we won't be able to butt in on personal vendettas, the ones that committed the crimes are probably dead, and the current Philippines won't be able to do anything against Koreans. Of course, if they do commit such an absurd act again. Although I didn't think that would ever happen, if they made use of the fact that we were protecting them, they would have to pay the appropriate price. Well, if they realized even a portion of the power we had, they wouldn't dare do such a thing. 
In fact, they would undoubtedly do whatever they could to be gain our favor. Although we won't request anything from them, if they wanted to gift us, we wouldn't decline either. That was the best way to maintain our relations. They'd lost families, friends, homes, jobs, and everything they knew and loved when they escaped from the Philippines. The fear of monsters was undoubtedly buried deep in their bones. To protect themselves from monsters, they knew who they had to make their ally. However, it seemed that Korean citizens didn't want to even think about why we took the effort to film everything. There are so many. My blood is boiling, why does something a Korean person achieved have to be given to the Philippines, aren't they just idiots, Philippines should have been made to pay tributes to Korea, etc., etc. They make it sound like they're the ones who shed blood in the Philippines. Tell me about it. It's not like you fought for financial benefits you fought to find a new pet for your younger sister. Koham. Why is sudden attack caught me off guard? I let out a dry cough and turned my gaze. You sure love your sister. I wonder how these people would react if they knew the real reason we went to the Philippines. What do you think, Guildmaster? Waya spoke as she put her arm around me and stared at me fixedly. I eventually gave in. Forgive me, Vice Guildmaster. Since it wasn't for a monetary reason, fine. I'll forgive you. Why are you bullying me? You're so mean. You see, I think you're the cutest when you're making that flustered face. How selfish. In this trip to the Philippines, we gained everything we could ask for. Although Yua still felt guilty about making the guild members suffer and having the succubi die, thanks to her, we were able to attack the Lava King before he could fully prepare his army and ultimately defeat him. If we had fought him later, although we would have also been stronger, he might have overwhelmed us with a much stronger army. No one blamed Yua and even considered her casual request as a fortune. Daisy obtained an insurmountably powerful undead as a result, and Yua had obtained the Lava King's egg, which had the potential to become stronger than the undead Daisy obtained. Waya obtained evil eyes, Daisy and Yiyun obtained powerful legend-grade weapons, and Ina obtained a ring that would fortify her weak defense. Although I didn't have any material gains, I obtained the Guardian title, which had a powerful effect and gave an ample amount of stats and skill points. Furthermore, revival position as Earth's Guardian was solidified. Having no one to needlessly interfere with our business was truly priceless. Dear husband, we have more data. Burke. At that moment, the door opened and Licorice walked in. She carried a crystal ball in her hand, and I no longer needed Loretta to tell me how much information could be stored in that little crystal ball. There are three potential places where the kings could be staying. Let's look at them together, dear husband. Uh, you see, I have to finish grinding the 70th floor master. Of course, defeating the world's enemies was important, but it would be troublesome if it interfered with my progress in the dungeon. How am I supposed to face them if I didn't get stronger? However, the two girls didn't seem intent on listening to me. Let's work, dear husband. We have to crush those stupid king's heads. You only need an hour to do it anyways. For now, work. Is your guardian title for show? Damn it. I have other things to do in the dungeon too. I have to get my repaired pure black desire from Lin. However, my inner screams only rang silently. You consumed the fruit of charming to the limit, making you glossier than before. You will receive love from all regardless of their sex. Your magic and charm increase by 13. Consuming more of this item will likely have no effect. You equip the Incubus King set. Your charm and magic increase by 30. When the Incubus King set is equipped, you can use Bewilderment Bomb once per day. When your target's charm is lower than yours, you will steal half of their magic power and afflict your target with the Sweet Fatigue status effect. When the target's charm is higher than yours, you will lose half of your health and mana, and fall into the feeble status effect. I managed to finish it today. I murmured proudly as I stared at the Incubus King's corpse scattering into particles of light. After finishing the tedious work and becoming free, I could finally enter the dungeon. As I had planned beforehand, I finished the Incubus King grinding. Altogether, the ten fruit of charming increased my magic and charm by forty. 
Although it wasn't as much as the Succubus Queen's tattoo, it made sense as the Succubus Queen's elixir was a tattoo invigoration elixir. What was important was that my magic had increased by 90 points by grinding the two floor masters. My charm also went up by 90 points, but that only gave me a headache. The Incubus King set was a suit with a striking black velvet jacket and pants. It was the type of shiny attire that rich people wore. Just by having it on, it felt like how cringe-worthy I was doubled. As such, I promptly extracted the skill and threw the suit into my inventory. The skill's effect was almost exactly like Sweet Nightmare's effect. Sweet Nightmare stole the target's health, while Bewilderment Bomb stole the target's magic power. There was no need to hesitate. I immediately synthesized the two skills together. You obtain the unique skill, Lilith's Temptation. Lilith's Temptation can be used once per day and only against a member of the opposite sex with a lower charm than you. Once activated, the skill can steal up to 50% of the target's health and magic power and afflicts the target with the Absolute Obedience status effect with a 20% chance. Once afflicted with Absolute Obedience, the target will become your servant for eternity. However, if the target is not afflicted with Absolute Obedience, the target will become afflicted with the Awakened One's Rage status effect with a 40% chance. Once afflicted with Awakened One's Rage, the target's abilities are doubled in exchange for having his health halved. You created a unique skill. This grand achievement causes all gods of love to focus on you. However, other competing gods force them to take a step back. You obtain three skill points. Current skill points, 33. Lilith's temptation couldn't it have at least used a man's name. Not to mention, this skill seemed rather dangerous. Setting aside the fact that it could only be used against the opposite sex, a 20% chance to absolutely control an opponent was massive. On the other hand, the fearful awakened one's rage status effect had a 40% of 80%, in other words, a 32% chance to activate. I had to be extra cautious in using this skill. The good side was that it clearly drew a line against targets with higher charm, making it so that the skill couldn't be used against them. Whatever, it's better than not having it at all. I sighed and closed the skill window before leaving the floor master room. I had yet to get my pure black desire back. The Incubus King wasn't strong enough to make me put up any defense, but that would not be the case with Beyond's 20th floor master. It was now time to get my armor back from Lin. However, when I left the floor master room, I didn't see Loretta at the floor shop. I thought it was strange, but I soon discovered even stranger things. The stairway to the 71st floor was gone, and so was the gate to Beyond's 20th floor. I couldn't believe my eyes. How could there be nothing? At that moment, a message I had never heard before rang out. It was message Nuna's flustered voice. An alert to all first dungeon explorers. As an administrative guild master has gone missing, all activities in the dungeon will halt. Until the guild master comes back, all of the dungeon services except the residential area will become unable for use. Guild masters of guilds be ranked or above should immediately gather in the residential area's plaza. I could only have one reaction in such a situation. It can't be Loretta. Chapter 235 I repeat, the dungeon will temporarily shut down due to one of the guild masters going missing. Only the residential area will be functioning until the guild master returns. Guild masters of guilds be ranked or above should immediately gather in the residential area's plaza. Message Nuna didn't answer my question. I hastened to the residential area, while the guild communication channel became noisy. Sun, the dungeon's monsters suddenly disappeared. Shin, have you heard? Shin Nim, where are you? Shin. Ak, annoying. I told them I didn't know anything as I ran to the plaza. When I arrived, the plaza was bustling with people. Soon, a familiar voice maintained the order. If you are not a B rank or higher guild master, please step back. You do not have the qualifications. The voice was telling the truth, yet was rather harsh. This person no, Elf was Loretta. I ran inside the plaza as I regained my composure. When Loretta saw me, she flapped her wings in greeting. Shin Nim, you're here. Loretta. 
I was worried because you weren't at the floor shop. Hoo hoo, were you worried that I went missing? There's no way I would run away leaving my beloved Shin Nim behind. Hearing Loretta's words, I couldn't help but smile. Seeing Loretta's bright smile, I sighed in relief and looked around. Within the plaza, other than those related to the administrative guilds, there weren't many outsiders. According to Loretta, there were only eleven including me. It seemed there really weren't that many guilds above B rank. Loretta and three other administrative guild masters were present. I remembered what Loretta had once said. The first dungeon has five administrative guilds with Fairy Garden being one of them. Since there were four administrative guild masters here, the remaining one should be the one that's gone missing. Other than Loretta, I knew two administrative guild masters, and I couldn't see one of them here. The woman helping Desert Scorpion from the back, Sipua. Loretta. It's as you think. Loretta nodded with a slightly disheartened expression. She then looked at all the gathered guild masters and spoke in a louder voice. Since everyone's here, each administrative guild should take three guilds to explain the situation to. Then, start searching for Sipua. I will handle phantoms and revivals guild masters. It seemed guilds that could grow to be rank was friendly with at least one administrative guild master. Seeing the guild masters walking towards administrative guild masters on their own, I also headed towards Loretta. At the same time, I caught sight of another guild master. A handsome man with a well-built body, clear features, long hair. Hi. Im Phantom's guild master, Falloan. Im Kong Shin. And small. No, tiny. He was practically palm-sized. Falloan is a pixie. Are you surprised? It's my first time seeing a pixie explorer. My continent had more pixies than humans. Though, it got captured by monsters over 300 years ago. This was the first time I saw anyone talk about a continent's ruin so lightheartedly. I stared at him dumbfounded. Loretta explained with a wry smile. Pixies get power from emotions. Sad emotions lead to their death. That's why he's. I see. Ha ha ha, it's fine, it's fine. One day, it'll save my continent. I believe you will. 300 years. If he stayed in the dungeon for that long, he must have gotten much stronger. When I asked Loretta by giving her a glance, she nodded her head. Falloan is on the dungeon's 91st floor. Ha ha ha, I heard that no one's gotten past the dungeon's 92nd floor in the past 200 years. Anyways, follow me to Fairy Garden. It'll explain the situation there. When I looked around, the other administrative guild masters were also leaving with their respective guild masters. Only ordinary explorers left nearby were speaking noisily. As there was no reason for us to stay, Falloan and I also headed to Fairy Garden through the gate Loretta opened. The dungeon's operations are on hold. How's the second dungeon? They stopped too. Damn it! The fourth dungeon contacted us. There is no new dungeon. There won't be any event dungeons for a while too. When I arrived at Fairy Garden, the usually relaxed atmosphere was nowhere to be seen as everyone was busily running around. With the playful elementals laughing brightly and imitating the people around them, the scene looked even more hectic. Few of the fairies caught sight of Loretta and rejoiced. Master, you're here. Sikatra and Lin are almost ready. Are the two of them? Yep. You too, follow me. The place Loretta led us was the pavilion I had seen a few times. Although it was usually crowded with people, it was currently silent. When I sat down on a chair, Falloan sat on the table. Loretta then sat across from me and let out a sigh. I feel like dying. I didn't want to do anything not related to Shin Nim, but something like this happened again. Does this happen often? This is the second time since the dungeon's founding. During this long, long period Kuham, it's not really that long, but still. This is the second. Loretta emphasized another word to drive the attention away from the word long. Her ears were flapping particularly quickly. Sipua that bitch finally did it. She tricked all members of her administrative guild and disappeared completely. Um can administrative guild masters leave their positions? They shouldn't. 
that's why the dungeon's operations stopped. Loretta paused for a moment, then continued in a slightly exhausted tone. For the dungeon to function properly, all administrative guild masters have to in their appropriate positions. Even with one of them missing, everything becomes a mess. If two of them leaves the dungeon then the dungeon will disappear, unable to maintain itself. The reason we called the two of you here is to help us find Sipua and bring her back. Surprised by the weight of her words, I widened my eyes. Why did administrative guild masters disappearing affect the dungeon so much? Loretta what kind of an existence are the administrative guild masters? Heroes. I short reply sounded out from behind me. When I turned around, I saw the elf Sikatra and Lin. Lin's current appearance surprised me greatly. Though he had always worn light loose-fitting clothing, he was now wearing tight-fitting leather clothes with a handgun by his waist weight, gun. Lin is that? It's my weapon. What, got a problem? Yes. Isn't that a handgun? What, did you think guns only existed in your world? But you can't kill monsters with guns. Or is that gun a magical tool that only looks like a gun? My world was advanced civilization with science. Your world's and my world's guns probably aren't that different in structure. The people in my world couldn't kill monsters with guns too, but I'm different. I can strengthen guns and bullets with mana. Lin spoke as if it was nothing. Leon naturally surfaced in my mind. Right, in a multiverse, it was unlikely that Leon's ability was unique. It was undoubtedly an extremely rare ability, but to think that Lin also had it a sword was more suitable for Lin than a gun. After all, he was a blacksmith. Not to mention, a long black gun hung on his back. Isn't that a sniper rifle? It's for the worst case scenario. Lin spoke as if it was nothing, but I couldn't help but feel uneasy. However, I refrained from voicing my concerns. There was something more important for me to ask. Lin, you just said that Loretta is a hero. Yes, Shin Nim I was a hero. A hero that couldn't save her world, but had continued to hold the world's power. Loretta spoke instead of Lin. A faint regret could be seen on her face. Shin Nim, do you remember what I told you before? About a time when the dungeon wasn't what it was today, when the dungeon wasn't even called the dungeon, a time when power was given to ability users differently. I think you said that the power was given away too easily. Too easily and also too much. In the end, it became so bad that the system would be destroyed if the power wasn't retrieved. Simply put, Oldie did a terrible job Kuham, to be honest, the world's enemy was so powerful that we couldn't fight him unless we did that. Loretta was also a hero like me. It wasn't that the thought had never crossed my mind, but it was strange hearing it from her mouth. Though I had come to know more about her, it felt like I had gotten more distant. But Loretta is. Right. The first dungeon's five administrative guild masters were all heroes who had once received the dungeon support. Some were defeated and some escaped, but in the end, all of us had lost to the world's enemy. Although I lost to him, I refused to die and give him the world's power. I felt vexed, and I wanted to get revenge. I wanted to tear apart all who invaded my peaceful world. Even if they had their reasons, even if they were reluctant and forced into their spot, none of that mattered to me. The others felt the same, Sipua included. We wanted to help heroes. We wanted to help those who helped heroes. That's why. After losing everything, we decided to join the Lord's cause. We didn't want other heroes, other guardians to face the same end we faced. Shin Nim wondered why the dungeon existed for side of the defenders, right? This is the reason. Loretta looked straight into my eyes. The dungeon was created by guardians who had failed. To teach other guardians, to test their potential, and to help them reach new heights. By giving blessings to raise their leagues, they would come to better protect their worlds. I finally realized. The dungeon wasn't a place of absolute virtue, nor was it a place of eccentrics with hidden secrets. It was a training school created by seniors who were powerlessly defeated in the same situation as us. All in order to help us not face the same defeat they had. The dungeon is a practically a world maintained by the lords and the administrative guild master's power. 
That's why a single guild master running away can cause all this. Lin slammed his fist down on the table as he spoke unhappily. Philoan's body shot up from the force. Although he glared at Lin, Lin didn't react in the slightest. Kong Shin, there is a reason we summoned guild masters above B rank. Under the clause that all guilds should help the administrative guild maintain the dungeon's function and existence, they are to help us in this time of crisis. I thought it was a meaningless filler clause, but it actually was useful. I did remember such a clause being there when I signed up to create a guild. I had always thought it was for show, as I never imagined something like this would happen. It would be nice if just us administrative guilds could resolve the problem without involving the explorers, but even there is a huge restriction on administrative guild members leaving for another world. Most importantly, they have to be accompanied by dungeon explorers. It has to do with maintaining the dungeon's power. In truth, if the dungeon didn't stop its operations, none of the administrative guild masters or the administrative guild members for that matter would be able to take even a single foot outside the dungeon. To be honest, I wanted to involve Shinnim in this matter. Even if it was for the sake of the dungeon, putting a world's hero in danger wasn't ideal. But there were just too few powerful explorers who we could call on for help. Other than Shin Nim, there are three other heroes participating this time. I couldn't leave Shin Nim out even if I wanted to. If it's something I have to do as a guild master, I have no intention of being left out. I spoke clearly. Then, I added. But, I will run away if it's dangerous. That's only obvious. It'll be with you, but if things look dangerous, just think about your life. Of course, not that it will happen. Am I going with Lin? What, you expect me to go with that midget instead? Who are you calling a midget, you stinking draconian? Philoan finally exploded. While the elf Sikatra who seemed naturally close to Pixies consoled him, Lin continued to ignore Philoan as he spoke to me. I'm personally expecting a lot from you, so cooperate. If I can be of help, of course I will. But there's something I haven't heard yet. Why did she escape and to where? Isn't that obvious? I know, I just wanted to check I glared at Lin and conveyed my intentions. Lin didn't pick up on my sign at all and growled at me. Seeing the two of us, Loretta smiled and spoke. Sipua headed to the world conquered by the book walkers, the silent continent. She went to meet her love, Lauderd Heidelcyan, a former guild master of the massive desert scorpion guild. Though, that's if he's alive. Yep, that's what I thought. If I had to choose a dungeon explorer to help me in this mission, there really was only one choice. Thinking that I would have to once again ask Daisy for her help, a small sigh left my mouth. Chapter, 236 It's dangerous, don't go. Daisy spoke in a straightforward manner. Kong Shin will die. I asked you to explain the situation to me, not curse me. Let me come. Else, you'll go alone. Won't you arrive in a different place if you go? So let's go together. Daisy stubbornly insisted, but I had no plans of taking anyone with me. I believe that it was best to go with just Lin. Anyone else would just slow us down. Though, that might not necessarily be the case with Daisy. A very powerful member of the administrative guild is coming with me, so you don't have to worry about my safety. Book Walker, strong. And many. Right. That's what I wanted, to know the situation. Book Walker, also called Slaughter Scholars. Yeah, what's so special about them? Take me too. Daisy was insistent. I sighed and looked back at Lin. Can we bring another person? What? Of course not. Why? We won't gain anything by having more people. He'll be doing the fighting, so we don't need anyone else. His confidence irked me slightly, but I also knew he wasn't just boasting. However, I had an idea. Her name is Daisy. She's from the Silent Continent, so wouldn't it be helpful to have her guide us? Silent Continent? There's still an explorer other than Heidelcyan from that continent. What's her level? I seem to have caught Lin's attention. I quickly asked Daisy. Daisy, what level are you? 83. She's level 83. She's also a beyond explorer. Beyond? There were more people like you in your guild. 
fine, at least she won't hold us back. Lin made it sound like there would be more people who would want to come with me. When I notified Daisy that she could join us with a bitter smile, Waya frighteningly spoke out. Let me come too. I then explained that we wouldn't gain anything by letting her come. Of course, I took time to say this carefully so her feelings wouldn't be hurt. Although Waya refused to accept my explanation and appealed her strength, we really couldn't take Waya with us as well. There was also the fact that Waya's level had gone down after she moved from the second dungeon to the first dungeon. Just wait. It'll come back safely, I promise. I became a dimensional mercenary just so I could go with you in cases like this. I'm not going as a dimensional mercenary this time. My dimensional travel is on cooldown, so I can't even use it. Next time, we can take a dimensional mercenary mission together, okay? Hugh, okay you'll get mad if you come back hurt, got it? Don't worry. While I pacified Waya, Daisy had arrived in Fairy Garden. She seemed to be full of spirit, as she seemed to give off more vigor than usual. Leaving Waya behind, very difficult. Yeah, good job. She said, if I make a move on Kong Shin, she'll kill me. But, what does making a move mean? You don't have to know. Since she's here, let's go. We have to find Sipua as quickly as possible and put her back in her place. Lin seemed a bit surprised when he saw Daisy, but he soon calmed down and urged us. But Lin, since there are two teams from each of the four guilds, are there eight teams going? That's right. Why? I'm just making sure. There's no way to specify Sipua's location. That's right. We'll be able to sense her if we get close enough, so we can only split up the continent into eight regions and search. That's the easiest way to do it. In a world that's being ruled by a world's enemy, huh? Yep. It was a seriously annoying and dangerous mission. If not decided, pick a location. Shaun Empire, most likely. You mean? Lauderd Heidelcyan, probably they're most likely dead. Shaun Empire is the most dangerous. That's great. I love danger. Lin retorted with a grin and started walking. It seemed he was going to choose the region we would search for as Daisy recommended. Daisy stared at Lin walking away, then faced me and asked. Kong Shin as I thought, you like men? No. What do you mean, as I thought? You two seem close. Please, don't say that. Am I, third wheeling? No. Thank you for coming. The dungeon had stopped. From the first dungeon, all the way to the fourth, all operations other than the residential area ceased. Although we had to return everything to the way it was as quickly as possible, we couldn't rush into another world. As such, it took another thirty minutes for the eight teams to choose the region they were going to. Shin Nim, please be safe. The only thing I can do at times like this is giving Shin Nim a blessing hee hee, come here. Hurry. You have no plans to hide your real intentions, do you? Since it seemed she wouldn't let me go if I didn't let her have her way, I obediently received Loretta's blessing. Even though I had already found out that she didn't need to kiss me to give me the blessing, she still did so while acting as if I had never found out. Furthermore, although I was the only one she kissed, the blessing was also applied to Lin and Daisy. I could hear Lin muttering Loretta being a scammer, but Loretta silenced him with a mana bullet. You received Queen Elf's, high rank blessing. For the next four days, you receive the following effects, you are protected against all low rank and mid rank status effects. You can maintain your consciousness for five minutes after falling in a half dead state. Your luck increases by 100. All members of the fairy race will see you favorably. Your health and magic power recovery rate increase greatly, and you will not get exhausted easily. When attacking, your chance of landing critical hits increases. I'll see you later then. Lin, for each scratch on Shin Nim's body, ITLL be one last bullet. Are you trying to kill me, Nunim? The team consisting of Sakatra and Faloan left ahead of us, and we also used dimensional travel afterward. It wasn't my dimensional travel skill, but a dimensional travel similar to the portal that linked the dungeon to other worlds. I'm off, Loka. Be safe, Nyan. The baby will be waiting for daddy to come back. 
you're only two months pregnant. Noting the somewhat heartwarming interaction between Loka and Lin, I jumped into the portal along with Lin and Daisy. The scenery then changed into a complete wasteland. Hugh. No matter where I looked, there wasn't a single building or creature. Lin waved his hand through the air as though the sandstorm was annoying him and put a cigarette in his mouth. His casual movements shocked me greatly, but it seemed he didn't think it was unusual. Let's start after I finish this smoke. Daisy heard Lin's mumbling and tilted her head. Book Walker, coming soon. They're sensitive to change. Are any of them around here strong enough to threaten me? Not at all. Iana is enough. Daisy opened her inventory and took out a boar clad in steel. Although it was dozens of meters long when I first fought it, it had shrunk to only three meters. Now, it could only barely fit a person on its back. Iana, strong. Yeah, yeah. While I was nodding to Daisy's praising of her undead again, the so-called bookwalkers began to appear. I imagined literal walking books, but that wasn't how they looked. In fact, they looked no different than regular humans. We haven't seen them before. There are still humans left. We must add them to our database. Lin chomped on the cigarette he was smoking and muttered. Hey, blow them away. Just their way of talking annoys me. Book walkers are researchers. They study their opponents, record them in their books, find their weaknesses, and attack. To win against them you have to kill them swiftly with various methods without giving them information. The moment they record on their books, all book walkers gain resistance. That means you. Undead I used once won't work well next time. Abilities I used before won't work well either. But. Iana abruptly charged towards the book walkers, and steel thorns enveloped in a black aura shot out from his body to attack them. The book walkers seemed surprised and took something out, but Iana reached them in an instant and skewered them before they could do anything. Daisy nodded her head in satisfaction and spoke. Don't give them, time to research. Then, undead is reusable. Or, with overwhelming power, research is futile. So it doesn't matter as long as we're powerful. They aren't that different than normal monsters then. Information sharing, annoying. High caste, stronger. That's why we were told to avoid them. Fine, whatever. What about those books? At the spot which Lin pointed to were three fancy leather books which were what the book walkers had taken out. Burn them, as quickly as possible. The moment Daisy's words left her mouth, Lin threw the cigarette his was smoking. When the cigarette landed on the book walkers' corpses, they started to burn along with their books. I couldn't help but feel awed at Lin's terrifying flames. At that moment, Daisy approached me. What's up, Daisy? I have to say something, to Kong Shin. Her large red eyes were staring at me intently. If possible, Kong Shin shouldn't use your power. What? That's why I came. Daisy's tone was extremely serious. Her eyes were fixed on me and refused to leave. If you use abilities, they'll get recorded. They will gain resistance, to them. This is the same, for the world's enemy. Ah. Kong Shin said one day, you'll come back and save this place. So for now, save your strength. So that's why you wanted to come with us so much so that you can prevent them from learning about my abilities. You're planning on using your abilities instead? Daisy nodded. Her trust for my potential had even surprised me. While I was thinking as such, Daisy made a small smile and added. This was the first time I saw her smile, at least towards me. Of course, I trust you. I thought I was protecting myself from being read. I didn't read, with my evil eyes. Kong Shin is, easy to read. Even without evil eyes. Shame. However, what she added afterward made me flinch. That's why I like you. Hmm. Oi, don't flirt with another woman in front of me. He'll shoot you. Lin who had finished incinerating the corpses and books scowled as he walked back to us. Daisy tilted her head and asked. Flirt. With another woman. Who, with who? Yes, Daisy, please remain innocent. Chapter, 237. 
Shaun Empire was silent continent centermost nation worthy of being called an empire. With its great power, it ceaselessly received tributes from the surrounding nations, and possessed a powerful army of knights and magicians that could protect the empire from humans and monsters that threatened its safety. Of course, most citizens of the Shaun Empire were human. Before the Book Walker's invasion, they were Selwan Empire's enemy. Why? Grey elves, beautiful appearances, mesmerizing figures. Then why are you short and uncohuk? Empire's people, adored grey elves as sex slaves. Daisy smacked my head and continued normally. I gritted my teeth and glared at her. Lin then spoke with a bitter smile. So the book walker's invasion forced them to become allies. Even so, they continued to fight. Those annoying bastards, got what they deserved. Daisy expressed her irritation by kicking the air with her enamel boots. Pockets of exploding air showed just how much she disliked Heidelcyan. Lauded Heidelcyan, especially annoying. Creepy eyes. Thinking about him, even more annoying. Cancer, pervert. Then why is this Scipio woman in love with him? Humans aren't born evil, he must have changed. Plus, if couples only looked at each other's personality, wouldn't all married couples be sages? TSK. I only said asked a simple question and I was showing off my inexperience with dating. Between Daisy and Lynn, isn't my position looking weak? At the moment, we were in the galloping on Iana's back. Iana was as fast as Latte who had evolved into a blaze queen. I was curious how such a small boar could be so fast, but it was actually quite simple. Daisy was focusing all of her magic power on Iana. As I said before, there wasn't much space on Iana's back. Thus, the three of us had to stick close together. Lin was in the front, I was in the middle, and Daisy was behind me holding onto my back. Kong Shin, don't stick so close to me. You're giving off a weird scent and it's annoying me. You're saying this too, Lin. I've been trying to control this thing too. Did you eat an air freshener or something? Don't make the same joke as my father. While I was yelling at Lin, Daisy spoke in a murmuring voice. I want to, take out Loki. Loki? What's that? It's a world's enemy we turned into an undead. Lin shouted, almost freaking out. Don't. If you do, they'll notice us immediately. Even though it's a weak one. Weak one my ass. There is no such thing when it comes to world's enemies. You, it looks like I need to give you another hero training. When did you ever teach me? Wait. Now that I think of it, he may or may not have given me some good advice here and there as I didn't want to admit it, I just chucked it to the back of my mind. At that moment, Daisy cut in. Book walkers, appear in groups. My information, already known. Will come to capture me. Capture you. Book walkers, few females. Mating with other races, able to reproduce. Ujek. They have my data. We'll assume, easy capture. Daisy's expression was extremely calm as she said that. She told me not to use my power. Was she relying on Lin's unconfirmed strength? I tilted my head, and Daisy continued. Data renewal, did not happen. Even with one level difference, it takes while, to adapt from back then, I grew a lot. Ah, I get it now. Evil eyes, God's true name, hard to calculate an adapt true name holder, evil eye holder, him only one in this continent. So even if they know about God's true names and evil eyes, it's hard to record them in their books and come up with a countermeasure. Yes. That's why, I can hold out for a long time. That seemed to be a common point between world's enemies. Although it was comparatively easy to counter the dungeon system, powers that originated from the dungeon yet surpassed its control, God's true names. Evil eyes, and enigma were hard for them to counter although I had another question in mind, there was something else I wanted to ask. Daisy, can I ask you something? If I know the answer, sure my breasts are big too. I'm not curious about your chest size. And I already know it's big. How did you know? You better answer well, Kong Shin. Where my bullet will go in will depend on your answer. It's already decided that you'll shoot me. I dug my own grave. 
I was just referring to the first time I saw Daisy. Damn, if Loretta found out about this, my eyes will be in danger again. I desperately changed the topic. That's not what's important. My question is, are God's true names and evil eyes part of the dungeon system? Daisy tilted her head at my question and answered slowly. Evil eyes and true names, similar principle. An outside support, borrowing the dungeon system. Can you be more detailed? As expected of a beyond explorer, she knows her stuff. He'll explain the rest though. Lin spoke as he took out a handgun. I was worried that head shoot it at me, but thankfully, he aimed it up and shot empty air. There's nothing there, Rai Ah. Oh, you can feel it now. Right, there was a sentry. Iana accelerated the moment Lin's words left his mouth. From far away, a menacing killing intent was surging towards us. I could even feel magic. Lin shot bullet after bullet, annihilating each killing intent and spoke as if nothing was wrong. Gods from myths have once existed. We don't know the meaning of the divinity they obtained, but we know that they know many things, see many things, and exist at the same time in many eras. The only strange thing is that even though they can do all these things, they cannot appear with their real bodies. Real existences, real bodies. Even before the dungeon existed, there were those who obtained God's true names. What the dungeon calls achievements, when one built them up until they reached a God's domain, the God bestowed that person with his name. When the dungeon was created the Lord and the gods came to an agreement. Did the gods agree to accept achievements from the dungeon? Precisely. The gods agreed to accept them, but they also set harsh requirements. After all, they couldn't give out their names to just anyone. People befitting their existences have to take their names for them to raise their divinity. You mean they're lending out their names to people who deserve them so they can spread their names far and wide? Looks like your intelligence stat isn't just for show. That's right. Lin reloaded his gun in a smooth motion and continued to shoot. Daisy whispered in my ear. Can't come up with, countermeasure. Can't see his attacks. If they die before writing on their books, it's meaningless. He'll keep that in mind. Just like that, it became easy for dungeon explorers to obtain God's true names. But, they aren't part of the dungeon's power. A God's true name is a God's true name. Nothing more, nothing less. The dungeon's titles are lower grade copies of God's true names. I see. I was shocked to hear that titles were lesser copies of God's true names. However, Lin wasn't finished yet. Evil eyes are byproducts of myths. For example, let's see who does your world have known for its evil eyes of petrification. Um, the basilisk from European legends, the Medusa from the more famous Greek mythology Ah. Uh. There's also Irish mythology's Baylor of the Evil Eye, Judaism's serial Do You Get It Now? Why evil eyes are treated so specially. Obtaining an evil eye is the same as obtaining a god's true name. Although there are other rewards in the dungeon that originates from myths or legends, other than evil eyes, most are lesser copies like the dungeon's titles. Some even say evil eyes are even harder to obtain than God's true names. Then, evil eyes also. They also carry bountiful divine power. They're different from the dungeon's objects. Even I don't have evil eyes. There was no way I would miss this chance. I have them. You bastard. Daisy also joined in. I have them too, hoo hoo. This girl. Lin's gunshot stopped and Iana stopped running so quickly. Before I even noticed, we had arrived in front of crumbled castle walls. Elian City. Resistance Army, if alive, all here. There are still survivors in this world controlled by bookwalkers. Underground base, sturdy. The greatest magic power left to humanity, all here lauded Heidelcyan, saw here last. Her words were like a finishing blow. Lin grinned. Well done. Bringing you along was the right choice, Grey Elf. Call me, Ectradian. Right, Ectradian. Sipua is here, I can feel it. It looks like well get things over with today. That's great. Rather than that, didn't that mean lauded Heidelcyan is alive? He really was harder to kill than a cockroach. 
While I was feeling exhausted, Lin took out another handgun, held it in his right hand, and tensed up his shoulder. I couldn't help but ask. Are there that many? Like a nest of cockroaches. It's going to get annoying. Let me participate too. Kong Shin, just watch. Yeah, yeah, I know. In case I decided to fight, Daisy made a frightening expression, shoving her face up to mine and insisting solemnly. I quickly took a step back and nodded. I was being treated like a burden. While I shook my head, Daisy opened her inventory and took out a giant mantis. It was Makey. Makey will handle the front. You can go wild. Perfect. Let's go. Lin immediately jumped over the crumbled castle wall and charged into the city. From all sides, book walkers began to make their appearance. The human we've been waiting for. The human who killed many of our kin is laughing. It will take a long time to analyze his data. The female who escaped last time came back. Our data says that she's an excellent female. It looks like she grew even more. Lin couldn't hold himself back and burst their heads open as he shouted. A.K. These guys' way of talking irritates me. Lin's shots never missed their targets and had terrifying destructive power. No more than a single bullet was needed to kill a bookwalker. Since they were gathered here to find and kill the resistance army, they must have been elites amongst the bookwalkers, but Lin still only needed a single bullet to kill each one. We cannot allow attacks and take down the damage. We must watch from afar and record. Data remembers that a kin has established a safe distance. Dead. Already dead. Sounds good. More kin are coming out. We can analyze his data by writing down small pieces. I won't let you. Makey. Makey, the mantis queen that had been reborn as an undead, roared furiously and spread her wings open. At the same time, the aura of wind Makey shot out sliced apart a few of the weaker bookwalkers. The mantis queen also had gotten stronger after becoming an undead. Makey, kill the recorders. Goo. Makey roared in confirmation and charged towards the bookwalkers. Every time Makey's giant scythe sliced through the air, the buildings left standing were cut down along with the heads of bookwalkers. That one strong too. A form we had no record of. A powerful cutting power. We require resistance to cutting power. We require a special entity. Resistance won't cut it. We don't know when new kin will be born. We don't know if any kin knows when that is. It's two days later. We must input new data. Time, I won't give you. After Daisy's shout, Makey got even faster. Makey swung her scythes almost as quickly as Lin fired his guns. No, perhaps, Makey was even quicker. While I watched the book walkers being torn apart, Daisy spoke. The moment they record, everyone obtains resistance. What's scarier is, newly born entities. Transcends resistance, an ability akin to total immunity. So the ones born later are stronger. Un. They learn, they evolve, in the blink of an eye. There's no end to them, damn it. Prevent them from taking records, defeat a suitable amount. Then, move to underground passageway. Lin became faster. The book walkers, who were on the defensive trying to write down Lin's and Makey's movements, quickly had their heads cut off. Observation recording, not accurate, but still forms resistance. If possible, eliminate all. Let's break through first. We cut down all the book walkers blocking our way and charged into the city. The book walkers' endless appearances made me reminisce the Pan Incontinence nightmare, but none of them could do anything against Lin's bullets and Makey's scythe. However, it was frightening that more and more of them were beginning to dodge Makey's attacks. Resistance, beginning to build up. Makey's movement pattern, must change. Is this the observation recording you mentioned? Un. Abilities used even a little bit, book walkers will write down. Impossible to prevent. Daisy spoke as she gritted her teeth. To prevent it, an ability transcending ordinary comprehension is needed. God's true names and evil eyes. And Kong Shin's power, Enigma. Or that dragon horn's power. 
Dragon Horn. Did you just call me Dragon Horn? At that moment, Meiki, who had just shot out two aura blades with her scythes and completely decimated the bookwalkers in the front, unexpectedly charged towards us. While the bookwalkers assumed their observation recording stance, Daisy rolled on the ground. Meiki had disappeared into her inventory. And we had unknowingly entered underground. Chapter 238 Even as I was perplexed by the sudden change in scenery, I immediately spread my mana out to detect the surrounding terrain and potential enemies. By the time I understood what had happened, Daisy pulled my arm down and explained. Underground base, safe close to safe. What about the book walkers? Magic underground, maintains darkness. What does darkness have to do with anything? Dragon horn, ignite fire. You bastard, don't call me dragon horn ho. Lin barked at Daisy and opened his palm as if to ignite a fireball. Then, he exclaimed in surprise. Ill admit, I'm impressed. Putting this much restriction on me. Under the assumption we couldn't win, the base was created. Here, very hard to ignite fire. So what does being unable to ignite fire have to do with bookwalkers? If dark, can't read books. I instantly remembered sneaking a spearmanship training manual into my bed to read it at night. When mother discovered it, she smacked my back. Good times wait. Bookwalkers aren't ordinary humans. How does darkness stop them from reading books? Can you, see me? I can't, but considering your level, I can clearly feel your presence and even the outline of your body eh? This was strange. I was now level 71. Physical darkness should pose no hindrance to my sight. Wait, what did Daisy say at first? A magic that maintains darkness. Here, bookwalkers can't read books. Bookwalkers that can't read books, resistances disappear. Also, cannot be recorded. Daisy nodded as if she had been waiting for me to come to this conclusion. I realized that the magic in this place wasn't simple and voiced another question. That's why a perpetually dark base was created. To leave behind, Resistance Army. If Heidelcyan didn't die, he must be here. So that's why those book walkers aren't coming in here. Creating fire through darkness magic weakens book walkers extremely. Resistance Army wins easily. Their mission of first priority, annihilating invaders. With that, Daisy pointed to the side. It was at this point that I realized we were surrounded. It was partly because they were concealing themselves so thoroughly without exerting any signs of their presence, but also because Daisy had interrupted me before I could spread my mana out that far. Furthermore, a magic that dulled one's senses seemed to be included in the darkness magic. There are so many, much more than I thought. Surprising. This voice Daisy Ectradian. A deep voice of a man cut through the darkness. Daisy lightly nodded. Fourth Dungeon Explorer, race of long-lived fools, a grunt, Sinan Kingdom's knight. It seemed the voice belonged to a fourth dungeon explorer who was the knight of a ruined kingdom and a member of a race with high life expectancy. Can't you just say my name? I am I was Sinan Kingdom's knight, Burn Matis. And you are. My allies. Any more, secret. We require information. What, both you and Heidelcyan come to visit after a long time and that's all you guys can say? You're making me cry. Right, Heidelcyan, information. Daisy threw something to him. The knight received it and shouted in a shocked voice. This is gold. Grunt, now, what floor? 21st. I can barely enter the residential area now. Don't tell me, you're still climbing the dungeon. As I thought, still a beggar. In exchange for gold, Heidelcyan. The grunt Burin made eyes audibly gulped. You are you still on bad terms with him? Information. Daisy filled a leather pouch with gold coins and shook it flamboyantly. Heidelcyan, a kite with string detached. Lost his explorer qualification. But me, promising future. Fat guild choose wisely. You're straightforward as always everyone, put your weapons down. They aren't our enemies. In truth, I had already realized why I hadn't felt their presence before. There were the reasons I mentioned before, 
but it was also because they simply didn't have the skills to make me wary. Most of them were as good as that burn made eyes, if not slightly weaker. Simply put, even a melting tuna could send them all to hell. Ectradian, I don't know what happened, but don't hate him too much. He didn't look good. He's even spending his days quietly here. A woman, came to find him. Yeah. She seemed extremely beautiful, but it was almost as if she was bewitched by something. I don't know why she's so obsessed to that Heidelcyan who lost everything. What are they, scheming? Scheming? Please. He replied with a smirk. Everyone here is barely living on buried in darkness. How can someone be scheming anything here? That's fine. Location. It'll tell you. The underground base seemed to be bigger than I initially thought. After listening to the information Burn Matai's told for a long time, Daisy nodded and sent me a message. They are, not lying. Couldn't you have just read everything with your evil eyes to begin with? Few people know, about my evil eyes. Only Heidelcyan and maybe couple others. Process of obtaining information, more natural to exist also, money, I wanted to give regardless. Right, since Heidelcyan and Daisy have fought together in the front line, Heidelcyan undoubtedly knew about Daisy's evil eyes. However, grunts like Burren Matai's and the others likely didn't even know Daisy's abilities. Furthermore, as Daisy said, her intention was to give gold to any explorers who could enter the residential area. That way, he would be able to buy food for everyone else I nodded silently and watched Daisy and Burren Matai's exchange. With this much everyone at the base will be able to eat fully for a few years. Explorers, how many are left? We have two in the third dungeon, three in the fourth. We're all in the lower levels and barely make enough silver to feed everyone. Ectradian, you saved us. We were in a pinch because we can't even fight monsters in the dungeon right now. We came, to solve that sorry we couldn't come earlier. One day, we'll come back. Everyone will be saved by this person. As Daisy calmly apologized calmly, she pointed towards me. Burren Maidai's asked with a curious voice. Him. Why? That's all you need, to know. Well leave, now. Soon, you'll be able, to enter the dungeon. Why yeah? Since you said you'll take care of it, thanks. This place might be dark and gloomy, but I hope you have a nice time please, don't fight here. The underground base was huge, but quiet. There was no one walking around, and we could only hear faint moans occasionally. Daisy spoke without even blushing slightly. Here, dark and quiet. No matter how many times you do it, you can't make babies. The only thing they can do, is that. For a long time, it's been like this. I get it, you don't have to comment on everything. I despaired, wanting to shut my ears. At that moment, Daisy grabbed my arm and asked as she shook it meekly. Kong Shin, is that fun? Why do men and women, when alone, always do that? The goal, is it not to reproduce? The reason sex slaves are expensive, is that. Why are men so crazy about that? Why do women love it so much? I said you don't have to comment on everything. Do you think you'll comment on everything instead? Unfortunately, I don't know either. Unfortunately. Oi, can you stop being such a virgin and shut up? Cool. I knew it, I shouldn't have come with these two. I clenched my fists and followed them. The desolate stillness and occasional moans seemed to drive me insane. At that moment, thankfully, Lin, who was leading the way after hearing the approximate location from Daisy, came to a stop. So you really were here, Sipua. Lin. Although we were still enshrouded in darkness, we had gotten close a person's presence. This powerful presence was telling me that she wasn't an ordinary person. Lin, did you come to take me back? What, you thought we'd just leave you be? To be honest, as the aura she was giving off was similar to my level, it made me question whether she really was an administrative guild master. However, it was probably that Lin and other members of Fairy Garden were strange. After all, Loretta mentioned before that I would be able to defeat the administrative guild Lost Valley's guild master, Elian, when I became level 80. 
Although I felt a bit sorry saying this, I somewhat understood why they couldn't beat their world's enemies even after receiving great powers from the dungeon. Although I thought all administrative guild masters were monsters like Loretta, now that I thought about it more carefully, rather than their personal strengths. The share of the dungeon's power they received when they became an administrative guild master seemed to be more important. Sipua, you should know what situation the dungeon is in right now. Did the dungeon fall, Lin? Everything stopped. A place that must help train the heroes and guardians of countless worlds stopped just because of you. Humph, that's it. I was bound to the dungeon for over 2,500 years. Compared to that, the dungeon only had a day's worth of damages. Sipua's cold tone pierced Lin. Then, she turned her sharp gaze towards me. You came too, Earth's hero. I thought you would come. Loretta, that wicked bitch. I apologize, but it had the opposite effect. I can't forgive everything that's happened because of you. The reason Loretta sent me. She had done so simply because there weren't enough people, but it seemed Sipua was gravely mistaken. Not to mention, she sure was shameless. Only a short time had passed since the incident, but the positions of the victim and the assailant was completely flipped in her mind. To her, it seemed everything she had done for Heidelcyan was justified. Even if I explained, she would interpret it as she wanted, and it would only be counterproductive. As such, I stayed silent. However, Lin snorted and rebutted. They say if you save a stranger, hell turn into your enemy. You sure are audacious, Sipua. He's a hero, someone you should support and that Lauderd Heidelcyan is a brainless fool who tried to bully a hero for his own benefits. Lin. We don't have time to spare, so I won't be giving you any time to say goodbye. We're leaving. Now. Lin. Please. Lin gritted his teeth. His handgun was firmly grasped in his hand. You should know my personality. You should have been satisfied that Lauderd Heidelcyan got off by just being kicked out to his continent our patience ends here. Sipua, this is it. A volatile tension filled the atmosphere. Lin's change in demeanor was so intimidating that I was even having trouble breathing. Daisy buried her face behind my back to avoid his killing intent. Sipua was also affected. Lin's killing intent caused her to freeze completely. When his killing intent diminished slightly from its peak, she barely managed to mutter some words. Please Lin. Look at me. I love him. Is your determination to annihilate all world's enemies so weak that ITLL crumbled because of a single fool? In the first place, I was pressured by the other four into forming an oath to the Lord. I've already done so much. Lin, please. It'll give you one day. Lin gave a cutthroat answer as if to say it was his last bit of kindness. Wrap everything up within a day. You can strengthen him with the power you have left too. As long as he's alive, a day will come when he's freed. Again, you have one day. In 24 hours, you'll be going back with us. I won't agree to any other requests, and the moment you protest, he'll drag you back myself. UK. Sipua immediately ran back as if she didn't want to spend even a single more second with us. At first, I thought she was going back to spend what little time she had left with Lauderd Heidelcyan. However, that wasn't it. Not long after Sipua disappeared, he appeared in her place. His entrance was so smooth that I thought they were playing some tag battle. Daisy Ectradian. He shouldn't have been able to see her face, but it seemed he realized who she was from her presence as he muttered Daisy's name emotionally. Lauderd, Heidelcyan. Daisy spoke. As always, she was calm to the extreme. Your mind, it clear up. You refuse me so adamantly, and the one you chose is him. That hero. You chose a reckless fool who can't make heads nor tails of the situation. Un. You're not, my type. Your face is, dirty. Your actions are, dirty. Your personality is, dirty. Your mind is, dirty. Though strangely, your mind is better now. It seemed he didn't have much to say in response as he simply glared in our direction. Although I couldn't read his expression in the darkness, I could tell from his voice that he was glaring at me with killing intent. 
you, didn't I tell you not to involve yourself with Daisy Ectradian? Ah, thanks to your advice, I got myself an excellent guild member. That's the only thing I'm thankful to you for. Also, I'm sorry, but I don't want to breathe the same air as you, so can you screw off, please? Cook. As I felt sorry just telling him off, I also kicked casually. Seeing him flying back through the darkness, I asked Daisy. How was it? Twelve, out of ten. I'm not talking about my shot. Thanks though. His mind, quite clear power of love. Do you even know what love is? Un. In darkness, what man and woman do? Wrong. I burned with a sense of duty to fix Daisy's distorted knowledge. Lin then stopped me with a head smack. We should go rest too. I'm tired. Why did you give her a day, Lin? It's sad not having a single day off in 2,500 years also, if we bring her back as she is now, she'll remain a lit ember ready to burst into flames. But if we give her more than a day, the dungeon and many of its explorers will receive critical blows. That was the best I could do for her. Words that were completely unexpected from the way he talked to her earlier was coming out of Lin's mouth. I was so surprised that I imagined Lin's current expression and murmured. Lin. It's just my whim. Nunim will beat me to death if she found out but I couldn't help it because I remembered Loka's face. I'm curious about what happened between Lin and Locanyan. There's also something I want to talk about with Lin since we have time, why don't we go drink together? I secretly snagged a whiskey that father had been saving. That's the best offer you've made since we met. Good. Daisy shook my arms fiercely and asked. As I thought, Kong Shin likes men. No. For the two of you, I will leave I want to check, those that I knew, alive or dead. Come back before it's too late. Daisy hopped away into the darkness and her presence eventually disappeared. Lin and I also began to wander in search of a nice place to drink. In this dark space, where one couldn't tell day apart from night, only time was passing steadily. Chapter, 239 The bottle of whiskey I brought with me was emptied by the time I detected an unexpected change. While Lin and I were exchanging our final glass, I began to vaguely see Lin's face. At first, I thought I had gotten accustomed to being in the dark, but that wasn't it. Lin muttered as he stared at my face. Up close, you look like the incarnation of misfortune. Lin also looks like a sissy. The underground base got brighter ever so slightly. The darkness from magic had dulled one's senses was slowly transforming into natural darkness. There was only one reason this would be happening. It's a good thing we finished the bottle. Yep, one has to finish a bottle once he opens it. We exchanged such words as if we had already discussed it, and stood up after throwing the bottle and glasses on the ground. Lin was gritting his teeth. That crazy bastard. It might not be too late. Let's hurry. Lin and I rushed in union. Meanwhile, Daisy messaged us. Found book walkers. Ceiling, being broken through. The moment we received her message, the ceiling fell with a thud along with several book walkers. Before I could say anything, Lin's two handguns shot flaming bullets. By the time the magazine ran out, the book walkers had all become corpses, but Lin clicked his tongue as he reloaded. These guys got faster. It must be that damned resistance or whatever. How annoying. I should also. You stay still. Don't reveal your abilities in front of them. This really is annoying. I can't even fight them when they're right in front of me. Ah. We left a passageway and entered a wider residential area. It was the place where we had heard moaning sounds before. In the corner was a gruesomely shredded corpse of a man. That was it. Lin murmured calmly. The woman was taken. I didn't open my mouth. If I did, I felt like I would have shouted at the top of my lungs to tear apart this silence. Afterwards, in just three minutes, we found over ten corpses. They were all of men. I asked Lin, gritting my teeth and clenching my fists. Administrative Guild Master's power. Is there a way to retrieve it? There is one way. Lin replied as he reloaded his guns again and shot down the spear of ice coming towards him. Killing her. 
the magic had disappeared completely. There were huge gaping holes in the ceiling. The underground base was no longer safe from light. Beyond the passageway where light and darkness coexisted, the one who sent the ice spear flying appeared. It was Sipua. Lin, I didn't want to do this. You've gotten unsightly, Sipua. Lin's words didn't carry any emotion. He aimed his gun at Sipua and asked. Tell me, why did you get rid of the magic? I made a deal, Lin. It was the only thing I could do for our happiness. I take it to mean you made a deal with the world's enemy? At Lin's words, Sipua nodded. Then, she spread her arms out. Countless crystals of ice radiating brilliant light filled the space around her. Just like the god's true name Lauderd Heidelcyan had, it seemed she also had the ability to wield ice. I can't win against you with my strength, so I needed someone to defeat you. And Heidelcyan? The darkness magic was very formidable. He had to use his god's true name. Sizernath must be lamenting. 1. Sizernath is the god whose name Heidelcyan has. Mentioned in Chapter 171. Lin looked at Sipua in contempt and spoke with scorn. Then, he turned to face me. Find Ectradian and go back. The world's enemy will appear soon. I knew very well what position I was in. I also knew that the world's enemy of Pan and Continent was a special case. Against monsters that obtained resistance against me if I didn't kill it in one blow, I didn't dare be so adventurous. It wasn't my role to face them. Above all, Finding Daisy was currently the most important thing. No, I won't let you go. You have to suffer more. Kong Shin, run away. Now. Immediately, a brilliant light erupted from Sipua's body. The underground base enshrouded in darkness became as bright as day. I heard a message, one that I thought I wouldn't hear for a while. You enter the EX rank event dungeon, cemetery. Before the dungeon is cleared, no one can exit. No, it wasn't the familiar message Nuna's voice. This voice was. Sipua's voice. You, just how much are you going to abuse your power? This is it. Once everyone who came to find me dies, I won't need it anymore. Just to be sure, I opened the gate to the dungeon. I couldn't enter it. I couldn't use return either. It seemed there was only one way for me to leave this place. I quickly messaged Daisy. Daisy, are you okay? Too many, bookwalkers. Space is too small, can't take out all undead. I will use, God's power. Make sure you live. And. Heidelcyan, found him. With that, Daisy's messages cut off. Damn it. I didn't think Daisy would lose to someone like Heidelcyan, but the resistance I felt when I kicked him earlier made me uneasy. I didn't know what Sipua did to strengthen him, but with his god's true name and the book walkers helping him, Daisy would undoubtedly have trouble dealing with the situation. Everything was extremely annoying. Sipua, what you did cannot be undone. From now on, I won't treat you like one of us. Lin, you should have done so the moment you saw me. Now, it's too late. I've already surpassed you. What? In the next moment, the entire space exploded. I quickly summoned Ryue and surrounded myself in a wall of ice, and Lin also protected himself with a wall of fire. However, the explosion only served as a signal. Immediately after Sipua's attack, something shot towards Lin like lightning. Kohaha. Too easy. Too visible. Draconian, draconians are surprising. You. Trash. Despite the light-hearted tone, the voice carried an immense pressure. The owner of the voice was a titan, carrying a book on one hand and a sword on the other. The moment I saw him, I could clearly feel his aura. He was the world's enemy. Kook. You're moving like when you killed our kin. But you won't be able to defeat me. Although Lin's movements were quick to the point I could barely see him, the titan easily caught up to Lin. Furthermore, the titan's attacks flew in from angles Lin couldn't easily dodge, and eventually tore Lin's leather armor and shed blood. Lin distanced himself from the titan with a strong kick as he gritted his teeth. Sipua. You and I have fought together many times. 
In my head, your movements and your twin handguns are recorded clearly. Puhaha. The dungeon sure is interesting. Its administrators are interesting too. Truly interesting. Shut it. Lin's twin guns continuously spat out bullets. Shockingly, the world's enemy received them directly without even trying to dodge them and wasn't injured in the slightest. With data, we have nothing to fear from your attacks. With my power, I can easily defeat you. Draconian, you'll have to die. Don't think guns are my only weapon, idiot. Lin threw away his twin handguns and charged towards him. Flames erupted around him as he attacked the world's enemy. I could easily tell that Lin's flames were of EX rank. The demon lord would have to give up one arm to ignite such flames. And he was using it as he pleased. What was even more shocking was that the world's enemy wasn't phased at all by the EX rank flames. His resistance had gone past the point of shocking and had reached the level of impossibility. Kohaha. Feudal. Not only your guns, but your flames and martial arts have all been remembered. That bitch gave me all the data I needed. If you think some record on a book is enough to defeat me, you're gravely mistaken. After Lin shouted with a voice filled with rage, he disappeared. In the next instant, a flash of Lin's foot appeared, enveloped in scarlet flames. The titan's shoulder exploded. Quiak. That hurt. It'll show you a power your trivial ability can't resist. Annoying. Draconian is annoying. The book walker opened his book. Even as he was being injured by Lin's attacks, he held up his sword and wrote something down on his book. For every phrase he jotted down, his injuries shockingly healed. He was even beginning to catch up to Lin's hastened speed. If this is all, this is the end. You can't win against me. I'm not done yet. You damned bastard. At this rate, Lin would lose. Since we won't be able to leave unless we defeated the world's enemy, if I used Overlord and joined him. You should play with me. Sipua noticed my movements and created countless spears of ice in the air. I used Ryu's power to stop them as I questioned her. Daisy couldn't read your thoughts or Heidelsian's thoughts. Is that your work? I sent Lauder to you on purpose. To trick you into believing us. Defending against evil eyes. I'm originally more skilled in defense than offense. So, Earth's hero, you should give up on defeating me and helping Lin. Her mana was indeed boundless. Solely to stop me from approaching Lin and the world's enemy, she filled the area with ice. Even if I pushed them away with Ryu's ability and used divine speed to charge forward, with my current ability, I couldn't deal with the endlessly respawning wall of ice unless I used Overlord. I acknowledge that you're a talented explorer, but I've lived for 2,500 years as an administrative guild master. You will never be able to obtain what you desire. Kook, S. Sipua. When a man's voice suddenly eked out, she revealed an opening. I didn't miss this opportunity and materialized Ryue. Breakthrough. On. Hap. Immediately after materializing in the air, Ryue let out a spirited shout and spread her arms out. In the next instant, the wall of ice trapping us exploded entirely. Sipua and a heavily beaten Lauder Heidelsian appeared in front of us. As the saying went, love made one stupid. Sipua had completely forgotten about me and was hugging Heidelsian tightly. Lauder, how did this happen to you? When I was coming back after destroying the darkness magic, that damned bitch. Daisy Ectradian, he'll be sure to kill that wench. Hey, bitch and son of a bitch. You think you fuckers can just kill my precious guild member? I finally exploded. Although it might be a bit too early to use these skills, I felt okay using them now. Caduceus, Overlord. The moment I shouted the names of these skills, my body grew enough to pierce through the underground base's ceiling. Everyone present focused their attention on me. Sipua, especially, had a shocked expression. Why you? How can you have that power? I'm different than trash like Heidelsian. But it's too late. You've lost. The world's enemy raised his voice and laughed. He spoke as he threw what was in his hands towards me. The shape of the thing he threw seemed all too familiar. 
I wonder what kind of power you have. I hope it's better than this dead lizard's. Dead lizard. You're talking about Lin. My hands trembled. I shouted louder than I ever had. You're talking about Lin. You used frozen roar. All enemies in the battlefield freezes in place. All allies temporarily become super armored and have all abilities increased by 50%. Your chance of landing a critical hit doubles when fighting enemies affected by Frozen Roar. Frozen Roar is suppressed by the world's enemy's overwhelming power. Although Overlord's power offset his power, Frozen Roar's effect has been halved. In that instant, as ice descended around me, the surrounding became shrouded in darkness. Did my rage finally create a supernatural effect? Of course not. Magic recovery, complete. Bookwalkers, weakened. Oh, Daisy. I love you. Kong Shin, I don't know love, yet. So, I apologize. I didn't mean it like that. It was a cheer. Human language, too difficult. I gave a short reply to Daisy who rejected me seriously. Then, I infused Sharana into my spear. As both fire and lightning radiated light, I couldn't make satisfying destructive power in this place. Furthermore, they couldn't do what I wanted to do. Thus, what I needed to wield now was the power of wind. Sharana's aura strengthened the power of Enigma to the limit and created a threatening whirlpool. Even with the darkness back, you won't be able to win. Compared to the lizard, your power is too weak. But I can hold you back for a bit. Along with my reply, a wind aura that converted into a whirlpool shot out from my spear and cut through the darkness. Even if the world's enemy was much stronger than me, this was the first time I used my power since I came to this world. Plus, the purpose of the wind aura I just shot out wasn't to tear him apart. Like I said, it was just to tie him in his place for a moment. As I had even used divine speed, neither Sipua nor Heidelcyan could react to it. Though the world's enemy snorted and tried to strike it down with his palm, he body was halted in the process. Confused, he looked around his body and soon burst into laughter. So you aren't completely talentless after all. But this is it. I doubt you'll be able to do anything by just holding me down. Kohaha. Hack. Within the darkness, a single bang of a gunshot rang out. The titan, who was laughing just a moment ago, had his head shattered into pieces. Using this opportunity, I grabbed the world's power that popped out of the titan's body. The expressions of Heidelcyan and Sipua, who had watched everything blankly, turned pale. You killed. The world's enemy. Someone even the entire continent couldn't kill, so easily. T this. Is. I'm impossible. How so? In the direction where the bullet came flying, Lin walked out with the sniper rifle he had been hiding now hanging on his back. Ignoring the re-established darkness magic, Lin lit the cigarette in his mouth. Sipua shouted in utter shock. Lin, how are you alive? You certainly died. I saw it with my two eyes. Plus, how could you kill him so easily? Ha! Huh. Let me ask too, Sipua. How is it any of your business? Even if you knew, nothing would change. Lin tilted his head, replying in a slightly murmuring voice. Then, with a single flick of his hands, the twin handguns he threw away before flew back into his hands. He then fired two shots from each handguns, the bullets piercing through Sipua and Heidelcyan's knee and forcing them to kneel. It's time to be punished, damned bastards. Chapter, 240 Everything had gone terribly. The barely surviving resistance army had great losses, and Sipua had turned against the dungeon and tried to kill me, Lin, and the others from the dungeon who had come to take her back. Heidelcyan had destroyed the magic circle maintaining the underground base knowing that it would kill the people who he once tried to protect. He was trash beyond my imagination. I had imagined things would go this way. That Sipua would join the side of the world's enemy. Of course, it made sense. In exchange for her and Lauderd Heidelcyan's safety, she must have promised the bookwalkers a hero's power. She must have used me as a bargaining chip as well as others who would come to this empire. Would the bookwalkers have declined? 
would they have captured Sipua instead? Of course not. If they used her as bait, appetizing prey would walk in by themselves. They were undoubtedly satisfied with Sipua's offer. Although no one knew whether their alliance would last after the prey had all been eaten, their current relationship would have been solid. However, leaving the dungeon to find her love was different from cooperating with a world's enemy to protect her love. Even if it made sense to do so, neither me, Daisy, nor Lin thought that Sipua, as an administrative guild master, would have joined hands with the world's enemy. Even if she resisted us, we thought it would be between us and her. The thought of involving a world's enemy had been just too absurd. We could only think that she might have prepared traps using the resistance army or the underground terrain. I felt especially suspicious when Daisy read Heidelsein's thoughts. Daisy's report that was completely contrary to his attitude and the strange sensation when I kicked him made me even more cautious. When I asked Lin out for a drink, it was in order to talk to him about this. Of course, Lin may have had a hidden lifeline that I didn't know about. But in any case, Lin was someone who had received a share of the dungeon's power, an administrative guild member who had given himself for the benefit of explorers. For this reason, I thought to prepare myself for when he fell in danger. What I then explained to him was the power of Caduceus, the power of the White Snake. The White Snake's power was the opposite of the Black Snake's. In other words, it had the power of healing. Its effect was simple, yet powerful. As expected, however, tricky conditions had to be met in order to use it. When used within 10 seconds of an Auli's death, you use half of your health to completely revive your ally and boost his ability by 50% for one minute. The 10 second period was indescribably cruel. However, as long as I was close enough to witness an Auli's moment of death, I was able to revive him. A power to undo death, it was truly worthy of being called a god's power. The fact that I earned Hermes' power was certainly a great fortune. One of the main reasons for my grief at the succubi's deaths in the Philippines was that I couldn't activate Caduceus as I wasn't next to them. That said, even if I did, deciding on who to save would have been difficult as well. Not to mention, I wouldn't have been able to carry out today's plan. The reason Lin never used his sniper rifle was also for the world's enemy. Though, he never would have thought the world's enemy would appear with Sipua. According to him, the only ones who knew about his sniper rifle was Loretta, Loka, and a few others. In other words, it was the perfect secret weapon. Naturally, compared to his handguns, the sniper rifle had a greater concentration of his power and authority. A secret was more powerful the more hidden it was, especially in this continent. Lin concealed his secret weapon perfectly and revealed it in the perfect moment when no one was expecting it. While fighting the world's enemy, he made his opponent miscalculate his strength and led him to let his guard down. However, even if one knew he would be revived, would he be able to include his death in his battle plan? Today was the first time I experienced Lin's true power. He wasn't only physically powerful. He was equally as powerful mentally. In any case, I revived him just as we planned and immediately activated Overlord to conceal his aura with mine. Lin snorted at my doubt over his stealth ability, but everything had to be perfect. When Daisy reactivated the darkness magic at that timing, the reason I cheered was that I had gotten certain that my plan would succeed. From then, I continued to grab the world's enemy's attention and restrained him to aid Lin's sniping. Although I acted as if I was fine, I was secretly trembling at his fierce resistance. Thankfully, Lin assassinated the world's enemy before it was too late. Now, only the two great sinners were left in front of us. You probably don't need us to explain what you did wrong, right? Lin, please don't kill us. Cook. Despite Lin's cold tone, Sipua shamelessly beseeched him. Heidelsayan, on the other hand, was writhing in pain next to her, holding his pierced knee. Not kill you. That's all you want. That's. Think back to what I said yesterday. I gave you two the chance to go back to where you belonged. Did I say I'd kill either of you? And look at what you did today. This trash sacrificed his allies, who saved him when he was kicked out of the dungeon, to kill Kong Shin and me, and you sold us to the world's enemy. Lin fired his gun again. This time, he hit Heidelsayan's left arm. Quack. L. Lodert. Oh, Lodert, no. 
Lin, please, shoot me instead. Don't shoot Lottert. Don't worry, he'll shoot you too. Lin retorted without batting an eye and really shot Sipua's left arm. Sipua didn't even groan in response, only glaring at Lin. I normally hate bullying others to vent my anger. My style is to kill those who deserve death without dragging it out. But this damned. He couldn't hold his anger back, cutting himself off and aiming his gun at Heidelcyan again. After his gun flashed twice, two holes appeared on Heidelcyan's right ear and right arm. His shriek filled the air. This damned bastard is already marked by someone else. Ah, you're here. Un, just came. In the darkness, Daisy appeared. I could clearly see Heidelcyan's trembling body. Was it because I was using Overlord? The darkness magic could no longer block my vision. Daisy Ectradian. 72 alive. You, how did you get so strong? There were 389. Now, only 72 are alive. As always, Daisy sounded calm. She was calmly boiling with rage. Last pride, as an explorer, you threw away, for your greed. Daisy's inventory opened. Seeing hundreds of undeads crawling out of it, I felt stifled. They were undead humans. This was the first time I had seen Daisy wield human undeads. That said, for someone who could turn monsters into the undead, being able to turn humans into undeads was obvious. Furthermore, those undeads. Daisy continued, widening her deep scarlet eyes fiercely. By the ones you've killed, die. No, you can't kill Lodert. No, that trash will certainly die. Lin rolled his foot lightly. In an instant, a wall of fire shot up around Sipua. The magic she was trying to cast was cancelled. The blazing heat made it hard even for me to breathe. Separated from Sipua, Heidelcyan shot back as he screamed crazily. Laughable. You think some zombies will be able to kill me? Sipua, Sipua. Hey, Sipua. I'm about to die. Sipua. Lodert, oh Lodert. Lin, please. Please save him, he'll do anything you say. You will. Sorry, I can't trust you anymore. Lin bit down on his cigarette. Almost as if Lin was the one controlling the zombies, one of the zombies bit off Heidelcyan's right arm. And it's too late. Quiak. It hurts, it hurts. Neither Lin nor I batted an eye as we watched on. As for Daisy, after she ordered her zombies to attack Heidelcyan, she was murmuring in an undecipherable tone. I believed you. You were an explorer, so I believed you. Hike. No, Yugok. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have. As Heidelcyan's shrieks got louder, Sipua's screams also got louder. No. Lin, please. No. What made you like this? What made you join hands with the world's enemy who you hated so much? What made you force me to experience something so dirty? As more pieces of Heidelcyan's flesh were bitten off by the zombies, he was getting smaller. His eyes, holding on to a tiny sliver of life, were getting dimmer. Sipua screamed in despair, but Lin wasn't moved in the slightest. For these countless years, I respected you and treated you as an ally and friend. And you made me a fool. We had gathered for the sole purpose of protecting countless worlds, and you spat on our will. Save Lodert. Caduceus' power has already been used. I replied instead of Lin. At that moment, Sipua's screaming stopped. Heidelcyan had already gone silent a while ago. Lodert? Lodert Lodert. The wall of fire trapping Sipua disappeared. She shot up and looked around for Heidelcyan. All the zombies gathered in one spot ran back. However, there was nothing there. Not even a single fragment of his armor or a single strand of his hair was left. Lodert. Dragon horn, burn them. I want to, let them go. I told you not to call me Dragon Horn TSK. Fire ignited on the zombies, and in a brief moment, the hundreds of zombies all burned away, not even leaving behind ashes. Seeing that we were the only ones left, Sipua plopped down. No it can't be. I agree. 
no one will believe what happened here, especially what you have done. The worst we had assumed was Scipio laying a trap, not a fight with the world's enemy. One of the five administrative guild masters of the first dungeon had not only attracted the world's enemy, but had also trapped us by making an event dungeon. I still couldn't believe it. When I thought about how Loretta would react when she found out, I couldn't help but sigh. Lottert, Lottert. You killed Lottert, you. There's no longer any meaning to life I don't want to live. If the burden you carried was that heavy if you hated it so much that you would have rather thrown it all away, it'll help you go to rest. It seemed he had made his decision. Lin held up his gun and aimed it at Sipua. Die, Sipua. From this moment on, I will preserve the dungeon in your place. Wait, Lin. Uh. I looked at Lin. Then, I spoke. This punishment would be too light. Just today, hundreds of people lost their lives. Even Lin died once. Even with all this, are you trying to bind yourself to the dungeon for her? Impractically bound to the dungeon anyways. Or what, will you take her place? What happened to your will of wanting to rid all worlds of their enemies? I halted. At Lin's words, I felt a deep sense of regret. I of course didn't think that I was the first to have held this wish. Right Lin must have also been threatened by his world's enemy, and he undoubtedly faced numerous challenges while fighting against them. Then, despite his deep hostility and hatred against them, he chose to become part of the dungeon, throwing away his wishes. As such, I replied resolutely. Let her carry the burden herself. She has to pay the price for her sins. The only way to do so would be to bind her to the dungeon. You you're more cruel and vicious than I thought. But how? The chance of succeeding isn't high, but I thought I should try it. There wasn't much time before Overlord would end. I could hold on until now because I hadn't used much of my power, but only ten or so seconds were left. If I wanted to utilize the stat doubling effect of Overlord, I had to hurry. It went without saying that charm was one of the stats being amplified. Currently, I was confident that I didn't lose to anyone in the dungeon in terms of charm. That applied to the Sipua in front of me as well. I approached her. Her eyes shot towards me with a deadly glare. Hero, hero. Damn you to hell. I will never go back to the dungeon. You will be torn to shreds by the world's enemy and your world will fall to ruin. Remember this. It. Will. Come. True. Lilith's temptation. I didn't have the time to listen to her meaningless babble. There was only a 20% chance of it succeeding. If I failed, Lin would have to become the new administrative guild master. However, my worry was for naught. Almost as if it was the most natural result, the power that left my body dominated her. You used Lilith's temptation. You stole 50% of the target's health and magic. The target falls under absolute obedience, forever becoming your servant. The moment the messages rang out, I saw a bone-chilling scene. Sipua, who had been cursing me out just a moment ago, changed her expression completely. Almost as if she had gained an incredible enlightenment, she looked around and examined her body. Then, she located me in the darkness and spoke as she cowed out. Ah, ah my master P please forgive my impudence. Please don't look at me like that. Kong Shin Yu. Damn this is why I didn't want to use it. Someone who had thrown away everything, including herself, for her love had discarded her love as if it was an old pair of shoes. Could the person in front of me be considered Sipua? If someone asked me this question, I could only shake my head. In a different way than Lin had intended, I had killed her. This is truly a punishment. Kong Shin, you scary bastard. I won't use this skill ever again. Damn it. My gamble succeeded. From now on, she would continue to protect the dungeon as an administrative guild master along with losing the love of her life and obtaining a new love that would never be reciprocated. That was the greatest punishment I could give her. The moment I put her under my command, a fanfare rang out. Ironically, the voice belonged to Sipuas. Event Dungeon Clear. You obtained 10 stat points and 3 skill points. Chapter, 241. Even after I waited for a long time, no other voice rang out. 
The last time I defeated a world's enemy, the response was much more chaotic. This time, however, made me doubtful that the one we defeated was a real world's enemy. However, the power in my hand was undoubtedly a world's power. I asked Lin. Lin, we defeated a world's enemy isn't there anything more? Don't be stupid. Where do rewards come from? Well, it's obviously the Dun A. Ah. The reason we were here was to allow the dungeon to operate normally. Of course there wouldn't be any rewards now. At that moment, Sipua's face shone as she shoved her face towards me. Master, if it's stat or skill points, I can give them to you. You shut up, Sipua. Don't waste any more of you power. Don't interrupt me when I'm talking to Master, Lin. Sipua shut it. Yes. I was beginning to understand how the dungeon operated. Once Sipua became quiet, Lin looked at her dumbfoundedly and turned his attention towards me. Even if Sipua is weak, turning her into this what are you? I'm wondering the same thing. Serves her right. Daisy glared at Sipua with disdain as she approached me. Thanks, Kong Shin. Promise, you already kept. I'm not the one who killed the world's enemy. It was Lin. If you want to thank someone, thank him. Dragon Horn, good job. Why are you thanking him sincerely and treating me like a pet dog? I've been thinking this for a while, but could Daisy really be thinking of Lin as an animal? Maybe she just liked his horn. It seemed I needed to warn Lin to be wary of his horn being cut off while he's asleep. Found hope though, before those weaklings grow, ITLL take some time. Sorry. So many people died because of us. It's not Kong Shin's fault. No one expected it it's my fault for, believing in a human too much. With that, she seemed to ponder momentarily before she shook her head and spoke. But Kong Shin is different. I trust Kong Shin. Yeah, thanks. Don't have the brains to trick people. That's too harsh. At the very least, I'm not stupid. Daisy said she was just joking and laughed lightly. Kong Shin likes me, so you don't try to trick me. I'm not sure what you mean by like you know that I didn't mean what I said before, right? Kong Shin hiding his embarrassment, annoying but slightly cute. So you really want to leave it as a misunderstanding, huh? I told myself to lecture her later. For now, there was something else I needed to do. I held the white sphere of light on my palm towards her. It's time to keep my other promise. Daisy, I'm going to make you a hero. Are you prepared? From the moment 90 years ago, when I was chosen as a hero candidate, I was ready. I already knew this, but you're old, Grandma Dai Kahak. I almost absorbed the world's power accidentally. Daisy waved her foot near my shin as she glared at me. I'm a maiden in her prime. Apologize for your rude remark. Sorry. First, I made Daisy into a hero on the spot. Watching this happen, Lin made a bitter smile. You're pretty skilled at handling that power. Wielding a foreign world's power so easily and bestowing it to someone safely, it's almost like him watching the savior hero. Savior hero? Let's go back. We can't let the dungeon stay like it is any longer. Savior hero, that was one of my titles. Did Lin know something about it? Lin didn't seem to want to say anything as he turned back silently. In the dark and silent underground base, the only ones left were me, Lin, Daisy, Sipua, and the headless corpse of the world's hay. Good undead material, good rival for Loki. Hey. Very, very good material. Even so, that was your world's enemy do you really want to make control someone like him? When I asked dumbfoundedly, Daisy looked at me like I was crazy. Corpses have no sins. All corpses are good corpses. Don't say that like it's some profound truth. With that, the search for Sipua ended and everyone deployed to the silent continent returned to the dungeon. Although short, the event remained an unforgettable memory. For helping to find Sipua, Revival became an A-ranked guild, and Daisy and I both received a top-class accessory each to make up for the reward we missed out in defeating the world's enemy. The dungeon's power for defeating the world's enemy and the power for bringing Sipua back would both be included. Why do I have to make them when I worked my ass off too? 
That's obviously because you didn't bring Sipua back immediately after you found her. Because you showed mercy to Sipua, do you know how many worlds were placed in danger? Two of them almost fell. Furthermore, it was the first time I had seen Loretta this angry. The moment Sipua left the dungeon, she became our enemy. She was our ally for 2,500 years. You pitted her. She trampled on all these years we spent together. Lin, how can you do something so stupid? And no, Nunim you see. And that even led you to fight a world's enemy. It thankfully worked out well, but what if something happened to Shin Nim? Tell me. Loretta was so scary that I wanted to run away. However, I couldn't escape as Loretta was hugging me tightly. Kook, at the same time her fragrance and touch led me to heaven, my breath my breath. If I could, Lin, with my own hands. Es scary. Nunim, your expression is too scary. This was the first time I had seen Lin so frightened. I was wondering what kind of expression Loretta was making but I felt like I would regret it, so I quietly stayed trapped in her embrace. I was so worried for you too, Lin. How can you be so immature? Didn't you say you almost died? What if Loka gets left alone? No, she has a kid now, so she won't be allo sorry. Lin kowtowed. However, Loretta didn't seem satisfied. You should know more than anyone else that you should never let your guard down against any world's enemy. Even I have to be extremely cautious. I told you multiple times to protect Shin Nim, but you fought the world's enemy together. You came back feeling proud of that. Hmm. You want me to praise you? Kong Shin was actually pretty useful you spare me, Nunim. Loretta, I can't breathe. Oh oh. Sorry, Shin Nim. I got a little excited. I didn't think anyone else would call it little, but I closed my mouth. Loretta who had let go of me slightly had embraced me once again from the front. I was so worried. Thank God you're safe, thank God. I'm sorry for making you worry, Loretta. You came back alive, so it's fine. If something happened to Shin Nim I might have put myself in a position where I couldn't blame Sipua anymore. As she said that, Loretta's expression was strange. Almost as if she had discovered something new, her face was pale. Then, she let me go. While I was feeling dizzy, drunk on her fragrance, Loretta put her hand on her forehead and sighed as if to spit out something buried deep inside her heart. For for a long time, we maintained the dungeon like this. For a long time right, for a very long time. Something like this was bound to happen. Couldn't it have been prevented somehow? Should all the administrative guild masters be put in a coffin? If we're sealed with the Lord's power, we won't have to worry about something like this happening. Sorry, Loretta. I didn't mean that. Loretta shook her head. For us, the power of the dungeon within us can't be detached unless we die. To maintain the dungeon, we had to stay within it. Unable to bear the stress built up from countless years, two masters had even given up their seats to others. Wait, doesn't that mean? They killed themselves. I stopped breathing. While I was frozen, Loretta continued. The weight of the passing time had strangled them. There was simply no stimulant. Things were looking too dangerous, and one by one, we began to receive the positions the Lord's power used to maintain. That was truly a saving grace. More and more people were beginning to require the dungeon's power, and no matter how amazing she was, she had her limit. We made contact with the dungeon's explorers and through them, we found a new life. However, that had its own problem. A problem like what happened this time. Yes. I told you something like this happened before, right? The person who first caused trouble was the administrative guild master of Lost Valley. He had fallen in love with an explorer. To save her and her world, he focused too much of the dungeon's power to her. Lost Valley's guild master, I had already met that person. And she. She became very powerful and succeeded in defeating her world's enemy. Because of the amount of power given to her, the dungeon had reached a point where it ceased to function. The Lost Valley's master then attempted to escape to her world to live with her. Loretta, wait. Elian killed him. Loretta continued without pause. 
she returned the dungeon's power to its normal state and became the new guild master of Lost Valley. A power that could protect her world, she believed that other worlds needed it as well. For that, she killed her lover. Their relationship was more one-sided than mutual. Plus, Elian has a tough spirit, though she may not look like it. She looked like a girl who just liked to play around. That's not wrong either. Didn't I tell you? She's completely into Lin right now, so she's constantly chasing after him, but in the past, it was much worse. She's the type of girl who doesn't fall deep into love. To be honest, Elian's personality is the most fit for an administrative guild master. Loretta's main point was what followed. After that incident, all administrative guild members including the guild masters began to use puppets instead of their real bodies. Although communicating with explorers was nice, everyone realized that they couldn't be affected by their encounters too much. Only few became exceptions to this rule. For example, Eladil and Maladel. Even so, nothing could stop Sipua from falling in love. There just couldn't be a perfect solution just like how I, who had only contacted Shin Nim through a puppet, had fallen in love with Shin Nim. Loretta sighed once again. Harboring feelings for or against explorers isn't encouraged. With this incident, you can see the ending. Even so, I. Loretta. Please, Shin Nim, always stay the way you are shining, as you always are. She shook her head and mended her words. No, never mind. Shin Nim should do what Shin Nim wants to do. I won't pressure Shin Nim anymore, I want that's the way it should be. It's fine if there are other women. I won't be selfish, so if you only look for me, I won't stray from my path. I won't become like Sipua. ITLL be fine. I silently embraced Loretta. With that, Loretta, who was talking non-stop as if she was drunk, became quiet. Lin widened his eyes, Daisy covered her face with her hands, and Sipua shouted something before getting silenced by Daisy's kick. With a blank expression, Loretta spoke. Shin Nim. One day. One day. No, sorry. It's a secret for now. Then until Shin Nim is ready to say it, it'll wait. That day, I set a seemingly unpredictable impossible goal. That was the only solution. Now that I had come to know, I couldn't stop. I could only continue running infinitely. Oh, by the way, Loretta there is something I need to say. Yes. I like Loretta too I love you. That day, I was almost raped in front of Lin. It was scary. Chapter, 242 Lin immediately headed off to work on the rewards. Since the accessories weren't something that he could make in a day or two, Daisy and I had to give up on seeing them for a while. For the record, although Sipua had committed grave sins of escaping the dungeon and cooperating with the world's enemy, considering the situation, she was simply given a punishment of 500 years in confinement. When she heard the punishment, she looked at me with longing eyes, but I just ignored them. It seemed it would be an effective punishment. Let's go back, Daisy. Un. Aren't you reproducing? Am I a bacteria? Shin Nim, they'll see you in a bit. You, don't ever come. We left Fairy Garden and returned to the Guild House. The Guild members, who had been waiting for us to return, felt relieved when the dungeon started operating again, and asked us what had happened. However, as it was too dark to tell them, I gave an evasive answer. Not knowing the truth wouldn't hurt them anyways. Phew, it's finally over. What's your plan, Daisy? I'm going to, sleep. Daisy yawned. Now that she mentioned it, I hadn't slept a wink. Just when I was thinking about going to sleep too, Daisy took off her beret in the middle of the hallway, then threw off her coat. Then, she suddenly tilted her head and asked. Sleep together? No. And if you're going to undress any more, do it in your room. You wanted to sleep. But not with you. Are you going to sleep, with that elf queen? Don't say that even if you're joking. Do you know how scared I was? I'm going to sleep alone, eh? Although I was exhausted, this whole incident had only taken a day's worth of time. Other than the fact that Revival had become an A-ranked guild, nothing had changed from the day before. Earth was still peaceful, 
and neither the four remaining kings or the demon race had appeared. Since I didn't want to go back to the dungeon and fight, I decided to just sleep. I had used Overlord and Hermes' power. It seemed my body was waiting for a rest after a severe physical labor. After I took a shower, I went to my room in the guild house and fell on my bed like someone who had just finished a marathon. Then, I fell asleep. It felt warm. When I woke up, Ina was sleeping next to me. Eh. When I sat up, Ina mumbled softly. I patted her and kept her sleeping. But why was Ina in my room? I didn't need to think for long as I could clearly see the door I had left wide open. Thank God it's Ina. I murmured instinctively and trembled. It seemed the trauma wouldn't go away for a while. I got down from the bed and got changed. I looked at the clock. It seemed I had been sleeping for fifteen hours straight. Considering the fact that I usually only needed three hours of sleep, it was a surprising amount. And um, I might as well go to the dungeon now. That was the only way I knew how to spend my free time. Despairing at my battle-ridden lifestyle, I left the room. When I closed the door silently so that Ina could sleep peacefully, Daisy was standing in the hallway. Whoa! Daisy stared at me fixedly. You said you would, sleep alone. But you slept, with another woman. Ina's my daughter. Will the daughter, also think that? Of course. Since Daisy was the one saying it, I couldn't help but worry slightly. No, she was just trying to tease me. As if to prove that this was the case, the corner of Daisy's mouth curled up. Kidding. I didn't read, her thoughts. If possible, don't make jokes that are going to give me heart attacks. There is something, I want to say. I noticed that Daisy was wearing her formal battle attire which she took off when she went to bed. When she wasn't going out for battle, she usually wore loose clothes that made the guild's male members glance at her, so her current attire somewhat stood out. You kept your promise, very quickly. So from now on, I will work, for Kong Shin. I will pay back, this gratitude. That's it. You did your best ever since you entered the guild. Like you did in the Philippines, for example. However, Daisy shook her head and spoke. What Kong Shin is doing, I want to do it too. Hmm. What Kong Shin plans on doing, I will do as well. Ah. I barely understood what she was trying to say. She had seen through my plan. Your goal, I like it. So let's do it, together. I'm the one who came up with it. But it's going to take a long time. Un. Let's do it, together. As you know, the motive isn't pure either. I scratched my head, and Daisy tilted her head in response. Motive doesn't matter. Let's do it, together. I don't really understand you. But for now, let's focus on Earth. We have plenty of time to talk about this. Un. I just wanted to, say it early. I wanted to become, your first ally. With that, Daisy smiled lightly. Her waning eyes looked beautiful and her smile also brought a smile on my face. I felt like I had obtained an unexpected, but reliable friend. So, do we sleep together, now? You sleep with your daughter, but not your ally. You just wanted to tease me, right? After that, I chased away Daisy who started taking her clothes off to go to bed, then returned to Earth. Now that I thought about it, I had to face Beyond's 20th floor master now. Since it hasn't been a day since I used Overlord, I was a bit hesitant to fight him. Just thinking about a monster that was a mix of Dullahans and Grim Reapers made my stomach churn. In addition, I realized that I had not seen my family since I came back from the Silent Continent. Mother was complaining recently about never being able to see her son's face, so I planned on using this opportunity to show my face more. Ah, Shin. Ludia. The first one I met after coming home was Ludia. The scene of her in her white priestess robe vacuuming the floor was a bit ironic. The fact that she looked so used to it was also a bit sad. I thought you were going to come back home immediately. Did you end up going to the dungeon? No, I just crashed in the guild house. After making me worry to death, really. Sorry. I didn't try to make any excuses. Lydia snorted at my honest apology and went back to vacuuming the floor. 
As she moved the vacuum cleaner forward and backward with as much skill as my mother, she murmured in a voice that barely went through the vacuum noise. It's fine as long as you're safe. Thanks for worrying about me. That's all I can do for you, always. Her voice carried a self-deprecating tone. Ever since I met you, there hasn't been a day I haven't thought about you. You're really annoying. You were annoying too when we first. I quickly dodged a vacuum cleaner swinging at my face. Lydia spoke as she glared. How you hate losing an inch annoys me too. I'm just saying what's right. No, sorry. Lydia, who was preparing for a secondary attack, widened her eyes when I apologized. Then, she laughed and went back to vacuuming. She seemed to be finishing up, but it seemed she had more to say. I keep thinking about it recently. I've gotten calmer now, and I've got the ease of mind to look back. That's good. At first, she didn't want to even move if I wasn't around. Now, however, it was fine even if I wasn't around her for several days, and she didn't even look for me as she climbed the dungeon with Shuna all day. It was a true improvement. It's been a month since she last crawled onto my bed as well. Like when I first met you, when we reunited. Or when you killed Sheena. Lydia. It was very rare for Lydia to talk about that incident. Before I noticed, the vacuum cleaner was turned off. It must have been because I was overwhelmed with so many emotions. I didn't know what the emotions I was feeling were. At that time, I thought I was working for revenge. But it seems that wasn't it. It wasn't. I imagined myself on the other side. What I would have done if it was you who died, not Sheena. Then, the answer was simple. Lydia returned the vacuum cleaner where it belonged. It seemed we were the only ones in the house as it was completely silent. How I behaved back then. Must have been a desperate evasion. I felt like I understood. Seeing her sorrow expression, that was the only thing I could do. I was relieved that you didn't die. Even when my younger sister died. I was relieved that it was Sheena who died, not you. If it was the other way around, I would have killed Sheena with my own hands, regardless of whether she was the demon lord spy or not. Lydia, you can stop there. I couldn't forgive myself for how I felt back then. I didn't want to admit it. That's why. Even though the answer was so simple. She sighed and continued. Shin, back then. No, maybe even before, I must have been in love with you. You must have been more important to me than anything else. UK. As I had just experienced a potentially catastrophic incident that stemmed from love, Lydia's confession didn't feel so light. While I was hesitating to say anything, Lydia made a lie smile. I don't need a reply. I already know you don't love me back. Lydia. I said I don't need a reply. Do you need to reject me thoroughly to be satisfied? Ah, her usual way of talking was back. Seeing her frown, I swallowed my words. So the promise is no. It was just me being stubborn anyways, you don't need to take responsibility for me forever. But. I said don't reply, you orc. Lydia's hand slapped my arm. Then, she gently held my arm. A smile had returned to her face. You can stay just the way you are. I'll love you on my own and chase you on my own. ITLL be painful for you. It won't be, stupid. Being able to stay with someone you love is a blessing in itself. Even if that person is in love with someone else. She let go of my arm, then put her hands on my shoulders. She fixed her sapphire-like blue eyes onto me and spoke as if to engrave her words on my mind. I don't plan on ever letting go of this love. It might be burdensome and awkward, but just let me be. Being loved by a persistent girl like me is your misfortune, so. Continue taking care of me from now. I had the feeling things would be exactly like how she described it. That I would be with her forever. I had no way of distancing myself away from her. Could Loretta do it? No, I was certain Loretta couldn't, and neither could Waya, Yiyun, or anyone else. The day I came to know my love, I obtained a lifelong ally and a lovable burden that would follow me eternally. Chapter, 243 Good morning, 
Appa. The next morning, after sleeping with a nice break from the dungeon, I came face to face with a strange scene. Yua was, of course, as angelic as always, but the problem was. What are you holding? It's the egg, Appa. A large ruby-like egg was sitting in Yua's embrace, glowing with a red light. I asked just to be sure, but it really was an egg. Yua stroked the egg gently as she spoke. If I hold it like this, the baby will hatch earlier, hee <laughs> hee. Air, mmm, good luck. I didn't know whether Yua's nesting would work, but it probably didn't matter with how cute she looked. However, looking at her with an egg reminded me of the metallic egg Ryue was caring for in the fairy garden. As I headed to the dungeon, I summoned Ryue and asked. Did that egg hatch yet? No, it's still sleeping. I think it's waiting for Shin to get stronger. Quite cheeky for an egg. By getting stronger, she probably meant my elementalist-related skills. A connection of sort had already been established between me and the egg, and it undoubtedly knew I couldn't command a fourth elemental. It was truly cheeky. I wondered how amazing it would be. It'll find out naturally when my skills level up. Ruyue, we're going to go fight a strong one today. To be honest, I wasn't really worried. There wouldn't be any floor masters for a while that I wouldn't be able to defeat with Overlord. Now, I had my sights higher and farther. Breaking through the highest floor in the dungeon, which no one is said to have done, and conquering all of beyond. These goals weren't enough anymore. I needed to grow past what the dungeon could give me. It's been a long time since anyone has come here. You're the third challenger since I've been trapped in this prison. Third. You're. Both Dullahans and Grim Reapers only knew how to charge at me like idiots, so I expected Beyond's 20th floor master to be the same. However, the voice was calm, and the scythe in his hand wasn't as big as the Reaper's scythes. It seemed he had more characteristics of the Reapers as his head wasn't detached like Dullahan's either. Only, unlike the Reapers who were clad with rags, he was wearing a thick armor, and was riding on a chariot tied to headless horses. I won't reveal the names of the defeated, as they're only numbers to me. Hero, hold up your sword and spear. I am the one who tests, one who eternally dies, a collector of false deaths. All who faced me here have experienced more than one death. Will you be able to defeat me? He raised his head. He had long hair and a pale yet beautiful face. That face did not belong to a he. I was slightly shaken by the unexpected discovery, but I soon calmed down and asked. Are you a woman? Indeed. Although I've fallen to a lowly status where I cannot die, I am certainly a woman. But if this causes Hero's spear edge to become dull, I will be severely disappointed. Do I look like it would? I am glad that you don't. She took a stance on her chariot. The headless horses neighed and began to prepare themselves to charge forward. I could instantly see the force that they would carry in their charge. I grinned and shouted as I fully released my charm. Lilith's temptation. It had only been a day since I declared that I would never use it, but I knew when to use my advantage. You used Lilith's temptation. You steal 50% of your target's health and magic power. The target falls under Awakened One's rage status effect. In exchange for 50% of her current health, she doubles all her abilities. Qua. You dare insult me with this pitiful technique. The Elder Reaper's rage skyrockets, activating Curse of the Reaper. For five minutes, the chance of receiving a critical hit from the Elder Reaper is multiplied by ten times. The Elder Reaper's attack power and speed will increase the more she attacks. To think Awakened One's rage would activate. The Elder Reaper halted from shock the moment she was struck by Lilith's temptation, and soon howled in rage as she raised her scythe. My armor already made it easier for me to receive critical hits, but having it multiplied by ten times? Every hit would practically be a critical hit. Really, nothing was easy. You'll pay for this. I will reap your life. An enormous amount of mana became concentrated on the scythe, creating an ominous gray aura above the scythe. As expected of Beyond's 20th floor master, my body tensed up in response to the powerful aura. I only used my skill. I used divine speed and shot up to the sky. 
At the same time, Sharana's power within me surged up and accelerated me further. The dozens of aura blades she shot out blew past me and exploded with a thunderous roar when they hit the ceiling. This was only the beginning. The headless horses were stomping on air and charging towards me. The chariot was flying. If you're a hero, fight me with your strength. Strength? Sure. Indeed, the Elder Reaper's speed and strength were both terrifying. With all her abilities doubled and her special skill used, the force of her spirit was overwhelming. However, she currently only had half of her mana and a fourth of her health. She was a glass cannon. In that case, things were simple. I just had to hit her before she hit me. Kwang. You used Frozen Roar. All enemies in the battlefield freezes in place. All allies temporarily become super armored and has all abilities increased by 50%. Your chance of landing a critical hit doubles when fighting enemies affected by Frozen Roar. Cook. Although Frozen Roar didn't show its full effect against all the powerful enemies I've fought recently, it was originally a terrifying skill that froze all enemies in place. As it couldn't even freeze the dragon zombie on the 15th floor, there was no way it could freeze the Elder Reaper. However, it could still thoroughly freeze the chariot and the headless horses. All you have are petty tricks. Powerful abilities you mean. The chariot fell effortlessly. The Elder Reaper jumped out of the chariot without hesitation, while I was already charging towards her after using Overlord. Enveloped by Enigma, I used Divine Speed. To her, I probably looked like a beam of black light. The Elder Reaper realized my position only after I appeared in front of her. She quickly raised her scythe, but I was already thrusting my spear towards her. Kook, coward. And that power. If there's one thing I've learned from all the fights I've experienced, it's that winning trumps all. The chaotic spear penetrated her breastplate. Heroic strike empowered by Enigma had easily ignored the armor's defensive power. As I said before, she was only left with a fourth of her health. Although she didn't instantly die, she was left on the brink of death, most likely with less than 5% of her health left. Cook, so easily even if I'm destined to forever be harassed, I will not make way for someone who humiliates women. I never said you should. I'll find it and walk through it myself. She told me to fight her without paying attention to her sex, but she was saying I humiliated her just because I used a skill. How absurd was that? I was even hurt by her words. I used divine speed once again and roughly pulled out the spear from her body. With Overlord active, I didn't need to worry about mana. Perhaps thanks to having her abilities doubled, she barely responded to my movements and shot a grey aura blade towards me. I will steal a month from you. I will see you afterwards. Sorry, but I'm going to have to decline your offer for a date. Powerful aura could damage the surroundings without ever making contact. With divine speed, I shot back and enlarged the chaotic spear's length and thickness to penetrate her body once more. Kahak. You bastard. Let's end this. I'll end you, hero. In that instant, the Elder Reaper's aura exploded from all sides. Her aura contained in her scythe was shrinking rapidly and teleporting to random places to explode. I didn't think such a refined aura technique could exist and docked at the scene. Soon, I realized that it wasn't the time to admire her skill, as my HP was falling even as I was being protected by Enigma. Cook. You think I will kneel. Elemental Blade. A layer made of elementals was added to the spear blade. In an instant, the hole in the Elder Reaper's body became bigger. In the next moment, the Elder Reaper dropped her head with widened eyes. I am possible. The spear I was holding suddenly lost its weight. The Elder Reaper's body was scattering into particles of light. Amazing. You are the first in Beyond's history to succeed in soloing the Elder Reaper on your first try. You obtained three skill points as reward. Remaining skill points, 39. You obtained the title, Elder Reaper Master. All stats increase by two. This effect will apply even if the title is not equipped. You cleared Beyond's 20th floor. You obtained the qualification to challenge the dungeon's 71st floor. Your maximum HP and MP increase by 
you obtained 5 bonus stats. Experience has been added to skills you frequently used to progress through Beyond's 20th floor. You received the only reward left hidden for the first explorer. Congratulations! Your luck stat increases by 10. Secret Shadow Hidden Blade Epic. That was easy too easy. Although I defeated her easily, the Elder Reaper was undoubtedly powerful. The chariot driven by the headless horses were extremely quick though I got rid of them with frozen roar. The curse of the reaper sent chills down my back though I was never hit by the elder reaper, and her instant acceleration and terrifying aura couldn't be described with words. If it wasn't for Lilith's temptation, it might have been difficult to subdue her even with overlord. However, in the end, she was a woman and I was a man, a weak man. My vow to never use Lilith's temptation again had been broken so quickly. People say what happened twice will happen thrice damn, from now on, they'll only use it on enemies that I know I will kill. With that meaningless vow, I deactivated Overlord. Immediately afterwards. Congratulations. You obtained the God of Destruction Shiva's true name. What happened twice in the past had happened a third time. Chapter, 244. Your strength, constitution, and magic increases by 20%. All stats increase by 5. Your affinity to all elements increases, and your affinity to the light element increases greatly. Your resistance to poison increases greatly. Once per day, you can summon Shiva's trident, Trishula, for 30 minutes. The summon Trishula will become infused into your weapon and will increase your spear technique's rank by one level. When attacking, you have a 10% chance of attacking the enemy thrice, dealing three times the normal damage. Once per month, you can summon Shiva's Gunna 1, Nandi, for 5 minutes. Nandi is a giant bull, and will go berserk upon summoning without caring for its body. It possesses power befitting of a Ghana of the Destruction God, charging forward with the sole purpose of destroying your target. Once per year, you can use Eye of the Destruction God. A third eye said to exist on Shiva's forehead opens, shooting a powerful beam of light forward. As it flies in the speed of light, it is said to be unavoidable and said to be able to destroy anything. Its attack power increases based on your stats. You obtained three gods' true names with the body of a human. This is a miraculous event never before seen in the history of the dungeon. Although there are countless other gods who wish to bestow their names to you, it is extremely difficult to carry four gods' true names with the body of a human. However, if you advance from your current realm, it might be possible to obtain a fourth god's true name. Although I thought I had gotten stronger, the shock I received this time was enormous. When I obtained Hermes' true name, my speed had increased by 15%, and when I obtained Zeus' true name, my strength and charm had increased by 15%. This time, however, my strength, constitution, and magic had all increased by 20%. Without decreasing other stats. 15% to 30%, 30% to 60%. Rather than the shock from the doubled percentages, the shock from the change in strength, constitution, and magic had greater impact on my body. It was so great that my body, which had conquered 20 beyond floors and was at level 71, felt like it was breaking. The pain couldn't even be compared to when I obtained Zeus' true name. A boundless divine power was surging through my entire body, amplifying my mana and strengthening my muscles and bones. My body was evolving to become more godlike. I gritted my teeth to not fall unconscious. Damn it I don't even get a choice of God's true names this time. Even Zeus and Thor had offered their names together. It seemed the strongest deity in Hinduism didn't want to be compared with another god and put in a place where he had to wait for my decision. His method of bestowing his true name was too violent. For ten minutes, I writhed in pain as I endured the transformation my body was undergoing. When I got up after the pain subsided, I could feel the change. When I checked my status, my HP had gone past 100,000 and my MP had gone past 180,000. 180,000. The amount of mana flowing through my body had become this monstrous. Mm. However, the world's enemy I faced in the silent continent had even mightier mana. Not just mana, but his pure physical abilities had surpassed every bit of my imagination. Even if I had gotten stronger, there could be others who were stronger. 
There was no guarantee that the unknown world's enemy Earth was facing was weaker than the Book Walker's leader, and the Demon Lord was undoubtedly stronger. Even with a third god's true name, I wasn't confident in being able to take the Demon Lord's life. Of course, that didn't mean that I was weak. It was just that the target of comparison was bad. If I utilized the power I obtained this time well, I could probably fight evenly with a world's enemy on the Lava King's level. Trishula, which raised my spear technique rank and increased my attack power, was perfect for me, and although it could only be used once per month, Nandi was also a wide area weapon with immense destructive power. Finally, there was Shiva's third eye, which could destroy anything. Since it could only be used one per year, its destructive power was guaranteed. Even the demon lord wouldn't be able to ignore this attack. Thinking about all these, I felt full of spirit. With this, I had obtained another potent way of attacking. Good. I can still become much stronger. I had only just cleared the 70th floor. Including beyond in the first dungeon, there were still 60 floors to go. I could definitely grow stronger by several times. The reward. The message window kept bugging me to pick my reward. I only had one choice, so I didn't know why it wouldn't just give it to me. I picked the shadow hidden blade as I grumbled. I expected it to be a weapon, but it was unexpectedly an earring. Shadow hidden blade epic. Durability 850850. Equipment requirement Elder Reaper's Master, Strength 300, Magic 300. Option Strength 30, Magic 30. When you attack or are attacked, and the attack lands as a critical hit, a large Reaper's Scythe appears and attacks the enemy. The attack power of the Reaper's Scythe increases based on your strength and magic stats. Ah, this is. The item description was short, but the effect was nothing to scoff at. The fact that it also activated when I was hit by a critical hit was a great advantage. Although I would need to use it once to make solid judgment, the word Reaper's Scythe was strangely enticing. After thinking about my choices for a long time, I took off the Blood Succubus earring and put on the Shadow Hidden Blade. The dark red color of the Blood Succubus earring looked good with the golden teardrop which had a beautiful golden gem, but the Shadow Hidden Blade's black metallic was more masculine and didn't go well with the golden teardrop. Looking at my face reflected on my spear blade, I hesitated. Was this okay? Well, it's my stats that matter the most, let's ignore this. It feels like I'm emitting less scent too. Blood Succubus Earring had an effect of amplifying my charm and emitting a scent that made it easier for the opposite sex to like me. Although the Blood Succubus Earring's effect became unnoticeable with my overly high charm, I still felt like taking the earring off made the scent diminish. I was certain. As I stepped out to the floor shop, I decided to give the Blood Succubus Earring to Yua, who regularly utilized the charm stat. When Loretta saw me, she flinched. Ah. Did Shin Nim obtain another true name? Yep, it was Shiva's. Shiva the destruction god. Shin Nim's body could contain Shiva's power. I was just thinking how Shin Nim's body seemed different I'll have to examine it. With a surprised face, Loretta was feeling my body here and there. I can clearly see your other thoughts. I'm just trying to check whether something's wrong with Shin Nim's body. Ite. When I forcefully dragged Loretta off, she pouted and grumbled. I ignored her complaints and asked. So, is anything off? Yes. Ah. You completely forgot about it with your evil intentions. Boohoo. Don't think smiling cutely will change anything. Next, Loretta thoroughly checked my body without any ulterior motives. She then told me that my body was tense with a third god's power clashing with the first two god's powers. I'd been thinking the same thing. So make sure you rest. Do I really need to? The 71st floor won't be hard. Accepting three gods' powers in one body is already shocking. Before they can find their balance, Shin Nim needs to rest. If possible, don't use their powers and rest thoroughly. But I already got ample rest from yesterday. Do I have to rest more? When I asked with a sigh, Loretta clapped and shoved her face towards me. Her golden pupils were staring at me fixedly. In that case, play with me. I want to treat Shin Nim to something. Let's go to Fairy Garden together, 
hurry. No, Loretta's eyes look too dangerous. I have no evil intentions, really. Not even a bit. I would rather believe my mother's words that she'd return the New Year's pocket money I entrusted her with than believe Loretta's words with her beast-like eyes. It'll be back, Loretta. Ah, ah. Shin Nim, Shin Nayim. I waved my hand at Loretta who desperately cried out my name, and came out to earth. I certainly felt a bit off from the shock of receiving Shiva's true name, and I could somewhat feel the uncontrollable powers clashing against each other within my body. However, ever since I learned mana, I had a cure-all way for when the state of my body was weird. It was Pryuta circuit. Yua had gone to school, father and Lydia were in the dungeon, and mother had gone to work. As a result, I found myself alone at home. In the serene stillness, I began to circulate Pryuta circuit. I gathered the roiling mana in one place and forcefully pulled the stubborn powers with Pryuta circuit's rotational power. Once incorporated into Pryuta circuit's flow, the circulation speed accelerated. Pulling outside mana into my body while controlling the mana within me, I refined my mana with endless circulations. God's powers are really hard to control no, focus, focus. To become more used to a God's true name and to better draw forth its power, one needed to identify and wield divine power. I recognized Hermes' power, Zeus' power, and Shiva's power as separate entities, and worked to control them. To fight against world's enemies, I needed to be able to wield powers outside the dungeon system. It was easy to overlook the fact that God's true names were also being controlled through the dungeon's power. Although it was nice having a supporter that helped me wield a God's power, in the end, I needed to make the powers I had into my own without relying on the dungeon. Only then could I say that I had the qualification to be a holder of a God's true name. I heard that even in the past when the dungeon didn't exist, gods bestowed deserving people with their names. Just like how I wielded Pryuta circuit, spear technique, and elemental techniques without the system's help, in the past, gods' true names must have also been given to people as unique abilities. As such, I needed to be able to use gods' true names like they were my own, not just by shouting skill names. Once I could do that, I would be able to call myself gods' true name holder. When that became possible, my league. Mm -hmm. Didn't something just flash? Just when I thought I had come to grasp something important, my heart thumped. However, no matter how much I tried to recall my thoughts, I couldn't do so. Since wrenching my head didn't result in a solution, I decided to go back to focusing on Pryuta circuit. No matter the case, it was certain that I was walking towards the right path. Pryuta circuit had the ability to make one focus. Almost as if I was half asleep, I circulated Pryuta circuit peacefully. Suddenly, I was ambushed by message Nuna. Event dungeons have been mass created on Earth. There are too many dungeons beyond past dungeons difficulty. Please clear them before it's too late. What happened twice happened thrice. The sudden attack of event dungeons also arrived at the most unexpected time. Chapter, 245 I shot up from my cross-legged position. When I woke, it was already five in the afternoon. I had been focusing on Pryuta circuit without moving an inch for the past five hours. That said, focusing on Pryuta circuit seemed to be effective as my body felt much more like my own. I've gotten somewhat used to all the changes to my stats and the gods' powers have also somewhat calmed down. Even so, they were still roaming around my body unstably. I thought about cornering them somewhere in my body, but for now, they wouldn't budge an inch. He'll think about that later. I kicked open the door and walked down to the living room. Yua in her school uniform was running into the house. Appa, have you heard? Yeah. Did you go to school like that? I looked at the red egg in Yua's arms and shouted in shock. Yua smiled and replied. Students and teachers both know I'm an ability user. The teachers allow this much. Well if you is okay with it, that's fine. Hoo-hoo, I can feel the child moving. It won't be long before it hatches. Why yeah? Is it just me or did my younger sister change somewhat after getting her ability? In any case, I headed to the guild house with father and Lydia who left the dungeon as soon as they heard the message. Everyone besides the guild members outside the country were all gathered in the guild house. 
A few succubi were stationed in front of the mansion and greeted me when they saw me. Dear husband master has arrived. Shin, you were outside. That was quick. When I entered the conference room, Wyatt greeted me with widened eyes. Um, I could tell what she thought of me with those words. With a bitter smile, I asked. We haven't determined the number yet, right? Un. We have the succubi units on it right now. We already reported the situation to each country's freedom wing and guardian. Dear husband, the situation seems rough. Just the number we have now is. Licorice put her hand on the crystal ball in the middle of the conference room. Immediately, the video projected on the wall changed. On a world map, numerous red dots were being drawn. This is what I think it is, right? Yeah, these are all event dungeons. The Succubi's dungeon search started from Korea. As we were getting live updates from them, the red dots looked like they were spreading from Korea to surrounding countries. In this short period, Korea, China, and Japan had already been completely explored. The number of red dots seemed to easily go past 100. How many event dungeons did we clear last time? About 300. Waya answered. Her expression was also a bit stiff. Even as we were talking, more red dots were being drawn. We plan on getting Freedom Wing and Guardian's help for this time's investigation in Dungeon Clear. With the Philippines videos, our approval rating grew to equal Freedom Wings and Guardians. They won't be able to decline our request for cooperation. Right, with this many. Un. We have Licorice's Succubi, but even with their strengths taken into account, it might be difficult to clear all these event dungeons in time. It's not like we can split the units further either we can't sacrifice more of them. I looked at the world map on the wall and pondered. In the past, event dungeons didn't spawn in the ocean, but this time, there were more red dots in the water than on land. There might be a thousand or even more. Eliminating all these within two months with the power of humanity? It would be impossible without the succubi's help. Thank God Licorice came to me. Good, dear husband, I recorded that. Well play it repeatedly as a background music for our wedding. I can't even casually comment on something now. I thought you'd say that this time, so I was prepared. Licorice quickly hid the recorder in her clothes, so I couldn't even steal it from her. Yua who was standing to my side growled at her threateningly, but she only looked cute. While I told Licorice off and soothed Yua, Waya who was staring at the world map murmured in a serious tone. Fast. This is too fast the gap between the first wave of event dungeons and the second wave of event dungeons was over a year. This time, it only took four months. If this continues, all of Earth might get covered in event dungeons. Earth's current situation, middle stage of invasion. At that moment, Daisy opened her mouth. She was already in her battle uniform. She had come ready to fight. Her calm and quiet voice rang out in the conference room. People of Earth, defended well until now. But the real invasion starts now. It was the same, for my continent. Rather than humanity's preparation, the invasion was faster. You were born before the start of Silent Continent's invasion. Un I was young. Kong Shin, very young. Yeah, yeah, I get it. She was emphasizing the fact that she wasn't that old. It didn't take, long. The book walker's captain descended, fifty years after the first invasion. That was, eighty years after the dungeon, came to Silen. Fifty years since the first invasion. At first there were, only a few book walkers. Few years later, there were dozens. Ten years later, there were hundreds. That was, when we first started, paying attention to them. Explorers didn't care much. They were overconfident, in the continent's power. Because unlike on Earth, monsters already existed in Silent Continent and there were many ability users who could wield mana. On Earth, ability users only appeared after the invasion began. The dungeon seemed to have existed long before then, but there were only a few explorers and no proper organizations either. Earth's situation was vastly different than Silent's. However, even Silent Continent had several tens of years before the invasion really began. What did Silent Continent's ability users do during that time? 
Wars Between Empires and Kingdoms. No one paid attention to the book walkers. It was different from Earth. Book walkers were considered common mutations of monsters. That's how they missed several tens of years of preparation. Dungeon explorers knew other worlds were in danger. But until they were directly faced with danger, they didn't prepare. What was important to them was land, soldiers, wars, women, and political power. Only a few small kingdoms, like Selwyn Kingdom, prepared. Greed moved people. It was the same on Earth. Everyone thought of monsters as a resource to be exploited. No one considered them as a source of danger threatening humanity even after several countries and regions were lost because of them. Earth feels weird. There are very little ability users, it's easy for strong people to shine. Kong Shin holds the lead, and is very aggressive on monster extermination. This is, our advantage. Unfortunately, the reality wasn't so simple. But the invasion is, too fast. Compared to my continent, it's faster by ten times, or even more. You mean the invasion will only get quicker from now? Invasion, accelerates. Mass infestation maybe, next time is the last. I knew what the last signified. The demon lord army and the monsters, one of the two forces would descend completely if that happened, it would really be the end. Humanity had started a difficult fight. However, before I felt hopeless, I shook my head. No, Loretta said we had two years. We should have twenty-two months before one of the forces completely descends. Even the dungeon's lord, cannot guarantee the time, we have it would be nice, if we had two years, even if it was two months, we couldn't say anything. The world is irrational. Daisy spoke calmly. Kong Shin. Be ready, to lose a little. I stopped breathing. It felt like she had seen through my heart. You are already, a miracle. But complete defense of earth is, too hard. It's nice to have high hopes, but when you fall, there will be, greater pain. I don't need to hear that right now, Daisy. We've defended well until now. Rather than talking about discouraging topics, isn't it better to talk about how to effectively get rid of those event dungeons? Waya interrupted Daisy. Daisy shrugged and stepped back. I just thought, Kong Shin needed to be determined. With determination, it will hurt less. I was a bit worried, for Kong Shin I experienced, the same thing. I'm worried about Shin too, but. Waya and Daisy exchanged glances. A few seconds later, Daisy squished her beret down and took a step back, while Waya took a step forward with a small sigh. After the inexplicable exchange of glances ended, Waya glared at me and pointed at the wall with a stick. Let's change the topic to forming teams. The number of red dots on the world map had gone past 200 now, and not even a fifth of Earth had been explored. Waya let out a dry cough and touched the crystal ball, making about 10 figures next to the world map. We'll need to wait until we finished investigating, but for now, we'll split into teams. On the screen, she displayed the names of Revival's members and the seven explorers we've chosen so far. First, all the explorers broke through the 20th floor. They haven't appointed anyone yet either. If we knew more event dungeons would break out, we would have selected more. There's nothing we can do about it now. This won't be the last time event dungeons appear either. We just have to increase the number of dungeon explorers before then. In any case, we have to focus on the growth of these seven explorers and other revival members who didn't participate in the last event dungeon subjugation. Well let them form teams and add in one or two revival members. They'll focus on conquering low-ranked event dungeons to farm as many stat points and skill points as possible. We'll have to be prepared for event raids too. Of course. Well just add more ability users to the teams and have them clear event dungeons quickly. ITLL get busy for a while, so be ready, everyone. I'm ready. I've been waiting for this moment. It'll be of help to everyone. Elada Van was the first to answer. Um, mm, it was still hard to talk to her. Michelle, haven't you conquered Elada yet? Me too. I won't be a burden. I'm happy I can get even stronger. As Yua clenched her fists, Lebeek also spoke with a wild beast-like smile. 
On the other hand, Ren stared at the red dot silently and finally spoke with a low tone. It's time to pay back my debts. Crown Prince, what you've done for the Pan and Continent, I will do the same for Earth. Ah, but don't get a hole in your stomach, Ren. That hurt a lot. You got a hole in your stomach. Show me, Appa. Why didn't you tell me this before? Ah, oops. Soon afterwards, the seventeen members of Revival, the other seven explorers, and 176 succubi from the battle units formed a total of 16 teams. Although there were teams made of just succubi, there weren't any made of just explorers. It was because succubi's special trait allowed them to share information faster and more accurately than explorers' messaging system. As for my team, I was the only one in it. We don't have enough people. It's not like I don't want to be with you, but honestly, you do everything yourself anyways. At Waya's heartless selection, I cried. Thankfully, I would at least have licorice, plein, and latte with me. Just like that, our third event dungeon subjugation mission started. Chapter, 246 Although we finished forming our teams, completely discerning the number of event dungeons and appropriately distributing the teams had only just begun. We couldn't ignore each country's freedom wing and guardian either. It would be fine if we squashed their spirit like before, but now, they were willing to cooperate. We couldn't just force our way in while there was still room for negotiation. From clearing event dungeons, we could obtain rewards, stat points, and skill points. There was a limit to the rewards we could get from event dungeons under a rank, and there was currently more than enough of such dungeons to go around for the new revival members. If possible, no, certainly, Freedom Wing and Guardian had to also take on event dungeons. All these things couldn't be done in a single day, so we had to wait knowing that we were being chased for time. Of course, we didn't just play around as we waited for the logistics to be taken care of. We immediately called the seven explorers to Korea, and they arrived extremely quickly. They had heard the message when the event dungeons spawned and had been waiting for our call. When all seven explorers arrived, I started explaining the current situation. Everyone should know what event dungeons are, right? Yes. In that case, I hope everyone realizes how much danger Earth is in. Of course, just like we did in the past, Revival plans on destroying all event dungeons. I heard we discovered over 800 of them so far. At one of the explorers' comment, I shook my head. Not even close. There's easily over a thousand of them. The event dungeons really outdid themselves this time. The scale is beyond anyone's imagination. We have to hurry. We can clear event dungeons, right? There wasn't anything in the contract about them. One of the more sensible female explorer asked. I replied with a grin. Of course you can. As long as we can get rid of the event dungeons, it doesn't matter who does it. We had no plans to limit them in the first place. Now, you must be wondering why we called you here if we didn't plan on restricting you. Well, you should already know the reason. Otherwise, you wouldn't have come. We can receive Revival's help. This time, it was a male explorer with a fairly deep voice. I nodded. Everyone will have to clear event dungeons based on their difficulties. You'll be able to receive help from your governments and institutions. But the time it takes for event dungeons to transform into field dungeons is two months. How many dungeons do you think you'll clear if you work diligently? Not more than 30, I would think. 15 for me Spain doesn't have many high rankers. My country is fully supporting me. It'll be able to do 50. You should know how many dungeons revival cleared last time, right? Everyone became quiet. Good, I didn't need to convince them anymore. In the first place, the reason I called them was to give them the maximum benefits. Taking care of them this much shouldn't someone give me an award. Sorry, but we formed teams without your consent. Of course, if you dislike it, we can exclude you and let you work freely. But if you want to be with us. I paused for a moment, but seeing the seven explorers looking at me with sparkling eyes, I continued with a wry smile. Well help you maximize the stats you can gain from event dungeons. That will help you in your future dungeon clears too. In truth, it won't just help them, 
it will help them greatly to the point they can climb to the 50th floor easily. Once we were done, they should be twice as strong as they were now. As expected, none of them were idiots who would decline such an offer. Currently, the succubi were busily flapping their bat wings, flying around the whole world to identify the event dungeon's locations, scales, and ranks. At the same time, Waya, Samire, and Sophie who were good at talking to government agencies were busily discussing with each country's guardian and freedom wing. Meanwhile, I decided to clean up the region that wouldn't cause any troubled South Korea. You'll take this chance and get rid of all the regions occupied by monsters. Giala Province, Appa? Yep. From South Giala Province to Imsil County in North Giala Province was occupied by monsters, an area covering about three-fourths of Giala Province. Although Korean ability users had tried twice to reclaim this land, they were forced to quit after incurring many causalities. Currently, there was a fence around the border of the region with over 40% of Korean guardians being deployed to protect it. I didn't really need anyone to help me, but I threw the seven explorers and other revival members who needed the stat points into my team. The exception being Sophie, who was in the middle of negotiating with Freedom Wing. There were 48 event dungeons in South Korea. There were too many considering its small size, and most of them were near the occupied Jiala province. In the past, we just cleared the event dungeons due to lack of time, but this time, I planned on wiping out every single monster in Jiala province. Since I was doing this, I decided to go through Jiala province properly. Unexpectedly, the entire South Korea buzzed with our guild house being overwhelmed with reporters. Mr. Kong Shin, is there a big reason you decided to reclaim Jiala province? Many Korean citizens were asking why you left Jiala province alone while you cleared the Philippines. Is there a particular reason? Do you have any comments on your talk with the government? Joined efforts of Korea's Guardian and Freedom Wing only faced difficulties in Jiala province. Do you have any strategy in mind to chase the monsters out? There are rumors of you and Amy, a Korean and Japan's hottest idol, being madly in love with each other. Can you comment on that? I looked back at Yua who was standing behind me modestly. Other than the red egg in her arms, she was holding herself in the perfect posture. I asked her a short question. Who's Amy, Yua? Hoo hoo, Appa doesn't have to know. It's nothing important. She's just some ugly woman. Ren, who was watching us from the side, murmured with a strange expression. So this was the reason I knew more about Earth's idols than Crown Prince Amy she's pretty. Ren Nim, can you repeat that? You were looking at Earth's idols while you should be taking care of the children. Ella Beak. Your eyes are scary. Uck, sorry, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Seeing what happened between Ren and Labik with a simple question, I realized asking more questions would only get more annoying. I chased the reporters away and got on the plane with everyone else. To finish clearing Korea's dungeons, I needed a plane. In truth, there wasn't a particular reason that I left Jiala province alone. When we were clearing the second wave of event dungeons, we didn't have time to care about reclaiming lands. Afterwards, there were much more important things to do than reclaiming Jiala province. After reclaiming the Philippines, I thought about reclaiming Korea's lost lands, but too many things had happened one after the other. Plus, talk with the government. If I said I wanted to clean up Jiala province, they should kowtow and thank me. They weren't in any position to demand anything from me. After all, there was nothing they could do for me. This was also the first time I heard about this Amy woman. In the first place, I haven't watched TV in a long time, so I didn't know the names of any idols. Unlike other girls her age, Yua also didn't have any interest in idols. Us brother and sister were rather apathetic in this regard. Naturally, I was stunned by this rumor of me going out with an idol. It made me realize how famous I had gotten. Finally, in regards to the strategy for reclaiming Jiala province, I indeed had one. Wow, how pretty. I'm surprised she isn't human. Only someone of Revival's master caliber can possess such a beautiful monster. I wish I had a girlfriend, even if she's a monster. While some of the explorers were whispering among themselves, Pleen hopped out of the plane and stood next to me. She was tightly holding on to a short black rod, which she held up next to her mouth. 
It was a magical tool devised by me and crafted by the first dungeon's famous artifact crafter, Hobgoblin Aladdle. It was a microphone of sort that had the power to amplify the range and effect of magical power in sounds. Although the effect wasn't amplified by much, the range was more than doubled. The material to craft the microphone came from beyond. As beyond didn't drop crafting materials often, I only had enough to craft this one item, but it was the perfect magical tool for Pleen. In truth, I was looking to make a magical tool that could amplify the effect of my evil eyes, but due to a lack of material and technique, I had to settle with this. I tried not to think about it too much as it hurt me. In any case, the strategy one had was using clean singing and my evil eyes. It was the most effective and destructive combination for instantly cleaning up a wide area. The explorers, who didn't know my evil eye's power, seemed worried when they heard Pleen would be attracting monsters with her singing. However, Elada, Leon, and Michelle who knew about my power looked at Pleen and me with excitement. Pleen cleared her throat and gave me a bright smile. Ahem, they'll show you my improved singing skills. Shin will fall in love with it too. Yep, I'm leaving it to you. Thanks as always. I got complimented. Shin complimented me. When Pleen jumped happily, Latte, who was prepared to fly up whenever I gave the signal, flapped her wings in discomfort and scolded her. Can you just start singing, stupid? Shin said I wasn't stupid. The person who calls others stupid is stupid. I'm not human. I'm a wyvern, stupid. Hik yua. Latte, don't make her cry. From then, it took three minutes for Pleen to calm down and start singing. La la la. Humph, you're stupid, but I'll admit you can sing. ITLL get busy soon, so let's listen to her sing for now. Pleen's beautiful ringing voice seemed to dig deep into our hearts as everyone stood enchanted by her singing. At the same time, her voice spread to the entire Imsil County. Pleen could already send her singing voice far and wide, but with the magical tool's amplification, her voice reached even farther. Through the crumbled buildings, dense trees, and tall mountains and hills, her singing voice left the whole world listening and breathless. La 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 la. My god. Is this a voice a human can have? Ah, she's a monster. I think Amy sings better. Sure. Didn't you hear? The guild master is going out with Amy. Be quiet. I'm not. I don't even know her face. This damned Amy. If I ever see her, she's going to get an earful from me. As I growled at the other explorers, we could see the mob of monsters rushing towards us. Seeing the monsters filling up the sky and earth while stampeding through the already crumbled buildings, the explorers who were enjoying Pleen's singing turned pale. Isn't this a bit dangerous? Just how many are there? I was looking down on Korea's monsters, but Korea was actually this dangerous dam. The explorers made understandable reactions and tensed up. I grinned and slowly flew up on Lottie's back. I closed my eyes and whispered to Latte. Sorry, Latte. Things are going to get busy from now. I already became one with Hero, so Hero doesn't need to apologize. Right, thanks. I could say the same. After this short conversation, I opened my eyes. The thousands of monsters flying in the sky instantly turned to stone and fell. Monsters of Earth, take this. Evil eyes of petrification, stone rain. Of course, stone rain wasn't a real skill, but the effect was good enough to be considered a real skill, as giant rocks pummeling down from the sky could deal ample damage to even powerful monsters. Monsters stampeding towards us were promptly squashed by the raining stones. Those that survived looked up instinctively and were turned into stone by my evil eyes. As all monsters within my vision met this same fate, it only took three minutes for the tens of thousands of monsters to turn into stone. In the past, we would have moved to different locations to sing, but Pleen's current range of singing was nothing like the past. She didn't need to stop singing and we didn't need to move elsewhere. We could end everything here. Come. Come. The hell is this? I've heard the stories, but seeing it in person is. Shin. Maybe he really is a god. 1. 
That day, we successfully wiped the Sea of Monsters in Giala province and cleared all event dungeons. The explorers who followed me there came out with dozens of bonus stats and luxurious equipment, and Chaotic Spear finally reached 80% in growth. The next day, the real event dungeon conquest began. Chapter, 247 Careful, Shin. I'm sure you'll be fine with licorice and latte around, but if someone on the Lava King's level appears, you have to wait for us. Got it? You're the one who put me in a team by myself. That's that, and this is this. I flicked back Waya's forehead as she approached me. Seeing her rub her forehead and mumbling in complaint drew a smile on my face. Don't worry and leave it to me. It'll come back safe and sound. Yeah. Unlike me, Waya had one explorer, Michelle, and Aleda in her team. Other members of Revival were in similar teams. The reason I was in a team by myself was that there was just too many event dungeons. Someone had to decrease the number without caring for the stat points and rewards. More exactly, the number of event dungeons I was in charge of was 317. In other words, I would have to clear about 5 event dungeons per day. Among them were 60s ranked dungeons. Dear husband, let's go. Uhuhu. Licorice, you better not try anything funny, or else. I know, Waya. Kuu, I can't trust you. With licorice and plean, I hopped on Lottie's back. As some of the other teams had already set out, only a few came to see me off, though there were plenty of reporters with mics and cameras pointed towards me. Hero, can I step on them before I fly up? Sorry, Latte. I don't want to make headlines like that. Latte snorted as if she wasn't content, then flapped her wings and blew the crowd away. Next, flapping her red striped wings once more, she kicked off the ground and into the air. Where are we going, Hero? We're going to fly around the Pacific and clear the ocean based dungeons. Then, we'll clean up the rest of Oceania starting from Papua New Guinea. So dear husband scale of operation is the five seas and the six continents will we be able to go through an entire continent and an ocean in just two months. Actually, we have another continent and another ocean too. I spoke calmly. We're also in charge of Antarctica and the Antarctic Ocean. You guys brought your anti-cold equipment right? Kayak. What is dear husband and why a thinking? That's a third of earth. Dear Husband is in charge of a third of Earth? Is the word impossible in Dear Husband's dictionary? The tight schedule caused Licorice to scream. I patted her head and consoled her. That just shows how much of an emergency we're in. With Pleen's ability and my ability, we'll be able to take care of dungeons under SS rank quickly, so it won't be that difficult. He'll let everyone rest once a week too. But Dear Husband is going to go the dungeon while we're resting. UK. Licorice's razor-sharp comment almost cut me. Licorice looked at me disapprovingly and spoke. I already know how dear husband thinks. Dear husband is planning on climbing the first dungeon while we're sleeping and breaking through beyond during the once-a-week break, right? UK. It was all true. There was nothing for me to argue about. Seeing me speechless, Licorice made a wry smile. I can somewhat understand how dear husband has gotten so strong at such a young age. Dear husband can't stop climbing the dungeon with the situation earth is in, right? Right, I can't stop even if I know I shouldn't rush myself. I could easily climb the dungeon at the moment due to the vast difference between my strength and the dungeon's required standard. However, this wouldn't continue forever. I would eventually reach a wall. I had to climb the dungeon as much as I could if I had the time. Especially since I might arrive at that wall within these two months. The Pacific Ocean was Earth's largest and deepest ocean. Over 100 event dungeons had spawned in the Pacific Ocean. On average, their difficulty ratings were higher than land-based event dungeons, as it was hard to find dungeons ranked below B. There weren't that many underwater dungeons last time. For days after we left Korea, I murmured after clearing the 27th underwater dungeon and popping out of the water. Pleen who also peeked out of the water next to me squeezed her wet hair and laughed happily. I love water. I hate it. My wings and tail get wet. I agree. 
I hate the ocean. Licorice wrapped herself and Latte in a bubble and was floating in the air. With a single wave of her hand, she summoned several tens of bats outside the bubble and spread them out. They were looking for the next nearest dungeon for us to visit. Ah, there's a S rank dungeon nearby. I can get stat points. Let's hurry. Don't make that face. I really hate water. Hero is stupid. Can't dear husband go alone? No, never mind. Let's go. We can't leave dear husband to just this idiot. Ehu. Unlike Pleen, who loved the ocean as expected of a siren, the two winged girls really hated the Pacific Ocean. Licorice seemed to hate oceans in general, while Latte didn't go well with water due to her being a wyvern and a flame wielder. If she couldn't transform into a human, she would have refused to go underwater. Latte, is there a water king or an ocean king? I asked Latte out of curiosity. Now that we were focusing on the ocean, it was a natural question to ask. After the first monster outbreak, most sea routes in the Pacific became sealed off. Large sea monsters made nests in the Pacific, and ravaged any ships that crossed their territories. If they at least spoke human language, people might have tried to negotiate with them, but that was clearly not the case with the monsters. Countries that relied on ocean-based trade were affected greatly, and some even faced economic crisis. Thankfully, the monster invasion also changed many countries' landscape, bringing along new crops, new minerals, and monster materials. Without these, the population of Earth may be much less than it is now. It was a form of giving one diseases while giving him medicines. Of course, Korea was one of these heavily affected countries. In many ways, Korea was quite unlucky. Additionally, many sea routes in other oceans had been recovered, but only the Pacific Ocean was still completely blocked. The Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean were fine, but only the Pacific Ocean was wrought with reapers that refused to leave there were even suspicions that a supermassive monster was living in the Pacific Ocean. Don't think you can just attach the word king wherever you want, hero. Lottie's rebuttal stung me slightly. The Lava King was a flame dragon. He was known as an elemental king for his ability to completely reign over fire. Even in my world, there aren't many capable of doing that. There was one more, but I don't know much because I lived too far away from that being. So what are the chances that he's a water king? How persistent, hero. There is no such thing as a water king. To be honest, that was good news for me. I had come to the Pacific to clean up the event dungeons, but it was also to reopen the land like I did for the Philippines or the Giala province. This was something I had only talked to Waya about. No one else in Revival knew about it. After all, cleaning up the event dungeons in my area was different than completely cleaning up the area. But if I didn't take back the land and ocean stolen by monsters, humanity would eventually lose their dominance to monsters. I had no plans to volunteer myself for the good of humanity, but it would be sad if there were no humans to live on earth after I defeated the world's enemy. I was feeling embarrassed for nothing. Ite, let's hurry. We're going to finish the Pacific within two weeks and go to Oceania. It's only been two weeks since we reclaimed the Philippines, and even that took a whole week. Dear Husband wants to clean up this huge Pacific Ocean in just two weeks. Is Dear Husband insane? Of course insane. We already made a lot of progress. Come on, let's go. Once we entered an event dungeon, even if the dungeon was underwater, the dungeon rarely had anything to do with water. Most had solid ground for us to walk on, and we just had to wipe the monsters in the dungeon. As I said before, since I decided to purify the entire Pacific Ocean, I had to get used to underwater combat. More exactly, I had to get used to massacring monsters with my ability while making use Pleen's ability. If there was one thing we felt thankful for, it was that Pleen's singing worked even better underwater than it did on land. Pleen sang more calmly underwater and her voice inexplicably reached even farther underwater than it did on land. Once she started singing, monsters within a vast area flocked towards us, and I just needed to widen my eyes and turn them to stone. Since Pika was limited in using her power with allies underwater, Sharana and Ryue materialized into human forms and went around breaking the stones. If one ignored all the monsters, the scene was rather mystical and beautiful. 
While a beautiful girl sang an enchanting song, two equally beautiful girls freely swam through the water with their hands flashing colorfully. I've never seen such a beautiful massacre in my life, including anything I've seen in my world. Hero, haven't you killed over a hundred million with your eyes now? If Licorice and Latte didn't interrupt me, I could have stayed in this fairy tale like trance forever. With nothing better to do, I glared at the two girls. Hundred million. Please. Using my mana, I pulled on the bubbles rising up from my mouth every time I talked. As I played around with them, I continued. It should be well over a billion by now. Eighteen days after I began my work in the Pacific, I was left standing in front of the final event dungeon. It was an SS-ranked dungeon, located in Mariana Trench's Challenger Deep, the deepest known point of the world's oceans. Just based on its location, I should have started off here, but I wanted to leave it for last as it was the highest-ranked dungeon. This is the last one. Surprisingly, we cleaned up this huge ocean without problem. Do SS-ranked monsters not phase Hero in the slightest now? Well, large monsters did appear the closer we got to the center of the Pacific Ocean. I could finally understand why the Pacific Ocean stayed blocked this whole time. However, as I had already fought against countless SS-ranked monsters like the Destroyers in the Philippines, these monsters were only slightly bigger and less scarier versions. They really weren't hard to deal with. I was very fortunate to have fought extra massive salmons. There were even some that were pregnant. I suspected that the reason they couldn't swim upstream was because they were too fat. It's a good thing we have more snacks to go along with wine. Waya will be happy. Well should we go in? The dungeon is one thing, but there might be other monsters outside. Be careful, hero. Right. I can feel something other than the dungeon. It's getting on my nerves. Um, should I sing? While we chatted, we slowly descended into the ocean. I could feel the aura licorice was talking about, but as it didn't seem too troubling, I simply continued on, ready to attack whenever. Suddenly, my body stopped as if it hit a wall. I muttered annoyed. Damn it. I looked at Latte who was in Licorice's air bubble and asked. Latte, didn't you say there was no water king? Well, hero we should run. It was too late. In an instant, a large life form in the bottom of the Mariana Trench roared. Goo. You came, hero. The Hermit King Grand Raid commences. You met one of the enemies aiming for the world's power. The dungeon's power is not fully effective against world's enemies. The Grand Raid system exists to give what little support it can to explorers who are fighting against the world's enemies. The Lord's Blessing converges on your party. As a result, the enemy can only ignore up to 30% of your party members' skills and levels. Absolute soul nullifies a part of the enemy's power. Your skills and levels will be 90% effective against the enemy. Remember that you will not be able to bring out your items and skills full power. We wish you luck. You will receive a huge reward if you defeat the Hermit King. Chapter 248 I instantly recognized the being that appeared in front of us. It was incredibly difficult not to, given his humongous size. On the other hand, he was extremely thin. Long serrated tail that stretched out backwards and forward facing eyes. He was. A ray. You're a ray. I'm the king of all who hides, the king of all who protect their lofty leagues by hiding. I am the hermit king. Ah, an electric ray. Pleen, it's dangerous. Go back to the mansion. You. Listen to me. As I coincidentally knew the characteristics of an electric ray, I quickly summoned Pika and infused her into my body, and glanced at Pleen to motion for her to leave however, Pleen shook her head helplessly. It won't open. I can't go back. No one can escape from me. I am the Hermit King, appearing only when my victory is assured, leaving no prey behind. Gaze activates. Your movement speed falls slightly. You cannot open your inventory. Your health and mana recovery speed decreases slightly. When being gazed at by your enemy, you will not be able to use return. Damn! Was the gaze skill something all world's enemies could use? Being stared down by his eyes, I couldn't get myself to calm down. 
there was no choice but to fight him. Before he attacked, I quickly called Sharana and Ryue. Protect everyone, Sharana, Ryue. Leave it to us. Almost immediately afterwards, the electric ray shot out pale blue lightning from his entire body. Pay the price for your impudence to this king. Pika. I can handle this much. As we were underwater, his lightning spread to all sides the moment it was released. We were instantly enveloped by his lightning, and I gripped my teeth and endured it with Pika's power. At the same time, I felt something strange. Isn't this guy weak? I think so too. His attack wasn't as bad as I.D. expected. Of course, it was partly because of Pika's power as a lightning elemental, but Pika was still just an elemental while our opponent was a world's enemy. It was strange that we could take on his attack so easily. When I turned around, Ryue and Sharana seemed to have also held on by freezing and strengthening the air bubble latte, plain, and licorice were in. The fact that the lightning's power spread by being underwater instead of concentrating in one place also seemed to have helped, but still. Now that I think about it, Gay's skill's effect was weak too its effect is probably proportional to the user's power. Not to mention. Even if the Hermit King was a hermit and was an expert in hiding as he said, why would he have stayed hidden all this time on earth? Now that I thought about it, the Mariana Trench was close to the Philippines. Right. Philippines. Until not long ago, there was a terrifying monster there. The Lava King was looking for you. You met the Lava King, hero. B but there is no way he knows where I am. He bit the bait. You were hiding from him. I was concealing myself. I was not hiding from the other kings because I was afraid. As I thought, he was hiding from the Lava King. Afraid he would be discovered if he moved, he hid in the Mariana Trench, which was the deepest place on earth. I had considered it when I heard Latte speak. Although the five kings shared the same goal, it seemed their relationship wasn't particularly good. If a king had to hide in fear of another king, this couldn't be the only case. Now that the thought crossed my mind, I couldn't help but laugh. I could understand why he appeared so grandly. We must have been the first humans he saw in a long time. Not to mention, since Earth's hero, who was his main target, appeared in front of him on his own, he must have been extremely happy. The hermit king seemed to have noticed what I was thinking, as he spoke in an uncomfortable tone. Earth's hero is so arrogant. If we knew you were so foolish, we wouldn't have all needed to come. Stop talking shit and come. I didn't even need to provoke him, as he immediately released another powerful lightning attack. Though I didn't know exactly where to attack, I charged towards his body and shouted. How are our reinforcements? Well have to give up, dear husband. Even the closest team needs two hours to come. I took the Hermit King's lightning directly and pondered as I endured it. Rather than enduring his attacks for two hours, although it might be dangerous, it was better to go on the offensive and aim for his life. Since I couldn't open my inventory, I had to fight with just the few potions I had on hand. It was impossible to hold out for two hours with so few potions. Show me the power of a hero. Damn right I will. After replying to the Hermit King, I used weapon swap to equip my crossbow and shot dozens of bolts towards him. He seemed surprised at the invisible attack, but just as I expected, the bolts had little effect. Is this it? I bet it stung more than your lightning. I didn't expect much from my attack in the first place. The crossbow was good for attacking the unexpecting enemy in their vitals, but even if I shot his eyes, the bolts couldn't even leave a scratch. Rather than doing damage, it only made him angrier. Even if the Hermit King seemed weak, it didn't change the fact that he was one of the five kings. It would be a different story if all members of Revival were here, but it was indeed difficult to take him on just by myself. If I used Overlord already, I would certainly lose. However, if I could force him to let his guard down, it was undoubtedly possible for me to defeat him alone. And to force him to let his guard down. Dear husband, I'll join you. I hate getting wet, but I hate seeing Hero getting hurt even more. I, I'll sing too. Just make sure you don't get injured. Ruyue, protect licorice and plean. Sharana, protect latte. Understood. 
with the elemental's help, licorice, latte, and plume charged into battle. To block the lightning the hermit king was releasing even now, Ryue protected the air bubble licorice and plume were in, and Sharana enveloped Lottie's body with her wind to allow her to freely move underwater without getting wet. Though they couldn't nullify the Hermit King's lightning entirely, it was still better than receiving his attack directly. As Licorice could use powerful magic in all elements, she could perform better than I can against world's enemies. Similarly for Latte, as long as she wasn't beaten by the Hermit King's lightning, she could deal great damage to the electric ray with her power of fire. On the other hand, it was hard for Pleen to do anything against him. It was unknown how much her songs could affect the Hermit King. However, it seemed she had something in mind, as she started to sing with a resolute face. La 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 la. Her voice flowed out of the air bubble strengthened by Ryu's power without any resistance. I had expected this much to happen, but what I didn't expect was what happened next. Her voice didn't travel far and stayed close to us. This strange scene made even the Hermit King stop attacking. The effect of Pleen's singing was then notified through a message. Siren's song of blessing resounds. Your speed increases greatly and your resistance to the enemy's magical attacks increases. Your chance of receiving critical hits decreases, while your chance of dealing critical hits increases. This is a buff. I was surprised even though I was experiencing it directly. To think that sirens could use buff type skills. I had always thought Pleen specialized in drawing in mobs and using curses and debuffs, but it seemed that wasn't the case. When I looked behind me, Pleen was making a proud expression as she continued singing. I would need to compliment her later. Though, I'd also need to complain why she didn't tell us about it earlier. What a beautiful song. What a beautiful woman. He's coming. He was releasing lightning once again. I jumped in directly and used weapon swap to equip chaotic spear. Pika, focus on defense for now. Okay. Latte, who could now move as if she was flying thanks to Sharana's power, was charging towards the Hermit King from the opposite side. Seeing as how her face was heated red, it seemed she would breathe out fire the moment she reached the Hermit King. I also rushed forward, aiming for the Hermit King's eyes which had been bothering me for a while. Although his lightning became fiercer and took away my health, that much pain didn't faze me in the slightest. Let's see how strong your eyes are. You think I'll let you. The Hermit King snorted and trembled. Immediately, I stopped my charge. He had disappeared completely. I can't detect him. I thought it was an invisibility skill, but that wasn't it. I couldn't feel his presence at all. Latte, who was rushing forward from the opposite side, also stopped with a confused look. Hermit King, to think he had an ability like this. Good, that's the expression I like to see. Il first swallow your woman along with her singing. His voice rang out from afar. He wasn't aiming for me, but rather plain and licorice. Damn, is it teleportation. The giant ray opened his mouth. Before it shut and swallowed licorice and plain, licorice spread her arm out. Immediately, a pillar of ice appeared from the bottom of his mouth to the ceiling. The hermit king howled and spat out lightning, but Licorice worked with Ryue and had already escaped from his range. Elemental, move. I was going to. Kook. He was charging towards Licorice and Pleen again. I used divine speed and shot out the chaotic spear in my hand. The target point was his eye. How laughable. The water resistance caused the spear slowed down even more than I expected, but it thankfully struck the Hermit King before he could dodge it. However, even though the spear had penetrated deep into its eye, the Hermit King didn't seem too affected by it. It made sense. No matter how much I strengthened it with my heroic aura, compared to his giant eye, it was like a toothpick. Koha, what did you do? I was expecting much more from you, but in the end, you're just a human. You better fix that impatient personality of yours first. I sneered at him and clenched my fist. Following Peruta Circuit's energy, connecting my fist and my spear, my mana ignited chaos flames and burned his eyes inside. Chaos flames were flames in the end. As they couldn't be easily ignited underwater, this was what I had thought of. 
As it relied on high-class techniques like Pryuta Circuit and Mad Typhoon, its effect was indeed excellent. Cook. Good, Chaos Flames work. In the past, I couldn't take out Chaos Flames as the opponent was the Lava King. This time, however, the opponent was a underwater monster. Fire was perfect for cooking fish. After being confident in the amount of Chaos Flames I ignited, I pulled back on my hand slightly and retrieved the spear. This strange flame that didn't lose out to the Hermit King's resistance continued to burn wonderfully. I see, this flame won't go away until I kill you, hero. He seemed to have realized what he was dealing with as he turned to directly face me. Blue lightning repeatedly crackled around him and diffusing into the surroundings. An overwhelming amount of mana that I had felt from the Lava King before was gathering within him. This is the power of a king. Despair. I will not let Hero get hurt. Before the Hermit King released his lightning, Lottie's kick struck his tail. Kick. I doubted my eyes for a moment, but Latte was indeed flying through the water at an incredible speed and continuously kicking his tail. Immediately afterwards, about half of his tail was severed. The Blaze Queen's focused attacks had been strong enough to annihilate a part of a king's body. The problem was the Hermit King's response. Fine. He'll kill this annoying bitch first. The lightning building up in his body instantly shot out towards Latte. Although Latte shot back and Sharana cast a barrier of wind around her, the Hermit King's lightning couldn't be stopped. Damn, even with divine speed, I couldn't get close enough to her. Although I had gotten used to moving underwater, the Hermit King's lightning was still faster than I could reach my hand forward. This ray. Almost as if she read my mind, Licorice reached her hand forward in my place. Sucking in Licorice's boundless magic power, pillars of ice appeared everywhere and slammed down on the giant ray's body. However, these pillars couldn't stop his lightning, and blue lightning struck Latte. Cook. Latte. It's okay, it wasn't a direct hit. My heart dropped, thinking I might lose her, but Sharana's confident shout calmed me down. However, Latte was still incapacitated from the attack. This was my mistake. Although I had attacked with Chaos Flames, Latte was hurt because I underestimated his lightning. In exchange for injuring the king, Latte was taken out of fight. It was simple to see that we were at a disadvantage. Thankfully, the Hermit King's affinity with water didn't seem as high as the Lava King's affinity with fire, as he couldn't recover his injuries through contact with water. I will show you why this Hermit King is so fearful. However, with these words, the Hermit King's presence disappeared once again. In that instant, I realized his secret. I became certain. I could defeat him. Chapter, 249 Immediately afterwards, I used divine speed and shot towards a certain direction. As expected, he appeared in front of Latte and opened his mouth. This is for my tail. You want touch Latte. I barely made it in time to guard Latte. It was thanks to knowing who he was attacking that I got there on time. I immediately shot my spear towards the ceiling of his opened mouth. I won't fall for this twice. He'll say the same thing. Before my spear struck him, a radiant blue light shone from his belly, and he spat out an incredible amount of lightning. The chaotic spear lost its strength and was reflected back into my hands. I had expected this much to happen. With a firm mind, I drew forth the power of absolute soul and circulated Pryuta circuit. Pika, we're going all out. Don't worry, master. Believe in me that believes in master. Pryuta circuit spinning surged fiercely and a whirlpool swirled around me. The hermit king's powerful lightning was absorbed into the path of Pryuta circuit and flowed into me. If I moved, Latte would be hit by the lightning once more. To make sure no one was hurt by his lightning, I plan to receive all of his lightning myself. Do you seek death? You want to kill me with this? Keep dreaming. The giant whirlpool I created hindered my vision, but it was the best for stopping the Hermit King's movements and his lightning. Even though Pryuta Circuit's powerful spinning seemed like it wanted to break my body, I sped it up without hesitation. Following the whirlpool, the Hermit King's lightning was directed to only target me. Hugh Hap. I withstood the pain. The conditions were all met. The lightning elemental pika was infused in my body, 
and Prayuta circuit was the best tool for manipulating mana. In addition, I had the power to transform hostile mana into mine, absolute soul. I opened my golden evil eyes and shouted. Let's go. Foolish, you think your evil eyes can stop me. Wop. In an instant, a portion of the Hermit King's wild lightning began to follow my control. The blue lightning began to turn golden, as I felt both pain from the ferocious lightning and joy from turning it into a power I could control. The Hermit King shouted in shock. Your evil eyes can control lightning. I wish. Although his body emitted more and more lightning, I received them all without hesitation. My health fell, while my magic power rose. Using this magic power, I restored my damaged body. It was a conversion of mana and health. Pryuta circuit had the ability to heal injured internal organs. Dear husband, you'll die if you continue. Don't worry about me and look after Latte. Attack the hermit king when you can. La 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 la. While unintelligible screams rang in my ears, plain silvery singing voice rose. Her song calmed my mind and filled my body with strength. The lightning that had mostly become golden by now circulated around my body following Peruta circuit's flow and clashed with the blue lightning that continued to assault me. I held my spear up once again. The hermit king seemed to have given up on devouring Latte, as he approached me with a glaring look. I don't know how you know the lava king, but it'll engrave into your brain the fact that I am stronger. Go ahead. Immediately, the hermit king disappeared again. For somehow holding the lofty title of a king, he acted more like a lowly assassin. The golden lightning surged as I poured it into my spear and shot it forward. The lightning didn't disperse just because I was underwater. Like a laser beam, the lightning struck the mouth of the hermit king who appeared in the path of my attack. It seemed that although he was able to wield lightning didn't mean he had resistance to lightning, as the surface of his giant mouth was burnt black. He shouted in shock. How did you find out? Because of your awful smell. Pure lightning crackled as if to boil the surrounding ocean water. From what I could tell, these king-level bastards were all powerful, but could only use their abilities in the simplest ways. I was about to thrust forward with my spear, when I realized I had a new power I could freely use. Trishula. Trishula manifests in your spear for 30 minutes. Your spear technique's rank increases by 1. When attacking, you have a 10% chance to deal 3 consecutive damage. When I used one of Shiva's powers, Trishula, a brilliant red aura descended on the chaotic spear. Setting aside Trishula's actual effects, just being able to manifest a god's power in my weapon for 30 minutes a day was amazing. It meant I could kill a world's enemy without having to use Overlord. The aura of an ominous god. The Hermit King's presence disappeared once again. I indifferently swung Trishula and shot out its red aura. Stop hiding and fight me directly. Qua. A huge ball of blue lightning was flying towards me. The Hermit King had appeared above me and spat out lightning. Wasn't he supposed to be an electric ray? The ability to wield lightning is not something a mere human can have. But you're going to die to a mere human. Believing in the power of Pryuta circuit that enveloped me, I charged towards the lightning ball. At that moment, Licorice used her magic. Because she was taking so long, I thought she was using a massive attack magic, but it turned out that my guess was wrong. The large scarlet aura from her magic quickly flew towards me. Don't die, dear husband. What, you can buff too? The moment Licorice's magic hit me, I felt like everything in the world was rushing towards me. Succubus Queen's highest rank magic, love, activates. Your affinity to everything in the world increases. The increase is proportional to the receiver's charm. Dear God. I could see why she took so long to use this magic. Knowing that she wouldn't be able to do much against the Hermit King, she had used her strongest magic to support me. Affinity was a terrifying factor in battle. Just by having one's affinity increased, one's ability to control the elements increased and one's resistance also increased. The Hermit King's giant ball of lightning wasn't so overbearing anymore. Plus, as my affinity to water had also increased, my movements also became more natural. 
having my affinity increased was what allowed for this miracle to happen. In the next moment, I clashed with the ball of lightning. I could hear someone scream, but. You won't even have the time to feel pain. Of course not. The giant ball of lightning was slowly absorbed into my body. Pryuta circuit spin was fiercer than ever before, and Mad Typhoon, strengthened by a rank with Trishula's power, used this spin to rouse an aura stronger than ever before. Pryuta Mad Typhoon became level 5. You perfectly resonated the flow of Pryuta circuit with your spear. You obtained the basis to cut and pulverize any energy in the world. Perfect timing. The ball of blue lightning shrunk and began to change in color. What I just did was nothing special. With the power licorice gave me, I could wield lightning however I wanted. Even if it belonged to the world's enemy. Lightning is under my control. Qua. You used frozen roar. All enemies in the battlefield freezes in place. All allies temporarily become super armored and has all abilities increased by 50%. Your chance of landing a critical hit doubles when fighting enemies affected by frozen roar. It did not have a great effect against your enemy. You think a roar of this level can suppress me? Despite frozen roar's power, his lightning became fiercer. It made sense that he was good at hiding since he was the hermit king, but how was it fair that he was so skilled in wielding an element? I widened my eyes while making the lightning mine. With Mad Typhoon, I forcefully drew in the lightning I couldn't suppress and infused it with my spear. Immediately afterwards, I only shot forth the energy stored in my spear. Eat this. Divine speed, heroic strike. I wasn't thrusting my spear, nor was I striking down with it. As long as I concentrated my entire bodus energy into a single point and shot it out as an aura, I could call it a heroic strike. The new version of heroic strike, birthed from the pinnacle of spear technique and mana control, showed its effectiveness immediately. A platinum-colored aura that I shot forward flew through the air like a beam of light and struck the Hermit King directly. It penetrated the Hermit King's mouth and left through the end of his tail. The difference between the attack just now and the aura I shot out before that burned the surface of his mouth was the difference between a BB gun pellet and a 85mm cannonball. Although the previous attack used close to 100,000 mana from my maximum of 180,000, with the mana I received from his lightning attack, it wasn't a big problem. Quayak. Can you still say you control lightning? Don't don't think you can be so arrogant after only a small penetration wound. With that, he disappeared once again. His large body, which could easily swallow our guild house, was nowhere to be seen, as if it was erased completely from this world. He'll admit it. His voice rang out. I am the weakest of the five kings. I grinned. His lightning had finally submitted to me, flowing around me with a golden color through Pryuta circuit's rotation. Why didn't the water discharge it? That water was also layered on top of the golden lightning, flowing around me in a whirlpool. I could feel that I was mastering Pryuta circuit bit by bit. Everyone wanted my death and wanted to take away my title of a king. I'm sure they did. He ignored my sarcastic remark and continued. But I survived for countless years and arrived on this earth. If you want, he'll kindly tell you the reason. In an instant, my left arm was pierced through. It had happened suddenly without a trace. Dear husband. Don't come close. Stay on the defensive. The pierced area was so small that my armor wasn't even fragmented. Still, it was true that an attack had penetrated through my arm. I withstood the pain I felt from my arm and held up my spear. The feeling in my left arm was strange. I felt like it wouldn't last long. It couldn't be naturally healed either. I needed to use the elixir in my inventory. To use it, I needed to kill the hermit king. Next is your heart. Overlord. I quickly used Overlord. I couldn't save it anymore. This fight would end in the next five, no, one minute. You have a truly powerful aura. You are worthy of calling yourself a hero. However, a powerful strength. My left foot was pierced through. I grit my teeth and roused the power of Overlord, dyeing the golden lightning around me black. 
The Peruta circuit that was engraved firmly into my body made screeching noises as it writhed in pain. Becomes weak when you lose focus. I wonder how long it will take until the energy staying in your heart disappears. Next, your thigh. In the next instant, my thigh was pierced through. The energy of Enigma was boiling, but it still couldn't defend against the Hermit King's attack. I had no choice. Right now, I couldn't protect all of my body against his attacks. Kook, it's a truly powerful energy, one that can threaten our king that bastard. Having to follow his commands is painful, so I will kill you here and consume the world's power. This time, it was my stomach. Cough. I almost lost control of Overlord, but I clenched my teeth and accelerated the circulation of mana. The Hermit King burst into laughter. Kohaha. Where is your confidence now? Do you have any more tricks up your sleeve? Use those things you call skills. It is truly laughable, seeing you using the same energy but calling it different names. Kohaha. Right arm, then the shin. After being attacked two more times, I was losing control of Overlord. The power residing in my spear was powerful to say the least, but without a target, it couldn't do anything. Are you prepared to die? Cook you insect like bastard. Insect how fitting. For someone struggling like you. He's coming. Aiming for my heart. In that instant, I widened my eyes and used divine speed. I activated sacrifice, strengthened my close-range skills attack with the twin-headed ogre's tattoo, and used devourer after confirming that my health had fallen below 10%. At the same time, I neglected all defense and focused the entire rotation of Peruta circuit into Mad Typhoon. There was only one thing left to do. I thrusted my spear forward. Without shaking in the slightest, the spear jolted forward through the water and stopped suddenly. However, the boundless energy stored in the spear was completely used up. Seeing as how two more impacts resounded, it seemed Trishula's effect was miraculously activated. Cough. I coughed up a mouthful of blood. As the blood diffused through the water, I thought I needed to drink a potion if I didn't want to die. How did you know Kook? A giant reaper's scythe appeared in the air, slicing through the empty water before disappearing. That was it. Once might have been a different story, but after being hit by my all-or-nothing attack thrice and sliced by the reaper's scythe, even a hermit emperor much less a hermit king could survive. Grand Raid Success Hearing the message Nunes cheer, I nodded and murmured. That's why I called you an insect. Just like that, I defeated the world's enemy alone. If I tried it again, I might end up as a beehive, damn it. Chapter, 250 As soon as I realized that the gaze skill was deactivated, I took out a bottle of elixir. After drinking about half the bottle, I asked Sharana to bring Latte to me to have her drink the rest. Even as we were getting emergency treatments, messages continued to flow in. Amazing. You completely killed one of the enemies threatening the world alone. You reaped the hermit king's soul with the reaper's scythe. With the king's soul in possession, all lightning-type monsters that invade earth will have their abilities reduced by 10%. This is a monumental achievement. In addition, you can retrieve the remaining magic power in the hermit king's body and soul, and turn it into your own. If you receive the Hermit King's power, the Hermit King's corpse will disappear and you will not get any reward for the raid completion. If you destroy the Hermit King's soul, you will obtain the Hermit King's corpse and receive appropriate rewards from the dungeon. What will you do? You obtain the title, Ruler of Lightning. Your affinity to lightning increases greatly. The ability to govern the lightning element has been newly created. Even without mana, you can withdraw lightning from nature and wield it. You obtained 30 stat points and 10 skill points for completing a grand raid. I thought this would happen. From what I can tell, something like this happened when the reaper's scythe dealt the final blow. Retrieving the hermit king's power. I pondered over the message. Dear husband. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine and so is Latte. Pleen, you can stop singing now. When I looked back at my companions, a message window popped up as if to demand my answer. What will you do? If you do not decide quickly, the king's soul will be extinguished. In truth, I wasn't sure what to do. 
With its transformation undone, I could see the giant corpse of an electric ray suspended underwater. It was much smaller than when the Hermit King first appeared. Right, his secret wasn't anything grand. He just had the ability to become extremely big or extremely small. There was one more aspect to this ability. What made his ability so scary was that he could shrink his presence as if he didn't exist or enlarge it as if he was a terrifying enemy. Furthermore, regardless of what size he was, his true strength didn't change. When he condensed his enormous lightning power into the size of a flea and attacked with a terrifying speed, even Enigma couldn't defend against it. It was a power fitting of the name Hermit King. The question was how I noticed him. It was thanks to Chaos Flames. No matter how small he became, the Chaos Flames burning inside his eye didn't disappear. How could I not know where my ability was located? I had seen through everything. However, if he noticed that I had discovered his secret, I would have lost my chance to counterattack perfectly. To attack him in the perfect time, I pretended not to see him and ended up with holes in my body. Thanks to this, I could accurately time when he would charge towards me, and I gave him the strongest attack I could make. If that wasn't enough, I planned to use Sky God's rage for the finishing blow, but it was thankfully unnecessary. Trishula's effect and the Reaper's scythe had activated with a critical hit. What will you do? Who? The decision was entirely up to me. If I took his corpse and the raid reward, HM Daisy would receive another powerful undead and I would probably receive a legend grade item. However, I was more interested in a power that would become mine entirely. Even if that power was an ability to transform or an ability to hide my presence, that would have its own use. Moreover, the fact that Message Nuna was asking me in the first place suggested that. It'll take the power. When I gave my answer, the Hermit King's corpse began to shrunk. I watched with a blank expression until the corpse disappeared completely. In the end, only a blue energy was left floating. It then slowly approached me and was absorbed into me. Dear husband. Licorice and Pleen, who was approaching me with a relieved look, sped up in shock when they saw what was happening. However, I was already in no situation to explain them the situation. The moment the blue energy was absorbed into me, it resonated with Pryuta circuit and was surging through my body at a terrifying speed. You can choose between two titles. The first is Hermit King, and you will be granted the Hermit King's unique ability, World Trickery. With this skill, you will be able to freely change your bow to size, form, and presence while maintaining your full strength. The second is offering your title, Rule of Lightning, to obtain a new title, Lightning God with this title, your affinity and dominance over lightning will reach a pinnacle, allowing you to freely create and wield lightning at your desire. You will also not take any damage from lightning below the EX rank, and you can even wield your enemy's lightning as if it was your own. Of course it's lightning god. Are you kidding me? How are those two even comparable? I shouted as if someone was listening. Immediately afterwards, the blue energy in my body transformed into a dazzling golden color. It immediately transformed into a powerful lightning and went berserk as if to burn me alive. Master, there's so much energy. This is Master's. Hua. Unable to endure the shock, I screamed, echoing underwater. This was like when I obtained a god's power no, my body was transforming even more than when I obtained a god's power. You obtained the title, Lightning God. Your affinity and dominance over lightning has reached the pinnacle. You can wield all lightning under EX rank as if it was your own, and you will not be injured by them. Congratulations. You met one of the conditions to advance to the next realm. How long did it take before that message rang out? I had no way of knowing. When I became conscious, Licorice, Latte, and Pleen were hugging me in a competition of some sort. Dear husband, dear husband. Hero, don't die. Snap out, Shin. Ryue and Sharana were also floating around me with worried looks. However, as Pika was in my body the whole time, she didn't seem too worried. I flicked the girls' foreheads and made them back off. I'm fine. Stop trying to take off my armor and get back. But I have to check your body. You might be hurt. Feeling doubtful at Licorice's choice of words, I notified them that I was at my absolute best condition. 
Then, I flicked Licorice's forehead one more time. I suddenly became curious if it was Licorice's buff that allowed me to obtain the title of Lightning God. After all, it was thanks to her buff that I obtained the Ruler of Lightning title. Thus, I changed my mind and pat her head. Although it didn't really work as we were underwater, she seemed to have understood my feelings as her face brightened. She suddenly asked. Can I unclothe you? Stop when you're ahead, please. As a test, I ignited lightning with my left hand. It was done without using Pika's power. Despite us being underwater, golden lightning danced on my palm naturally. I felt an indescribable sense of pleasure. Dear husband I see, if you obtained a power of this level, it makes sense that you fainted. How is it? Can you handle it? Of course. I feel like. I threw the lightning towards the bottom of the Mariana Trench. That single bolt of lightning didn't lose even the slightest strength as it descended endlessly. Soon, the light it was giving off disappeared and a powerful explosion was felt. I can even kill the remaining three kings alone. Before we entered the SS rank event dungeon underneath, I notified the rest of the guild members that I took care of the king and that we didn't need any backup. Some breathed sighs of relief, some cursed, and some laughed as if it was only natural. Leon's trust in me was too big. Nothing less from the guild master. My heart dropped for a second though. Was the king weak? He said he was the weakest. How can he stop us from running away? That's cheating. If all kings are like that, we'll have to be extra careful. You said he hid his presence so he couldn't be discovered. I nodded at Waya's question though she couldn't see me, and answered. It was a strange technique that only the hermit king could do. The other kings shouldn't be able to do it. I'm certain so you don't need to worry. The other kings can't hide their presence. Their overwhelmingly powerful presence, that is. Yeah, the lava king was like that, but. Corpse what about the beautiful, tough corpse? There is no such thing. Ah Kong Shin, I hate you. Daisy seemed angry I couldn't acquire the corpse, but I would have made the same choice even if I went back in time. I made a bitter smile and consoled her. I'm sure Antarctica has powerful monsters too. They'll find a strong one for you. Pinky promise. Yeah, yeah. At that moment, Yua made a surprising report. Appa, the egg hatched. Really? I was sad I couldn't be there to witness it. It's a really cute baby dinosaur. What did you name it? Feeling uneasy, I couldn't help but ask. Yua gave a hearty response. The name is Do One. If you didn't name him yet, what about Ruth? I cut her off and shouted. Yua corrected me. It's a she. Plus, I already named her. You named a girl do no, never mind. How about Luna? Oh, that's a pretty name, Appa. Then he'll call her Luna from now. Just like that, I made a better future for both Yua and Luna. I had yelled whatever name that came to my mind, but naming a flame dragon's baby Luna my naming sense. I'm happy Appa named her, hoo hoo. I'm happy that Yua's happy. Mostly in the sense of copyright laws. I agree with that, but you two brother and sister need to make some distance. I'm already so far from him. You want me to get even farther. I hate Wyauni. See? In the first place, that's the wrong response. Yua, this uni will introduce you to a nice boy. How about it? No. I'm going to live with Appa for the rest of my life. I hate uni. It seemed I had sparked another trouble. As I was scared of both Waya and Yua, I decided to ignore them both. Then, I charged straight into the SS rank dungeon. Two weeks later, on the 32nd day after leaving Korea, I completely cleaned up the Pacific Ocean and the Oceania and headed to the Antarctic Ocean. Including the stat points from defeating the Hermit King, I had gained 55 bonus stat points. While the Chaotic Spear was at 84% growth. 